Kmart Fan Studios, secured by DFWSecurity.com. This is Sean and RJ on 105.3 The Fan. Good morning, Metroplex. This is the Thursday edition of Sean and RJ on DFW Sports Station 105.3 The Fan. Feels like the week is flying by. It does feel like it's going by pretty speedy. That's good. We got Peyton and Ryan in the back. We are live on the Fan Cam Twitch and YouTube. The return of Roberto Belt at 6 o'clock this morning with all of his vacation tales. Uh, we'll see if he is reset and recharged. We have another Rangers ticket giveaway to hook you up with during the expressway. I don't know if he was reset and recharged. But he, was, he was hitting send a lot. I think he's one of those tech kids now, the Memphis Gen Z's, to where he's not going to unplug and turn his phone off. He needs it. He needs it to feel and stay connected. He can't just go away and come back and hop into the mix. Yeah. I mean, you and I, I mean, I didn't have, I mean, the internet didn't even come out until I was like 13. Something like that. Yeah. You know, I, remember the little at sign for your email? That used to be about. That used to be the symbol for the word about. Really? Oh, yeah. And did not know that. Yeah. And then like, uh, and then all of a sudden it's like, what, what the hell? Now it's changed. It's like uh, pound and hashtag. Just one day, it was just... Yeah, the pound used to be how you block your number if you wanted to be a stalker and call yeah. someone. Star 6-7. That's what I used. Caller ID blocked. Prank yeah. call uh, Domino's. Absolutely. That's right. <laughs> Put in the big order. Yeah. How are you uh, when you go on your international vacations? Are you able to unplug, keep the phone down? No, as soon as we land in London or Ireland, Whoa. we, we, we got to you know contact Verizon, <laughs> set up the international plan. <laughs> um, but no, I'm fine with it. I mean, I don't, I don't usually, you know tweet a whole bunch like live tweet games and stuff just because the time difference and all that but i mean it, I'm, I'm fine with it i'm okay i'm not on it all the time because we when we're on vacation we're doing family stuff so that's right i'm busy all right so we'll see uh i think he'll be in a good mood we'll see with bobby bell i i, I have thought he was gonna show up now could be well could not be he's could not be. here <laughs> he's not here i think he'll be in at like 5 38 539. I guarantee he didn't sleep either. You know him. No. You know, and again, those those Sunday scaries when the you, Wednesday scaries. You're off for a week. Yeah. And you come back. And high you, anxiety day. High anxiety day for many. The Sunday scaries. That's right. Uh Texas Rangers looking to close out their series in style against Seattle yesterday afternoon on the fan. And they did. 3-2. Swings here and hammers one to left field. Kelnick backtrack, turns, looks, that ball out of here. Long gone beyond the Rangers' bullpen. That was a blast from Marcus, and the Rangers are on the board. A leadoff home run here in the top of the third inning, and we're tied at one. A very impressive series, Choppy, in terms of, you know, styles make fights. Mm -hmm. Can you win in different styles? They've been bludgeoning the bad pitching. Now you go up against some studs. In Seattle, uh, you get blanked basically in the first two games, two runs in two games, and yesterday they eke out a one-run win, and again, they won it in a scrappy way. It's like a team in the NBA now winning without a bunch of threes as you had big days, Marcus Simeon, big, big hits. Yeah. Simeon, Heim, Lowe, you had Hernandez and Will Smith pitch in the ninth for a six save, and the Rangers win two of three by beating Seattle 4-3. They got outscored in the series, not by a run, by three, mm. and they wound up taking two of three. Uh, and and you know Dane Dunning is uh, the replacement for Andrew Heaney uh, when 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 Degrom is what a fine fully healthy and ready to go. Uh, yeah, he was well. He was in the uh, the what the uh, the Lance Lynn trade, right? He got him in the Lance Lynn trade. Um, so he has been he's been tremendous this year. Uh, so he's the replacement for Andrew when 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 Degrom comes back and is fully healthy and if he isn't they need to be drug tested over there um that, that's what needs to happen this was a good win i mean the buck show walter when he was the manager here used to talk about tack on runs it's that run where you're up but you add one more so the insurance run that insurance run right you add one more and that one more turned out to be the difference you know because the mariners scored what in the eighth inning to, to, to make it what could have been a tie game had Simeon not had that single through the left side, uh, that would have been that would have tied the game. But in year two earlier, he put that through. And now you get to feast 
you get to go back to the buffet. Oh, yeah. As you take on the Oakland Athletics starting tonight right here on this radio station. Oakland is 8 and 30. They've lost four straight. They're 3 and 7 in their last 10, and they have the least amount of wins in Major League Baseball, and they have a three game lead in that department. The second worst team in the entire sport is Kansas City with 11 wins. Here's Oakland with eight and their run differential by far. So there's no one in the National League. The highest negative run differential in the National League is 54. From the second place Marlins in the National League East, three teams are basically 500 in the National League East. Minus 54, the Athletics minus 142. <laughs> <laughs> the A's just played a Yankee team that is, they're panicking in New York, they're, and they're like four games over 500, and they're panicking because they're idiots. Uh, they lost every game by five runs or more. <laughs> so that's what they're doing, and they're flying cross country. So that's what uh, that's what that's what the A's are dealing with. That's what the Rangers are going to be dealing with this week. Uh, an A's team that can't get out of their own way, and is flying cross country to do it. 840 first pitch. So tonight you get the double dip. You get the stars, game five, double AC, and you get the Rangers and the Athletics. Which game ends first? They're starting at the same time. Ooh. Rangers A's. Oh, you call an overtime, huh? No, you I said, just think, I mean, baseball's uh, quicker. I think, I mean, I wouldn't say a low scoring game, but I think the A's go down pretty quickly in their awful lineup. So yesterday, I just wanted to click on over to the Rangers post. I had it like on my jump channel previous. And I click over three hours after first pitch. And it felt like they were already done with the post game show. Yeah. It was two, it was two thirty game. Yeah. It felt like they were already wrapping up. They already finished with the post game yeah. show. You know, it's turned into, you know, NBA hockey and now major league baseball are all about two thirty. Every game's about two hours, 30 minutes now. Meanwhile, the athletics, they getting some, uh, getting some good or bad news on moving. Well, now it's good news. Apparently now the bad news was three days ago. They were like, well, this thing is not going to fall through if they don't get this tax deferment of $500 million, right? Well, that kind of got pushed to the side, it seems, because now, now there are reports that they have found a different location on the Vegas Strip. Demolished, so it was thought to be right next to the uh, Allegiant Stadium where the Raiders play. Well, now it appears that they have made a deal with this is according to Las Vegas local with Bally's Bally's Corp to demolish the Trop, the Tropicana Hotel, all right, and build a $1.5 billion ballpark right on the strip. Like the Tropicana Hotel is right next to, right across Tropicana Boulevard from the MGM. And it's like Caddy Corner to New York, New York, and Excalibur and Luxor and Mandalay. So it's right there. It's a perfect location. You're close to the Aria, you're close to Cosmo, walking, you can walk, as opposed to having to cross the highway. This is gonna be the best location, this is gonna be better location, or as good as what the Golden Knights have inside the hotel. Meanwhile, there are rumors, I think, that the Rays may go to Orlando. There's a $1.7 billion stadium in the, either they're talking about, or Orlando is trying to clear land for and such, to move them to Orlando. Tampa and Orlando are about you know, what, an hour, hour and a half away between each other. Uh, they're, they're, they're pretty close. It's almost like Austin and San Antonio where it's become one giant suburb. Florida, though, Florida's the baseball version of the National Football League in California. As I kept saying, stop sending NFL teams to California or to Los Angeles. They don't deserve it. They can't support it. The Chargers' home base is a joke. The Rams get invaded all the time. It's ridiculous. And now you're going to put a third team in Florida. Miami is, has the second worst attendance in Major League Baseball. Tampa Bay is 23rd with a record-setting start and an amazing first-place team. They're 23rd. And now let's put a team in. Just stop putting teams in. Well, Orlando. they would just move the Rays there. They wouldn't put a new team in Florida, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. So now I'm just, just saying keeping a team. Yeah. I'm, the I issue should, with I, the Rays I is. I should have been clear. No, the issue with the Rays is, first of all, their stadium stinks. And second of all, it's. It's like you have to cross this massive. You have to go past Tampa to St. Petersburg to get there, right? So you have to like go through Tampa, 
and then across this bridge, imagine the rock wall, rock wall bridge that's always backed up times like 30. So it's just, once you get on this bridge, it's like a super long bridge to get there. You got to cross the bay, whatever it is. And then, you know, if you move to Orlando, you can get both teams, both cities. I think it may help attendance, but they're also, they're all a million years old that live out there. I was out in Rockwall yesterday, Peyton. Your neck oh, of the yeah. woods. Did you see me? Scouting. I did not see oh. you. I would not have. Scouting. Avoided. Scouting. Scout. 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 Still looking for uh, real estate, huh? I'm looking at, you know, now now I'm in the stage of picking out things that you want the house to look like. And Rockwall had a bunch of different neighborhoods to go and see. What's the brick layout? What's the uh, elevation, they call it? Mm, the outside. Yeah. They can't say the outside of the house. It's the What's the elevation? Yeah, right. So I'm just driving around looking at. You know, my new my new social hood, seeing if RJ was right, that there's nothing out there. There seemed to be a lot. You know, there seemed to oh, be a lot. Oh, there's things out there. It's just that what's out there is cars. There's too much traffic. We just opened a payway. Wow, look at that. There yesterday. <laughs> Great place. Oh, look at that. <laughs> uh, so there it is. All right, Sean, RJ, Peyton, and Ryan, glad you're waking up with us on this Thursday morning. Shout out, as always, Jay Ochoa. Die Hard Tolo is always there for us in the weight room, getting his day started by turning it on, leaving it on. Did this player really need to leave in a wheelchair last night? Both teams surviving Jalen Brunson and the Warriors stay alive and the return of Roberto Belt at 6 o'clock Thursday morning. Just getting started on the fan. Coming up in the next G.
The defending champions down three games to one come away with a victory. The clock will run out. The Warriors win 121 to 106. Both teams staying alive last night in the NBA playoffs. Good morning, Metroplex. Sean Shreve, RJ Choppy with you here on your home of the Rangers and Cowboys. It's 105.3 The Fan. We start off at the Garden. Jalen Brunson with 38 points in 48 minutes as New York is going to go back to Miami. Hopefully it's not warm outside, according to Jalen Rose, because then New York will definitely be eliminated. They win 112 103, but what you just heard on Warriors Radio, Golden State stays alive. They pretty much handle the Lakers. Uh, I thought it was going to be a blowout early. L.A. comes back. Golden State makes their surge. Lakers never recover. Warriors win 121-106. And the big story this morning is the condition of Anthony Davis, who took a shot, if you want to call it that, from Kayvon Looney to the face, Anthony is stumbling and bumbling, and he goes on over to the bench, and he's being evaluated, and you're like, what's going on here? Okay, shake this off. I didn't even see a replay where it was a clear, hard, hardcore shot to the eye. I didn't see. You know when you get those replays, and you're mm -hmm. like, ooh, I see it. I never saw it with Anthony Davis. He stands up, he starts walking to the back, and Chris Haynes, who's incredible as a TNT reporter, says that Anthony Davis got put in a wheelchair. And last night on Inside the NBA, Shaq and Barkley could not contain their laughter. I mean, just straight giggling for about 30 to 45 seconds as Ernie Johnson finally is like, guys, come on now. Let's talk about the game. What are we doing? And Kenny's like, don't even ask him. If you ask him, but they are clearly laughing at the report that Anthony Davis had to be put in a wheelchair, a Paul Pierce situation yeah. for AD as the Lakers lose. Yeah, the difference is Paul had pooped himself. I don't care what Paul says. <laughs> Paul had pooped himself. If they were wearing the road greens that day, he wouldn't have had to worry about that. But they were wearing the whites. So that's why Paul had to get, right? It was a home game. He had to get himself into that wheelchair. Yeah, this was a, this was a temple shot. This is a temple shot that uh, it didn't look like it was, you know, some Bill Cartwright flying elbow, but, uh, you know, right spot, I guess. Uh, you know, it could. Um, he is the softest star oh, yeah. of all time, period. I don't even think it's close. Like, when Ken Griffey Jr. was getting hurt and just like the nagging injuries, I don't think we were saying. Oh, Griffey, you know, his body was just breaking down, it felt like. This guy is soft. And it's a very dangerous game to play in the media. Like, for Charles and Shaq, I didn't watch it live, but everyone is saying they reacted oh, they to died. the they report. Just, they were just cracking I mean, I watched the clip, but yeah. I didn't know. I didn't know if it was directly off of Chris Haynes telling them wheelchair and then laughter. Yeah. I, I, I assume it was that. That's how everyone is describing it. But it's kind of a dangerous thing, right? Like when he got hurt in the Memphis series and he said, I can't move my arm. Stephen A wanted to at halftime call him soft. But if he ends up with a broken arm, you look stupid. If he ends up with a concussion last night, you end up looking insensitive and stupid. You get in trouble from a media perspective. But 99% was going to be he did not have a concussion. And the reports are he dodged a concussion. He did dodge it. And he should be able to play Game Six in L.A. He uh, he definitely dodged it. Uh, that, that, that's the good thing. Uh, now will he have? <laughs> will, he, will the will the lights when they do a light show in the beginning of the game? You know, will they when they when they turn out the lights, they put the strobes on. Yeah. Will that screw with his equilibrium? You know, will that happen? But I think the Lakers should be worried though. Um, I'd be much more worried if I was the Lakers than if it was I if I was Miami with this three two lead. You could maybe argue that this is a must win, that they have to win game six in L.A. I could argue that. I mean, it's it, Golden State's a bad road team anyway this year. I mean, what they have? They were 11 and 30 on the road. Uh, that's terrible. Uh, there's there's no excuse for you to lose that game on the uh, at home to Golden State. The only way you do that is if Anthony Davis doesn't play. And if you have... You know, some kind of 
uh, off night from LeBron, uh, or none of the role players step up. None of them. None of them. So I, I would suspect the Lakers win this game. Why are people upset? Uh, and for the series, what do you think he's averaging for the series, points-wise? Anthony Davis? 18-5? Oh, no. Not that bad. 22. 22 and 13. That's, I mean, that's... 22 and 13 is a great, great stat line. Yeah, it's it's good. But if you actually watch and you know the mismatches, like, he should be scoring more points than this. Draymond Green and Kayvon Looney, neither are 6'10". Like, I think Looney's 6... Looney might be 6'8". I got to go ahead and check. You have a two or three inch he's height six, advantage. He's six nine. Yeah, seven four wingspan. That's pretty, pretty legit. Uh, Anthony Davis was twenty one and thirteen against the Grizzlies. Why are some early Tolos going to be upset if they're getting their coffee at Starbucks this morning? What is Starbucks doing? Starbucks is upcharging you, Sean. Mm -hmm. They are they are making they are implementing a one dollar upcharge. On drinks, on on some popular drinks, fans are furious. So, have you ever gone in there? And this is necessarily for coffee, all right? Have you ever gotten in there and gone there, gotten the refresher drinks? No. Oh, these are amazing. These are your raspberry hibiscus. You know your 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 the non coffee colored you know juice fruit drinks. Uh, so they're starting with those. They're going to implement this with other drinks as well, like your coffees. Like your uh, your creme brulee lattes, your holiday drinks, uh, but they are going to start using uh, a one dollar price hike if you want, and these drinks at least less water. So they cut them with water. So now they're saying if you want no water in this, dollar price hike, and fans are furious. They're saying well, you got enough money. What do you need to bilk us for this? Uh, for you know just to just take the heat, which I disagree with. Okay, I disagree with that statement, but that's what a lot of people are saying. Uh, so they're going to start charging a dollar extra. There's, let's see, nine of these drinks on their menu. And then as it comes closer to winter, they're going to start implementing the same $1 upcharge to some of their holiday beverages. When did you uh, quit Starbucks? Uh, You know, I didn't quit it fully. I just don't go in as much. I've been trying to cook at home uh, in the morning for breakfast on the weekends. Oh, you used to get breakfast there. I used to get breakfast and coffee there. Uh, and now I'm just, you know, cooking breakfast at home. Some more bacon and eggs. All the good stuff. Sausages. Whatever you might want. But, uh, yeah, the only time we'll go to Starbucks is if we're in a, in a rush on the way to a game or something. And your usual order was what? Honestly, during the regular week, just regular coffee. Oh, you didn't like, get one of the fancy things. No, I was never a fancy. I was a fancy drink guy during Christmas time. Uh, the uh, the uh, chestnut praline. The caramel brulee latte. We'll get some of those. The but java chip. Oh, I love it. You like the Java chip? The Frappuccino. Oh, I love yeah. it. So I'm, so I'm, a, I, you know, I'm like a no fat, no whip kind of guy. Um, so how much I go there and I get one of their, let's say I get the Java whip. Dollar upcharge. I'm leaving, spending what? Oh, man. I mean, if you get the Grande, it's almost six bucks. Dang. Yeah, that, they're expensive, that's, man. You know, the medium. That, that's all. That's why a lot of people stop going. I mean, they, they just get too expensive. You start, and then they have these oleatos, these oleato drinks. These are the ones they put olive oil in. Oh. And these are making people poop themselves. <laughs> well, like, that's the point, right? Yeah, it basically is. I mean, it, it kind of is the point. But, you know, you get those blended beverages or the cold brews. I mean, you're looking to spend, uh, yeah, like six, eight bucks on a grande. Fair or he should have been fired. The Bob Huggins decision is in after the radio interview that we played Multiple times for you. The Rangers finish off Seattle nicely. And the return of Bobby Belt in studio next on 105.3 The Fan. Always a
Star Fan Studios, secured by DFWSecurity.com. This is Sean and RJ on 105.3 The Fan. Good morning, Metroplex. Shout out to the 6 a.m. club. And right now, you see him fist pumping on the fan cam, Twitch, and YouTube. The return of Roberto Belt on DFW Sports Station. Welcome back. What's up? Get the nice, nice recharge? No. Why? Because I like I don't turn my brain off. So why? Because I'm incapable of it. I always have been. So instead, I just like anxiously wonder like what stories am I totally missing that when I get back I'm gonna be ignorant of, and so then I start getting in my head about that. And if it was a, I feel like if I took a full week, it'd be easier to just unplug. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whereas coming back on a Thursday, which that's nobody's fault but my own. That's what I put in for. Coming back on a Thursday, it's a little bit like, well, I got to come back in the middle of the week and there's probably going to be recaps of things that happened earlier in the week that I got to have some sort of level of understanding of. It's tough. I, I get it. You know, you got to have that ability to just say like, so I missed game one of stars, right? I didn't see game one mm-hmm. in Mexico. Mm-hmm. And then I posted on social media, man, I haven't seen Ottinger look like this bad all postseason. And somebody was like, well, he did the same thing in game one. I was like, well, I was out of the country. Game one didn't happen. <laughs> so don't shoot the message. Does, it doesn't register with you. I did I did make sure to to Tolo on the drive back, and I was listening back, and you know, I was listening at, at different points and stuff like that. So I did know. As you can see, I've got my uh, Hot Springs, Arkansas shirt here. Was it Bigfoot? Oh. Yeah, it is Bigfoot. All right. But I also knew from listening that Choppy likes matching clothing. I do. And so <laughs> he gets a Bigfoot shirt, All too. All right. <laughs> there you go. You Thank just you, man. And then it'd be it'd it. be an HR complaint if I didn't get you a hot spring oh, shirt. Okay. So. Thank you, brother. Is that Reunion Tower in the background? <laughs> no, that is. <laughs> it's that something is else. Water tower. It looks like a, it definitely looks like Reunion Tower. Yeah. But, which, Thank by the you. way, it was so foggy this morning. I was kind of freaking out driving in. Because I couldn't even see Reunion Tower lit up when I was I was coming up to seventy five. Fog? Oh, yeah, yeah, there's this fog covering Reunion Tower. You can't even see the lights on it right now. So how was it? Where did you go exactly? Uh, just outside of Hot Springs. It's called Lake Hamilton Township, and it was good. It was you know kids had fun. It was you know nice, serene, peaceful view of the lake and everything else. House right on the lake, and so does the wife. Did the wife get frustrated or upset that you were on your phone or not able to fully unplug? No, I wasn't. I wasn't on it like an obnoxious amount. I was just. I, I was checking in on periodic points. So, what were the top two highlights of Twitter wise that you put out there? Her packing and something else. Yesterday, were you in a tornado watch? Was that what that was? Yeah, so I guess Hot Springs, I had no idea. I guess Hot Springs is known for these emergency alert sirens. Oh. Which I, like, had just caught the end of it, which is just the siren, which is loud. I had Peyton pull what I first heard when I was standing out there, because I was like, what the hell is happening right now? Now, I know, Peyton, you had to trim something off the end, but this is the this is the start of their sirens that they test in Hot Springs. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> and so I heard that and I went, what the hell's happened? And then there starts that they have this recorded voiceover that says like, this is a test. Do not be afraid. This is a test. And it's like, what the hell? And so when I posted the video, I was like, isn't this weird? And like three people replied and were like, why are you in hot springs? Whoa. And so I guess people know that's just a terrifying thing that happens. But uh, there was that there was, you remember I texted you yesterday. I said, I'll be home probably around five. Yeah. So I'll start working on my email. Got home around 540 because there were three separate. I got to go to the bathroom. We got to stop. So I had to stop and pull over and deal with uh, the the wife bathroom trip. But other than that, it was uh, uneventful. It was good. Then I got to credit you for the assist because I'm going with the family to Brokumbo after the show. Well, thanks to Chris Navar, Tolo Chris, you know him well, Choppy. Yes, do. And, uh, I showed her, I made sure to show her your video of Kristen overpacking. Yeah. So I did that with the... A deterrent. A deterrent. Yeah. With the method of saying, don't be like Kristen. I'm like, now I'm going to video what you do in the car and compare that and put it out there on social media with hopefully that meaning much less bags and quicker time on the road after the show. That's a Ford Explorer. and Yeah, you packed that thing. And it's... Full for what was nine. two nights, mm-hmm. and she just 
Here's we, the problem. We, we had friends that got stranded once. There was a like a I don't remember what it was. There was a, a highway that had flooded. I remember it was on the news and people had gotten stuck and you couldn't go backwards, couldn't go forwards because of the flooding. And so we had friends that went there one time. They got stuck and they ran out of stuff. And so ever since then, she's been paranoid that we've got to make sure we've got every possible thing that mm-hmm. could go wrong. <laughs> And so she she tends to overpack and and it felt like most of the people on the Facebook page and stuff were agreeing with her for the most part that said it's a lot but you'd rather you know overpack than underpack you don't want to be missing something and so I was like all right whatever I just want room for my children like so that they can actually fit <laughs> yeah. like, as somebody on Twitter said they had said are are the children in the bed sheets there because I don't see where they're supposed to sit it uh it's like, but here's like for Did broken you pack bro- bed sheets. No, they, so she takes pillow, she takes pillowcases, puts the pillow, in, and then puts like their blankets and stuff, and then they go. But she had mm. them sitting in each kid's seat. But for Broken Bow or Hot Springs, like you're not, there's nothing to do there. You're not going out on the town. You don't need. You might go out one night for dinner, but you don't need to look cute, right? So like, you know, it, it's 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 not like gym, you and I. It's a gym clothes. It's a gym clothes trip. And the thing is, he's got older kids, like. For my kid, who's about to be three, I got to pack the pack and play. I got to pack the sound machine. We got to pack the food, the only food he eats. You got to pack all that crap. Your kids are older. Like, you don't have to pack food. You don't have to pack specific things. I mean, she does pack food, though. Yeah. Because she's the one who just like, well, this way we don't have to go out if we don't want to. And But it was good. We did one of those duck boat tours, which I had never done before. It's the I like how land. you threw the U in tours. It's tours. It's, it's, it's on tours. land or on water, and so it's this. It's a like giant open jeep that then you get to the water and it turns into a boat and then you oh. get on the water. So it'll go land and water, and so it was cool. I I I, I like the area a lot. This is like the third time we've been back. And the board game of choice, uh, Trouble. Oh yeah, it's tough to beat that one. That's Which I had already had a couple drinks and I was getting very frustrated because I was losing. <laughs> like if you saw the picture where Kristen's like glaring or whatever, I had gotten frustrated. I was losing. I was like, "You take over. You're yeah, you're green the rest of the game. I'm not playing this." <laughs> do, do you get superstitious with the color that you are? No, I, I was more concerned with like, all right, which color does the youngest want to be? Because she'll cry about it. Yeah. So what does she want to be? Okay, you're this color. All right, then everybody else has their color pick for them because we're setting up the board like this, and you're all sitting here, and this is what you are. Hmm. I need yeah. a refresher on all board games. I've heard of it. I have no idea how to. This play. one where it's got the little the little dice in the middle, and you press the monopoly, the pop, and it pops, and oh. then it goes around. And then you like move your little pieces, your little pegs. I feel, do you feel like having kids gets you refreshed in the board games? Gets you refreshed in a lot of things. Yeah, uh, right. gets you refreshed cartoons. Uh, yeah, some board games. I mean, they like to play board games. Um, you know, but you can get you. I mean, there are there are adult games that are not like Cards Against Humanity. Like there are adult games like uh fun one, incoherent. Have you heard of this? No. So there's a card, I hold up a card, and I see the phrase that it's supposed to be on the back, and you see a mumbled, jumbled one that you've got to guess what it's actually saying. Uh, which when you're when you're hammered or buzzed or whatever, and with a group of people, it's a lot of fun. 877-881-1053. So welcome back to Roberto. Final question, sleep anxiety. What time did you get up? What time did you go to bed? Were you hurting this morning? I was hurting. I I didn't actually. I went to bed at 11, and I was thinking, okay, I'll go 11 to 5. That'll be six hours. But I woke up at 1.15, 2.30, 4.15. The Bob Huggins decision from West Virginia broke in crosstalk yesterday. In case you have not heard the controversy this is what it sounded like. Bob Huggins going on WLW in Cincinnati. Now, Steve also tells me that you have the best portal transfers. Have you have you poached any Xavier guys to come to oh, play for West Virginia? Catholics don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're, we're above the fracas, aren't we? No problem. Yeah, you, um, absolutely. I mean, you you. I tell you what, any any school that can throw rubber penises on the floor and then say they didn't do it, <laughs> by God, they can get away with anything. <laughs> I, 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 rubber penis. Was this I like think that trans- was at the Crosstown shootout, wasn't I think it? It was transgender night, wasn't it? What? Was that it? It was a, it was a Crosstown shootout. Yeah, no, what it was was all those f***s, those, those Catholic f***s, I think. So. <laughs> all right. They, 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 were, they were envious they didn't have one. 
You can, well, Steve, your comments about Bob Huggins. Is he the best? He's the best. Yeah, he's the best. He's the best. So, Bob so Huggins. So, which of those four things got him in trouble? Uh, uh, I mean, boy, I think talking. You could have picked, I think. There were several things there that I think could have gotten him in trouble. The power rank, the <laughs> yes. slurs, F, the F words, one and two. Yes. He's, uh, the, he's the best. He's the best. So, here's the punishment. Huggins has agreed to a million-dollar salary reduction a three-game suspension, and sensitivity training. So Bob Huggins is staying at West Virginia. West Virginia. He's going from 4.2 to 3.2, and the million-dollar reduction is believed to be one of the biggest in college athletics. He's going to have to go through all this sensitivity training as well. What do you think of the punishment, RJ? I think, and I, I know, because uh, there are a lot of people that are, are, are reporting on this, that the West Virginia powers that be looked at two things, and they said, one, and I, I can understand this part of it from their standpoint. This, you know, this does hurt the players, if you will, losing your coach. Okay, you want to say that? Fine. Um, oh, that was their. That, that was, was their. That was their rationale. But the other thing the is, this, this, the other the other thing was that that people were were were, were talking about that the athletic director and the and the president were like. Let's be real. We are we are in West Virginia and our fan base doesn't really care about this issue. I'm not joking. Like that's that's a, Well, that, I brought that, this up the other yeah. day. And I like, said, does it matter? Is it gonna matter? You don't want to label and paint West Virginia as homophobic. It's it's <laughs> not they're not even painting them that they're homophobic, they're painting them that they're not they don't care about language. That's what they're saying. They they they're, they're fans. Well, they recognize that he is what he said was. Yeah. If this was at UCLA, gone. If this was at, at, at a million other schools, he's gone. But they were saying, look, our fan base understands that what he said was wrong, but they don't care enough to fire him. And their thought process was: Are we, are we running our university based on 2023 societal norms in the United States or 2023 societal norms in West Virginia? And they chose West Virginia. Yeah. Are you surprised? Uh, yes, I am surprised. You, um, you also brought up that recruiting class, which one cannot forget. Well, that's that's true. One cannot forget this recruiting class, which uh, was about two weeks ago. It was like the sixth best transfer class in the country. And then they got a player from Syracuse, and that vaulted them even higher. Like, this is supposed to be like a legitimate transfer portal, like, program changing class which could lead them to a deep run of the postseason so like <laughs> they were weighing that one and you know I mean, you, you know how things are it's look if you're an institute of higher learning it's a terrible message to send to the players who you're supposed to be teaching yeah that hey you know if you're good if you're really good at something you could get away with more things i mean that's a terrible message to send what did you think would happen what did you think should happen I thought he would be fired um, just because it's it's rare in this day and age that if you say something like that, you survive your job. Um, I I don't know. It, it's, it's tough because I do think there's part of me that goes like, it's clearly inappropriate. It's clearly wrong. But also, is it something that like, Somebody who says something, is that enough to get them fired from something that he's he's being flippant and and it's not like, man, I hate all these people. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't it doesn't feel like there's a ton of animosity. It sounded like he was trying to be funny and it was like, dude, that's not funny, and that he just had a a, a bad definition of it or a bad understanding of it. But I don't know. I guess it's I guess I'm fine with it. Hit him in the pocketbook and you know, they'll move on. What do y'all think on the chartwork.com text line? I'm going to guess that the majority of the texts are saying this was fair versus he should have been fired because people are just way too sick of cancel culture. And I think that weighs in here. That's what's tough to weigh. Um, but I'm going to guess the Tolo say this was the fair and right decision. We're just getting started here. Thursday edition of Sean and RJ, JJ Reddick. May be an NBA coach. Georgia is rejecting 
the White House, and NFL schedule leaks are starting. You can start to plan how you're going to attend Cowboys games. What we know about America's team with the schedule release tonight, next. But let's get you over to...
is unpredictable accidents happen frankel and frankel are the go-to attorneys for car and truck wrecks and dfw if you or a loved one have been in an accident contact the frankels at 214-333-3333 or go to truckwreck.com here's jonah first pitch to the upright lefty he swings and hammers one to right field and hernandez on the run he's not going to be able to get it it drops in front of him low scores from third heim up to second the throw is late he slides in safely and Jonah Heim is on board with an RBI double, and the Rangers' lead is now 3-1. to one. Sandman with the call. The Rangers beat Seattle 4-3. They take the series uh, two out of three on the road here. Afternoon baseball on DFW Sports Station 105.3 The Fan. Big hits for Jonah, Lowe, and Simeon, and Dane Dunning, who is one of the unsung heroes of this Rangers season, allowed only two runs in six innings, they get the W. Their first series win in Seattle in nearly four years. The last time the Rangers won a series in the Pacific Northwest was 2019. So you feel good about this after the offense was quieted in really the entire series, but especially in the first two games. You had Jonathan Hernandez. You had Will Smith out of the bullpen. And Corey Seager, more good news, is headed to Frisco today. To start a rehab assignment, likely to rejoin the team when they get home from their current trip. According to reports, the Mariners offense is the one with the real problem. They've scored three runs or less in seven of their last 13 games. Well, I mean, Seager could be healthy, but uh, he's got to prove he's better to, than, uh, than uh, old Duran right now. Just oh. a 305 batting average. <laughs> is Zeke Duran the hitting version of Dane Dunning? Yeah, I like these. Not the, gonna be uh, able to. Not gonna yeah. be able to put him back <laughs> on the bench. <laughs> no, that's good. That's good news to get uh, Seager back here in, a, in a, uh, you know next week, uh, hopefully next week. And then the A's, they should be pushovers. Like I said, they just lost every game by five runs in their series against the Yankee team that can't get out of their own way. We should give some props to Marcus Simeon too, mm -hmm. after destroying him last year with the start that he had. He's hitting two ninety six home runs. 30 runs batted in. The OPS is 853. So he has rebounded and responded mm -hmm. from last year. He has been a consistent force yeah. throughout the Rangers' start. He has. He really has. Um, you know, Adolis has gotten a ton of the uh, the pub, the pub, and the RBIs, uh, and he, deser he deserves it. I mean, he's had a, he's had a great start. But the year Simeon had last year, the start he had last year was as bad as it gets. Uh, for a guy who got that kind of cash. And this year, he is he's playing really solid baseball. I think it was Sandler yesterday had the note. Simeon now is the he's the first leadoff hitter in baseball to get to 30 RBIs this year. And, I mean, when you think about just the position in the lineup to get to 30 RBIs this quick, that tells you how clutch he's been with runners in scoring position. His his batting average is through the roof. I can't remember what it is. I know last week it was, it was up over 400. With guys in runner with and running runners in scoring position this year, and so, uh, but Dunning yesterday was the first time all year, and this was the fourth time Dane Dunning's gone at least four innings, two of them in relief. Yesterday was the first time all year that Dunning pitched at least four innings and gave up any runs. So he's gone. You know, you you look at that spot stepping in in place of Degrom. Mm. The last 29 innings, I believe it, or 28 innings that they've pitched, they've combined to allow three earned runs between Degrom and Dunning, and Ooh. so he's. I think he's earned every opportunity to get a shot at the rotation, even once Degrom is back. Oh, he should absolutely take over for your boy, <laughs> my boy. He absolutely should, hmm. Robbie uh, Grossman. No, not him, no. Uh, Andrew Haney. He absolutely should. We should. We should never see him on the mound again, unless, <laughs> unless, unless it's an injury. I mean, he's been. He's been fantastic and, and one of the things that I know he's not got sexy strikeout numbers Dane Dunning doesn't no um, he's a sinker ball guy that's the thing is that there's he still hasn't allowed a home run this year he's what 31 innings into the year he still hasn't allowed a home run and there's a benefit I think to 
being able to locate pitches, generate weak contact. Like, it doesn't always have to be swing and miss stuff. And I think Dane Dunning's been proof of that. All right, so I kind of hate that this is happening because, number one, it ruins the surprise. And number two, you don't know who to trust, but these NFL schedule leaks. Oh, yeah. They kind of sprinkle in here and there. And I think the league wants it to actually happen. But tonight is supposed to be the schedule release. I'm going to cite the source, so take it for what it's worth. We're going to start off with the opener from sort of friend of the show, Jordan Schultz. RJ Choppies, Detroit Lions, appear to be taken seriously by the National Football League because Schultz is reporting that it's KC Detroit. September 7th to open up. Oh, God. What? You're supposed oh. to be excited. I, it's, I mean, it, that's uh, that's terrible. That's that, terrible. Because they're not throwing us a crappy matchup to start? Like, where everyone would watch? That's the argument for the oh, opening game. No, I, I just... What's terrible? I, it's going to be a... Detroit is not good on the road. That, that's going to be a blowout. Detroit, they, they don't... They, they scored... I think double the amount of points per game at home. They were like 33 at home and like 17 on the road. Supposed to be for real. Take the next step. The next step is going to be they're going to go 9-0 and or 8-0 and at home and then, you know, play 500 ball on the road. That ain't going to be one of the 500 that they win. Isn't Cleveland supposed to be a team that's stepping up, though, and, and a lot of people think it's going to be better this year? It just feels like opening the year with, like, Cleveland versus Philadelphia. Where it's like, Why? Like, like, what, what is it? What's the sexiness of Kansas City, Detroit? But well, I do love that you know Detroit's getting this plug, this pub. Uh, you know, I, I think they're a, a, a solid team. Um, I love me some Jared Goff. I think they made some highly questionable moves this offseason. in the draft. In the, uh, in, in the well, they got killed. Their first round was awful. Apparently, everybody loved day two and three from them. Your boy. Our boy, friend of the show, Brandon Tierney. BT. Hey, BT. Tiki Barber. BT. Has the Dallas Cowboys opening up week one, Sunday night football, no surprise, at the New York football Giants. The Dallas Cowboys. Cowboys at Giants. He also has, and he's based out of New York, Jets at Giants, October 29th. So that looks to be the Cowboys opener, if you believe, Brandon Tierney. Yeah, I mean, what is this? Sunday night football against the Giants is what they've opened with. It feels like seven times oh, in the last ten time. years every, or something. Every year. It's just, it's, it is not, to me anyway, it is not the sexy matchup that the NFL schedule makers always feel like it is. At least to me. The ratings will be there. I, they oh, will yeah. be, but I mean, they're, they're there for every Cowboys game. Every yep. Cowboys game crushes it. And so, I don't know. It, it, it's, I, I mean, I guess with New York kind of back, they're, they're, they're on the rise a little bit. People feel like they're building something good, that there's excitement in New York. So you want to probably try and tap into that. But I don't know that. And I just, I'm not sure how I feel about this whole Wild West scheduling of, you know, every team is up for grabs from every network. There's a certain expectation I've gotten. It's a little bit like the jersey numbers where when you are all of a sudden start telling me like a, a receiver can wear number three, it's just going to throw me off. And so I'm not sure I love that, but uh, yeah. Giants, Cowboys. Black Friday, Amazon is paying a billion a year Whoa. for Thursday night football for the next decade. They're going to pay another 100 mil to stream the NFL's first ever Black Friday game. Jets, Dolphins, Aaron Rodgers against Miami, and then Choppy, we know that you're not happy about New Year's Eve. No, this is the, the NFL does not make many mistakes, but Burrow versus Mahomes, This is and this is... I mean, the NFL actually tweeted this one out themselves. Uh, the schedule release, obviously, tonight at 7. But on New Year's Eve, it will be Cincinnati at Kansas City. On New Year's Eve. at Why why am I going to sit there at on New Year's Eve <laughs> at 7 o'clock and watch this game? Nobody's going to watch this. You, this is where you put a bad game on. I want to see Burrow and Mahomes. Mm. Guess what? New Year's New Year's Eve, you go to dinner, you go to your party. Maybe you could see it at the party. Maybe it's on in the background at the restaurant that you're going to for dinner. Who is sitting at home watching a football game on New Year's Eve? Well, same thing for the college football playoff. Okay, I'll watch the first game that starts at four o'clock. But guess what I missed last year? The second game. Because I was at a party. I was at dinner. Yeah. 
It'll be on in my house because I think at our age, we've all realized you don't go out for New Year's. Peyton, you're still probably going to the party. So many house parties. Or your fake. Yeah. Pit, you, I walked down the street to my neighbor's house. Yeah. And it'll be on in the house. That last, no, it wasn't. That last year was they, they put. Did the, they have a New Year's Eve game on? It, they had a, it was college football playoff. Yeah. And, you know, and they'll, they, they, the, you know, cause the mom was in, the, the, the mom was in charge of the TV. And she had on, uh, like, the music screen. Well, go thing. look at the ratings for Michigan. Was it Michigan and TCU? Mm -hmm. I remember. Was it the Virgin? Uh -huh. uh, I was going to make a joke, but I'm not. Go look <laughs> at the ratings from that. I'm curious to see if it's through the roof. That'll put to test your I'm doing things theory. Plus, you're going to be watching the game and then your New Year's festivities. Some people start the night at, like, 10 again when you're our age too late. Uh, too late yeah. in the night. I'm starting that bad boy at like seven, and I'm trying to be in bed and asleep before the ball drops. Chop, do you think this is about how Nielsen this last year started counting out of home viewership? That the way they counted the Super Bowl, how they started counting parties and stuff like that, and then mm. this isn't so, about rate. But, this isn't about N Nielsen. It's like we can just own another day. We can own another day. Sure. I just mean the idea behind like a big Bengals Chiefs, like somebody will have that on at a party and you get a New Year's party and we'll be able to count that as a, a whole yeah. group of people. Yeah. So that's the NFL schedule that's coming out. Uh, and then and then and then tell us last year, college football semis or that playoff game. Were you out? Did you miss what was happening with that epic TCU Michigan game? And what was the earlier game? Was that the same day? No, that what? was the earlier game. That the, was the later game, game was Georgia Ohio State. Oh, yeah, with the kick. Yep. Yeah, and that was at like I think East, East, Eastern time. It was like the at like midnight, wasn't look, it? Look up the see if you can. So find I got it. I got it right here. Yeah. Uh, it was the TCU Michigan game outrated the Georgia Ohio State. Okay, but uh, were they both high, sky high? Uh, what do you consider high? I guess let's see, let's see. It was uh, it was a ten and a nine point eight. So 21 million and 22 million viewers, uh, which is, I mean, that, that, those are good numbers. Yeah. Those are, those are not bad at all. So that's the NFL. And then tonight you'll get the entire thing. You get the full thing. Uh, DallasCowboys.com, always very creative with their release, but it sounds like it's at New York and the Giants Sunday night football to go ahead and open up. So Bobby, you'll get to be in the Big Apple. You get to go to travel to New York Woo! and find another pizza place that no one else in the city goes to. Yeah, I'll we'll <laughs> probably be landing back here at 3.30 in the morning to turn right around. We are going to tell you about Johns of Bleecker. Oh, I got I got five. You can go we to. are going to tell you about, uh, was it Lombardo's or whatever? We're going to tell you about all these places. To far, I go to Brooklyn, go to Queens. And you are going to sit there and or I, you should. You need to go to Jersey about good pizza. Go to Jersey. It's way better than New York pizza. Blows it out of the water. That's where I went. He yeah. was there. He I did. Was he met a Tolo. To Tolo oh, yeah, G yeah, yeah. from Jersey. That's right. Go to Pizza Land. Go to Pizza Land. Is that the Sopranos one? Yeah. Is that a real place? Uh-huh. Absolutely. A little shack. You can't, all right. you can't even sit there. Bono's hiccups. I cannot believe this story. How, what's the longest period of time you've ever had hiccups? And what's the rule on nicknames? Can you ever nickname yourself? Does it have to come from somebody else? And what happens if you get stuck with a terrible one? That's all next right here. 6 a.m. Club shout out Thursday edition with Sean, RJ, and Bobby back with us on the fan. But let's get you over to the all new Platinum Ford location.
Court right, Brunson, off high screen, gate three, nails it! Gutsy, what a shot! Brunson with 35. That was the call on Knicks Radio. Jalen Brunson helps keep New York alive. They beat the Miami Heat at the Garden, so now Miami leads three games to two. We'll get into the Paul Pierce-Anthony Davis comparisons after AD left in a wheelchair, apparently, and the Lakers lost to Golden State. So both teams staying alive last night. Good morning, Metroplex. Looks like a little bit of a drizzly Thursday morning uh, here to start off. Sean, RJ, Bobby Bell is back in studio from vacation. We got Peyton and Ryan in the back. Speaking of the NBA... J.J. Redick interviewing for the Raptors opening once they uh, got rid of Nick Nurse. So it would be further proof that coaching outside the NFL is a complete waste of time. Doesn't matter. He has never coached before. On any level. I mean, he may have coached at the youth level. I think he has an AAU team. The high school. Never coached in college. Never coached in the NBA. Not an assistant. Nothing. He's like Jeff Saturday. You know, he's like Jeff, the difference is Jeff Saturday was an interim joke. They did it just to throw an interim in there. Um, you know, but like this is the NBA telling you that that coach of your qualifications like don't as matter as much. They're telling you the X's and O's are overrated. Yep. Uh, call some timeouts, maybe make a half a dozen out of out of bounds plays for end of game situations, and keep the superstars happy, and let the stars do the rest, and, and keep them happy. Make a few good points in the booth, and all of a sudden, man, you are on the short list for an NBA job. So how many of these have we had and do we have? So Steve Kerr has been a hit. He went straight from analyst work. Yeah. He didn't do any coaching. Now he walked into a great situation, which is why every other month you see Mark Jackson trending on social media as people try to fight over how much credit Mark Jackson should get for the Warriors with the birth of the Splash Brothers. Nash was a fail. Uh, Jason Kidd went to be an assistant. No one's dying. Yeah. Thank you, J. Kidd. Uh, so now you have another possible instance of J.J. Redick. And Basic, I can hear his rant on this right now. And it speaks to your point of coaching doesn't matter. Just keep Luka happy. Yeah. Keep Kyrie happy. Placate them. Try not to butcher end of games. And so it is. You're hired. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you've got, you, you treat your star in a certain way. Keep them happy. But also... Try to make the star or the rest of the team mesh together, and you know you'll bring them all together, and, and see what you can do. And it's it's about managing personalities. What's the difference between all those guys you just named, though? They were all point guards. Like they ran offenses. They mm. they had to play coach. Like Redick was a shooting guard, and at times not a great defender. And so it's like I don't know. It's oh, he went to Duke. He's smart. Yeah. Well, there's that. He he played for Player Coach K. And so there's that, but it's just, it's he's made by the way, an incredible transformation on likability. Oh what, yeah. Oh, I mean, I used to love going to game Terps games before they rejected my college application. Um, but Duke, I mean, JJ Redick was arguably the most hated figure that any team in my home state went up against. I mean, despised. He was Grayson yeah. Allen. He was wor He might've been worse. Like, the top two most hated Duke players. Is it Leitner and Reddick? Is Leit Leitner's the one seed, Leitner's amazing one 30 seed. for 30. Yeah. And is Reddick the two? Yeah, Reddick's up there. He's probably the he's probably the second most hated. Wojo. Uh, yeah, Wojo. We we he was a little white diver guy. Yeah. Just dive on the floor. Like Annoying we, basketball player. Yeah. Hated Wo. Hey, oh, I'll tell you. Collins. Oh, I couldn't stand him. <laughs> Could not stand him. Was that Doug's kid? Yeah. Yeah. Chris Collins couldn't stand him at all. Uh, I didn't like Shane Battier. <laughs> Who's your daddy, Battier? God, losers. I'm trying to think who. Else. There's a long Allen, list. Grayson, Grayson Allen, Allen Battier, yeah, Shavlik Randolph. Yeah, the oh. the difference is that you know Reddick played. Some and, people hated Grant Hill because he wasn't like your inner city kid. He's like oh. Jalen Rose felt the same way, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the difference I think with Allen and Reddick is that. You know, Redick was still in that era of Duke players where, like, they were just off the... They were, like, a few years after the Carwell, Battier, Langdon. They had that era of run where they were just so dominant, and he continued it. And I think college basketball was bigger then, 20 years ago, than it is. Than it, is than it was a couple years ago when Grayson Allen played, but Grayson Allen is clearly one of the most hated. But we like J.J. now? I think we do. 
I'm cool with him. I, I, I certainly think he's credible. I think he's good on TV. When he speaks on TV, I definitely listen. He kind of puts – he's likable because he's put Stephen A. and them in their yeah, place. Yeah, he does. Because he, he can always drop the, you never played card. Boy, when, when he said that, that is like, first of all, that's a guy with FU money. Like, to, to go after Stephen A. on, on ESPN is like, right, he runs the network. Yeah. And to go after Stephen A. on ESPN, you know, you, you, you've got some skins. All right, so speaking of likability, Carl Anthony Towns kind of has like a little bit of a wuss, diva, soft mantra surrounding him but rj choppy fell in love when carl anthony towns was on the podcast p show this is what paul george and the subject of nicknames came up while they were talking about the joker uh how difficult it is to defend the joker and just talk about his talent level and joker. what he's joker. capable that's of because that's a good name he, he dominates out there. he's so good it, it's crazy got joker i got cat cat <laughs> How, when, when, okay, so was that when they, I didn't think that's funny. <laughs> he got all y'all. I got, I got cat. cat. <laughs> when did you get that? When, was it in the league? Is that the first no, time it was you on heard November cat? 15, 1995 at 8.30 p.m. at John F. Kennedy Hospital. I know Carl Anthony. walked in that motherfucker and said, Carl Anthony Town. She didn't realize I would follow me for a long time. <laughs> in your cat. But and, and when, when was the getting... first time, like, people like, called me cat? You went by cat. <laughs> college because i was playing for the wildcats it was convenient oh okay oh my goodness. okay <laughs> the big cat use the big cat there <laughs> i'm trying to keep a setup. straight face <laughs> <laughs> being <f> professionals <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it was college and uh <laughs> okay. they call me wild and they call me cat because it was convenient for the wildcat the wildcats they kentucky made, wildcats yeah, yeah. then i came you guys. to minnesota and they decided to call me big purr what the f is that big purr <laughs> big purr oh uh, i like big purr better no, don't do that. <laughs> no you <laughs> We can like change that. it. We got Big Purr versus Jokic. Man, he did get the he did kind of kind of screw it. I mean, when you when your nickname is just your initials, I think it's a good nickname. I don't think it's bad. And He's I think it was toilet paper. And I think it was perfect for Minnesota. Uh, I would think it was perfect. You go to the Wolves, Big Cat. The what? Those are dogs. Oh yeah. <laughs> Wasn't he kind of talking about Minnesota? It was he the did. opposite. So it's the opposite. I guess that doesn't work in his favor, but. K-A-T? K-A-T. I don't think K-A-T. I don't think Cat's bad, but, like, it's not Joker. Like, Joker's a good nickname. Yeah, but how about Big Purr? That's like Big Worm. Big Perm. Big, big Perm <laughs> Friday. I, every time Friday's on, I stop on it. I did it last weekend. I love it so much. But Big Purr? Big Purr. But K-A-T. So here's what I want to know from the Tolos. Give me the nickname you got stuck with. And isn't that the rule? You can't nickname yourself. Hey, what you know about the Hot Boys? No one ever. Can't. Man, don't get me started. <laughs> so Bobby was telling me. He wanted me to pull that. Don't get me started on the hot noise. Good <laughs> Lord. The hot noise. You can't nickname yourself. No one ever no. goes, hey, what's your name? And then, chop. Yeah. You got to say RJ or Ralph James. And then the people have to give you the nickname. Yeah. So there were, we met this dude. We met this dude from North Carolina on the, on the trip. And he said, uh, he came up to us and he just said, hi whatever he was he was just something happened he started talking to us and he was an older dude and uh we're like what's your name and he goes it's, he said his name was like bob or something like that because but people call me call me cornbread and i'm like what a douchebag what a moron come on dude. people nobody, call me cornbread nobody calls you cornbread did you call him cornbread at all the rest of the trip I, we never saw him again <laughs> at the rest of the trip like we, we were like okay man we're gonna go get a drink yeah uh, but yeah people call me cornbread no they don't no nobody calls you cornbread I, I just think it has to be given to you. And what I would like to know from the Tolos is, what's the nickname you got stuck with that you hate? Like, how did you get it? What's the nickname at 877-881-1053? I feel like you don't have one. Peyton, you don't have one. Well, I mean, you guys have said Pepe. P. Russ in high well, school. P. Russ? Yeah, P. Russ. Chop and I changed to P. Russy. Yeah. P. Rusty. P. Rusty. Okay. Did you name? Did you come up with P. Russ? No. Freshman year of high school, the baseball team, we all just came up with nicknames for everyone, and that was mine. Okay. Just short and simple. Yeah. But it I, stuck around. I I, I kind of create the nicknames around here a lot of times. I I, okay. I did Pepe. Pe. I got Roberto. Right, right. But you didn't have right, right. I got to come up with some more original for the back room. Um, did you have one? Yeah, as a kid, I did. I'm not gonna say what it was, but it, I hated it. But uh, no, I get. I'll just I text got, your as wife. an adult, she doesn't know it. 
Uh, she doesn't know it? No. As an adult, uh, people would always say Bobo, but I mean, I feel like that's... Bobo. Uh, I got Shan, which I Shan. despise. It's just the way to pronounce your name. No, in college, it was already a Sean, so then they saw mine, they're like, you're Shan. Can't have two Sean's. Shan and RJ and Sean. <laughs> or the Sheriff. Well, the Sheriff. The, the Sheriff, I mean, I would like that to stay. I mean, <laughs> I, I would prefer that, Yeah. but I'm not going to go around and be like, I'm the Sheriff. Well. Like... Go back to DC Country Radio. A lot of times it. it just comes the last name. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. It's like easy. Choppy. It's easy. You're it's Choppy. Easy. Chop. But it gets weird when my kids get called that and I turn around. Yeah. And it's like, wait a second. I haven't lost this name yet. I'm still, I'm not dead. I'm like Canelo. I'm still, when, when Javante Davis said he's the face of boxing, Canelo's like, I ain't retired yet, man. All right. Yeah, I'm still I'm still alive, guys. All right, give me give give me the nicknames y'all got stuck with. Carl Anthony Towns not happy with his at 877-881-1053. Ones that you can also read. Man. 972, that's tough. Milkshake in college cuz I loved milkshakes. Okay, milkshake? Yeah, but you could just get called what you eat or so I could see that getting annoying really fast. Yeah. Uh somebody got called Snip because they had his brother's brother gave it to him because he had small nipples. Snip. Oh, I thought it was because he got <laughs> circumcised or something. Yeah, I don't know. Snip. That sounds kind of cool. Other nicknames at the station. You go Cheech. Wooly Bully. Wooly Bully. Bassett doesn't really have one. General. General. Corey doesn't have one. Hagee. Hagee. Hagee's good. Hagee's good. Mikey uh, B. Mikey Bass. Yeah, no, we don't have one. Basky. Basky, Basky, that's okay. Um, any uh, KG, go with the shorter initials. CA. Yeah. CA. See, that's in the cat category, though, right? Reg. I'm sure Broadus had it. Broadus, like, played football at the college. He had to get called something. Yeah, back up. Just, oh. Whoa. <laughs> oh my. Whoa. Back up, Broadus. <laughs> BB, that's where BB oh. came from. No. Uh, yeah, Triple B. Let's call him that. Back up, Triple Brian Broadus. There you go. Uh, so... Uh, there you go. There's Car Anthony Towns saying he got stuck and he's jealous of the Joker being uh, the coolest nickname in the NBA. And then coolest nickname, the great one, Air Jordan, MJ. Air, Air Jordan. Magic. I always Magic. thought it was perfect, the fact that Andre Karolinko wore 47. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, was, that, 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 that's, that was tremendous. The playmaker. The that's playmaker's amazing. The mm -hmm. freak. Yeah, yeah Javon Greek, Curse. Greek Freak. Not, um, you know. <laughs> Easy. Well, Greek Freak. That one's really good. That's yeah. right. All right, so there it is. Uh, the origin of nicknames and if they screw you or not. Rangers win. Stars back in action tonight. What happens to the Game 5 winner in these series? We got the Bob Huggins punishment, and we'll tell you how you can start your weekend partying with Bobby and Corey Majors, plus another Rangers ticket giveaway to get you closer to the weekend with Sean and RJ next. But let's get you.
This is Sean and RJ on 105.3 The Fan. 3-2. Swings here and hammers on the left field. Kelnick back, track, turns, looks. That ball out of here. Long gone beyond the Rangers' bullpen. That was a blast from Marcus, and the Rangers are on the board. A leadoff home run here in the top of the third inning, and we're tied at one. Rangers win their series in Seattle. Very, very impressive because you were going up against fantastic pitching and you are able to grind out two of these wins even when the offense wasn't dominating like they've been all season long. Good morning, Metroplex. This is your home for Rangers baseball. In case you did not know, it's Sean RJ and the return of Bobby Bell. Let's get to some Sandler stats for the first place team in the American League West. Marcus Simeon has now reached in 17 straight road games. I don't feel pressure. And 23 of his last 24 games overall. Dane Dunning's ERA is fourth best in baseball, period. Not the American League, baseball, with pitchers that have 30 innings of work or more. 172. That's freaking impressive. Jonah Heim, who had a big hit. Yeah, he extended his hitting streak to a career best nine straight games. Nathaniel Lowe had a big hit. Extended his hitting streak to nine straight games. An on-base streak to 14 straight games. The Texas Rangers are for real. Yeah, I mean, look, they have played tremendous through, and you don't make any judgments on baseball teams until 30 games are have hit, and they've hit 30 games. They're, what, 36 now. Uh, this is this is, a, this is a pretty good team. Uh, we have, I have no idea if they're going to hold off Houston, right? We don't know that. Houston could wind up easily winning 96 games this year. I could easily see that. Um, they're just, they're, they're too good to be middling around the 500 mark. Bruce Bochy says it was huge. Was it a statement series on the road, Boach? Another one run game. They played well in, uh, you know, it's two uh, games we, we uh, won here, tight ball games against the club. It has a very good bullpen. And uh, so that's it's good for these guys. Uh, you know, the more uh, games like this, the better they're going to get playing in these uh, tight ball games. And But this is a good one to get. It's, you know, it, it was for the series uh, heading to Oakland on a good note. Uh, as they say, happy flight. Happy yeah. flight. And look, you're doing it against a team that is seven and three in their last ten before taking on crappy Oakland, the worst run differential in the sport. 
They're awful with eight wins on the season. You know, they are they are bad, bad. I mean, they get beat by they 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 lost the last series they were in every game by five runs. Uh, that that that's awful. Uh, so the Rangers, it would be it would be disappointing. It would be a, a a very big disappointment if the Rangers don't go in there and dominate that series. A, a, a huge disappointment. But the Rangers have given you no inclination at all this year that they're going to, I mean, outside of the Cincinnati series, which was a complete and total blip, mm-hmm. this, you losing this series to the A's would be worse than that Cincinnati. Give me the average attendance for Oakland, Bobby. Yes. Uh, Listed. 6,000. 10. And that's probably, that's because the first, or the opener skewed it. The rest of these, I've seen the amount of games I've seen that the A's play where they're having 2,800, 3,400 fans. Well, they had a couple of rally days, too, yeah, where it was like, show up at the ballpark, show yeah. them we love the A's. Awful. All right, NBA action. And so tonight, that's going to be the same start time as the Stars, which we'll get into in just a second. Game five, what happens to the winner of that series? Game five coming up, but tonight also to be an 840 first pitch right here on DFW Sports Station. NBA action, the champs stay alive. The defending champions down three games to one come away with a victory. The clock will run out. The Warriors win 121 to 106. You just knew the Lakers are not going to win this game, which led to Mike Greenberg's suggestion that they don't even play LeBron or Anthony Davis. LeBron kind of got banged up at the end, and Anthony Davis supposedly definitely did. Took a shot to the head from Kevon Looney. He Mm -hmm. never returned. The Mm -hmm. Lakers are trying to make a desperate run to catch back up, close out the series, and Chris Haynes reports that Anthony Davis, Paul Pierce is trending this morning, and so is wheelchair after apparently AD got put in the four wheels to get evaluated. Yeah, didn't Dwayne Wade get in a wheelchair for a separated shoulder? Yep. Yeah, that was another one. Uh, this is, uh, look, the we've seen concu- guys get concussions, and we're like, well, oh, that didn't look like that bad of a hit. You know, how did he get that concussion? You know, so I I, I can understand that from, from that standpoint. It's just when you add in all the factors of Anthony Davis history, same thing with, uh, you know, with like Draymond and to get the benefit of the doubt on a dirty play. Like Anthony Davis isn't going to ever get the toughest benefit of the doubt. You, you you said you felt sorry for him last week. Yeah, I, I reverse course on that now. I no longer <laughs> feel sorry for him. Like, I, I don't know. Like, I mean, he got hit in the, the temple. I, does it trigger some sort of a migraine? Like, I have no... Ex- explanation for how he would miss the rest of the game with that. Is but. there any other superstar star you could put in AD's category that deals with these injury criticisms? Do you Zion. have to go... Who? Zion. Zion. Simmons. Yep. Those are the two that come to mind. I, yeah, Simmons is like... I mean, how much of that is mental, is health. mental health? I mean, Kawhi's always hurt. Kawhi's always hurt. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's a handful of guys, but, it, you know, does Kawhi play through more than it is like, than it is? like, like Kawhi had that meniscus. I just can't stand watching Anthony Davis's reactions. It's like watching frozen syrup with the way he moves. I hate his, I hate the way he even walks and moves. It's just like this. It's just, it's so slow and drawn out and just. It's painful to watch him, and I just want him to go out and just crush yeah. and dominate every single game versus these even odd stats. I saw his eyebrows, even if, even if, even if that is his nickname. You made a plural. He doesn't Stop have right eyebrows. Yeah, I just don't like it. I mean, I just, I just shave that. It's annoying. Meanwhile, Steve Kerr was, like, trying to work the refs, saying that the Lakers are becoming experts at flopping a little gamesmanship in the series. LeBron responded. I just know that we, uh, uh, you know, our coaching staff and us players, we don't, we don't work on flopping. That's not even a part of our game. Our our game is to attack, attack the paint. Um, we don't mind physical contact. We actually like the contact, um, and we don't shy away from it. So, we're just not a, a, a team that um, you know goes out there looking for 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 flopping opportunities. That's just not us. It's never been. It's actually never been in any team that I've played on in my 20 years where we've been a flopping team. Um, it is what it is. They have the right to say what they want to say, or you know. But the game is always one in between the four lines, and you know we better, uh, we got to be better on Friday. 
Is it four lines or one big line in a in a square in a rectangle? <laughs> Is, yeah, it a, just, I'm sure, I'm sure. Is, is it like a squared circle? Right. You know, is, is it one big rectangle line or is it four separate lines? I don't know. It's an interesting question. Who thinks the Warriors are going to win this series? I uh, I don't think the Lakers are going to lose another series this year. Woo! You think they win the finals? Yeah. Wow. Uh, okay. I, I I knew that when Dylan Brooks opened his yap. <laughs> When Dylan Brooks said that. And you that. started rooting for him, so you're Lakers. Oh, yeah, my Lakers right now. Right? They're my Lakers right now. Um, All it, right, who's got the better chance? The 3-2 three, two, three, two teams. Put them in order. Lakers to win their series. Lakers, Knicks won last night. So Miami. Suns. Miami is up 3-2. Yes. So you, you're asking the teams up 3-2? Either way you want to do it. Which team down 3-2? has the best chance to win their series. Golden State. I'm sorry. I messed up the phrasing yeah. of it. Golden State. Golden State's one. Yeah. Okay. Not Phoenix? No. Yeah. I mean, I what think What about there's... Boston? It's either Boston or the Warriors. I think it's the Warriors. Then probably... Yeah, like, I have fun. more faith in the Lakers winning game six in L.A. than Philly closing it out in Philly. Unless something's really broken in mm -hmm. Boston, people are trying to figure out what's going on with Tatum and yeah. Jalen Brown. The Knicks are the are the last. Yes, Do we all agree on that yes. one. Yes, yeah, the Knicks are last. Uh, oh, oh, which is crazy because you're going up against the eight seed, right? And, and you know you you have home you have home court. You know you win the, and so now so do the Warriors. Um, in fact, wait a second, all these teams down three two have home court. Do they? Except for no, except for, except for Phoenix. Yeah, all except the rest of them. You know, Golden State's got home court. Knicks, Boston does. Interesting. 877-881-1053 is the truckwreck.com text line tonight. Game five. Pepe, are you wearing the chain? Are you checking out ticket prices? Have you hit up Jane Slater again? I have not. I think uh, maybe I should hit her up after my nap or something because that's when uh, the, the tickets came in last time. You know, I, I got till 630. So, uh, but no. I'll we be got till nine. That's right. But I'll be wearing the jersey tonight. You know, got to. It's 2-2 two, 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 two series game and um, it's a big one. Got to have it. What happens? Game five winner. Did you have that stat the other day? Uh, well, the other the other day was um, it was uh, if you if you win if you go up three games to one you have a ninety point four chance of winning the series. Ooh. So that was that was that was how big that game was for the stars because if they went down three games to one they only had a, they had less than a ten percent chance of winning the series. Yesterday, Craig Ludwig was fantastic. The hockey hawk Gavin Spittle was in studio. So did you watch the stars? When you were off, I think it was your first day of vacation. Very, like, casually. Like, I had it on, and it was in the background, and I, I saw a few moments, but not, like, super in-depth. Meanwhile, yesterday, Edmonton blew out Vegas to tie that series at two apiece, and the Maple Leafs stayed alive. Marner centering in front. It comes back to the blue line. Shot from the point. Scores! Holy mackerel! Leafs have gained a two-goal lead. Mitch Marner deflecting it. And the Leafs take a 2-0 lead on a scrambly play in the Florida zone. There's Toronto avoiding a sweep. Yeah, so they get uh, they get the win in game four. So they head back to Toronto uh, down three games to one. There have been four times in the N history of the NHL that a team has come from 3-0 down. Uh, it's happened twice in the last 14 years, though. So that's what Toronto is going to have kind of hang their hat on here and then uh in the nightcap edmonton ties the series up with vegas what a series this is going to be uh there's tied at 2-2 now after edmonton goes up four and wins this one four to one all right those are your headlines on a thursday as we try to get you to the weekend as quickly as possible and bobby you got to hang out with Corey Majors tomorrow with the Tolos. Yep, we're going to be out in McKinney. Jake's game day, 5 to 8 p.m., uh, 4150 El Dorado Parkway. And they are donating 20% of dinner sales to the Allen cause. So a great cause and a great time. And we'll be hanging out and drinking with the Tolos. You going to cut loose? Yes. Did I've already got a designated driver. Oh. All right. Look at that. And we know Corey Majors goes hard yeah, as well. He and does go hard. that's awesome by Jake's to go ahead and donate 20% to what happened in Allen. These are your headlines. On a Thursday, we have a Rangers ticket giveaway coming up.
Four tickets for you turning it on, leaving it on DFW Sports Station, and the return of life hacks. How to screenshot Snapchats, cheat girl scout cookies, and what to do with all those business cards you have. Life hacks with Roberto and a Rangers ticket giveaway. Next. But let's get you over to.
San Francisco lost, something RJ Chaffee always worries about teams doing. It's Sean and RJ along with our Cowboys insider Bobby Belt back with us here on your home of America's team. I heard G-Bag finally gave you a little bit of a break. They did. Yeah, I've been off of uh, G-Bag for like two weeks now, something okay. like that. So they, they said, just get a recharge after the draft and we'll circle back around OTAs. Okay. So you and Broadus are good. This wasn't a an executive decision from Broadus because you all will have some tiffs here and there. No, I mean, when he called to tell, Broadus is the one that called to tell me like, hey, we're going to give you a little break for a little bit. When he called to tell me, he had said, uh, I answered the phone, went, hello. And he goes, hey, you suck at your job. So we're not going to use you for a little bit. And I was like, okay. He's like, no, we're just going to give you a break. Huh. I was like, oh, okay, thanks. Okay, nice. Uh, Choppy, yesterday we talked about Tampa Bay. According to Jeremy Fowler, being interested in Zeke Elliott. As a backup. Well, their running back coach, Skip Pete, came out and said, to me, sounded a little harsh. It's it's true, but he said Zeke has to see that he's going to play a lesser role. This is from the Tampa Bay Times. I think that's part of the reason he's sitting out there. If you're going to play, I mean, you're going to be the second and third guy. That's kind of what the price is. So that's something that a person has to be able to see that that is what's going on. He's still a good quality running back, particularly in short and goal line situations. But that's Skip Pete with like a reality check for Zeke. You're back up. Woo. Look, Zeke could still carve out a really nice second half of his career as a short yardage touchdown machine. Yeah, I thought Jane hit the nail on the head last week with a Mark Ingram comparison. If I was a team, like Zeke has value. Like if I was, if I have the ball inside the three yard line, Right? Yeah. I could easily see myself, instead of using my running back, bring Zeke in, just batter batter that thing into the end zone. Like I, I could easily see especially if I have a if I have a smaller shift to your back, you know, line it up, power you want to do some power Dan Campbell football, whatever, that's fine. You know, Zeke could carve out a a role. But his days as a even a ten carry a game back, I think, are Ooh. Let's just say 12 to 15. That, those are done. But I think what he's doing is smart. You wait out an injury now, right? Isn't that what he's doing? Isn't yeah. that what you do? I mean, I, yeah, that's what you you hope would happen. What's going to happen with Austin Eckler when Kellen Moore in L.A.? Yeah, and at the running – man, I don't know. At the running back position, too, it's you, – you do sustain higher injuries. I feel like guys get banged up more frequently, but – Man, waiting it out hasn't always worked. You remember Dez tried to wait out an injury. Jadavion Clowney has tried that a couple times. Hasn't always worked out. And so you you hope, but I mean, I yeah. think realistically he is what do you I think Skip Pete's just being honest about where he's at in his career. Yeah, the, the issue though, like for that's not, not the issue, but like the thing with, with Zeke with the injury is you know, he's a running back. Like he's gonna somebody's gonna get hurt. Right. You know, yeah. you, you could go several weeks and not have a major wide receiver injury. There's there's going to be a wide receiver or a back. I'm sorry, a, a running back or a second string running back uh, who's going to really have a major injury, even in camp. Forget forget about the uh, preseason games. All right, Bobby, just sit back, relax, and be proud because RJ Choppy has a topic and a criticism right for you directed at the Ravens' new very very rich quarterback, Lamar Jackson, is skipping voluntary workouts. He is not in attendance. By the way, I asked Choppy your Lamar 6,000 versus you shooting an 80 in golf question. He had no hesitation. Neither going to happen, but Lamar throwing for 6K is more likely. Yeah. But again, it, it might take him two years to throw for 6,000 yards. Yeah. But it will take you 20 to break 80. Um, Lamar is not in attendance for Ravens Voluntary Football School. Baltimore, which is installing a new offense, has its first OTA in, checking my notes here, 11 days. 11 days. We are on uh, May 11th. Uh, so he signed that five-year, 260, 52 a season. Now they're saying 60% of the veterans aren't there, but 60% of the veterans aren't quarterbacks. Quarterbacks have to be at voluntary OTAs. I'm sorry. Like, now, if you're Aaron Rodgers or Tom Brady or some legend and you're... Mm. Rodgers has to be there for this one. This year he does. But if you've been with the team forever and it's the same all offense, like Tom Brady in 2016 didn't really need to be at Patriot OTAs. Does Dak have to be? 
there? Yes, because they're installing a new offense. Yes. Ravens are installing a new offense. If this was the same old Jason Garrett offense and Dak skipped football school, all right, I'll let it, I'll let it slide. So if it was the same Ravens offense, but Lamar just got his new money, what would you say? Um, doesn't have to it, be. He doesn't have to be. It's a bad look if he's not. I think it's a bad. I think I think no matter what, even for Brady, in 2016, it was a bad look not to be there. It doesn't. It, it can only. It can only hurt you by not going. It can't really help you. It's not, it only, it, your PR is is a net zero if you go, but if you don't go, it's like someone's going to complain about that. This 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 is a, this is a terrible look on Lamar's part. Like this in, in an off season of missteps on his part. This is an awful look for Lamar Jackson. And right. I like Lamar. Get on but the fan this is, cam. Give me a hug. Get oh, on. thank you, Bobby's sir. Bobby's hugging. This is an awful look for Lamar. Bobby's hugging Choppy on Twitch and YouTube. Go ahead. 100% right. Other than the thing about the uh, shooting 80 that you said at the beginning of yeah. the, the thing. But other than that, 100% right. He's got to be. The, it, it is. It's a new offense. The The whole thing is supposed to be tailored to him. Not just a new offense. There are new weapons that they're trying to integrate get in all the work you can and this makes me wonder more and question if he bailed on them at the end of last year if he bailed yeah. now i get it look darren hambrick coined the phrase what do voluntary mean all right i get it <laughs> who did darren, darren hambrick. hambrick uh who's <laughs> that former cowboys linebacker <laughs> what do voluntary mean when he didn't show up for uh for otas for voluntary workouts i get it it's voluntary but you are the quarterback you just got this shiny new deal, new offense. Like nothing, nothing good came from him not showing up. Meanwhile, Henry Ruggs, yesterday the legal news came out. He's going to be sentenced. He's going to spend three to ten years in prison after a judge accepted his plea deal. It's a wide range, uh, three to ten, after the accident that happened. One felony count of a DUI resulting in death. One misdemeanor count of vehicular manslaughter. Uh, so three to ten for Henry Ruggs. Yeah, I mean, just a, a an awful story, a tragic story still. Um, and glad that it's it's put behind everybody at this point and there's some sort of legal resolution to it. But still, just one of the more tragic stories in the NFL over the last couple of years. Five total charges. Drunkenly slammed his Corvette into the back of... Tina Tinter's RAV4 killing her and her dog. And the allegations were he was traveling 156 at Gosh, the time. So awful. With a BAC of 0.161. So that's double. That's twice the legal limit. Man, this is this this is like it's a tragic story all around. You said it like obviously somebody that paid the ultimate price and 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 her dog as well. Uh and then this is a guy who had a who had a really nice start to his career. I mean, he had five hundred yards receiving and not even half the games of the season. Like he was on his way to a thousand yard season, and, and now I, I assume, like even when he even when he's if let's say he's out in three years, I assume his career's over. Mm. I mean, I thought like Vic's career to, was over. I thought Plexico Burris's career was over. So I guess I can't say no. I don't think he'll play again. But he's twenty four. He's young. He'll be twenty seven. He go to the XFL. Was he the first receiver in that class taken? Yes, yes. He was the first one. So what, 7th or 8th overall, something like that? No, he went uh, 12th, I think it was. Because there was a huge run on receivers then. Uh, so, that is the punishment legally for Henry Ruggs. We got Bobby back, so everyone's in a good mood. I'm in a good mood right now, so I want to hook up the Tolos earlier than usual today. <laughs> All right, Tolos, that's right. Call him number 10 right now at 877-881-1053. Wins a four-pack of tickets to see your Texas Rangers take on the Colorado Rockies on Friday, May 19th. And you'll want to get there early, Tolos, because the first 15,000 fans in the gate will also receive a Corey Seager City Connect bobblehead presented by Globe Life. Get your tickets now at rangers.com slash tickets or by being the 10th caller at 877-881-1053. By the way, how about the Georgia Bulldogs? I didn't know if I totally believed this story, and then I saw some confirmation. Georgia, after winning the national championship over TCU, is not going to the White House. No, they're not. And they didn't go last year, uh, but that was still pandemic-related. They've uh, won back-to-back? Uh-huh. Okay. They won back-to-back. Um, so, like, and previous teams have declined because they may not have cared for the president, and that may, and maybe that's the case here. I, I don't know. But... In the past, the players were outspoken about not wanting to go during certain administrations. 
And I just wonder if, like, going to the White House has, like, lost its luster. Clearly. I mean, to me, like... Clearly it has. If if, if the president, any president calls me up and says, what are you doing a certain day? I'd like come and visit the White House. I'll be like, I'm doing nothing. <laughs> I have no plans that day. Uh, it's just like, if if my buddy who, who can get me on Augusta calls me and says, uh, we're playing the Monday after the Super Bowl and the Cowboys are in the Super Bowl, I'm playing Augusta. I'm going. I'm going. Yeah, did this really start piling up with Trump? Uh, with, with, you know, some of the, you know, shut up and dribble stuff or Kaepernick and all that stuff. I know shut up and dribble wasn't him, but during that whole... That era, yeah. That era, that presidency, to feel like it really came to a head with him. So this is Georgia balancing it out a little bit and being like, no, we're rejecting Biden. Yeah, I mean, there's always been... It feels like all the way back to maybe Clinton, maybe a little earlier than that. It's always felt like there was at least somebody who didn't go. Yeah. Like, like it, it seems like every presidency had a, oh, this person didn't go to the White House. They're protesting or something like that. And so uh, I guess it's not unusual in that sense. But I also could see it being a thing where some teams just say it's not profitable to us and our branding or our image or whatever to go there at all. Like, let's, it's just going to create controversy. It's a nice sentiment. Great that they want to. I'm with Chop. I, I don't care who it is. It, if the president invites me to come out there, regardless of who it was, going back through Biden, Trump, Obama, Bush, like go back through the list, I'll go and I'll shake their hand and I'll meet them. So I went back and looked. So we had situations back in, um, you know, where, where teams did not get invited because of uh, scandals that were currently going on. So like the Broncos oh. didn't go in the Clinton White House or the, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers didn't go because... Oh, the Broncos didn't have... The Clinton scandal, not the Broncos scandal. Right. No, uh, not their salary cap cheating. The Buccaneers <laughs> did not go... Um, the Buccaneers did not go in 2003 because we had just launched or we were in the middle of the war uh, in Afghanistan. Uh, and then you've had situations where, like, uh, then you get into individual players. Like James Harrison... Uh, didn't go to the Bush White House or Matt Burke didn't go to the Obama White House when the Ravens won. Yeah. Uh, and then you had a bunch of pe a bunch of the uh, uh, then it really kicked in during Trump. And then it's kind of continued now. I've become numb to it now. It just happens so often where I'm like, OK, yeah, I used to be like, oh, that's very disrespectful. But because of my hate now for all politicians, it's hard for me to sit here and criticize and crush these teams. Uh, especially after uh, the Allen incident that we talked about a little bit here on the show. So, but Kansas City's accepting. That came out. The Chiefs are going to go on June 5th. All right. Congrats to the Tolo who won the Rangers four pack. We're going to send you to see the first place team in Arlington tomorrow. Your final chance to win it on your home for Rangers baseball. Bobby's back. It's a Thursday. So, that means the return of Life Hacks. No way. I'm getting hacked. Dirty hackers right there. So these are unethical life hacks, you guys. These oh, are these, these are things we're telling you are available for you to do that you shouldn't do. You should not do these things, especially you kids who are sitting in the car. And also, I want to be clear. Some of these have been suggested by people. And generally, a, an unethical individual might not be the brightest bulb. And uh, they suggest things sometimes, and you guys come in on the truckwreck.com fan text and say, uh, that actually wouldn't work because of this. So just keep that in mind. Some of these may not be foolproof, and we're going to count on you to, to bet them. Uh, first one, and this, this doesn't have a hack. It's just a statement more than anything. Most Girl Scouts can't tell if cash is counterfeit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. And as somebody, wow. that, yeah, most people can't tell. Have you ever thought about that? Like, man, I should just go through a week with a thousand dollars in counterfeit cash and I'll get away with it. If Odyssey wanted to pay me in cash and gave me counterfeit bills, I probably would never notice. There is a watermark that you should be able to see on the bill if you hold it to the right light. I see people do that. I don't know yeah. what they're looking for. So is, I don't know what I'd be looking counterfeit for. Counterfeit cash still like a big thing. I, I, you That's don't see any questions. counterfeit cash stories anymore. Girl Scouts don't realize. No. And as somebody added, a special place in hell, do it. Yeah. As, as somebody I, added, you can probably outrun them too, with even with your arms full of cookies. So wow. good. <laughs> so Girl Scouts can't uh, spot counterfeit cash. Who would you uh, rip off of you? To me, again, my number one enemy right now is uh, Dallas Water and Utility. If I could pay them a counter, I would risk going to jail 
this to do it, you crooks. Answer the phone, too. Stop dodging. County tax office, for sure. Oh, man, I got to do that protest. I know. I've, I've lost track, and I can't tell what's legit and not anymore. I'm getting home insurance renewal, property tax, homestead, you know, protests, all of it. I And I, I they're just piling up. Because people try to swoop in and be, and, and I can't tell which mm. one's legit or not. It's overwhelming me right now. I had, I had county paperwork anxiety the other day. Are you tired of the ads, the unskippable ads on YouTube? Yes, they're yeah. they're really irritating, especially when they double them up. I, I actually went ahead and paid for the YouTube Premium thing a couple months it? ago. I don't even know. I think when I signed up uh, for it, I want to say it was like six ninety nine. But it, it is. I watch a, a lot month? of YouTube videos. Yeah. I watch a lot of YouTube videos, and so it has been nice not having to have a uh, an ad in front of everything. Yeah, I told my wife, make sure Ollie's iPad is charged for this three-hour broken bow drive because I'm, I'm, I'm a little scared because he's a little bit of a diva. And she said, oh, no, I forgot to charge it overnight. I said, just make him watch his morning shows right now on the big TV. And the TV, the ads are popping up, and he's having meltdowns when the commercials come on. So yeah. my iPad, my kid's iPad is not being fully charged because of the YouTube commercial. You don't have a car charger for the iPad that you could, you know, throw? Should be the same charger as your phone, right? Well, I don't yeah, think Yeah, what I generation have, is the iPad? I, I don't have a, one that extends. Uh, I don't have one that extends that far back. Cord, the phone huh? charger. Yeah. yeah. It's small wire. You can Put them in the front seat. You can go right there. That's allowed. <laughs> yeah, let's life hack that. Moron. Life hack. Put your kid in the front seat. Uh, you can skip most. Life hack, life hack to get to jail quick. You can skip most unskippable ads on YouTube by reporting them as inappropriate since it's inappropriate oh. to interrupt my entertainment for monetary gains. Well, Ryan would know this. They already know what's inappropriate. Oh, but if you oh. flag it, it'll but, skip it. Okay, so and you're saying it's inappropriate for your kid? Yeah, just go like flag it as inappropriate, and then it'll just in general in any video. Uh, wow, I'm in on that. Yeah, but eventually, apparently, some people are commenting and saying if you do it enough, they start telling that you're spamming and they restrict your account. So okay, that's right. a good one. You do have to worry about that. Uh, I like this one a lot. If you're ever caught sleeping at your desk at work. Like the security guard downstairs and, yesterday. And Where's they, TJ, by the way? Yeah, Man, he's, he, dude, he's been out two he weeks. He might be gone. I don't know if he has that much PTO. He's been out two ask. weeks. Call the front desk. What did you do? Oh, I don't, what man, did you if do? If they fired him, I, I might have to leave. Call the front Call the front desk and ask if TJ's Just ask for TJ. I mean, yeah, be like, just, just a question. These are his radio buddies. Is TJ still employed? And then say, remember okay. who you're talking to. It better not be. <laughs> They better not bring in the lady that come that 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 is there when Sean and I get in. Good morning. That is the no, which the, the no. one we get doesn't one we, say. That's it. all she says to me. I say it to her every morning. Anything. She doesn't say a word. She doesn't even look up. Yeah. If you ever get caught sleeping at your desk at work, and you're asked for a reason, say they told me at the blood bank this would happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do a good Samaritan deal. That's pretty yeah, good, right? Pretty like you good. make them feel guilty for like, oh gosh, sorry, I gave. They yeah. said I could. You could get a little tired and potentially pass out. Do they so. make you like show a receipt for a blood? You get a blood bank receipt. You know what no, I mean? No, I mean you, they, a lot like, of times you have the thing on your arm. Yeah, oh, yeah. So, you, so you just go ahead and put the arm. It. But some bosses make you bring a doctor's note. So a doctor's note, do you have to do that for the blood bank as well? I don't think so, because okay. in theory, you'd be saying you did it like before you came in. It didn't affect your work time, and you didn't yeah. know you were going to just pass the out. The blood bank told me. Yeah. The, the, <laughs> yeah, the amazing thing, though, is That's about good. this is that bosses aren't really allowed to ask you any questions anymore. <laughs> they can't really ask you where were you where you were. If you want to make, if you don't want to make a phone call, but you may later need to prove that you, in fact, did make that call and they didn't pick up, just turn it on airplane mode and make the call. And so that it does show up on your call log that you made a phone call to them. Like what? Like, let's say you didn't, you were trying to avoid some phone call to somebody, and it's like, hey, you didn't, you didn't call me back yesterday. Uh -huh. Yeah, I did. Look right there. Uh -huh. Although I don't even know that you need to do that far. You can literally just hit call and hang up instantly. No, but I feel like it's going to show up on your phone. I get scared of that sometimes. Like, all right, I'm going to call you all and I'm going to hang up like okay. instantly. And Choppy, you tell me if this shows up on yours. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna try. All right, right now. Bam. Call. End. Let's see if it shows up whatsoever. And then Bobby, I'm gonna airplane call you and see if it shows up in the call log. Did it not? No, I got nothing. Got nothing? Yeah. See, I think you can just call and hang up instantly, and it'll still show up on your call log. 
Okay. But either way, still, good idea there. You, you can be like, there it is. Well, I right call. now, when yeah. I when I put it in airplane mode and tried to call, it's giving me no network connection, Wi-Fi call settings, disable airplane mode. So my life hack was better than the one that was suggested, which is just call it and hang up instead of the airplane mode. Did yep. we get did we get a TJ status update? Someone took the number away. I don't know where the tell number is. Tell Ryan, tell Ryan to go downstairs and call it. Ryan, go downstairs and get him. Yeah, you gotta, <laughs> call it or go downstairs and just ask if TJ's still employed. All right, let's see here. Uh next one here. I'm a flip because I've been waiting to go off on his boss. I don't know who it is, but I didn't want to go off for yeah. getting life with TJ canceled. And I knew if I went off and made it a big stink, I could put his job in jeopardy. If I find out they got rid of that man. I'm putting that person on blast. He is the nicest person on earth. He couldn't have. He had to have left for a, for a different job. Or he's on vacation. Maybe he did. Maybe he did get a different job. It's, I mean, but like you guys said, that would be a long vacation. He's been gone for two weeks. Has yeah, because he, he wasn't in there all last week while Jane was here. Uh, need to pad your resume? Bed Bath & Beyond is bankrupt. You are now a former director, vice president, manager, etc. Can't check on a bankrupt company. References... Why don't I have to a who? why don't I have why don't I have a reference here from Bed Bath and Beyond saying uh, that you were the vice president? If you have enough things on your resume, then you could have references for the other jobs, and then just be like, you know, you supply two references that so, just wasn't for one of them. Tell me if I'm looking at your most recent job and you don't have a reference from there. I'm Doesn't little... have to be the most recent though. You can have it just back in your resume somewhere as experience. Like, oh, I got manager experience. Okay, so okay, vice president, and then you moved on to like clerk. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Took, a VP took, clerk. took a step down. You were one of those, uh, yeah, like those mystery bosses or whatever. Yeah. You're just like, look, I, I decided to take a step back, see what it was like again to be the working so, man. So you can't call on a on bankrupt what? company? There's just nobody that exists at the corporate offices anymore. Yeah, they're all wiped off the face of the earth, apparently. Yeah. When is the last time that you all have touched a resume? Let's just say you got. we all got fired today. Like, When's the last time you've touched around? And do people still do? I mean, Three I still get those ago. LinkedIn alerts, you know, where it's like, so-and-so wants to connect with you. And I'm like, delete, delete, X, X, X. Oh, uh, I would say the last time I touched a resume was probably uh, October of 2010. October 2010? Yeah. Are there like new things you're supposed to do with resumes? Like... You know, like new, 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 new things formatically. I don't know. I fr I freshen it up every couple of years. Just, you do just just to make sure it's up to date. I don't even honestly. It's it's seven computers ago, and I went from a, a Dell to an Apple. I don't even think I have it anymore. Hello. Could I, I would have to start from the beginning. Could I find your resume right now? On, uh, online? Maybe I have no idea. Okay, I, it's not post. I don't post online. I don't think I've got it as like a document somewhere. Oh, Bombi Bell, Dallas Cowboys insider. <laughs> That's at, at LinkedIn at Odyssey Inc. But I can't. I got to join to get the full profile. Well, okay. there you go. Got Life you. hacks continuing. Uh, to sound sick on a call, right? If you need to, uh, mm. if you're calling in saying, hey, I'm really sick today, and you're worried about how you sell the sick voice, to sound sick on a call, lie on the bed with your head hanging down. Like, kind of oh. like just like, and yeah. then it'll give you a, like, I mean, let me see here. So. If I was like this, and I was like, I'm just not feeling good. Yeah. Today. I it love works. when Sarah does the same thing. I bet you do. Uh, it, it sounds like it would work. So just lie on a bed, head hanging backwards, and then you make the call saying, I'm really stuffy today. I don't feel it. And then you don't have to worry about faking sounding stuffy. And or we could just sound like you could just play a, a recording of you. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Or, or Sandler's play-by-play. -play. Appreciate it. <laughs> you're you're he, appreciated. He was stuffy. He's been stuffy. Uh, save business cards of people you don't like. At this company, though, man, there's no more. Spittle is the sweetest, most cold-blooded person uh, that I've met. When, when you call Gavin, it's a good thing Gavin doesn't have any kids because when you tell Gavin you're sick, uh, only only contact me back. Only What? I got an update. I just got a text. I can't say from who. It says they moved TJ to a new building. Why? Why? I don't know. That's all. That's the only text I got. And he didn't. He didn't say goodbye. All right, Peyton. Well, we fired him, kinda. You know, because of his jealous, bitter. Hang on, boss. Hang on. Now Peyton can go to the building and record. Go to the building and record with him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it sounds like it sounds like it's still the same company. 
is still his boss. They just transferred him to another building. Well, maybe the boss won't be so insecure. That'd right. be well, they nice. send to Philly or something? Another, like, Odyssey market? <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> so uh, TJ's out of the building. That's what I just... That's Another that's the building. Rumor. We'll find him. That's the we rumor. Find him. Uh, hey, is this source reliable? I think so. Save business cards of people you don't like. If you ever hit a parked car accidentally, just write sorry on the back and leave it on the windshield. Like it. I, I like, like it a lot. Say it one more time. Save, I was save fi- trying to finish my spittle. So, insult. like, let's say the uh, the whoever TJ's boss is, just be like, "Can I get your business card?" And you get it. And then the next time you like hit a parked car or something, just write "sorry" on the back and then leave that business card on the windshield. Oh, so, wow! So so devious. That so, is very devious. Yeah, so inspired. Yeah, yeah. How many business cards do you have right now in your wallet? Uh, I cleaned it out recently, but I think there's like two. Or Hold three. up your wallet of thickness, by the way. Let's see. Okay, Bobby's the leader in the clubhouse. Choppy, I'm 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 medium. Choppy's smallest, and Bobby's largest. Peyton, Mark all that, please. Yeah, that's the first time you ever heard that. Someone on the fan text said uh, TJ got banned by Carter. <laughs> 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 I, 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 that's a good joke for you, Twellos out I, there. I, I've heard I've heard Carter's getting a little bit of a big head around here it's tough we that, gotta put him on morning drive man that'll be fun that's the word you I've and him going back at back and at it oh, oh god ain't gonna be no back and forth yeah yeah I, I just heard the ryan laugh ryan knows how that would go <laughs> yeah <laughs> carter ain't gonna come in here and mouth off to me maybe these other guys three. i got three business cards three business cards yep. i got none you got none no you just take them and trash them i, I don't even take them i said you know what I'm never going to look at this thing. Don't even bother giving it to me. <laughs> so this is one that uh, I guess you would have a better understanding of, Chop. Yo. If you hate, if you hate having a group behind you when golfing, book your tee time, then book the next two times under someone else's name and number. Oh. Ooh. See, what, th- that, I am the opposite. But either way, you could you could stagger it to where you you're in the Holl- middle or whatever else. You and Holland were complaining about this yesterday. Yeah, so the guys, we, we caught up to the group in front of us. We were, we were flying through. And then we caught up to the group in front of us around the eighth hole. And the next third, you know, the next four holes were about an hour and a half, two hours for the next four holes. Yeah. And I was like, I can't finish. I mean, I got to go get the kids. So I, I was done. Why would this not work? I would do the opposite. I would reserve the t- two tee times in front of me. And then me get the last one. Yeah. Yeah. Because I don't care about people behind me. Right. All right. They're not going to catch you. They're not going to catch me. I'm going to fly. Yeah. It just depends, I guess. If you want to play at a slower pace or a faster pace, great hack. You just, you position yourself. The problem is a lot, uh, a lot of public courses, some might take your credit card to hold the tee time Ah. and then charge you. Find the ones that don't. Yeah. You got to find those. Yeah. And then it feels like you can only do that at one time at one course. Right. Okay, so this one, I don't know if this is accurate. I have not tested this out. But on Snapchat, which you gentlemen don't have, but this is for the younger kids out there. I Peyton, know. this is for you. Oh, yeah. On Snapchat, Snapchat, if you want to take a screenshot without the other person knowing, disable the storage permission. Because that's the only way, apparently, that Snapchat knows you've taken a screenshot is because it gets placed in your storage. I feel like Snapchat has... Involve, evolved more than that. That, that you, seems a little too easy. Why don't you? We fo- we're on Snapchat with each other, right? Yes. Okay. I'll uh, we'll test it out with each other here when we get to break. Why do you have Snapchat? I've had Snapchat for a decade or whatever it is, and so. you still use it occasionally. Yeah. What, what's it good for? I'm just Besides sending s- sending pics. Nudes. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it is. Sending pictures. I mean, noodles. that's all everyone says it is. Does your wife have no, it? No, uh, she does. She hasn't logged into it in forever. I don't even know if she remembers her password. My kids, my my oldest one's on it. Of course. And uh, I know, right? Uh, is but he still with his girlfriend? He Just is. Ch- check, check the batter's box. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he still is. So you don't have to check the bedroom. Check the batter's box. Dude, they played on turf last week, and he still did it on the turf. <laughs> Oh, he didn't care. God. He didn't care. Well, he's ta- he took his clean off and like grinded it, he's carved grinded it into the it. ground. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he's us. He goes, and so he'll like he'll take like he'll take a, a picture of the floor. He'll be he'll get in the car after school, take a picture of his feet on the floor, and then to keep t- taking like ten more pictures and just keep sending it to people. It's called a snap streak. Is that have you heard of it? What is that? Yeah, yeah if it's, you get it's, like a certain amount of like. Picks back and forth like for a day or something, then it, it'll go up each day. So like it's so like if we snap fifty picks one per day, um, it'd be fifth at fifty. It's like yeah, you're so, on a snap streak. But now what does that get you? What does that do? No, What's just, it get you? It's just a number. You know, the higher number, the more like you know, your your snap score. A lot of people, lo- Gen Z likes the snap score. You know, girls will have like a million as their snap score, and it's like something you can brag about. It's 
It's a fake bragging. But. Are you still on OnlyFans? Uh, no, I'm not. You're not? No, I'm okay. not. Okay, what, what, what dating apps? Not making apps, enough money? What dating apps are you on? Uh, Bumble Hinge, you know, the huge. Okay. The huge. All right, these are, a, this is a very good edition of Life Hacks on 105 Through the Fan. How many more? Uh, I got three more real fast. Uh, this one's just very dark, I feel like, uh, but it was a Man, very popular. If you popular. think it's dark, then we it's probably just, it's so, it's so, read it. No, it's not dark like that. It's dark in the sense of it just seems uh, like a psychopath thing. Uh, be kind and understanding in every facet of life, and then no one will believe you if you say something unhinged. Like Pat Doney. Yeah. Like, basically, Pat has a past to say anything super crazy because well, he's just he's messing around. That's just Pat. Do you know anyone else who's just pure? They're so nice. Oh, TJ. The, TJ. TJ. The guy that I'm going to Broken Bow with, I told him the other day, you would have been proud of me, Bobby. I was like... I asked his wife separately. I was like, is he really this nice? He used to run. He used to own the Texadelphias in town. Oh. Best cheesesteak, seriously, that I've found. It was hard to find. Um, but I'm like, is he really this nice? And she's like, he really is. When he when you're talking, he actually just listens. And I said, I'll crack him. <laughs> this weekend, mm -hmm. I'll cross you know, three days, chilling, broken bow. I was like, I'll find. I'm on a search to find yeah. the ugly. And I will. I, I knew somebody. You, you got it. You got it. You got to Oh, I'll trigger him. I'll find yeah. something. There's a trigger where he gets a little worked up. Where he snaps. The, the meanest thing he did is told me not to point the other day at Miko Cena. I got very upset at that. I thought that was very rude. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm gonna dig for it. I'm gonna see. Okay. I'm gonna dig through it to try to find. I mean, you, you, the you, ugly. Alcohol will help. We he won't have a problem there. Alcohol will help. Yeah. Get a job at a retail clothing store for the discount and then quit before you finish training. Oh, man, we almost did this yesterday. You did? You yeah. almost got a job at a... Amanda, we were talking about... What was I trying to get? It's something for a f future house project. And I was like, man, these things, this is going to cost a fortune and this and that. And she's like, I should just get a job, get the discount. And then, bam. Quit before we, training. Yeah, thought, thought absolutely. About it. And then you can get a little bit extra. And then final one here. Instead of sending business emails during business hours, schedule them to be sent late at night and or during non-business hours to create the perception that you're working extra hard oh, relative to your peers. This is this is fantastic. This is Costanza. This is something Costanza would have done if they had. It's smart. Email back. It's the same, same thing as it's same thing as writing an email, leaving it in the drafts, and then just oh, I'll open it up and send it. At you could schedule now. tweets and posts, right? Yep. Oh, you can. I yeah. think I think Bobby. You can, you can schedule Facebook posts and tweets and everything else. Okay. Yeah, you think the fan account is up at 5.30 every morning? I assume so. Mm. I assume someone is. No, no one is not. Who's no. down there now? I don't even know who's working Not TJ. Not oh. TJ. Sean, RJ, and Roberto hey. here on D. Remember who you're talking to. Remember who you're talking to. <laughs> DFW Sports Station 105.3. The fan tomorrow will be our final Rangers ticket giveaway of the week during the expressway. But Choppy just showed me. The news that came out, we have another Cowboys date, NFL schedule release day, and we have a high school sports scandal, uh -oh. youth sports scandal in the great state of Texas. See which side you're on next. But look, life is unpredictable.
Fan Studios, secured by DFWSecurity.com. This is Sean and RJ on 105.3 The Fan. 8 o'clock hour, Thursday edition with the entire squad back together again. Sean Shreve, RJ Choppy, Bobby Belt, back from the Hot Springs in Arkansas. We got Peyton and Ryan in the back live on YouTube, Twitch, and the Fan Cam. Two developing situations. 
Uh, the first, well, the second one has to do with the Cowboys. And the first one, uh, was, as RJ Choppy made the announcement in the commercial break, coffee is officially back. Machine gun colon is in what? It's on, uh, the safety's on. Mm. Okay. I, I have some serious tummy cramps right now. All right. We had, uh, it, it gets me every time. Chicken. A rotisserie chicken. Rotisserie chicken. Didn't even have to guess. Get a little rotis from the restaurant, from the uh, from the grocery store. I think it's the brine. I think the brine goes into my uh, into my intestines and or whatever. And it I is am, a little greasy. I am cramping right here, man. Is that what is that one of those foods you think that you're eating great, like salmon, and then you're like, oh, I'm not supposed to eat a ton of salmon because it's fatty. Uh, and then you think you're eating this nice rotisserie chicken, but part of the reason it's so awesome is because it is it is kind of oily and greasy. Yeah, it's got a lot, a lot of salt, a lot of brine. Skin. Uh, skin. Uh, yeah, we, we don't, you know, we, we rip it apart. We, there's not much skin in, in the parts that we're eating, but we definitely eat some. Uh, but yeah, I can feel it right here. It happens every day, every time I have this. But I went in the bathroom and it was like, there's a cork. There ain't nothing coming out. No so, cheese lately? Cheese is not the culprit? No, not a lot of cheese. Tonight's queso night. Well, maybe not. Yeah. Mm. I can't, I can't have this. Otherwise, I'm going to have to... You'd be stuck for a week. Use some of those Oxy powder pills or whatever. Uh, those are good. So you're going back? Every break. I, I have uh, I have some coffee here, which my heart be damned. Uh, I need to get this out of me. Okay, so... Machine gun colon. Okay. No Dulcolax or anything? Is that, with a, is that a, uh, like a Miralax yeah. thing? Yeah. I've never tried that. I've never had a problem. I've never really had a problem with it. Mm. All right. We'll see if the coffee works. The other was found by Choppy and Peyton. Uh, Brandon Tierney, BT, on this radio network, said that the Cowboys are going to open in New York against the Giants Sunday Night Football. No surprise there. And the great Ari Myroff reporting yes. that the Cowboys will travel to San Francisco to take on the 49ers Sunday Night Football in Week 5. He usually... Takes this, steals this from someone. I think the NFL actually technically broke this one. Did they? Yeah, the NFL posted this on their uh, on their official account at NFL uh, on the on the Elon Musk's, and uh, it will it is on Sunday Night Football on October the eighth. And then Peyton the Great, Marcus Mosier had something yesterday. What did he say? Thanksgiving? Did he try to break the Thanksgiving Day game? Yeah, he said Cowboys and Patriots Thanksgiving and then uh, deleted it quickly okay. after. Deleted so it. not sure if he lied or was told by someone. Hey, let's not. You put that out there. He wasn't told by anybody. All right. He doesn't work for the Cowboys? Wait, yeah. Hey, Peyton, <laughs> Peyton asked me the commercial. He goes, did he delete it because someone of the Cowboys said something to him? I said, look, the Cowboys barely know who, who we are. <laughs> they don't know who Marcus oh, is. Oh, they know who he is. Oh. He is the... For the wrong reasons? Yeah, he's the moron that called the war room like five years ago. When the, the number was on social media, he's that idiot. He called it? Yes. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know. Wh what. Why did he call it? Because he just the saw the number, so he called it, and they ended up having to change the number. And okay, I didn't know that the war room number got posted. I didn't either. You could see it on on the DallasCowboys.com stream. Well, how did it get found out it was him? He admitted to it. <laughs> oh, they, like, I mean, at the time, I knew it was him, but he didn't admit it until like a year later. Really? On Twitter, he went on a yeah, because he's an idiot. Okay. I wanted you to troll, but you're, yeah. you're going in. Good job. <laughs> All right, so that's uh, some of the schedule unveiling taking place with the Cowboys. We give you the name of the people just so you can blame them if it's not correct. The official release will be the... <laughs> I, I think it's working. <laughs> I don't know if I'm at the end of the segment. RJ massaging. Get the lower level shot if you can If you can pan down, Ryan, uh, to Choppy. Trying to work uh, work a little bit of the abdomen area. Shuffle that gas down in there. You got to shuffle. Yes. All right. So game five tonight, stars against the Kraken. Vegas with some updates from Bet Online. Some I don't understand in the NBA, but we'll start with the hockey. The favorite to win the Stanley Cup. This was before last night's game, so keep that in mind. The favorite. Edmonton. No. Carolina. Carolina, yes. 11 to 4. Then Florida. Yep. Then Edmonton. Then Vegas. Then the Stars at 11 to 2. Then the Kraken. Then the Devils. Then the Maple Leafs. Okay. Odds to win the West. If you think the Stars are going to get there, 
but you don't have faith in them winning the cup against a team like Carolina, then you can get the Stars winning the West at five to two. Series. Okay. What? What? Who's the favorite in the series? And what percent chance do you think Vegas is giving the favorite to win our series? Game five tonight. Okay, so it was, if I remember right, it was minus 120 for Seattle and even money for the Stars going into game four. Uh, I will say the Stars are minus 140. Minus 215. Wow. 68% chance now of winning okay. this series. That's a that's a change. All right, okay. 68%. Carolina was minus 720. Florida minus 900. And Vegas, Edmonton, Vegas minus 100. 30. Uh, so those are the updated odds. I don't understand some of these NBA odds um, because they have, well, we'll save it for, uh, well, let's just knock it out after what happened yesterday. This before yesterday's games. They still have Boston as the favorite. Uh, home ice advantage still. Um, Court. I know. I, say, I, <laughs> I, I say ice for everything. Uh, they're, pl they're plus 165. I got these numbers after they played. Plus huh. one sixty five. Then the Lakers are four to one. Denver's nine to two. Then Phoenix, Golden State, Philly, Miami, and New York. Of course, New York and Golden State staying alive last night. And but but then but then for the series, I just don't I, I don't understand. I don't I don't get it how the Celtics could still be up there like that. And then before last night's Lakers lost, they had a sixty seven percent chance of winning the series. So that's some of the Vegas numbers. All right. Youth sports controversy. Oh, one more thing. I forgot. All NBA was announced yesterday. This feels like what's the what's the thing that you blow uh to you know, little party party. Oh, those little party straws. Yeah. You know, sure. you, you do it like this. And the thing goes out and comes back in, oh, yeah. and you blow it. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's what it feels like for a Luka Doncic celebration here. Bet it does. Luka made all NBA first team. I'm happy here. And then he's joined by Giannis, Tatum, SGA. How yeah. about that? Wow. Shea Alexander. He was great this year. Making all NBA first team. And then Joel Embiid, the MVP. So there's Luka making all NBA first team. Okay. John Morant misses out on making All NBA, so he does not get the Supermax bump. Oh my gosh! Yeah. So you have to get it in the year you become a free agent. Is that how, or the year you have? There's a certain time frame year you got to get it. I don't know. Wow. Don't I be mean, a dumbass. Don't, don't be, be a fake wanna be gangster. How about that? There that, you go. That fixes it. Yeah. That could fix it. So John ja does not make. All NBA misses out on the Supermax bump, but Luka makes it again, and there's a little history to go along with that. Fourth straight year, he's made all NBA first team. Now tied with Dirk, most all NBA first team selections in franchise history. He joins Bird, the Iceman, and Tim Duncan as the only players to earn four or more all NBA first team selections in their first five seasons since the merger. Who's the Iceman, Bobby? I know. I was curious if Peyton knew. Can There's we ask no Peyton way. first? There's no Peyton, way. Peyton, do you know who the Iceman is? Ooh, do I get multiple choice? Nope. Okay. No. Uh, He's not the guy from uh, George Gervin. 48 hours either. George yes. Gervin, the finger roll. Uh, George yes, Gervin. George. The finger roll. <laughs> so, <laughs> Good old George. What, what's the what's the O for this week for Peyton? He thought Geppetto. Geppetto, uh, Geppetto was a woman. And then Bob Saget was the host of Saturday Night Live. Saturday yeah, Live. That's, that's why Peyton thought it was off the air. Not the writer's strike. It's like they lost their host. They're <laughs> still trying to find a new one. <laughs> didn't know where didn't know where Frankfurt was. <laughs> Connecticut. <laughs> yeah. It's Kentucky, right? All right. Now we have I think it's Frankfurt, Connecticut. Never been. It's, Wouldn't it's, know, uh, you know. It's it's uh it's Where's it's Frankfort, Kentucky is the, is the big is the city. There's a uh, there's a city and there's a you're thinking of Fairfield, Connecticut. Okay. Youth sports controversy. Let's head on over to Cisco. Home Cisco, of Texas. Cisco home of the Superstars. No. Hilton. The first Hilton was in Cisco, really? Texas. Yes it was. Downtown. I had no idea. Uh so McCamey is taking on Cisco in a girls softball game. The catcher for McCamey, bases are loaded. Okay. So the catcher for McCamey, uh, 
decides that she's going to throw down to third. But she doesn't throw down to third. She hits the hitter for Cisco right in the face. It was a right-handed hitter. Mm. Right in the face. Now, here's the issue. There is speculation, and not even speculation, they're, they're saying this is what happened. The girl stepped out of the box, and she hit her on purpose. Thinking that if she hit her on purpose with her out of the box, it is interference. So they get the out. So the run will not, because there's like, there's two out, she would get the out. Hit her right in the face. This is clearly coming from the coach. This is something that apparently they have done before, mm. and it is coming, fr- has to come from the coach. All the right. catcher's not thinking of this. So you watch the video. Mm-hmm. How far out of the box was the hitter? How far away from the third baseline? Oh, if the ball had missed the hitter, it's going in the dugout. Oh. Oh, yeah. It's, so it's not like. It's not close. No, here here, here it is. I'll, I'll, and I'll, this girl, I watched it. She got hit right in the face. Like, it's, she is not, she is not anywhere, not, I could see near. Okay. Uh, you know. Let me give a, the, oh, gosh, this feels Dirtier than life hacks. Oh my gosh. All right, ready? Here comes the defense. Does <laughs> Does the hitter have one of those cages? No. Are you sure? You know the cage mat the, oh, the, the mask? It. Does it make it more acceptable? Because the girl didn't drop. She gets hit. The ball's thrown right at her face. You Softball think, usually does. That looks like it could kill her. Yeah. It really does. Yeah. But am I am I seeing a little bit of a face mask there? Um it still doesn't make it okay. It doesn't make it okay. So here's the situation. I, but, thought, but, I but, thought there was a guy in third. It was the girl was on second. So it was a runner on second. So she threw down a third. The runner wasn't going. The runner wasn't going at all. There was no reason for her to throw to third. The third baseman was in about 20 feet from the hitter in on the bunt. They didn't have the wheel play on. Nobody was covering third. Mm. And she just drills her. Drills her right <sighs> in the face. Look at that trajectory. Look at that third baseman. I mean, that, that is going. That ball's not going that, that ball is absolutely not going to third but, base. But worse, That's going right to the dugout. But worse than that, there's no one at third to take the throw. Right. right. There's no one. That is straight bunt. Straight bunt defense. Good job, Ryan. Zooming in there on but the But does, does the girl have a face mask? I can't How tell. does she not drop and crumble to the ground? Oh, you know, she, she went to the ground. Did she? Yeah, she fell. This is, man. Uh, you know what? There is a face mask. Yeah, I am seeing there is a, there is a face mask. It doesn't matter. You can still rock that helmet. Good coaching. Hurts. Good coaching. Good, 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 good you, you, you can see there's a face mask right That's there. That's so, Sean Sharif. Yeah, 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 good coach. I'm kidding. That coach should be in jail. I'm Absolutely. serious. Absolutely. Absolutely be in jail. That coach should uh, be in jail. This is this is terrible. These are these are kids. I don't give a kids. crap if they're adults. You can't throw at someone's face. Who's standing right next to you? Agree. That, that should be a criminal charge. Agree. Um, I'll post this uh, Hard to video prove. Hard to prove. on the socials. Yeah. Uh, but this 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 is terrible. I thought this was total bush league. That's awful. Man, we just broke that down. Where can we see the video? Uh, Choppy will put it on his Twitter, and it's posted on the Facebook page. At RJ Choppy. Sean, RJ, and Bobby here on DFW Sports Station 105.3 The Fan. The Bob Huggins decision. Are the Tolos agreeing with West Virginia not firing Bob Huggins for what he did? Plus, Bobby has a return of Below the Belt. It's the Thursday edition of Sean and RJ continuing right here. The Bob Huggins decision. Was it right or wrong? Next. But first.
Minnesota and by the personal injury lawyers Frankel and Frankel. Life is unpredictable, accidents happen. Frankel and Frankel are the go-to attorneys for car and truck wrecks in DFW. If you or a loved one have been in an accident, contact the Frankels at 214-333-3333 or just go to truckwreck.com. Here's Jonah, first pitch to the upright lefty. He swings and hammers one to right field. Hernandez on the run. He's not going to be able to get it. It drops in front of him. Low scores from third. Heim up to second. The throw is late. He slides in safely. And Jonah Heim is on board with an RBI double. And the Rangers' lead is now 3-1. to one. Sandman with the call. Nice series. They beat Seattle in Seattle 4-3 yesterday afternoon right here on your home for Rangers baseball. You had some big hits from Simeon. No surprise there. He's been doing it all year long. Heim from low. Jonathan Hernandez and Will Smith helping to settle down that bullpen a little bit. Dane Dunning has been a lifesaver for this team. And even more good news, Corey Seager is headed to AA Frisco to start his rehab assignment today. Likely to rejoin the team when they get home from their current trip. So that's where things stand. First series win in Seattle since 2019. And oh yeah, Nathan Avaldi is going to be on the mound tonight. 20 straight scoreless innings to open up the four-gamer in Oakland. And Bobby, you were saying that Vegas is telling us how sorry the athletics are. Yeah, I was just asking Chop about this during the break. Typically, I feel like whenever I see there's an unannounced starter in another team, there's not odds mm -hmm. for it. There's there's not betting odds. Uh, Oakland has not announced their starter for tonight opposite Nathan Evaldi, and yet Vegas still has it available to bet at Texas <laughs> minus 235. Yeah, that's, I mean, look, that's showing you one they, that Evaldi is, 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 is having a really good run, and also that Oakland stinks, and it doesn't really matter much who Oakland throws out there. They're going to be pretty bad. By the way, fun fact, TBD, the starter, never lost a game. Never. No. That's That's true. Never lost. Unless you mean Tampa Bay Devil Rays Could be. starter. Yeah, but TBD yeah. himself. Could bad news be coming for your beer consumption as the brewers change their minds about extending beer sales beyond the seventh inning? How long was the Ranger game yesterday? Uh, it was two Roughly. hours, 33 minutes. Two hours, 33 minutes. We've shaved off 30 minutes from the past. The brewers were among a handful of teams to extend the beer sales through the eighth inning in response to shorter games. Well, they are going back. They're going back on that. They said it wasn't due to any issues with fan behavior. They simply discovered this is why good PR followed by bad PR. Like one step forward, two steps back. They didn't say it was for fan safety. They said it was because the sales of the concessions, it didn't have a major effect in the late innings. The sales of all concessions, uh, it, it, it was it, it was it was basically because of that. So keeping beer vendors open for another inning wasn't producing a significant increase in sales. <laughs> that's that's all they're worried about. Oh, it is nice, uh, nice intent. Like way way to have it come from a good core place. So the other teams that extended through the eighth: Diamondbacks, Astros, Twins, and your Texas Rangers. So. Everyone's going to be watching to see accident rates leaving the stadium as they're letting you buy and drink later on yeah, in the game. I'm surprised the uh, like the New York teams didn't because so many people take the train into those games anyway. That yeah, you know, that there's still going to be an issue of of intoxication and people because people there are people who drive, but I mean the amount of people who take the train in versus drive is is, is huge compared to anybody else. And again, I ask why is the state why is the stadium more liable? Than a bar. Uh, they're not necessarily more liable. They just have more money to go after. Yeah, I'm just saying, like, why are we holding yeah. stadiums more responsible than a restaurant? Yeah, I I don't know uh, other than, like, the PR hit. But, like, you know, if you if you leave a bar drunk, you sue the bar, and that bar owner's worth $500,000. You leave the Ranger game, and you get in a car, actually, you kill somebody or whatever, the Texas Rangers are worth $4 billion. And, you know, you could just get more money out of them. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, why are we blaming the Rangers and baseball teams? Why are we putting it on them to not serve versus a, an establishment who doesn't know when you're leaving and you're going to finish your drink probably three or four minutes before you get up 
and finish the check. So I'm not, def- I'm just trying to come up with reasons as to why that might be sheer volume of individuals that you're talking about are responsible for it. Like at a restaurant, you're talking about a couple hundred people. This yeah. is tens of thousands. Um, the natural testosterone filled energy leaving there combined with alcohol. I mean, I, I, I don't know. Yeah. Um, well, and also like, you know, how many people leave a restaurant drunk? Like, like, you know, at, at night, right? Like, let's just say, let's say the, the restaurant's full and the capacity is a hundred people. How many people are, that leave the restaurant are over the legal limit? Yeah. Maybe a couple. And it, it, a, a, a football game, there's a hundred thousand people in there. How many are over the league? I, I would say it's. A, I, I would say a the lot. numbers are high. The, the percentage is much higher. I would guess. All right. Uh, the Bob Huggins punishment. He didn't get fired. He survived at West Virginia. The punishment for the anti-gay slur that he used also dropped religion in that radio interview we've been playing here on the show. A million dollar salary reduction, a three game suspension, and sensitivity training. The Huggy Bear was making four point two. And it's going to be down to 3.2. I'm surprised he didn't get fired. And RJ, I thought that, you know, you, you kind of gave the reaction I had yesterday. I love and I hate it. W- what is happening with me personally in trying to decide these these outcomes, the going too far in cancel culture is now affecting, like, my thinking. You know what I mean? Like, what Bob Huggins said was not a slip of the tongue. It was hateful. It was homophobic. He said it twice. Like, you're not going to convince me Bob Huggins doesn't have a problem with homosexuals. I don't, you're just not going to convince me of it. Was he trying to be funny? Yeah, maybe. But the way he said it, he said it repeatedly. Uh, he's homophobic. In my, he's the, he's the best. <laughs> he's the best. He's not homophobic. He's the best. So, should a person like that continue to have his job on that platform? Probably not. But then, how far we've gone with cancel culture makes me pull back with that. It's affecting me. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like the, the water has been tainted in, in, in my mind, the water has been polluted and it, it's, it's making me have a hard time to decide what the right thing to do here was, even though majority of Tolos are saying not a big deal, only words and he should keep his job. But I think it's affected a lot of people too, who, are tired of how far we've gone. Well, look, I, I, I there's there's a few things I don't like here. I, I don't like that someone can say something so flippantly and get away with it, right? Like I agree with like that that that, that was. Is this a slap on the wrist punishment? Uh, to me, it is. Yes, it they, is. They, yes, and I have a hard time believing the conversation didn't go down like this with his bosses. Hey, man, you do you still want to coach? Yes, I still want to coach. Here's what we're gonna do. We gotta, we gotta knock the pay down. We gotta do all the sensitive trading bull s, and we're gonna suspend you for the first three games. We're still gonna make the tournament. We need to keep this recruiting class. I don't think it's that big a deal. I don't care about what you said. Unfortunately, that's the way I view the conversation going. I mean, it may have, it may have gone. And it like may not that. have. Like, but that's just where my brain goes the, because we know they wanted to probably save Huggins. They, they did because you know, and then they had said, look, we, we don't want to punish the players. For the uh, indecencies of the head coach. Which is BS, I think. That's that's a great thing to come up with. Oh, it's a great thing to come up with. You know, maybe there's a chance we that... We did it for the kids. Maybe there's a chance they've known him. Maybe they may be... Him and the AD may have a great relationship. And maybe the AD is like, you know, I know you said this. I know you don't believe this. That's possible, right? Um, But, you know, the, I think the main issue... Not the main issue, but like... I do believe that there was there is a reset needed on on just hey you make a mistake you get fired all right I I, I do think a reset needs to be made because I, I think you should be able to make a mistake and not lose your job uh, a punishment and and more of a punishment than hey miss three games and then be there for the you know Bahama shootout or whatever Did- like you know you need to there needs to be ways to punish people without lazily just firing them but this was clearly a case of. The guy, the the folks at West Virginia, saying it was wrong, but our fan base knows it was wrong, but they don't care enough about it to lose their coach, and we have to be the administrators of the University of West Virginia University and not 
societal norms in 2023 outside of West Virginia. How, they looked at it from West Virginia doesn't care. Neither do we. How different, and and how do they, by the way, gauge that? What scientific poll did they take? It's easy to be like, our fan base wasn't that ticked off. That's easy to say that. How much worse is this or not? Sorry to put you on the spot. Then Brenneman's incident. I feel like we didn't have a discussion on the other side to keeping Tom Brenneman for what he said with his. Was it off air or was it, it was hot mic? No, it was hot mic. His hot Which mic. Doesn't this make it worse though that Bob Higgins knew he was on radio and said it twice? Like he willingly said it, mm. meant it. Hey, he said he didn't know he was on radio. What? Oh yeah, he said he didn't know he's on. He didn't know he's live. Huggins? That's what, yeah, he didn't know he was on. He said that. That's, that's what he said. He didn't know he was on radio. Oh, now no I want him fired. He didn't know he was on. <laughs> now I want him uh, fired for lying. <laughs> but we didn't have this Brenneman defense, like trying to figure out a way. It was, it was just no doubt. Tom Brenneman's got to go for that. All right, it's very unbe. Look, it, it doesn't matter who you are, but like a head coach is held to standards that, um, you know, a player might not be. Right, you're, you're a position of authority. You're held to different standards. You're in charge of hiring and firing people a lot of times, so you're held to much different standards than a regular employee would be. Uh, and Brenneman is uh, an announcer for networks, and you know I, I don't know that. Yeah, I, I do wonder why the why there is a difference. You know, maybe Fox is like. I think the difference is is that Fox had to recognize that. You know, we have to look at things differently than a simple school does in one particular state that may know the people in their state better than we do. It's the balance of the heat, the pressure versus what you think they can do for you. That's why Ariza gets released like that in Buffalo for something that ultimately he's found innocent of and somebody like Bob Huggins, who is a college basketball legend, can survive this, especially with the where he's at and the type of pressure that that fan base is going to put on the school, which is not as much as Buffalo was getting league wide for, oh my gosh, you got to get away from this guy. You got to walk away from Matt Ariza. All right. So that's the Bob Huggins decision. Dropping salary. You got to go ahead and attend some sensitivity training and it'll be suspended for the start of their season. Uh, and that's what dropped yesterday during crosstalk. He will miss three games. Yeah, that's what they said. Three games. Three games. That's, I mean, that's not even you. I mean, what he, does that mean in the grand scheme of things for an NCAA schedule before March Madness? He's going to miss a game against <laughs> LeMoyne. Uh, he's going to miss a game against Southeast Ohio. Yeah. And probably Eastern Kentucky. We have all pretty much loved the Cowboys offseason, but someone is saying that Cowboys overreacted with their moves because of San Francisco. That's next in the return of Below the Bell with Roberto next.
The great Bobby Belt. Don't make me take off my belt. Don't make me no, take no, off my belt. We're not. NFL overreaction or not, letting Kellen Moore go will prove to be a critical mistake. Ooh. According to Shield Kapadia over there at the ringer, that would be a not, not an overreaction. So Shiel Kapadia has an article up over at the Ringer, and he's a he is a very talented writer. He's he's always been a really good beat reporter. He at separate times for ESPN and the Athletic has covered the Seahawks and the Eagles. Very plugged in with what happens in Philly. We'll we'll go to the what we learned. It's it's what we learned about every NFL NFC team this NFL offseason. We'll go to the Cowboys specifically here in a sec. But I just want to quickly go over what we learned about each team, just the headlines from the NFC East. And you tell me if you can tell that he once covered the Eagles beat very closely. Okay. Cowboys, what we learned about them, they overreacted to their playoff loss. Mm. Giants, they're taking a gamble on Daniel Jones's upside. Washington, their ownership nightmare is close to being over. Philadelphia, they made a huge commitment to Jalen Hurts. Oh wow! Mm. That's a much softer, <laughs> softer delivery, softer approach for uh, the Eagles there. But even even so, I think Shields very very good, and he has uh, what I think is a an interesting perspective on what we learned about the Cowboys. And I'm just going to read from this really quickly, and then we'll kind of react to it and discuss it. But he says they overreacted to the playoff loss. He says that the Cowboys were a very good team last year. Obviously, back to back years of, of twelve and five plus 125 point differential third in the NFC behind only the Eagles and the 49ers uh, should be a good team again this season. They made sensible trades with Brandon cooks and Stefan Gilmore didn't overreact to Dalton Schultz's market finally moved on from Ezekiel Elliott starts off with a lot of praise there, but he says the biggest change is going to be their offensive play calling. The Cowboys let Kellen Moore go and head coach Mike McCarthy is now running the show. McCarthy indicated this offseason that he thinks the Cowboys can benefit from a more run heavy approach that limits turnovers and puts games in the hands of his defense. McCarthy's comments demonstrated a fundamental misunderstanding of what is actually wrong with the Dallas Cowboys. Ooh, were turnovers an issue in 2022? At times, yes, but overall, not really. 
Cowboys turned the ball over on 10.8% of their possessions, which was slightly lower than the league average. Dak Prescott was intercepted on 3.8% of his passes, which was the worst mark among starters. Not all of his interceptions were his fault, though, and interceptions were not an issue for Prescott previously in his career. From 2019 to 2021, Prescott had the ninth lowest interception rate in the NFL. The bottom line, it's hard to envision a scenario where the move from Moore to McCarthy offers an upgrade. In four years with Moore, if we isolate the plays where Prescott was the quarterback, the Cowboys performed like the second best offense in the NFL in terms of EPA per play. Did the offense look bad in the playoff loss to the 49ers? No doubt. But that was one game on the road against the best defense in the NFL. Ideally, the Cowboys would have examined what went wrong in that game, made some tweaks, and moved forward. Instead, they made a big change that could result in a step back in 2023. And I got to say, reading this, the first person I thought of was Ralph James Choppy. Oh, really? Because this sounds like an RJ Choppy type of argument. Like, do not overreact to one game. Mm -hmm. In the grand scheme of things, it's easy to be bitter. And, and you know, when you're you're in it day to day, it's easy to rise and fall with the, the good and bad news about the Dallas Cowboys. But when you look at it from the 10,000 foot view, Kellen Moore was a good offensive coordinator who had a lot of success and making this change was an overreaction. Look, it was an overreaction, but it doesn't mean that it also wasn't the right move. Like, there's a there's a solution and a pro. Like, was he the problem? That's the first thing I would ask myself. Is he the problem? Kellen Moore? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The answer is no. It's like, okay, is he the solution? And if the answer is also no, you know, then it's not really, then it's not an overreaction. It's it's a move to make a move. Yeah, but this usually goes to your point of you don't. Look at San Francisco's style. Are they reacting too much to San Francisco's style in terms of building their regular season yeah. team? Yes. So that's the question. This this is the problem that teams run into, right? So I'll just use this. I followed this guy as closely as any, as as anything. So this sticks into my head. Oh, thank you. When 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 Peyton was on the Colts, all the other teams in the division tried to. Oh, you know what? We have got to get a pass rusher. Yeah. Instead of, I don't know, finding a quarterback. So it's like you don't build your team to beat one team. That's that's a foolish way to do things. Yeah. The Cowboys ran into a unique style that punished them. You didn't need to change your toughness or your roster or your style because of San Francisco. You unluckily faced them in back-to-back -back years of the playoffs. Like, what are the odds of that? What are the odds that you face the same team two years in a row in the postseason? I have an answer for all this. Number Please. number one, I, I think I think the bigger question is are not are you overreacting to San Francisco? Are you overreacting to Dak's picks? Which I think the three of us agree was was a little fluky. All right, his career he had never thrown more than thirteen picks. He did that in 16 games. Now he threw 15 picks in 12 games. The guy takes care of the football. He's taking care of the football. So are you overreacting to that? To me, the reason why this is the right move, McCarthy being more conservative, running the ball more, building up the defense, it's, it's not because of Dak Prescott's turnover problems. It's because of Dak Prescott's playmaking ceiling. That is the reason why I have advocated against the other two in the room to go more parcels, more old school, more backwards. Because Dak Prescott is not a special enough quarterback, consistently special enough. He he is capable of special moments. There's no doubt about it. He's not consistently I don't know. Is, is a Jalen Brunson comparison fair to Dak Prescott or insulting? I think oh, that's it, interesting. I, I think it's fair. Jalen Brunson as the one, I don't believe is going to win you the title. But man, he can be dangerous. I mean, 38 and 48 minutes last night. But Dak, in a playoff run, I do not trust to get you to or win the Super Bowl. And that is why I wanted the Cowboys to build up the defense, build up the lines, and win in a more balanced way. It's not an overreaction, in my opinion, to San Francisco. It's Mike McCarthy and the team front office saying, we know he's not going to throw us to the title. He's not going to be the reason. He can be a reason. So let's build everything else up around him. I'm glad that uh, we got to bring this up, by the way, because, and I know it's something we discussed a couple months ago, but 
it allows me, Sean, to reference something you've had in your prep email for about four months now. <laughs> The, the Cowboys offense, the stuff. offensive numbers, which were the the numbers that we researched right after the changeover. But it, it's good to have it right here in front of me. So thank you, Sean. Yeah, that that, that ended up paying off here. Uh, in twelve years as the play caller in Green Bay, uh, McCarthy's offense is ranked top five in points seven times out of twelve. Uh, they ranked top ten in yards nine times. They were top ten in turnover differential six times. They were top three in point differential five times. So a lot of success. In fact, the year where he didn't call plays for most of the year. I think he took over at the very end in 2015. Uh, these were their ranks. 15th in points, 23 in yards, uh, 10th in turnover differential, 11th in points differential, 19th in yards differential. Uh, for comparison, while Kellen Moore was here, they finished uh, in the top 10 in point differential three out of his four years as offensive coordinator. They finished first in, uh, or actually it was just raw points. Point differential, they finished same top 10 three times. Yards, they finished first in the NFL twice, and then they finished 11th and 14th. 14th was the year where Dak was out for most of the year, which I still think is a miracle. You finished 17th in points and 14th in yards that year that Dak went down is stunning yeah. with what they had around him. Uh, but generally, these resumes look somewhat similar in terms of being at the top of the league. Now, they do things very differently. And I think it's important important yeah, to point, point out. Important, I was say point, point. very important. <laughs> it's <laughs> important. <laughs> it's important. Payne, I'll give you a hundred bucks if you tell me what that reference is. Okay, it's a movie. Um, sort of. Is it uh, what nineties? Uh, okay. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the movie Mike, was in the nineties. That's it. Hang it, on, it no, expired. The, the movie. The movie could have been in the nineties. Yeah. All right. If you think expired. he's warm, right. he's then not, I'll give you. He's not warm. <laughs> oh, let's try my best. The, the Three Stooges. Yeah, the I movie, because the Three Stooges movie was like 90s. What was the, the, word, what was the word you that. just said? Uh, in point, in in point, point, in point. I was trying to say important to point <laughs> out. It's important to point out. Uh, that Yeah, pick two. Uh, it's important to point out. That <laughs> so stupid. Shield Kapadia argues that this is an overreaction, moving on from Kellen Moore, yada, yada, yada. As Jane talked about last week, as we've talked about here on the show, as I've mentioned several times, the driving force for Kellen Moore's departure was Kellen Moore going in there and saying, I'm done. Kellen Moore wanted a new start. Yeah. And now, now what you could say is the blame game, the way things were handled, some of their overreactions to it potentially drove him to a point where he was like, I'd rather be somewhere else. But the fact of the matter is... I heard he was fed up with McCarthy. I heard yeah. McCarthy uh, kind of ticked him off with a final press conference of the year, and Kellen was ticked. That's what I heard. Yeah, the, the, the issue from is... From reliable is, people. Is that much like in the Brady-Belichick breakup, Kellen Moore is easily going to win this. He went to the team that had the best quarterback with an opening at the time. Now Mahomes finally had an opening with the enemy, but 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 the, that's that's Andy Reid's offense. But the Cowboys are going to have a better record than the Chargers, most likely. I would think so, but the Chargers' offense is going to be better than the Cowboys. That's very possible. I mean, look, at look. least they've got. I mean, they've got like like Justin Herbert. Most people think he's a top five quarterback in the NFL. They've got a tier one guy. Yeah, he's 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 coaching a, a stud, a, a borderline elite quarterback. You know, we don't know. I mean, he does. I think there, he's. I think he's elite. There's there's things he's got to do. I mean, he's got to like yeah. sooner or later he's got to win some games. <laughs> but like he's he's pretty elite. I just I think that as a defense for McCarthy, as a defense <gasps> for the Cowboys approach, Lamar uh, RJ attacks Lamar and you defend Mike. Is that, and this is something that I think we've discussed. You could not go back into. You cannot go back into this season running things the same way. It had to be one person's vision. If it was going to be this hodgepodge again of Kellen and Mike and these different concepts, that was not going to work. You needed to commit to this is Kellen's scheme. If you wanted Mike to have a bigger voice in the offense, if that's what the Joneses wanted, hey, Mike, we want you to have a bigger voice. We want you to be involved in this offense. Then you needed to commit to Mike as your offensive coordinator because the concepts of the Air Coriel versus the West Coast system, there were going to be too many contradictions within them and it caused too many issues and I think you saw that and so if they want him to have a bigger voice then what they're saying is we want you to run the offense whether they realize that or not that's what they're asking 
You can't have that hodgepodge. So to me, if that's what they wanted, you needed to commit to in all likelihood, Mike calling plays. So either Mike calling plays, Kellen calling plays, it needed to be one or the other. We'll tell you what we know about the Cowboys' schedule at 920 tonight. NFL schedule release here on your home of America's team. But we have evidence. Someone on the show has evidence that the Lakers are cheating. And we have a baseball player who is not staying in a hotel because of that haunted house. And can you really have hiccups for this long? It's going to be a wild final hour. Thursday edition, fist pump time around the corner. After this, let's get you healthy, boy.
Command Studios, secured by DFWSecurity.com. This is Sean and RJ on 105.3 The Fan. Half court right, Brunson off high screen, D3, nails it! Gutsy, what a shot! Brunson with 35. Knicks Radio with the call, it's fist pump time on the fan cam, Twitch, and YouTube. RJ Choppy, Peyton Russell, Bobby Belt is back. From vacation, it's the 9 o'clock hour. Thanks for being a Tolo. That stands for Turn It On, Leave It On. NBA action last night. Brunson keeps the Knicks alive. And Anthony Davis was getting checked for a concussion in a wheelchair as he took a shot to the head from Kayvon Looney. The Warriors control Game 5. So now we're going to have a Game 6 in L.A. and a Game 6 in Miami. And Bobby Belt has found a stat that Mike Bassick is going to absolutely love about the league helping the Lakers cheat. Yeah, so this is this is pretty wild. This was something that I know I was looking over at Reddit a couple of weeks ago, and somebody had posted that the Lakers in every game in March and April, uh, they had which was twenty eight games, they had been called for either the same amount, which was one game, or in twenty seven instances, fewer fouls than their opponent. And so I just looked it up during the break to see if that trend has continued. They are now on 35 consecutive games where their opponent, like without being called for more fouls than their opponent, which even if you are the most aggressive, drive the paint, like draw fouls, like great defensive team in basketball. Which they led the league in a lot of those numbers in the regular season. Yeah, absolutely. So it makes sense that in general, they would get more fouls called on the opponent than them. It doesn't... It seems pretty unreal that they could go 35 games in a row without having more fouls called on them. Seems, it seems odd. It seems like like a statistical anomaly. And not, not alleging any Donaghy stuff. It just seems wild in the same way of like you go 20 years without somebody winning the NFC East and back-to-back years. See, the NBA cares about their markets and teams getting to the end. The NFL doesn't care. That's like the opposite of the Cowboys holding streak. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Where they the had ca- their opponents hadn't been called for a hold in yeah. like a year. Yeah. Insane. More. So fill in the blank. Anthony Davis is 877-881-1053. 877-881-1053. And is anyone going to have a positive trait, description, or word for AD who did not return after getting checked for a concussion? Chris Haynes says no concussion, but he was put in a wheelchair, which of course has Paul Pierce trending this morning for being overly mm. dramatic. Who's got a word? Fill in the blank. Anthony Davis is. Anthony Davis. Oh, man. Whale? He's a whale. He's a whale. He's a if we had whale? him on the show, would he be a whale? Yeah. Of course. That's true. Okay. So he is a whale. He's a whale. That's correct. He okay. is a whale. I'm going to defend that. That was the right page. Okay. Uh, Anthony Davis is. Riddle. Oh, okay. Mr. Glass. Um, Anthony Davis is <sighs> unrealized ability. I mean, it's he should be his legacy should be so much more than it is. I agree. Totally agree with both. I was uh, I mean, the the harshest word, the 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 quickest word is soft. Uh, and I know that, you know, you're not supposed to say that about players in sports anymore. It's it's just, it's ridiculous. The back-to-back stats, the odd game, the even games, not calling for the basketball, not wanting the basketball, and and then the concussion thing. His arm was paralyzed against the Grizzlies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now he's been concussed. It didn't even look like that serious of a shot from Looney. So uh, the Lakers got to h- hope for good AD game six Saturday night. So there we are. Good luck. A lot, that's a lot to rest on. It's a lot to rest on. 877-881-1053. Trekwreck.com text line. The Rangers beat Seattle yesterday 4-3. What? One of the lines on the Trekwreck.com fan text. Anthony Davis is Brandon Roy with a ring. Which is Ooh, harsh. But Brandon Roy, like, that was legit. He I was know. actually hurt. No one ever thought Brandon Roy was soft. That's harsh, though. Yeah, no one ever <laughs> thought that. I remember Brandon Roy against the Mavs. Uh, in those series. Okay, so Rangers get it done. They continue to lead in the American League West, and hopefully they pad that lead by taking on the sorry athletics tonight. 840, same puck drop 
time as the Stars against Seattle. They get the 4-3 win. Dane Dunning and some timely offensive production helped them win the series against the Mariners. We got another baseball story, though. Dealing with Mookie Betts. Yeah. That's what a star looks like, Nando. That's what a star looks like, Nando. Mookie Betts staying at an Airbnb to avoid a haunted hotel in Milwaukee. I'm assuming this is pronounced the Fister. Yeah. Like the old pitcher for the Mariners, Doug Fister? Yep, but PF. PF. Oh, okay. Yeah. The Fister Hotel, one of downtown Milwaukee's most iconic historic buildings. You got a four out of five on Yelp. Apparently, Bassick has not stayed there. Get a two out of five. Um, but it gets mixed reviews amongst Major League players. And Mookie Betts said, no. They have a reputation for being haunted. I'm out. Airbnb. I'm not worried about the supernatural. Just in case the stories are true, not happening. He stayed there once but could not relax. I couldn't sleep. Every noise, I'd be like, is that something? Airbnb must have helped. Mookie hit a leadoff home run in the next day game. Dodgers 6-2 win on Tuesday night. So we've had two of these experiences together. One OKC when we went from Mavs Thunder in the playoffs, RJ, and the other was in the Salisbury Steak. Yeah, in the Tenderloin. Oh, the Tenderloin. Yeah. So this hotel, I mean, apparently it's loaded with instances of haunted phenomenon. Um, this is great music. Oh, it is. Yeah, we stayed in um, the the Pearl. It's called the Pearl Hotel. I said it was great music. Oh, they said it was bad music. <laughs> no, we had an ad pop up because I don't pay for premium on YouTube like Bobby does. <laughs> so <you're> playing, <laughs> okay, so truth be told, you're playing it off of that. The, uh, I ad saw the ad pop up, and so I pot it down because I didn't know what was it going to say. And then, yeah, perfect yeah. timing there. <laughs> Good. So, the Pearl Hotel is very, very sketchy. Like, Sean's initials... We're, we're carved in the inside of the elevator yeah. when we check in. The one in OKC, I wasn't worried about. Was that the one with like the shining hallway? We had that. We had this. We went. We had to cut through a ballroom. Yeah. And this ballroom looked like it was straight out of the shining. Yeah. Um. Very very creepy. And you could tell. You could feel the presence there. Uh. I was a little bit. It was in my mind in the San Francisco one. Yeah. It was the uh, the Grand Hotel in Mackinac Island in Michigan where we went to. That's where I was going to do my engagement before it was ruined. Haunted. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's definitely haunted. We were walking through one of the halls, and she took a photo, and you could see an orb, oh, like, God. floating through. It was really, really creepy. My father-in-law believes in all this. Bryce Harper uh, told a story about this Fister Hotel where he had, like, all of his clothes were thrown all over the room when he got back one night. Uh, this is creepy. This is a creepy place. Bassick said all baseball hotels are awesome, have to be five stars. It's in the CBA. So this is a four-star? Did they violate... The Mookie Betts violate, uh, get the Dodgers in trouble with the CBA, a four out of five. Oh, Would you sleep separately? A lot of people love this stuff. They want to go and flirt with the supernatural. Have you stayed in one? Have you avoided one? Would you do it? Your experiences with it. Staying in a haunted hotel? Yeah, the subject we've been talking about no, for I'm five just minutes. Saying, no, <laughs> I'm just saying, like, hotel specifically, not, like, issues with, like, haunted somewhere but just specific hotels i've never dealt with that. haunted period there was a, a house in austin whatever makes for the better radio when i was a kid thank thanks coach uh there there was a a a house in austin where our friends lived at when i was like four or five years old that we were all convinced was haunted like they lived there and there was this weird closet where we'd have to go in and get games and we swore every time we walked in there there was like a like furry something that would just like rub your neck and there was nobody around <laughs> there was no like everybody's like it's probably a coat brush it nope that wasn't in there i swear to this day something was grabbing our neck when we'd go in there hey pay i don't believe in ghosts so it wouldn't bother me Good now job. now i'm not gonna stay in like some broken down house in the middle of the woods you know that has no lights or anything like that's just stupid crazy Bougie. but like a, a hotel like if it's haunted uh, try me Try me. Yeah. Wow. Come on, ghost. Bowing up. Casper, I'm not afraid of you. Right, do you believe in aliens, UFOs? No. Yeah. UFOs, yes, but not aliens. Hmm. Good job. I'm proud of you. Well done. <laughs>
So this is Mookie Betts getting a little bit freaked out. Bassick said Yelp is not the judge. Uh, <laughs> yeah, wow. it's uh, so uh, I just Googled five star hotels in Milwaukee and, you know, it says the fist are on like on uh, on Expedia's 4.5 stars. Uh, it also on the five star hotels in Milwaukee, it is listed on there as one of the five stars. I don't know how they come up with the rankings. I'm sure it's triple A or something like that. All right, five what you, diamond award. What do you believe in more? The Haunted Hotel or Bo Jackson having hiccups for a year straight? I've had the hiccups since last July, and I'm getting the medical procedure done the end of this week, I think, to try to remedy it. But I'm busy at the hospital sitting up with doctors poking me and shining lights down my throat and you probing me every way they can to uh, find out why I got these hiccups. So that's the only reason that I wasn't there. Have we figured it out? Hell no. <laughs> I have done everything. It scare me. Drink water upside down. Smell the ass of a porcupine. <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> what? <laughs> that was my favorite. That was my favorite part. Smelling the butt of a porcupine. I've never heard of this. Uh, that was from WJOX in Alabama. You've never heard of smelling the butt of a porcupine? No, I've never heard of that, and I've never heard <laughs> of hiccups. We should try. <laughs> Bet show payoff. Show Man, payoff have you right seen there. those poor dogs that get into a fight with a porcupine? It's all over their face, all the porcupine uh, needles. Really? Oh, it's terrible. It looks so yeah, sad. Yeah, that happened in Homeward Bound. Yeah. All right. Longest you've had them, or you've heard of someone having them? This sounds like... This is this would be torture. I am very lucky. I get the hiccups. I take a half sip of water. They're gone. I have never struggled with getting rid of the hiccups. Knock on Corian, knock on wood, yeah. whatever this is. I have never struggled with hiccups. I, the only time I would get them and they would last was when uh, I was a smoker, and I would I would like I would catch an inhale, and I would every time I would inhale I would, I would hiccup and I wouldn't be able to get rid of them for like. I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes, but they eventually go away. I've never struggled with this. My son, when he starts hiccuping right before nighttime, I'm like, crap. It's like, I was almost rid of him. I almost had him in the room, in the crib. And then he starts hiccuping. I don't know if I believe this. I'm sure. I, I can't think of, like, of all the things that could happen to you, 10 months, that might be the most miserable thing. Why didn't he hiccup during the interview? Do you have to do it within, you know, every 10 seconds? I feel like if you have a chronic case that, like, if when I think of hiccups, I think of them happening every 10 to 15 seconds. Uh, hiccups. In rare cases, they can last longer than 48 hours due to a medical condition or a medicine that you are taking. Mm. So let me know if, uh, on the truckwork.com text line. This is death by paper cuts, man. Yes. Hiccups for 10 months. I would lose my mind. I'd go crazy. Oh. Oh. And Ugh. do the usual remedies work for you? Getting scared, upside down, hold your breath. The peanut butter trick. Spoon of peanut butter. Is that? I tried so? that. It worked. Okay. Yeah. Peanut butter. Holding, holding like, your breath. Yeah. That stuff like that works. Holding my breath, I felt like used to work, but the last couple you times should, I've gotten it, you should it try it longer. Okay. Let's see on the text. Do it. How Let's long? Uh, how, how long have people had the hiccups and are you believing Bo? Uh, look up the Bobby's world record holding. for having the hiccups the longest. A Bobby's friend of mine holding his breath. A friend of mine had this. It was a reaction to prescription muscle relaxer. Took Benadryl to get rid of it. There was a man that had hiccups for 68 years. My dad had this too. I have them daily due to a weak valve at the bottom of my esophagus. Oh. Um, how long did you last? I just saw you swallow. <laughs> it's a bad running joke, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> is that it? Uh, that's really, let's see. Hold your breath for 30 seconds. Drink out of a cup from the opposite side of the cup. What? Oh, yeah. People say that. So, like, what? you take this and, like, you somehow drink like this, the opposite side of the cup. He thinks he's that he's still been holding his breath. His face isn't getting red or changing whatsoever. Hey, this is probably Spittle's favorite part of the show. Eight, seven, oh, yeah. seven. <laughs> 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 uh, all right. What do we know? How long was that? 48. That was impressive. Maybe I'll try to top that next segment. Uh, you okay? I got to catch my breath. Why don't you give me your asthma pipe? 
I got one. I got 100 pulls up in that thing. Is that what you call it? <laughs> yeah. What do we know about who and when the Dallas Cowboys are facing? The schedule releases tonight. We have the opener, and we have the playoff rematch. We'll go inside the star, then cross talk with KMC next. But let's get you over to the greatness of Diamonds Direct. Invite you to celebrate all the moms out there. This Mother's Day, Diamonds Direct, giving mom a little bit more. To say-
brought to you by the personal injury lawyers, Frankel and Frankel. Life is unpredictable. Accidents happen. Frankel and Frankel are the go-to attorneys for car and truck wrecks in DFW. If you or a loved one have been in an accident, contact the Frankels at 214-333-3333 or just go to truckwreck.com. NFL schedule release is tonight. Here's what we think we know based upon all these leaks. And the National Football League is kind of announcing things on their own. Brandon Tierney, BT, Choppy's boy uh, from the Tiki Barber Show in New York, says that it's going to be Cowboys at Giants to open up Sunday Night Football. That's no surprise. We also have a leak of Cowboys 49ers Week 5 on Sunday Night Football. That's from the NFL. That's from the NFL. Jets are going to open the season at home against Buffalo on Monday Night Football. The season is going to open with Lions at Chiefs. RJ's Detroit Lions are getting the love in the opener at the Champs. Yep. And the Chiefs will host the Raiders on Christmas. This is it's a tough one for me because I, I love both quarterbacks. I love Patrick Mahomes. I love Jared Goff. Uh, so I, I am... Keen eye on this one, but we know what's going to happen. Chiefs are going to win by 20. Tom Brady is going to be honored at the Patriots home opener. Oh, look at that. At Gillette. So Robert Kraft just made that announcement. Bobby, other key games and the Miles, the Miles program. Let's add it up. Yeah, so the amount of travel that each team has to do obviously tends to skew towards teams on the West Coast. So every uh, every year when you go on the road for games, mm-hmm. you end up having to travel. If you're Seattle, you got to go to the yeah. East Coast, San Francisco. These teams end up traveling a lot. So let, let, uh, let me let me take a 20 second time out here. How much does tonight really matter and what are the real things that teams look for and that we should be looking for to determine the season? Um so like Bobby is saying, like so last year um Miami played a game in L.A., and then the next week they played a game in San Francisco. Yeah. That's bad. Um, Playing a Sunday game, Sunday night game, and then have to turn around and play a a Thursday game. Okay, that's bad. Uh, Playing three games in a row on the road. Right? That's bad. So those are are some of the ones. Or, Or facing a tough team. Who's coming off a bye and you play a Monday night game the week before? Short rest games, uh, you know, where your bye falls. Um a lot of these, these players also look at the cold. Well, yeah, they they look at that. Yeah, where where you are at what time of month, uh, you know, are you gonna end up in Buffalo in December as opposed to September? You know, those sorts of things are things that you'd look at. A couple years ago, some things you don't even necessarily are looking for, you just discover them. I think it was 2019. The Cowboys didn't have a single uh, back-to-back home game the entire year. And so that was something where they realized, okay, basically every other week we're on the road. We're traveling. And so those are some of the things that you you just look for basically travel fatigue uh, and and how some of those things set up, where your division games are stacked. So that also meant they didn't have back-to-back road games that year either? No, they did. It was the bye had staggered them, or they they started with a home and finished with a home. It was I don't remember what it was, but they did have back-to-back road. And the Packers are apparently getting five primetime games. I mean, look, they, they are a legendary franchise that has a ton of fans. If the Cowboys were are a 5-11 and 11 team, they would still probably come close to maxing out their prime time. Yes, so yeah, get get pretty close to because the Cowboys just always draw regardless. Um, but uh, Bill Spiros from the Boston Herald oh. did research on the amount of travel. How far is your NFL team going to travel this year in terms of miles and time zones crossed? Like how many times you end up crossing time zones? So the total mileage, the number one team. No surprise, in fact, who the top like four are because they're all on the coast. So number one is Seattle. They're going to travel 31,000 miles. San Francisco's next. Miami, Rams, Chargers. Like all those teams on the coast are going to travel a lot. But when you get down a little ways, the number one amount of travel in the NFC East is the Dallas Cowboys. They're going to be traveling oh, yeah. 22,620 miles, which is six miles more than the New York Giants. It's the 11th most miles traveled 
of any team in the league. So they are actually in the top third, basically, of, of teams with the most travel difficulties in terms of stretches. That actually, the fact that the Giants are so close tells me the Giants have a lot more long road trips because the Giants will have to go to Philadelphia, which is not, that's a train ride. They won't even get on a plane. Those will like be, be fun Monday mornings for Bobby. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, the, if, they, if they are opening on the road against the Giants, I probably won't go to sleep. Like yeah, I'll probably just the plane. Uh, I can't sleep on the plane. Just take a pop a pop a pop something. You want me to pop something and then roll in here off of something that made me go to sleep? I don't think that would work. I don't know. I, don't know. I, I think, sleep I think we're out of trouble. No, what is the Gi so the Giants' road games this year are Washington and Philly? Then they got to go to Arizona, so that's Glendale. Then you've got uh, San Francisco, yeah. Buffalo, Vegas, New Orleans. Yeah. So the Ve I mean those are those three San Fran. Vegas and Arizona. I mean, those are five Miami. hour flights, six hour flights. My, that's a lot. That's a lot of travel for them. We go to Phoenix and it's, it's a two hour flight. All right. Former NFL head coach, Jim Harbaugh, not John. Jim Harbaugh is exposing what's really wrong with America today. We're taking it to one of RJ's favorites in the backyard. Yeah. One of the things, what's well, front yard now? I got to pull in the backyard. I don't have a long backyard. Whoa. Whoa. Uh, so he did an interview with Sports Illustrated, and he said if he was not a football coach. And this or, is basically our new college team, the Dallas Wolverines. Yeah. So uh, we know that this has been instilled in our draft class. Yeah. So they kind of they said what would be his preferred choice if he had pursued another skilled trade? Quote, I would be a lawnsman. That's what I do. Mowing the lawn. Are they called lawnsmen? I don't think so. I think they're called landscapers. Okay. Mowing the lawn is one of the great feelings I have in life. It accomplishes three things. I clear my mind, uh, or I'm thinking of new plays. I feel good about what I accomplish. I either make money or I save money, which is true. Yeah. I enjoy mowing the lawn. I get out there. Sometimes I don't even put music on. Sometimes I don't even put my, my earbuds in. Sometimes I'm just out there and in my thoughts for... 30 minutes, an hour, however long it takes you to do it. Is and I'm just in my thoughts, which is a dangerous place to be sometimes. Is your lawn that big? Just the front yard? Takes oh, I have a corner. <laughs> well. I'm on the corner. I got to do the side yard, Sean. <laughs> uh, big big things. Big things here. But uh, he told SI, he voiced dismay over what he calls a growing number of Ann Arbor, Michigan residents enlisting the services of landscape companies. Mm. He said he frequently encountered guests uh, I'm sorry, residents, namely children, mowing their lawns when he first took the Michigan job, but that's no longer the case. And he goes, it makes me sad when I drive around Ann Arbor. It used to be kids mowing the lawns. I was that kid out mowing lawns, earning some money. Now it's a truck and a crew at every house. And and my thought to this was, well, Jim, your first year in Ann Arbor was eight years ago. Those kids are in college. <laughs> they don't live there anymore. <laughs> they're playing for you. They're playing for you. No wonder they're not mowing the lawn anymore. They don't even live there. <laughs> That's why mom and dad are like, dad's like, hey, I live in Ar Ann Arbor. Yeah. I ain't getting, I'm not going to get out there mowing the lawn. We get a lawn service. That yeah. is wild to think Harbaugh has been there eight years. I know. That is not, that feels like just yesterday he left San Francisco. Now, I wish I was more manly in many areas. Lawn being one of them. Yesterday, shout out Curtis, uh, helped me fix my sprinkler issue and, uh, and David. But Choppy was like, oh yeah. He was the second person who was like, I can fix your sprinklers in like 30 minutes. I, I, well, I, it would be 30 minutes because you got you have 12 of them that are done. Yeah. Because you got to dig them out. Oh. Like, so you just dig a, you yeah. take, you know those little small little um, garden shovels? Yeah. When I mean, you dig around the sprinkler head, you unscrew it, you get a new one, pop it in. But no lawn therapy for me. I'm not going out there when it's 105. Uh, I'm just not doing it. I'm scared of seeing a snake. Like, cooking for me is like that therapy, the grilling. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? But I can't wait to make my kid do all this crap. Take out the trash, mow the lawn, all of it. Oh, calling for the remote. You, oh. call, you call a child from the back of the house just to hand you the remote. Right now I got him. I was very jealous of um, uh, former fangirl Heather. Remember Heather? Yeah. She brought her kids over one day, same age as Ollie, and she's like, beer, go. <laughs> Dang. It was so impressive. Wow. I got him. I got him like going to the trash can and back, but I haven't gotten the alcohol command yet. What about at the Russell Estates? 
who mows the lawn? Did you ever do it? And when did you stop? Um, so this was back when we were just in Mansfield, not Rockwall. I have not mowed since we were moved to Rockwall, but I, I did it. Who does it now? Uh, the father. Why don't you do it? Uh, usually because I'm busy. You know, I'm, <laughs> I'm out and about, you know, socializing. Sure, I got plans. Absolutely. You know, so I, I can't what always what do chores it. do they make you do around the house still? Oh, I mean, like I'll take out the trash, do some dishes, stuff like that. Okay. Does I'll, he like doing the lawn? Uh, no, but I mean, he has to. The, my parents have thought about paying people, but they're just not at that level yet. They're he like, we're, we're not going to do that. You live in Rockwall. Yeah. You can you can afford to do it, I think. Now, in Mansfield, I think when I was like 13, 14, right before high school, my dad had me do it just as like a teaching lesson. Same thing with like changing out a tire, doing that. Mm -hmm. What about you? And if you, okay, don't answer. When he gets in a house, uh -huh. mm -hmm. if he ever gets in a house, will he mow the grass? Oh, I would, I would assume not. There's no way in hell. I would assume not. No way. Why? I was you, the one who had to do it. I had to do it. I love spending money. No, I had to do it. <laughs> I, I, had to do, I had to do the front and backyard growing up for years. Would you do it? Yeah. You would mow it? Yes. Wow. I can see Kristen out there on a push lawn mower. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not kidding. Like, I would do it, but that would be something where I could see Kristen saying, you're not doing it right. Like, let me do it. Do you and enjoy? So, did you enjoy it? Yeah, it didn't bug me. Especially, especially if you knocked it out earlier in the morning, like yeah. on, in summer. Because when you're a kid, so it's cool. It's like it's great. I had a riding mower too. We had, we, we had two acres. It was great. Whoa, man! If you get a oh. riding mower, I mean, that's fantastic. That's badass. Yeah, you want to do that? Uh huh. It's like driving. Yo, it was amazing. Yeah, I, I absolutely loved it. I did my neighbor's lawn. They had they had a they had a girl who was my age who always like. You know, lay out. Oh, yeah. The, on the, on you the, felt like the Patrick deck. Dempsey out there. Yeah, that's great. And so can't buy me love. That was Jim Harbaugh saying one of the problems. Youth of America, not mowing your own lawns anymore. Your kids do it? Uh, but you, but you want to do it. I want to do it. So I've had my kids, like, I, I think it's important to show them how to do it. So I've, like, I've been out there, you know, teaching my kids how to do it. But I'm, I'm I, I mow my lawn barefoot. So they see me mowing it, it oh. barefoot. And they're like, can we mow barefoot? And I'm like, no, dude, no, you can't mow it barefoot. But I don't know that they, I think they have a service at their house. I'm not sure. Okay. I'm not sure. And Jana taking advantage of that. that well, she's money. she's married now. <laughs> she's married now. So she's, uh, I don't know if he's going to do it or not. They okay. 877-881-1053. Truckwreck.com. Text on. I would love. And who has an HOA who actually mows the front lawn? I'm having this fight with my next HOA. We almost, like, I almost moved into an HOA that did that. 214 does it. My oh. HOA mows my front yard. They just So they would mow the front. They would pick the weeds. I almost moved into an area. But the problem is that the yeah. HOA fee is like 250 a month versus what I pay is like 50 a month. Gosh. I'm getting, I'm getting robbed. <laughs> I'm getting robbed everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. HOAs, how do we get rid of them for all time? All right, let's cross talk with the fellas. It's the KMC Masterpiece next with Sean, RJ, and Roberto right here on The Fan. But what is next for you? You're in the same old job. Like, Friday can't come soon.
too. Swings here and hammers on the left field. Kelnick back, track, turns, looks, that ball out of here! Long gone beyond the Rangers' bullpen. That was a blast from Marcus, and the Rangers are on the board. A leadoff home run here in the top of the third inning, and we're tied at one. It is now time for Crosstalk with the KMC Masterpiece. RJ Choppy is getting it. Is that on a banjo? So, there would be a, a little banjo action here. Okay. Did you ever... No. You, you still have the fake guitar or the uh, midlife guitar? Are midlife? you sure that's a banjo? That didn't look like a banjo. I, I, it I'm sounded just, more electric guitarish. No, to no, me. I'm doing the old. No, what's like, RJ doing? Yeah, I'm oh. doing the old, uh, just old West Frontier kind of guy mm -hmm. going thing here. Uh, yeah, I've got the uh, I've got the acoustic and uh, I've got a bass. You never tried to guitar. sell them? Why would I sell? Them? I plan on uh, rocking it, man. <laughs> I'm just gonna learn how, how to play. How long have you been playing it on the? Ten years. I've had the I've had the guitar. Uh, let's see. I would say about seven years. I've had the the acoustic. Okay. okay. And your pops musician. Yeah, he was a drummer. Very good. I got his drums too, so I could. I, I all I need now is a band, somebody who could sing, and I got myself a band. <laughs> Can you I sing, Sean? I also need to learn how to play the instruments, but whatever. I wish I could sing. Have you guys given up on giving Jared home run calls? I thought about that when I heard it, just because I know the disappointment about yeah. Cincinnati. He yeah. should really work on his own home run calls first, then we can give him our own. <laughs> that is so rude. <laughs> out of here. Hey. Is that his line now? Is that it? Out of here. Would you guys be surprised? Houston, we have liftoff. Would you guys be surprised 40 years from now if we're alive? If Jared gets the Ford Frick Award? Oh, if Jared dude. goes into the Hall of Fame? No. Absolutely not. I think he might. He works I think, super hard. I think, in a way, he's going to be the voice of the Rangers. Like the people right now that are oh. five to 10 years old. Watch your back, Hicksy. I think, <laughs> well, I think Hicksy's great. I'm, I just. I don't know. I feel like if Jared, you're the voice Jared of the team is, for 30 years, you're going to go. Yeah, is Jared 30? Yeah. I don't, I'm, okay. I mean, if we like, want to have a real discussion, he's, he's, he's a year years. older than me. So he's 35, I think, now. Okay. If you, if you want to have a real discussion about it, you asked. Yeah, you don't think so. Do uh, <laughs> It's okay. Like, Do we uh, believe that when you hear Jared, are you hearing like he's got the it? I mean, is he going to be as good as Eric Nadell as a play by play guy? The odds are probably not. I love the guy. He's my best friend. I love him, but is is Jared special? He's your, your best friend. In your face to I mean, all your that's other friends. Delightful. I love, I love wow, Jared. He annoys the hell out of me, but I thought we were tight. I rely. Uh, well, well he, here's the thing. Oh, he oh. It, let's just say he becomes <laughs> uh -huh. the play-by-play -play voice. He's not it, really my best friend. He's like one of them. <laughs> yeah. Now that I think, what good, the hell, John? He's a, he's a good friend. <laughs> he's, a, he's an awesome friend. If I've met him a couple he's times. A person I know. Yeah. <laughs> if you're the play-by-play -play voice of a major league team for 30 years, you're gonna you're gonna go in. You think so? I just I think he's sure. I, I would imagine. Let's look. So. Let's look up radio play-by-play -play people yeah. in the Hall of Fame. I imagine like a thirty-year voice. You shouldn't. You shouldn't it, get in just on long. You know, but it, it, but if you're if you've been there thirty years, chances are you're pretty good, right? Like I, that's. I think he's very good, and I think he could hang around for 30, 40 years like you talk about, and that right there is why he will never do our home run calls. Yeah, he's, a, he's like, this is too early in a legacy I'm trying to build. I'm not going to turn this into a bit. So is this the Ford C Frick? Yeah. I guess so. Yeah. Do they do this okay. with football? Like, can you Brad Sham get in, or is that a, a no go? Like, he can't yeah, do it because they don't care. Like, NFL doesn't care about putting announcers in, in their the, hall. In of the, the National Baseball Hall of Fame, they have the Ford C Frick Award. You know what and I that say? Goes into Frick Ford Frick. Okay, all right. And yes, Mike, there are there are plenty of radio announcers that are in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. With that award as their, okay. it's not like they're. Oh, hey, look, they played baseball award. No, this is their this right. is specific category. Okay, for them. God, he does the, work the, super hard too. The eighties were full of overrated that that guys. Should get getting you in the Hall in. of Fame. Bob Uecker, uh, but in. I think it will help yeah. propel him. Yeah, and I, I'm sure that if Jared heard this, he's sleeping right now, probably in Oakland, or he's at some random gym shooting hoops. Yeah, but. I'm sure you'd be like, this is stupid that I would you would consider me as a Hall of Famer. Yeah, I'm just saying if Jared, if we're talking about 2050, yeah, and he's been the voice of the Texas Rangers for let's say 25 years, yeah, I think you start thinking about everybody. Eric Nadell to me is the voice of the Rangers. Chuck Morgan is the voice of the Rangers when I go to the game because I've heard him announce from O to B McDowell now yeah. to Marcus Simeon uh, up to bat. Did you find? Play-by-play -play guys that are in. Oh yeah, there's tons of them in. There is. Oh yeah, Marty Brenneman. Marty uh, Brenneman's in. He's a legend. I mean, look, if Tony Kubek's in, then then anybody should be able to get in. But from Bob Croatia, Uecker, you got for the Bulls. 
You yeah, got Tim McCarver. I beat you on the joke. Damn it. Tim McCarver, Eric Nadell is in. Legend, legend. Uh -huh. Dick Inberg, legend, Bob Costas. Legend, legend. legend. Uh, John Miller, my boy. John Miller's John in. Miller. So back in the legend. 80s, former they Rangers in. announcer, John Miller. They, Was he? Yeah, in the 80s. They put Ernie Harwell in. Legend. Uh, Vin Scully. Legend. Uh, Kurt Gowdy. Uh, let's see. Look. Jack Buck, Lindsey Nelson, Harry Carey. Look, I got my problems with the Metroplex as a, as a diehard sports town, oh, but dear. we might be... Great announcers. Oh, Mel I Allen. Mean, who beats us with announcers? I don't know the other cities, but... Yeah, we're spoiled. Followell's fantastic. Coop's a monster. Nadell's a Hall of Famer. Sham's a beast. If we could just fix Bally. Bally's baseball Bally's group. studio Pre group. Pre- and post-game oh. show. <laughs> 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 I could fix it real quick. I think it's an award-winning pre- and post-game show. It's yeah. the stuff in between I have questions about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, That's a pretty They've been arc. winning a lot. The Rangers yeah. are playing well, man. I we think he doesn't series. mean the on-the-field oh. product. <laughs> uh -huh. I Mark Holtz was great. A lot of people around here at this point, it's been 25 years since Mark Holtz died. But and I mean, that's who I thought of immediately as the voice of the Rangers. I still think of Mark Holtz. So, uh, but I, I hear you. We had that. the mall stores when we were growing up. Hello, win column. That's where that came from. Exactly. Was Mark Holtz. People, was it the Holtz like store where you could buy like hats or posters or whatever? Was that kid? his? I don't think it was Holtz. Uh, it was somebody. Harmon? No, Harmon. Killebrew? Oh, well, go yeah. ahead. Mm -hmm. Mark Harmon or when, Harmon Killebrew. When, when I first got here, people were mourning Lewin. Gone. I they love, love Lewin. Lewin. Touchdown Chargers. I, I enjoyed Lewin. I thought oh he was really gosh. good. I thought he was a good broadcaster. Yeah, so did the Padres and the Mets or the Chargers. He went he had UCLA too. He, he was had Red I mean, Sox at one point. He went everywhere. I mean, he was with the Cubs as well at one point. Where before, is he before, now? Is he like I think UCLA, right? Or is USC? UCLA? What? I mean, he was. I mean, he, he's a he's a pro man. Yeah, he's, he's UCLA uh, basketball as well. So, what was the problem with him? Like too sarcastic? Like the jokes? It was. I think a lot of it was like he was he was great when the team was bad. Because we talk about Seinfeld and pop culture yeah. and. I always thought it was because of our corporate office didn't approve the name of his show here on the fan too. Well, <laughs> corporate office or partner? Ooh, no, I thought. No. I I guess we'll double check. I always thought it was the corporate office. Yeah, uh, he was too busy lapping Mike out on the track. Uh, <laughs> right. All right, Corey, what's coming up? <laughs> How many people know exactly <laughs> what you're talking about? No, right I think now. every I year it. when we get to spring training, Mike brings up that yeah. story at least every one time. time. Hey, Mike, I need you to lose <laughs> so it shows that I'm the best. Uh, 1020, the keys to taking the series tonight for the stars. We rock that today at 10 at 1020. And uh, NBA playoff times, what did Luca do that's historic again? Mm. Mm. Mike, did oh, you dude. think, did anyone think or watch that Anthony Davis was concussed last night? God, can you imagine how many Dwight Powell concussions there would be? Because he intentionally gets hit in the head four times to draw <laughs> offensive fouls on the other team. Yeah. <laughs> but that game was actually closer than I thought. I thought it was going to be like a 30-point game by the time we get to halftime. Yep. It's just weird, isn't it? Like, yeah. when something happens to him, it is catastrophic. Yeah. Like, he cannot handle – he just can't uh, – his pain tolerance, which nobody knows your pain tolerance, right? That's you. Yeah. But, but you get an idea. Yeah. Like, Anthony Davis's pain tolerance is just miserable, it seems like. Like, if he gets hit in an awkward way, sometimes – I remember as a kid, James Donaldson got hit in the mouth versus the Lakers in the Western Conference Finals. Started bleeding out of his mouth. Now, and he was like, yeah, you know, like the taste of your own blood, it got me going a little bit more. Oh, God. <clears throat> and so, Fact. like, Weird. there's times where you get hit, even in a pickup game, and I haven't played basketball in forever, but there are times where, you know, you accidentally get an elbow to the head. Nose, and man. you kind of like get... Yeah, it yeah, stuns it you stuns. and your eyes get watered, but you get kind of a little bit Rage. mad. There's yeah. a little bit of an adrenaline rush that goes with it. And Anthony Davis is like, I am out. Yeah. There's been a couple of UFC fighters and they'd be like, well, they don't really get going until you bust them open and yeah. then they'll start going. So. Anthony Davis or Jake DeGrom, better pain tolerance or ability to play through. And that's your uh, that's your baseball basketball comp right there, <laughs> both of those guys. Oh, that is tough. <laughs> you ne you can't rely on them. Degrom's always arm right. Does de here's the one thing about Degrom which yeah. I don't remember because I, I follow him but don't follow him. It hasn't been like well my ankles bugging me or my knees bugging me. It seems to always be his forearm elbow. Is that right yeah, or wrong? And sometimes I just wonder if. It's just DeGrom has a different mindset of oh this God. is a finely tuned machine, and if it's 99%, right. that's not good enough to yes. go. Going back to May of 2018, yes. hyperextended right elbow, 
June of 19, hip. July of 20, back. This is uh, Jim DeGrom? Yeah, okay, August of 20, neck. So he's like an September of 20, okay. hamstring. May of 21, side. May of 21, Good God. right side. All right, I'm going Anthony Davis. June of, <laughs> June of 21, elbow. June of 21, shoulder. July of 21, forearm. Uh, July of 21, Twice. forearm again. Uh, April of 22, shoulder. April of 23, the wrist. April of 23, elbow. You know what's interesting about that is a lot of times position players will make fun of pitchers. We're kind of like kickers and punters in football type of deal. <laughs> oh. um, but he came up as a shortstop. As in he went to college, he was a shortstop. So a lot of times people think of, well, he's a position player who figured out how to pitch. So he's like a little bit tougher or whatever. He's not kind of a pitcher who can only go every fifth day or whatever. But he is a guy I didn't <clears> – I'm glad you did that just because now it gives me a better background of – we don't need to just maybe be concerned when he comes back just about his forearm yeah. elbow situation. It could be the next time. His hip, his well, back. Well, my his back goes elbow. out yeah. on me because I haven't his really been hamstring. able to practice as much. So that's kind of nerve wracking. By the way, my bad. Twitter pointing out, put some respect on the stars play by play broadcast. You're absolutely right. Uh, they, they're tremendous. The whole product, like the studio team, the on air, um, all, the, all the coverage. Waddle, yeah. yeah. That's how I learned hockey. Like when I was young in high school and they arrived, I was watching and Razor and Ralph taught me hockey. I didn't know anything about the sport at all, but there they were on, was it Fox Sports back then? I don't know what it, it was. It was probably. HSC. Yeah. Yeah. I think it had already switched from HSC. <laughs> UPN. And game five tonight. It oh is the KMC Masterpiece next on 105.3 The Fan. Coming up at 10.
Fan Studio, secured by DFWSecurity.com. It's the KNC Masterpiece on 105.3 The Fan. KNC Masterpiece right here on 105.3 The Fan, where I can tell Mike Bassick is already getting hyped for the XFL Championship. We've got him. We've got Corey Majors. We have Joey Erickson, who I can't believe he can even focus today with Game 5 approaching. How do you do it, Joey? How do you stay so focused you know, on so many things. I wish I could tell you. Oh, I, I wish I could tell you. Joey. Sorry. So you got to focus a little. You're more wiping right. the nose. Like, do you think he's not focused because he didn't <laughs> let you finish your question? Or yeah, you said how can he? Like you were like, it's it's wild that he's yeah. even here today because of this, and so you just saw the unfocusedness mm-hmm. uh, right there because I paused on purpose to trick him into that moment. I really, the one thing I love about Joey is when he told us that he just came to the office with his hair the way it is. Because I mm-hmm. thought that he like took thirty to forty five minutes painstakingly crafting his hair just like that and all natural. Baby. I, yeah, I was like, I kind of hate that, but <laughs> if you just show up, yeah, that's fine. He walked out of he walked out of his uh, house one day, and his neighbor said, "You're going to work. Where are you going?" And he said, "I'm going to work." And he said, "Like that?" And he was like, "I work in radio, baby," mm-hmm. and that's the way it should be, man. Yeah, it's most jobs. What percentage of jobs do you think they're like, I really don't give an F what you <sighs> dress like? That's a question for the Tolos. Okay. Uh, if you have a job where your boss doesn't care how you dress, let us know right now. Okay. Now, if we can go ahead and fire off on the sports front, cut number four, it's time to celebrate a few different things. First pitch is hit the third, a one hopper, snagged by Young from near the line, the throw across in time. And Will Smith does it again. He goes one, two, three through the Seattle order here in the ninth inning and preserves a four to three Ranger win. Rangers take the series two games to one. Now, Corey, you were just talking about, was it yesterday, two days ago, that they only had two one-run victories. Now you put another one-run victory on the slate. Question, Corey. Yes. Tough question. I have, okay. Would you have ever guessed the Rangers would be up by one run versus the Mariners with six outs to go or maybe a few more and that they would just hold the game right there? That the Rangers wouldn't have to score more, kind of like they did uh, in the last series against the Angels, right? Of all these gone eight innings, it's three to zero, and you're up by three, not one. And then they tack on seven. You're like, okay, we're in good shape here. Um, uh, This but- year? Well, because at, in the past, like four years, no, no, but I'm saying but kind of year? after that Cincinnati series, uh, after no. kind of what they've been doing, like I was pretty nervous yeah. going into the eighth and ninth inning up by only one run. Yeah, it's it. This is this is a team that's going to have to prove it often, um, and they still have work to do in their bullpen. I, I think the Rangers front office understands that they still have work to grow there, and I don't know, maybe they do develop it uh, at some point, and they do have something. And they're like, you know what? We're seeing something we like down in the minor league system. I'm not sure about that, but no, Mike, I would have never guessed that going into one run uh, or going into that situation that they would have held it because you feel like you have one pitcher you can trust kind of right well, now. And to to that point, you also would not have gone into this game and said, Dane Dunning is going to pitch better than Luis Castillo. Like, that's just, right. I would have been like, yeah, great. Let's take that. But that's what happened, right? Mm -hmm. And, like, I go back to Jared said something yesterday, which I totally get, about Jonah Heim perhaps being the MVP of the team. And that's one of the things I love about this team is I think he can throw out several different ones. And I'm not saying he's the absolute MVP, but I do want to shout out Dane Dunning again for being the multi-tool of this pitching staff that has just been phenomenal. Yes. You can find him pretty much anywhere. It, it, yeah. It, across the board, it's just like, hey, go throw. And he's like, I got you. I think our, before I get to Dane Dunning, when you talked about Jonah Heim, yeah. the, one of our major questions, one was bullpen. We had a good idea about the bullpen situation. That Two made some people mad. was, we are talking about the second half of the lineup. Not even just seven, eight, nine. We were kind of talking about, boy, after four, the first four look really nice. Yeah. But then you get to... Who are you going to get to? Mitch Garver, Jonah Heim, Josh Young. Those are going to be your five, six, seven guys that are kind of sharing in that area. And then you kind of started looking at, all right, then we have 
who's ever playing center field, probably Leoti, who's ever playing left field, which looks like a little bit of a revolving door, yes. which we didn't know. We thought maybe by this time, maybe somebody would be established. I had hoped. And it's kind of like nobody established themselves in left field, but Zeke established himself at shortstop, who has to move out to left field in a week to kind of keep his yep. bat uh, in the lineup. You can put him at DH, too. But uh, with Dane Dunning, Jared Sandler texted me after the game yesterday uh, as they were traveling to Oakland. He said, what do you think of Dane Dunning and his success this year? And I said, well, first off, it's only two starts. Now, he had a lot of success in the pen, yeah. too, so I don't want to take anything away from there. Which is what I was definitely including, for sure. So I said, well, let's see it play out longer, and hopefully it's not a long time. Hopefully all four guys that were in your rotation stay healthy, and Jacob DeGrom comes for back sure. in June and he's healthy, but most likely you're going to deal with other injuries besides Jacob DeGrom in your rotation. It's just the way baseball go. I would say with Dane Dunning, one, he's a really smart guy. We we know this. We've interviewed him. Yes. I, I've talked to people. He's a really smart guy. So, he doesn't have overpowering stuff. Sure. He's always had to, for the most part, in the, your high minor leagues, double-A, triple-A, and in the major leagues, he's had to figure out, how do I get these guys out without just pure domination of stuff? You know what I think about all the time is what your manager said to you, keep trick effing them out there. Yeah. I bet that might be unfair, right. but that's what I always think if somebody has to be, like, crafty. Yes, and so with Dane Dunning, I think he's just gotten smarter and I'm not saying he wasn't smart, but he I think he can really look at his video himself. I think he can he gets help from Mike Maddox and gets help from his catchers sure. and stuff. I'm not discounting them. But I think he's like, you know what? If I put this sequence together, if I would have instead of throwing sinker away there, what if I throw sinker in and then after that sinker in, I double up there and go sinker in, sinker in, and really get him thinking about the sinker to open up the outer half of the plate, or vice versa. I just think that He's a really smart guy. I'm not saying I'm a really smart guy, but I had to figure out around 85, 86 miles an hour how to get out high-level minor league guys and then how to at times get out major league guys. I wasn't ultimately successful in that and staying in the major leagues like Dane Dunning is. But when you throw below average, and Dane Dunning has a below average fastball, when you throw below average, you have to figure out ways on how to get guys out rather than I'm just going to attack the top of the zone here with two strikes or I'm going to throw a bastard breaking ball right here because he doesn't have one. He has an okay breaking ball. It's nice, but it's not great. It's not yeah. a swing and miss breaking ball. So I think he's really figured out how to put better sequences together. I think he's also, if you remember, he struggled in the first inning a lot in his starts for the last two or three years with the Rangers. He would always struggle in the first inning and getting out of the first inning with a zero on the board. And it's only two starts, but it looks like he's better in the first inning. He's not as, let's say, erratic where it felt, yeah. it felt like, I'm forgetting the pitching coach last year. He It felt like 50% of the time he'd have to make a visit to Dane in the first inning to try to get him back on track to try to get him through the first so we could get to the second and third inning where he's better. The other thing, too, he wasn't that bad last year. Yeah, like no, when you look at those no, numbers, good. it wasn't that good. bad. I thought he was going to be one of your starters. Now, clearly, then the Rangers are like, what if we get all the pitchers? And that kind of changed it up. But I thought he was definitely going to be one of your starters. Yeah. Now, there's a whole lot of positivity coming out of this game, and more specifically, this series. So I looked it up, and it's still a long way to go. But you're 22% of the way through the season. The Rangers have the fourth best record in baseball. They have the third best record in the American League. They also have the third biggest divisional lead, which I thought was super fun, which is still only three games. But this is also the first time they have won a series in Seattle in four years. You know, we talked about that the other day, how long it had been since they yeah. had swept like a three-game road series, and y'all were like, Oh, that's too long. Yeah, but, too long. But that just shows how bad this team has been. And I think it's cool to build up these little victories. Does winning a series in Seattle change the world? No. But it's the first time you've done that in four years. So you should be able to be like, that's pretty awesome. I think the other part in, I like you're talking about building up these little victories. Like once you get to a level of confidence of an expectation of yourself, well, then you know, well, I know what it took to get there. And I can't stop doing those things like Derek was talking about yesterday. Uh, but on top of that, I expect myself to win these games. I expect myself to enjoy these moments. And so that uh, when you're not doing those things, you're like, what in the hell do I have to do to get to that point? And then whenever you're there, that's why I believe, Mike, we talk about 
everybody's kind of in this mindset of some point the Rangers have got to come back down. And yeah, there are going to be some ebbs and flows throughout right. the season. But at this point now, they know what they're capable of. So they shouldn't be trying to fi figure it all out. Let me just bounce this off of you, Kevin, because yeah. I know you have a thought here. I've been on a few really good teams. Yeah. And when like you. Like that Cleveland team. Cleveland team. I know it's weird, but Tucson in AAA, we had the best record in all of Major League Baseball or all of baseball win percentage wise. Yeah. And when you lose and you're on a really good team, you're like, it doesn't even bug you in a way. And that sounds weird to people because you're like, all right, we'll win tomorrow. Like yeah. we're going to win tomorrow. We had a hiccup, a couple things went wrong, or you just tip your cap because the pitcher was awesome, or the hitting. They just they they were able to grind out a couple at bats, like the Rangers were against Logan Gilbert the yes. other day, and get two runs yes. and win the game. You're like, all right, we lost two to one, or but you just have this confidence. Now I'm not saying the Rangers are there yet. I, I don't think after almost 40 games you can get to that confident level. But after about 60 or 80 games, you get kind of halfway through the season, and let's just say you're 20 games over 500 or better, Yeah, you start having this confidence in your team of like, all right, so we lost, so the bullpen did this, or so the starter did this, we're going to be fine tomorrow, and you just come back with a lot of confidence that today's going to be our day, why wouldn't it be? And I, I love what you're saying, and that's why I thought the way they won yesterday was a big deal. Now, I'm going to pitch this out, and you can be like, hey, look. One game's the same as the next. I know sometimes Jared and I and Jared and Corey would go back and forth about, hey, the games all count the same. And you have to be, given how many there are, you have to be careful not to put too much emphasis on it. Right. But here's what I know about the recent history against Seattle. As somebody brought up on the text, it's a great point from the 903. You want a series against their three best pitchers. Their three best pitchers went against Gray Heaney and Dunning. And you won the series. Which is, and by the against, way, uh, essentially two of your lower tier pitches. Sure. Or at least like even the middle, uh, yeah. right? And guess what? Nobody scored more than five runs in any of those games. So even you were there yeah. competitively. But here's why I think this is a huge deal. The Rangers have now completed their first trip around the division. Eight and four. All right. That's a 667 win percentage. That's pretty damn good. You know what it's been the last three years? Um, uh, 125. Well, it is better than that. All right. But it's 391. That's not, which is yeah. awful. Great batting average. Yes. But a <laughs> terrible, a terrible win percentage. Oh. And no worse was it than in Seattle. Four and 22 in Seattle in that span. And here's the, here's the kicker. They lost eight times by one run, including four walk-off games. So when you include the bullpen issues that this team has had, the ability to win not just a close game, but two close games in Seattle when your bullpen was able to lock it down, that's that's awesome. Mike, we talk about this rotation and how the Rangers, like, they're, they they have a very good rotation. And they're deep all the way through Heaney uh, when DeGrom is on the mound. Do you think the addition of, I'm going to say either Heaney or Evaldi, was because they knew there's going to be times without DeGrom and we're going to have to be carried by this. Like, this is the bunch that's going to carry no, the season. Because I don't think you'd give a $185 million five-year contract if you believed that you're going to deal with a 20-game starter. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because, like, if we're doing this, let's just put ourselves as we're GM, owner, and president, and we're all three meeting, and we're like, hey, we really want DeGrom. Let's give them the biggest contract that nobody can match – but we all know that he's only going to make 20 starts a year. Yeah. And so we're only going to get 100 starts out of the $185 million. We're going to be paying approximately $2 million yeah. per start for five years. I think most sane people would in the room go, we're not doing that. Right. We can go get another pitcher. If we want to do a five-year contract, we can go get – now, I know he's been hurt a lot, but – um the lefty that Rodon Rodon we can go get I don't think him he's pitched this year he right? hasn't pitched right now that would be a oh, bad yeah. example because he's been hurt for the Yankees but we can save 65 million dollars on a 5 year contract and use that in another way so i do believe they believed when they signed DeGrom but they i think they, they just like, wanted we to want, build a good rotation we want 
we want a solid rotation and our young guys, Not I'm not throwing Dunning in this, but our young guys, whether it was Jack Leiter, Cole Wynn, Owen White, they, weren't they are not ready yeah. to pitch in the major leagues and not even close. Let's not force our hand again and have to throw up a guy in the major leagues that cannot compete at this level. And we might ruin him and his confidence for a long time if we do it. But Kevin, at this point, you still have, I mean, from Ivaldi to Perez, Gray, wherever, whatever yeah. group you want to put, yeah. you have four guys that are going to carry you for most of the season and they can, they're capable of it. Especially the yeah. the middle of the season when you're like, we need innings. Those guys can do it. I'll carry this to Nuggets real quick. I'm just going to carry the okay, coaching great. staff. But go ahead. Yeah, well, because I actually wanted to get something in in Nuggets about a player that's okay. contributing in a different way as well. But you're a we, player. We did. Thank you. Not anymore. We did ask a question about does your job care what you wear to work uh -huh. from the eight zero six. Not at any tech startup. They're hip. From the 469, I work in chemical blending facilities. I can wear whatever I want. I came in with cutoffs and short, uh, with a cutoff shorts on today. From the 972, I work in a smoke shop. Boss doesn't care as long as we make money. And then a different person nice. from the 214 said, yeah, basically any head shop. From the 817, I'm a local truck driver. I wear Yeezy slides every single day. Interesting. From the 972, I own my own business and it's professional. I tell my employees <laughs> to simply not be the reason we have to create a dress code. Which, oh, that's smart. That is very that's subjective. Smart approach. Yeah. But also, like, you don't want to walk in like Will Ferrell in those little USA tiny shorts and be like, this is why <laughs> we have to have a... Hey, man, that, sometimes that's the reason that you can close a sale. Yeah. You know? No, I remember... Because of America. I can't remember if you were still there or not, but we definitely had a discussion about dress codes at the newspaper. Oh, no. I was... No. Not, yeah. Never and it was... The way it came about, I laughed so hard at my cubicle. And then from the 214... Warehouses don't care as long as you don't have nose rings. I could see how like that could be problematic in terms ah, of no. Nope. Do. Oh, you don't think ring. anyone's nose it's ring or piercing. anything has ever got caught on something or? Oh no, I've seen the guy's wedding ring get caught and he lost a finger on a oh, printer. Oh my gosh! But and then from the two and four because we have a lot of auto workers who listen. General Motors doesn't give an f how how we dress. I love General Motors, you you guys keep doing that out there. I mean, y'all are crushing it for us. Yeah, thank y'all very much, and thanks for listening. Coming up next. Keys to the Stars taking the series lead for the first time tonight. We'll do it next right here in the fan.
This segment on the KNC Masterpiece is brought to you by Frankel & Frankel. Life is unpredictable. Accidents happen. Frankel & Frankel are the go-to attorneys for car and truck wrecks in DFW. If you or a loved one has been in an accident, contact Frankel & Frankel for a free consultation at truckwreck.com or call 214 or 817-333-3333. He had the last goal on the rush. Brings it on the rush across. Retreats to Harley and across to Domi. Walks it in. Wrist shot. Score! Three nothing Dallas. What a response performance tonight on the road by the Stars. One of those trade deadline acquisitions right there is we're going to be asking the question, what do you think are the keys to the Stars taking the series lead for the first time tonight? But I did want to read a couple more, Corey, because we got so much read feedback about dress, how you dress to work. From the 903, I work for UPS and I have to wear freaking UPS socks every day. Ooh. From the 662, I'm a self-employed diesel mechanic. I wear my uniform or clothes that I don't mind ruining. From the 903, I work in a mortgage company. We're casual, except when we have those executive visitors. You always get that email at some companies when they're like, they don't tell you you have to, but they're like, hey. The person who runs our company is going to be here. So be on your best behavior or they'll say whatever. And then, Corey, I know this is your dream. From the 469, the warehouse I work at, they don't care. And it's great. I could come to work in PJs if I wanted. Dude, PJs or swimsuit are comfortable. Swimsuits are like flip flops. Yeah, you man. That's, that's fantastic, especially in a warehouse environment. So is there anything I'm going to jump the gun here for Mike besides score more goals than the other team? You know what? Stop taking away my points. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is there, what do you think are some of the keys to victory tonight? Because I did some research and I have two keys and I want to see the validity you think of these two keys. All right. Let's see it. All right. First, go back to dominating face-offs. All right. So, did the game-by-game -game breakdown on all of this. Game one. 58% of the face-offs. Game two, 69% of the face-offs you nice. won. <laughs> game three, 57% of the face-offs. And, and game four, you still won 54% of the face-offs. So I don't want to make it sound like it's just kind of like the hits department. It's like, hey, Dallas is playing more physical. But then you look at the hits and you're like, well, it kind of feels like the Kraken are still dominating that. But you did better was the key for the Stars. Well, that's the same thing that Seattle is thinking in terms of the face-off is – you are getting worked in the first three games off of the faceoff. And it's just logical that that will help spark your offense, whether it's moving the puck down the ice or whether it's you're in the other team's zone and you're going to have a more advantageous opportunity is I would love to see the stars get back to that 57% or higher rate that they carried in the first three games in an attempt to spark their offense, or perhaps set up more one timers in the zone. However, you want to put it. Yeah, that's a that is a fantastic opportunity for them. Uh, something that they they were really good at all season long. Yes. Uh, so you might as well like pick, stick to being good at that. I guess my Joey, my area that I want them to I want them to control the middle of the ice. Uh, that's one thing that I thought Seattle and you you brought up their stretch passes yesterday. I thought their, their stretch passes, Seattle stretch passes against Dallas were really kind of crippling the, the the spaces that Dallas wanted to utilize because that kind of put them in scramble mode a, a couple different times uh, as well. But if, if the Stars can, can kind of neutralize that and do what they did in this last game, which is cut them off, like I said, I think they only had two, then that puts the Stars back in the position of now we push our space into your area. And when the Stars are creating their – when they're – when they have open areas to work in, when Hintz has open areas to work in, man, this team is phenomenal, especially when he's coming through the middle of the ice. Joey, your thoughts on the validity of our first two keys to winning tonight and taking the series lead. It's all on you, Joey. Face-offs are, are phenomenal, I would say. Uh, 
Correlation doesn't always equal causation with that is with, true. with faceoffs, but uh, look to game ex- four for it, that. Yeah, it especially matters you know, on special teams. If you can win faceoffs on the power play, and you're not having to retreat back and carry the puck back into the zone to set up your 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 unit, that can be really huge. So yeah. for them, they've done that kind of all year, and I think they're they're really really good at that. Uh, yeah. And on controlling the middle ice, I think they did a great job of forcing the, the Kraken to dump in the puck a lot, which they don't want to do. They would like to carry it in with speed and then be able to work it rink wide and have a chance to make Otter move some. I think they did good of forcing the Kraken to put it in areas they don't want to go, and then it made the it made the exits uh, out of their own zone much easier. Basic hockey question from a basic, barely watching hockey person. <clears throat> Although you have been in on these plays. I have been, and I'll be... I'm doing pre and post for television tonight for the Rangers, but the great thing is, is I will be at Bally's. Oh yeah. Now you I know can. that they don't have the the game. It's on. I don't know. Is it on ESPN or is it on TNT or TBS? I don't know, but it'll be on. I'll be watching both at the same yeah. time. They have four big televisions Whoa. up there, so it's Take big time. Way, is have you guys given up on Robertson affecting playoff games? Okay. I haven't. Just even with all logic in front of me but and i think you can just say for this series because there were times in the wild with the wild series that it wasn't where you wanted but you saw some of those flashes especially on special teams the thing that is driving me bananas is his seeming complete ineffectiveness on five on five i haven't given up just because I keep thinking like I keep trying to tell you to stop. Don't don't give up yet. He just got back with Pavelski. That line's doing its thing, right? Yes, and that's part of it. But then I also think like this is one of the most prolific scorers, the second most in the history of the Stars franchise, most since they got to Dallas. This is one of the more prolific scorers in the NHL this season, and he was able to do it both five on five and on the power play. I just can't throw that aside, despite what we've seen in the first four games. I'm 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 gonna say tonight. So night. will you be disappointed yes. if he has another yes. game like for he has sure. for what for is this sure. ga- a l- game five? Yeah, ten games in a row though. Yeah, I guess no, but Mike, you would say he has something in his pants, is what I'm, I'm yeah, thinking. Which I do think point. is fair in this series. There were some flashes in the Minnesota series that he sparked the power play, but I, I hear you. Yeah. So yeah, I think. Are you gonna be optimistic about it tonight that he's gonna show up and be uh, one of the best players on the ice? Well, I mean, um, no, I'm not because I gotta see it. I gotta see that confidence from I him again. It. Uh, but I think like the great thing is last game, uh, all the lines were doing something. You know, every, that was one of those when Will Clark says cast of characters on this team. Uh, that was one of those games where it was the cast of characters all showed up, and Robertson has the assist. You know, yes. like, so he has a, a touch in it, but he doesn't have exactly what you expect out of him. So, yeah, man, I think as long as this team's doing its thing from lines one through four, they're good, man. I need him to score the ugliest goal possible mm-hmm. to kick off the game where he's like, yeah, did you see that? There's no setup. You just fired some trash up into the goal and then got your rebound <laughs> or whatever. And I think it's a great question, too, because I think I kind of have to a oh, certain degree. And no. that's just basically because Frank, I don't want this to come off the wrong way. I don't really care. As long as they get the job done, yes. Sure. <laughs> and sure. I think that's kind of where where my mindset is. But he he did seem to awaken a little bit last game with Pavelski. He had a couple of shots from you know inside the dots, the slot area. You're not going to score every time you shoot the puck. I, I, I get at least that. A good look. But he was also in front of the goal mouth on that Pavelski goal uh, on the power play, which I thought was good. He picked up a point on that. It, it's nice to see him get into some of those areas, and I think Pavelski's going to kind of grab him and pull him along with him. Uh, but if he can just add a little bit, it's going to make this team even better if he just elevates his game just a touch. But at the same time, hey, as long as I Everybody's rolling. Good things will happen. It's, it's interesting. We haven't brought up Otter. Ha ha! Thank you very he's much. Always good, a key. sir. Yeah, he's I, automatic. Boom. That's not bad. I still like Otter Correct. Yeah, the, I'm the, a Joey, big fan of I'm that. I'm not sure if you've heard this or not, but Otter Correct is the approach we take whenever he has a this, bad game mm-hmm. and then a good game. Yeah, that is, that is fantastic. It's the Otter Correct. Okay. Now, I have saved what I feel is the most important key for last, and it involves Jake Ottinger and right. the defense. I don't just want to let the defense off the hook. <laughs> because, look, we yeah. talked about this. There's a couple times that I'm like, for God's sakes, you can't stay with your man. We give up that chance. Like, that's probably going to end in a goal. Truth. All right. Let's take you through every game in the series and tell me if you notice a pattern. Game one, Stars go up 2-1 to one after the Pavelski goal. 
crack and tie it two minutes and 10 seconds later game two stars go up go up two to nothing after the i think it's Dudanoff goal kraken score two minutes later to make it two to one game four the stars go up four nothing it seems over it's over the kraken score 56 seconds later to light that building up in those three games Seattle has scored a response goal every single time in two minutes and 10 seconds or less. And I know you might be thinking, well, you didn't mention game three. Well, guess what? The only outlier is game three where the Kraken didn't follow up any stars goals because they were too busy piling up their own goals and they took a two to nothing lead in the span of 86 seconds. Yeah. This is the key for me is you have not had a single game in this series where Seattle hasn't either scored in succession or scored immediately after you. Zero, not one. Game one, 130 seconds. Game two, 120 seconds. Game four, 50 seconds. And game three, they scored their own follow-up goal in 86 seconds. That has been a problem all series long. You Is cannot it a focus thing? allow that. Is it like, do you think it becomes a, you know what, we get, we're we up a goal. I like guess Kevin, so. We talk about soccer mm. and how, what is it, 2-0 is worse than 1-0? And it, which I, I still, we need to do like an entire segment on that, but still, you would think that just whether it's soccer or hockey, after you score a goal, you inherently have the momentum and the extra pep in your step, but that has been the exact opposite for the stars in this series if that happens again they will lose tonight i believe i feel like that's been an issue with them for for a couple seasons now the play not to lose kind of thing where you kind of sit back on your laurels like, oh we, we have the one nothing lead and that's why i think the first goal is so huge in this series because when seattle scores it just seems to jump start everything yeah if you can keep them off the score sheet for as long as possible i think it frustrates them and it makes it really hard for them to get their offense going but we saw in game three Eberly got that goal puck. It's Miro. And then all of a sudden, the floodgates open for Seattle. And then they just piled it on. We're the KNC Masterpiece right here on 105.3 The Fan, where it looks like maybe about 55 to 60% are not optimistic about Robertson. And the rest are like, no, he's, he's okay. He's, he'll, he'll do fine. One of the uh, one of the people I respect very much in the hockey world whenever it comes to talking about hockey, he's uh, come up and hung out with us as uh, Jeffrey Fink. He uh, just tweeted out, sounds like seasoned hockey vets right here on KNC. Oh. So appreciate that. We've had a good run here. Thanks, man. Yeah. Mike's crushing. <laughs> Score more goals, baby. <laughs> there, we actually got many texts that said that. So, And then one changed it up and goes, give up less goals. Oh, I then, like, it. I like the, it. Yeah, that is also a fair point. But if you give Can't up. win if they don't score. You give up negative that. goals, though. So you'd still have to score one goal. So, like, no matter what, you have to score more goals. I'd argue that you can give up negative goals if they score an own goal. So it'll technically oh, be wow. one to nothing, but was it really not zero to negative one? <laughs> We're the KNC Masterpiece right here on 105 Through the Fan. Coming up next, it's time for that Baseball Nuggets with Mike Basick. How much credit should we be giving the coaches on the Texas Rangers? Next. Coming up in the next G-Bag.
This segment on the KNC Masterpiece is brought to you by Classic Chevrolet. Classic Chevrolet has the Memorial Day savings you want, just like Texas Classic is doing its part to drive America forward. Don't miss one-time holiday savings to upgrade for less. This is Texas. This is Classic Chevrolet. Relax and enjoy the difference. Find new roads. KNC Masterpiece back here on 105 through the fan. Game five for the stars tonight. I can't help you with the start time at 8.30, realistically, 8.45, but great news. Saturday... This Saturday? Yes, this Saturday when you probably don't care about the game being as late, uh -huh. it's at 6 o'clock. What? Now oh! it's time for Baseball Nuggets with Mike Bassett. All right, guys, let's talk about the Rangers coaching staff. I know we've talked a lot about Bochi, and we will. Okay, yes. he's done a tremendous job. I wanted to know maybe how much credit should guys like uh, Tim Hires? I know there's multiple hitting coaches now, but I'll just use him for example. There is Seth Connor, who's assistant hitting coach. We know who Mike Maddox is. I'm just wondering how much credit should we be giving uh, these guys? Now, Mike Maddox did get – he was given a veteran staff, at least yep. the starting pitchers, right? And that's yep. where a pitching coach, just so uh, people understand, a pitching coach has a tough time affecting the bullpen. People might not understand that and go, why? Well, those guys have to be ready every day. They can't really practice with them right. every day. So, you know, just going to today. Mike Maddox at 2.30 to 3.30 p.m. at some point is going to have a whole 30-minute private coaching session with Andrew Heaney. So Andrew Heaney is going to throw long toss, and Mike Maddox is going to kind of watch that, and then he's going to go to the pen, and he's going to throw anywhere from – 35 to 55 pitches. Uh, you know, it just matters how your arm's feeling, where you're at in the season, stuff like that. And Mike Maddox and him are going to go over what he's doing. Hey, stay back on this one. Hey, get the ball to your glove early. Hey, get, keep your chin up on this. Hey, make sure you finish the pitch or deceler, whatever it is. Yeah. And there's, there's also computers that go with it now too. But like you have that. He can't do that with – with um, Jose LeClerc. Sure. You don't do, you're not able to do that. Jose LeClerc can't go throw a 20 pitch bullpen, most likely today, because he might throw 20 to 30 pitches in the game today. So, just to give you an idea on Mike Maddox and the pitching coach. But how much credit should we maybe be giving the hitting coaches? Because on a piece of paper, as the season started, your lineup didn't look superior. Okay. I'm glad that you said that because let's think about this. The Rangers spent a lot of money, not this past offseason, but the one before that, on Marcus Simeon and Corey Seager, right? So I was looking at the lineup and when you ask how much credit the coaches get. So Marcus Simeon leads the entire team in offensive war. You take that stat if you don't like it. Like, I hope you'll bear with me nonetheless. And Corey Seager has clearly been hurt. Here is how offensive war goes from this team from Marcus Simeon. Jonah Heim, Nathaniel Lowe, Adolis Garcia, Travis Jankowski, Leody Tavares, Ezekiel Duran, Josh Young. Like, this is not a group that you would have thought going in. What a murderer's row of an offense that you yeah. have to face. So I definitely think you got to give some credit there. Yeah, and nothing against, like, when I played on the Cleveland Indians my rookie year. You tell me how much hitting coaching I have to do if my lineup's Kenny Lofton, Omar Vizquel, Robbie Alomar, Juan Gonzalez, Jim Tomei, Ellis Burks, Travis Fryman, Marty Cordova, and Enar Diaz. That was our lineup. <laughs> It'd you kind of just right. say, yeah. go get them, boys. Yeah. Like there's, as Charlie Manuel would say back then, how about that, Kenny Lofton? You know what I mean? That was, I mean, yes, there was coaching going on. I'm not trying to take away like from Charlie Manuel, who is our manager and also a, a great hitting coach, uh, you know, too. But sometimes you get guys that have played eight to 10 years in the major leagues and have Hall of Fame stats or MVPs yeah. to their name that you're just like, I don't really need to do much here. There's there's some tweaking here, but these guys have been through the battles, through the wars. But you're talking about right now, this coaching staff and the hitting coaches having to work with Josh Young, Jonah Heim, Leody Tavares, at times Bubba Thompson, at times. I know Jankowski's 31 years old, but it's not like he's an everyday good sure. player that you're just like, yeah, we picked him up. He's great. You go do your thing. Thumbs yeah. up. I'm just going to watch you hit the ball. Like, you know, there's a few guys that you can be like for Marcus Simeon and for Corey Seager that you can kind of just say, go get them. Yep. But all other guys, for the most part, you are probably having to work pretty hard to get the most out of them, and they're getting the most out of them. Mike, what is what is an offensive coordinator in baseball? Because that's Don, <laughs> that's Donnie Ecker's job right now. Or I don't, I don't exactly coach. know. I think that's a great question okay. for like Chris Bochy. Young or Bochi okay. to be like, what does Donnie Ecker exactly do? Because 
I know back when I played, which wasn't that long ago, I was in the major leagues in 07, but that is 15, 16 years ago now, uh, is you had a pitching coach, a hitting coach, a manager. Those were your and three your bench main coach. Well, you have a bench coach who's a main guy too. You have your first base coach and your third base coach, but they usually also share defensive coaching responsibilities, whether they're an infield coach or outfield coach, like Gary Pettis, third base coach or first base coach in his time and still coaching now. And he's also the outfield coach. But now you've added five to six other people. You have an assistant pitching coach. You have a bullpen coach, which we had a bullpen coach, but he's pretty much just keeping charts and answering the gotcha. phone. Okay. Nothing oh. against that guy, but that is a great job to have. You don't have much responsibility as a bullpen coach. There's responsibility, don't get me wrong, but you are not really coaching pitching. Pay good? Not really. Okay, all right. For amount of responsibility, <laughs> though, it might not be that yeah, bad. Yeah. All mean, right, so you're I'm- in the major leagues. You're not getting pension off of that job as a bullpen coach. But I do want to get to – go ahead, Corey, if you have an important question, well, but I do want to get to audio here. Ecker, Ecker came from San Francisco. He came from the Giants. Okay. He was drafted by the Rangers, uh, and then he comes over here, and I know Bochi was kind of interested in how, like looking at some other people – but then he sticks with some of the people the Rangers have, and I'm just kind of curious what he, what that job is. So we'll get to that. No, later. it's it's a good question. Yeah. I just because there was no such thing as that when I played. Honestly, Derek might have a better answer to that than I do, and he might not have an answer because he is a pitcher. Yeah. So he might be like, I don't know what the offensive coordinator does. I'm I have enough to deal with pitching uh-huh. type of deal, but. I have this audio here, and this is from Will Clark and Eric Burns. They are a very good follow on Instagram. They do cuss quite a bit. so Yes, I've uh, heard But that. it is a fun follow. At times, it's very entertaining. At times, it's very informative. And I think this is very informative about Bruce Bochy. So we just talked about the hitting coaches. I think they should get a lot of credit. I think Mike Maddox got handed a very nice staff, but is also doing a great job with that staff, yeah. too. And here is so many people like, well, what's the difference between Woody and Bochy? All Bochy just has a good team, and and Woody never did. That's partly true. I think there's always kind of half truths and stuff like that. But here's what Bochy is doing, which Chris Woodward wouldn't do. You know, I mean, it, it just shows you how Dusty Baker and Bruce Bochy old school manage. They go with the hot hand. That's how the old schools do it. They don't do it, you know, platooning and going with the numbers off of this guy and all that. No, dude had a great night last night. Let him build on it. That is part of the game that you and I have been talking about that needs to come back. I couldn't agree more. For weak periods of of a time, like week, when I say week, I mean like one, I could be one of the best players in baseball, and then the next week I could be one of the (laughs) So that was the one thing that was really frustrating playing for the A's, and it was just like... Wait, hold on a second. So I had two knocks of Kevin Brown. I had three knocks of Matt Clement. I took Keith Falk deep. That would, should have been a, a, a game winner. And then the Red Sox came right. back and scored in the bottom half of the inning. And then the next day I'm sitting. And that was my big argument with Billy Bean. I never would argue with Billy Bean unless I could. I have ammo to go in there and argue with him. That was my big thing was just that when I'm hot, dude, ride with me, man. And when I suck, I get it. <laughs> So that was Eric Burns at the end. That was Will Clark at the beginning. Yeah. And I think that they point out two guys. Dusty Baker just won the World Series, been around forever. Bochi obviously is going to go into the Hall of Fame as a great manager. And we're seeing the greatness of Bruce Bochi. So when somebody asks, hey, what's the difference between Chris Woodward and what's the difference between Bruce Bochi when we're comparing? Because it's just not fair, right, Woody? And there's half truths to this. Woody didn't have a very talented sure. team for the years that he was here. Bochi does have more talent on his team, but you have to remember he's missed Seager for more than half of the season yeah. right now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and why is Zeke doing so well? Ezekiel Duran batting 305 with an 814 OPS. He's riding him. He's not sitting him because, well, the analytics say even though he went three for four yesterday with a home run and three RBIs, He's facing a right-handed guy that has a good slider, and analytically, all the numbers are telling me that he's going to have a bad game tomorrow. Why? He's feeling very confident. He's good. Now, if he does go 0 for 4 in that game, I sit him, and I go back to Josh Smith. Mm-hmm. Right. But as long as he's hot, I'm going to ride the hot hand. So this takes the analytic people out of it because they've never played baseball before. They're, they can't get – there's no such thing as somebody was hot yesterday, so they're going to stay hot today. It's a brand-new day. And we put everybody at their highest efficiency and what their numbers are or what their numbers are. They're going to have a bad day today. It doesn't matter what they did yesterday. That's half truth. That is half true. 
because it might just be a bad matchup and he's going to prove to you again that he can't hit this guy based off of he's one for 22 in his career off of him. But what if he's so hot and so confident that he goes in with a different mindset and a different attitude in this game? Same thing with the guy who is really cold. Well, he is four for eight against this guy with a home run. Well, maybe you do give him that extra day because you like you got to get him going. And, and I think Robbie Grossman, one of the things that got him out of his one for 28 slump was batting him second. I thought that was really, at the time, I was like, what the hell's Bochy? <laughs> yes. Is? Like, this is our worst hitter in our lineup. And he bat, he's going to bat him second now that Seager's hurt. And it jump started him and got him out of. And then I asked Mark McLemore about it. He said, when you're batting second and you have a good hitter in front of you and a good hitter behind you, the pitcher has to throw more strikes to you because he cannot throw his best stuff because if he nibbles and he misses, he's walked a bad hitter. And gross. And so strike now hitter. you go back to your pitching coach. He's like, what the hell are you doing, man? Like we got Nate Lowe coming up and Marcus Simeon was in front of him. You got to challenge this guy. He Well, now when you have to challenge a guy, you get better pitches to hit. And it got him out of his slump by getting better pitches to hit than rather batting him. Let's just say behind Leody Tavares or Bubba Thompson, nothing against these guys, but they're not much of threats. You might find Robbie Grossman as a little bit more of a threat than those guys in situations and pitch them a little bit tougher man hold on so you talked with mark mclemore about baseball and you talk with like steve buchel about baseball yeah. and you played baseball and we have him on our show i you think you should me? just pretend that you're watching the baseball game. we'll talk about pretending watching sports during mike likes it and when you kind of give up on Getting into a sport, at what age do you kind of say, I'm just not going to do any more sports? We're the KNC Masterpiece right here on 105.3 The Fan. Coming up next, let's talk some NBA playoffs. The all-NBA team and Luka's latest historic accolade. All of it next right here on The Fan.
Fan Studios, secured by DFWSecurity.com. It's the KNC Masterpiece on 105.3 The Fan. KNC Masterpiece right here on 105.3 The Fan. Where there's a couple of different facets of the NBA that I want to talk about, including the all-NBA team and Luka hitting another impressive mark. But first, I want to talk about... I guess the NBA playoffs in general, and we should probably start with cut number seven. Let's hit that. Wiggins up the floor, pass over to Peyton. Peyton will drive in, goes by, James spins it up. It is good and a foul. Now, I know you were stoked because the dream remains alive that the Lakers might still lose. Yeah, I mean, I do think they'll win tomorrow night. Sure. Uh, but it gives now... A little bit of momentum to Golden State, and it puts a lot more pressure on the Lakers to win game six because I, as, as veteran as LeBron James is, I totally get it. Austin Reeves playing in a game seven, Lonnie Walker playing in a game seven. You start putting a lot of pressure on those role players to go to San Francisco and play in a game seven. Yeah. Is, is it, you don't, I'm sorry, Mike, I'm trying to, you don't like the Lakers. Hate but their guts. LeBron fan of respect him a lot for okay. his game you respect you like Steph I Moore? don't like and I get this I get the other side of the argument of LeBron had to leave Cleveland and then he had to leave Miami and he had to leave Cleveland again but to me it's a little bit of I will always it's my opinion I will always hold that against him a little bit in his okay. career. And Kevin, for you, you you don't like the Lakers because of our Mavs history with them. Sure. But for when right. it comes to LeBron, you're you cut do you want to see him like an argument for the Jordan debate to be even more concrete or more uh, available? Because right now it's like, look, he had six. There's no conversation here. Which I We've talked about this before. It still remains bizarre to me because I think there are other factors at play because otherwise, why isn't Bill Russell the unquestioned best NBA player of all time? So, like, I think the discussion continues to pick up if they win again. I have nothing against, like, LeBron, the basketball player. I just don't want him to win right now because of the Lakers. I cannot, uh, okay. I cannot find myself actively rooting for them. But, like, when he was on Cleveland, I was like, I give an F about Cleveland. When he was on Miami, I also didn't vote, root for him. But that was more a product of, well, first they played the Mavericks, and they made fun of Dirk, yeah. and so then I was not actively rooting for that either. Do you, and But you like Steph? You like that group? Yeah. Even though like they've kind of run the, the NBA for a little bit? They kind of had their Tom Brady moment, right? Where they did it for a while, backed off a little bit, and then come back strong? I like the Warriors just fine. I know that any level of sustained success sometimes agitates people, but I like the Warriors. Is it difficult to mimic what they've built? Like, is, is that thing In a hard? way, no. That's why I think I like them because they drafted Steph. They drafted Clay. They drafted Draymond Green. Now, Moses Moody and Kaminga have helped very little, but they Which just kind of surprised. They drafted yeah. those guys. Now, James Wiseman, number two overall pick. Like, they made, yes, they got Kevin Durant, but they'd also set up their contracts of all their great drafted players to then have this opportunity to add a superstar to all the players they drafted. That's doable. Okay. You know, like for Mark Cuban, that's doable. Like if you at number 10, I know it's impossible. What if you draft the next Clay Thompson at number yeah. 10? Or you draft whoever it is, but you draft a Hall of Famer at number 10. That's what they did. They didn't even have the number one picks or number two overall picks. They drafted in the lottery and found from pick seven through about 10 or whatever, yeah. they found these guys and Draymond was a second, second round rounder. pick. So you look at it and go, that's doable. They were in Oakland. They weren't this multi-billion dollar well, LA. They gave a crap about the yeah, Warriors. It was a nothing this. franchise. And so... They showed that you can build a dynasty if you draft well enough, if you trade well enough, and if you have the right coaching staff. I didn't mean to break that, no, like no, that, no. break that all up, but this, this, it, this, I'm, I'm not as intrigued by this series, and I know a lot Ooh. of people are in love with this series. I really don't like. I've seen it. I've seen the series. Okay, here's here's where I am intrigued by this series. I really want the Warriors to win Game Six. Because I want to see a game seven where it's all on the table and they're like, 
Okay, whose greatness? And who will are you? Appear? Do you? Do you have a side that you're picking there, or do you just want to see a great game? Yeah, obviously, like Jess? whoever will be the easiest victim for the Nuggets is who <laughs> okay, I'm gotcha. going to root gotcha. for okay. in this in that in that series. But then also that every playoff series right now is at three to two because yeah. the Knicks came back and won. Although we went over the uh, still immense history that they had to face, and then Philly's up three two, Denver's up three two tonight. So. All of the series have at least gone six, which you would hope that would be the case this far into the playoffs. Yes. Uh, the playoffs have been as mad as I was at the Mavericks. Not for tanking. They tanked their asses off for 82 games, it felt like. So <laughs> uh, I just felt like going into the playoffs, I'm just not interested. I'm furious with the Mavericks and their lack of effort for 82 games. And as I've as that has gone away... I've watched quite a bit of playoff basketball, and I'll tell you what. Letting go of the mat, like the Mavericks yes. part of it. Gotcha. God, there's no such thing as double dribble in the NBA. <laughs> like That's the one that thing when I watch fair. these. I know the traveling thing is, is, is has fair. been a deal, but man, they will allow you to hit a ball away from a player, dribble it once to really control it, pick it up, and then re-dribble. And I'm like, that is obviously double dribble but it's like errors in baseball yesterday we had a ground ball to crawford at short he caught it clean threw it to first in the dirt the guy's out by two steps like base hit i'm like leone Tavares had a two hopper to the shortstop that he caught threw it in the dirt was out by two steps like that's a base how could a major leaguer ever make that play and it's the same thing at times watching today's basketball when you talk about jordan and lebron and you watch today's basketball if you ever go back to youtube you're like my god like, the way they allow them to dribble and travel. Bam Adebayo last night took a jump stop with two different feet hitting the ground. You know, obviously only has two feet at different times. I saw that. I then, I remember then this. did two step throughs to get by the guy. Like, what a move. And I'm like, what a move. He got four steps. <laughs> <laughs> and look. I don't think Corey. I'm actually I'm very interested in the in the Heat Knicks series, which I'm not typically in, interested in that brand of basketball. But Brunson's drawn me in, and Jimmy Butler's definitely drawn me in. Jimmy Butler, I think, is. I was about to say he's easy to root for, but that's probably not true. I bet a whole bunch of people think he's a giant d hole. Mm -hmm. But like, I yeah, personally I enjoy like his competitive spirit. But when you ask about LeBron, like whether he wins the fifth. I think he can win five. I think he can win 12. I don't think you're going to change be old people. old heads arguing. Yeah, and I don't think you're going to change people's minds because somebody even said, you have to keep in mind the fact that LeBron unquestionably went against tougher opponents. And I'm like, okay. is that unquestionable? Because I was just thinking, like, on the rise for Michael Jordan, he had to overthrow Larry Bird and the Celtics. Then he had to overthrow Isaiah Thomas and the bad boy Pistons. And then in his NBA Finals, he beat, what, Magic? Clyde, Barkley, and their teams, and then Gary Payton, Carl Malone, John Stockton. Like, there's some pretty John damn... John Stockton was no punk. It's if you weren't <laughs> alive for that. Yeah, it's just like for me. Yeah. Good people I'll be there. honest. It, it, I bet I irked a lot. This is what happens with age. I'm 45 years old. And now I understand how pissed off people that are now 60 were at me <laughs> 20 years ago. <laughs> I didn't really respect John Havlicek. Yeah. Kind of to this day, don't really respect him. Like, I don't care. Oh, pissed wow. off Pete Maravich. Like, awesome name. Awesome LSU career. Like, you know, there's just kind of like this deal. I didn't really see it. So if you're telling me about 70s basketball, you know, I'm kind of like, yeah. Jordan was 10 times better than Dr. J. Like I saw Dr. J. He was kind of old, you know, like, you know, it kind of, it kind of gets me with George, Starbuck, George, the Iceman yeah. Gervman. All right, whatever. Like he had a finger roll. Great. Like what did the Spurs ever do? You know, like, and so I get it. I think the people that are now texting in that are somewhere between 20 and 35 years old, they're like, Jordan didn't play against anybody because none of them kind of won. And that's the thing is. Jordan wouldn't allow anybody to win and my, after he finally overthrew the the guys. And my argument on that is the dream team widely believed to be the greatest basketball team ever. Jordan beat five people from the dream team in NBA Finals. Okay, so that's that's pretty good. The um, I, the other thing is uh, I was kind of curious about are Knicks fans starting to put Jalen Brunson in the category of top 10 Nick ever right now. It feels like I, in a maybe weird it's just way, New York how it always they it's have been a, a long time since they won. They so. have a pretty bad history. I mean, they're at the 50 year anniversary of their last championship in 1973. Yeah. So their, their history is 
God, do they hold up Willis Reed like no other? Let's in the history of basketball, Willis Reed is not that important. Wow. But he played for the New York Knicks. I mean, if you go to the top fifty no, players of all it, time, he's not on it. Yeah. You know, like I do think he makes top hundred, I think, but he might not even make top hundred. Yeah. But that's the Knicks are very popular. They don't have actually a very good history. So, yeah, yeah even I, Ewing never won, you know, like right. yeah, and he but he was he's considered one of those. And in greats. our lifetime, he's the greatest Nick of all time. Yeah. I guess who stopped him from winning? Uh who? I mean Jordan. Oh, oh my gosh, Michael Jordan was there for that too. Is all right. So on the local front, I actually like Corey, I'm moving the conversation along because I have like 30 more minutes I want to talk about oh, okay. what you're talking Good about. Podcast. But yeah, we're gonna have to podcast it or just like create a new expressway in another hour right, yeah, i don't know if our boss i bet boss would be all over that luca <laughs> luca i'm ready first team all nba and there was some question about this one and as you'll see he's the last member of first team all nba like i don't know if people look at it in precisely this manner and if you were taking just the best five i don't think he would have made it because like a Jokic would have jumped on ahead of Luca, but that's and Luca not was how fifth, they do it. Yes. Fifth out of the five first teamers in it, voting. It went Giannis, Tatum, Embiid, Shea Gilgis Alexander, who clearly had an incredible season, and Luca. But he made it, and this is now the fourth time he's been first team All NBA, and he's done it four times in a row. That ties Dirk for most first team appearances by any Maverick ever. And he's 24. Jeez. When you start looking at the list, like I think Kevin Garnett made first team all NBA four times. Okay. I mean, you think of Kevin Garnett yeah. as like it's pretty damn best awesome. He's already player. done it four yeah. times. So, I mean, I will say what Luca is accomplishing at just turning 20, he turned 24 in February is freaking amazing. Cause if you say, well, he played last year at 24. Well, for half the year, he was 23 years well, old. Okay, and if you even want to, like, if you want to take out the metrics of, well, people can enter the NBA early now, blah, blah, blah. Here, here's another stat for you that factors all of that out. Luka's the fourth player ever to earn four or more first-team selections in his first five seasons. Tell me if you think these guys are any good. Tim Duncan, Heard of George him. Gervin, he was good. the Iceman. I just man. told you he's nobody. And yeah. no, <laughs> <laughs> he had a finger roll. That was it. And and Larry and cool Bird. Commercials. Oh, That's Bird. It. Yeah. Okay. That's the group yeah. that Luke is in. And you're talking about, and I don't know where people put the Iceman, but you're talking about Larry Bird and Tim Duncan. I think there's a very strong argument to be made. Those are two of the ten best players of all time, or right. two of the best. 12 players of all time. Well, and right. two of them played for San Antonio. That's wild. That did, is gross. Did all of That's where them... That's is probably going to go somehow. Did all of them win a championship with the team that drafted them? I don't think George Bird, Gervin ever won Yeah, one. Bird won three. Duncan won five. Right. So, Kevin, if that's the category, then, like, this would be Luca can't win. So, we're just going to... Well, here's the deal. I think here's... I'm going to... That's a decent... Ooh. Point. That's a, we got to stick to the but pattern I want to do it in a different way here. I don't think he ever. Won. Do you think after this kind of season ended slash playoffs, and I don't know what Boston's going to do in Game Six and Game Seven if there is a Game Seven. I wonder if Tatum and Luca will be held at a much higher standard next year to make first team. The way Jokic didn't win MVP this year because they're like, dude, he's just not a three time in a row MVP. Yeah. Like I think if I think if last year, yeah. let's say Joel Embiid would have won last year, I think they would have given it to Jokic this year and had no problem going like, all right, it's Jokic. Like they're both deserving. But I think they're like, we're not putting him on Larry Bird's status. We're just not. Yeah. We're not gonna so we're giving it to somebody else. And I just wonder next year if they start looking at Luke and go He's not the greatest player in the history of basketball through six years. Yeah. We are not going to give him a first-team All-NBA selection next year unless he proves it beyond a shadow of a doubt. We want to have somebody else on that. And maybe same with Tatum because yeah. he's so bipolar in the playoffs. Now, Tatum, first-team All-Pro Jalen Brown, second-team All-Pro. This is a big deal for them specifically – because now they can get all of the monies in their contract extensions. Jalen Brown is now eligible to sign a five-year, $295 million extension. And Jason Tatum can sign a five-year, $318 million extension. We're talking about almost $64 million a year. Oh, my God. But you know who really screwed themselves? The gunman. Exactly. John ja Morant 
did not make all NBA. On his next deal, he can lose $39 million because he was not on how this list. How pumped is Memphis right now? Like, how awesome would this be as the owner? Yeah, like we still have a great player. Yeah. He has to mature as a human being, and he has to get a little bit better with injury, and he has to get a little bit better with leadership. But if if you're the owner, sure, once you go, this is great. We're gonna max him out no matter what. We we have you to just save thirty nine million dollars. Thirty nine million dollars because he didn't make a team that you thought he might make at some point. And then the last thing for you because he's a local product, Julius Randall out of Preston Wood Christian Academy made third team All NBA, which now means in his career. Second team All NBA and a third team All NBA. I will tell you what, Corey. I follow a lot of New York Knicks fans and bloggers and stuff uh, on Twitter. They hate Julius Randle. Wow. I'll take. It. I do think this. I think there's a strong possibility Julius Randle isn't on the New York Knicks next year. Let's just say they lose. Bring him home. I'm not saying he's going to be easy to Bring get, but they're going to they're going to look to use him future draft picks like the Mavericks probably draft pick and their draft picks and maybe another Obi top in or maybe Obi slides into Julius Randall's role. I do think they're going to try to use Julius Randall and assets to go get like that number one guy. Will they accomplish it? I don't know, but I think they're going to work very hard to kind of move Julius Randall and future assets to get like what you'd consider a guy better than Jalen Brunson. We're the KNC Masterpiece right here on 105.3 The Fan. You can decide if these things are related or not. We've He's got, not as good as Dwight Powell. Either. Well, that's a good point. We've got my buddies and idiot coming up at 120. And, oh, yeah, by the way, here's another text from the 940. Clyde Drexler and John Stockton would be in the G League in today's NBA. Are you serious? So don't forget. Are you my, serious my right now? He's an idiot okay. coming up at 120. <laughs> coming up next, though, it's time for Masterpiece Theater. What's the last TV show you were obsessed with? 877-881-1053. Also want to get the 12 lows and the YouTubers involved. We'll do it next right here on The Fan.
and Frankel Frankel are the go-to attorneys for car and truck wrecks in DFW. If you or a loved one has been in an accident, contact Frankel Frankel for a free consultation at truckwreck.com or you can call 214-817 or 333-3333. KNC Masterpiece back here on 105.3 The Fan. Don't forget, I'm sure you know, the NFL schedule will be coming out tonight at 7 o'clock. We've already seen some things trickle out, including some specifically that the NFL has released, like Week 5, Sunday Night Football, Cowboys on the road against the San Francisco 49ers, who they've faced the last two years, obviously, in the playoffs. But also remember, tomorrow... 5 to 8 p.m. at Jake's Game Day in McKinney off of El Dorado Parkway. You can hang out with Bobby Belt and Mr. Corey Majors. And Jake's Game Day says they're going to donate 20% of all dinner sales to the various relief efforts for the tragedy in Allen, which is obviously it's great that they're doing that. Appreciate that for sure. I'm I'm really looking forward to good old Jake's Burger. Like I like Classic. this is this is something that I've I, I like I said I grew up on Jake's they've kind of rebranded they're more of a family oriented uh, environment with lots of game day uh, foods to go along with it but they also have their great old Jake's burger and that's what I can't wait to to get whenever I get there on Friday night now how five about, to eight Mike five to eight I'm sure he'll see you there now how about you can see me do they have a television there. Yeah, you can see me on television at Jake's. <laughs> there you go. Doing hey, the Rangers be there. pre and that's what I'm trying to do is I want to watch the best baseball team in Texas while I have a Jake's burger. Oh, love hearing that. How about we kick off a little masterpiece theater? Did you let Waddle talk? Oh yeah, little Welcome stars action to another edition of Masterpiece Theater where we discuss theater with you. And now, two guys who know absolutely nothing about theater, Corey and Kevin. Now, my question for you today... Mary, I mean, uh, Sue just asked you guys a question. What is her question? What's y'all's address okay. for graduation <laughs> oh, announcement for Mary Grace? Oh, can you, can you say it right now? Let no, me write it down. I'll go ahead and jot I'll that down for you off air. I'll text it to you right now. Is... <laughs> What's the last TV show you were obsessed with? Now, it doesn't necessarily have to be like your favorite TV show right now, or you're like, yeah, I like this show. Like the show that you're like, I have to consume all of this show, or I have to know everything about it, or whatever the case. Like you go, you get done be. watching an episode, and you're like, I gotta go read about the episode. Yes, I gotta go read about what what's the inspiration behind this character. Or watch the next episode, even if your sleeping patterns are being like, no, you have work in the morning, and you're like, okay, that's mm. that's great, day Kevin, but night Kevin night is Kevin. here to go ahead and watch the next episode. I'm gonna throw out one that I don't think anyone's gonna say, because I became obsessed with it very quickly. It's called The Glory. It's a Korean drama on Netflix. It is awesome. It's about this girl who- I've seen this on Netflix, yes. In like middle school, maybe kind of high school-ish, she gets like horrifically bullied by all of these, you know, mean kids. It's not just, I was gonna say mean girls, but it's both girls and boys. And now we flash forward like 15 years and she has been like meticulously building up her life to gain revenge oh, on all no. these people. And so you get to see like all the bullies all grown up and Oh, it's like uh Rachel McAdams and uh Lindsay Lohan, like they're Wait, what is this called? It's called The Glory. Girls. But yeah, if they took like irons and burned your skin. Oh, gross. So, there this show is it's South Korean, it's high on melodrama, but I was obsessed with it because I was like, I have to watch the next episode, even though I should probably go to sleep because I'm like, oh my God, this part of the plans, how's it going to come together? And so like, that was the show that I was obsessed with. What's the last show that maybe you're currently obsessed with? 
Mike, do you have a show? Because I have I have a list of five. Wow. What? Yeah. So in order, I'll I'll explain. You're obsessed it. with five different. Well, no, TV shows, th- right? I've been obsessed with oh, five okay. shows. Recently, there's two things. One is The Chosen, which I talked about, right. which is on like Angel Studios. It's it's kind of on an app, but it is on Netflix. Season one is on okay. Netflix. Okay, I knew for a while it was on Peacock. I don't know if it's still on there. Or not. And there's three seasons. They're yeah. shooting a fourth season, but it is the story of Jesus, kind of seen through the disciples. Yes. So seen through. In a weird way, what I'd call more regular people, because I do believe that Jesus is God. Right. So it's kind of tough to put yourself in like, I can be just like Jesus too. Well, you can't. Uh, so you're you're not God. I'm not God. We're sure. not God. I don't feel like it's a big insult deal to be like, it. you can't be like Jesus. Deal with it. By the way, Carter just threw in Yellow Jackets. I haven't jumped in on season two yet. I thought season one was awesome. That being said, I've been watching a lot of YouTube and I talked about Jolly, but that's not a whole show. Yeah. I've just been like, I can't get enough of those guys. Like, I'm laughing so much. And they remind me of the Looney Tunes Goofy Gophers, who are the British Gophers. <laughs> okay. Because mm-hmm. uh, it's like, they remind me of something. Yeah. And then I was like, that's who it is. So I went and watched the Looney Tunes episode and I'm like, that's who they are. They're the Goofy Gophers. Did you enjoy that Looney Tunes episode? It was okay. Okay. <laughs> It's like from 1947. <laughs> yeah. There's but, some things in that cartoon that they probably want to like move away from. That one, it seemed like they were okay with. It's just a dog and two gophers. Okay. Uh, from the 682 Suits. Is that the... Dude, that all right. The one that I've never Megan seen Markle Suits. Was in? Yes. Okay. I've never seen it, but it was on right after like Blue Collar uh, or White Collar, which, you know, I love that show for a long time, when too. Silk Stockings went off the air. Yeah, I kind of okay. tuned out of the USA but shows. But I, I, I was scrolling through TikTok one day, and they showed, like, the beginning of Suits and how that kind of came yeah. together. And I was like, whoa, I could totally see how people got hooked on this. Because it's that dude who can, he's, like, super observant and super brilliant and super smart that should be an FBI agent or CIA agent, but he just didn't want to do it or whatever. And then he, they're like, we need you. And he's like, all right, I'm in. Do you have any idea if that one lady is intolerable on the show like she is in real they life? They all are. Okay. All right. Oh, I don't know. Uh, a couple of votes for suits from the 682. The Chosen from the 214. Better Call Saul from the 817. Ozark. One of the things about some of those shows is you have to avoid spoilers. Like Better Call Saul just went off the air and Ozark just went off the air not that long ago. Is People will like openly talk about it. And you're mm-hmm. like, hey, I need to stay. Like when I watched the West Wing, nobody's talking about the yeah, West Wing. Yeah, people told me at the end of Better Call Saul, it gets into this whole meth thing, and there's a teacher <laughs> I mean, who beyond that. has cancer and gets into it, and he mm-hmm. like uses one of his students that was like a dropout, pretty much. No and I was like, way. you just ruined it for me, man. And then they drive an El Camino. Yeah, yeah, you can skip that one. <laughs> All right, what is my top five list, Kevin? Okay. All right. A long time ago, I became obsessed with Sports Night. Yes, uh, I base a lot of our my interactions on this show on this I show. Do you really like that show? around the show Sports Night. Lots of life lessons in that show. Uh, it's basically about like ESPN at the time, Sports Center, Dan side, Patrick yeah. and Keith Olbermann at the time. Uh, and then Kevin, this all happened very rapidly. Where I became obsessed with three shows while we were working nights. Okay, and it was The Wire. Yes. Treme, which was created by the same creator yeah. of The Wire. David Simon. And then Atlanta. And when Atlanta came on, I was obsessed with Atlanta. Even the weird stuff that they did, I'm like completely involved in it. And that's the show, Kevin, where I would go to the ringer because they have like a, a, yeah. a, a thing where they talk about the episode immediately after. They do that with succession. Now. Yes. And I would totally go straight to that and read and I'd be like, oh, Oh, I didn't even think about it that way. And that was thanks to Reggie because Reggie was like, no, I check this out if you want some more depth on the show and what's going on there. So my, At- Atlanta was amazing for me. My wife's asked me about Atlanta a couple times, and I'm like, I don't know if you would love that show. We can watch it. The first season, like, is pretty normal, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then things kind of go awry. Yeah. The one that I'm most right now obsessed with and i've been obsessed with this this is for three years now i know is this one if we see each other in our dreams let's goof around a little bit pretend like we don't know each other you got it stranger call me rebecca miss welton's my father if that's a joke i love it if not i cannot wait to unpack that with you how do you take your tea well usually i take it right back to the counter because someone's made a horrible mistake do you believe in ghosts ted Mm, i do but more importantly i think they need to believe in themselves (laughs) 
<laughs> See, I'm fine when there's no bubbles. You know, I can do that all day. I would not bet on that. <laughs> I mean, unless you want to win a buttload of money. Lion or panda? Panda. Lion! What's black and white and red all over? I don't know what. A panda that gets anywhere near a f***ing oh. lion. <laughs> all right, so there you go. Woo! Ted Lasso is currently the show that I'm still completely obsessed with because I think that dude's coaching style is brilliant. And I love it. struggle bus in a little You're bit. You're a struggle bus. You just enjoy oh. stuff, bro. Come on. In your face, Corey. Uh, no, not in my face. Let me tell you I something. like it. If, I also like the fly episode of Breaking Bad. Oh so everybody else can my suck it. God. If, if, you like the beard episode I of Ted Lasso. I love the beard episode. You know that I love the beard episode. Sucks. Awesome. Kevin, I think we should take advice from Kevin on these shows because he hates every show Not eventually. True. Not true. It, name two shows that you don't end up in the end hating. Rest Development, The Wire. Rest of Development took a like 15 year break, if not 20. That's true. The wire. But that wasn't the question. The wire you did consume, and you still there's a, there's a season you don't like. I know most people don't like that season. Is it the one where they're on the docks? <laughs> that one wasn't as good as the. I wouldn't say I didn't like it, but it just felt lower in quality but than the rest. That being said, the wire is also. I mean, it could be the best overall show of our history. Like it really was that good, where it was just really good the whole time. But there are there seems to be yes kevin will like look at him with yellowstone right now he was in love with that show he's like oh. are you in love with it i yes. did like it a lot yes too. It i got, was it got horrible i think it's okay to critique something that you still enjoy like i think seasons two three eight of the simpsons are the best tv ever made but there's a lot to critique I, about other parts of it same with yellowstone i feel like i have struggled as i've gotten older to stick with shows longer that when they sense. start going bad i'm like i'm done yeah no that makes sense I, i'm kind of hard that. time cutting the cord like i watch walking dead till the bitter end I'm even though I, yeah, they, i'm done they were like hey it's the last season i was like i might as well and they, they didn't tell me ahead of time we're gonna split it up into three parts over a year and a half and i was like well you got me there amc because i'm stuck now from the 817 oh yeah this is see this is a great example dexter was my all-time favorite i'm obsessed really with it okay which is great but i also think we should be able to point out that seasons five through eight are definitely worse than seasons one through four doesn't mean Jeez. that i don't like dexter but i think you we also hated the ending you be, think the ending is bad he decided to go become a lumberjack and then they brought it back and they're like guess what we can do the ending even worse I bet you can't. Oh, just Did they watch. do a Dexter movie? Is that what it was? No, or they was... made a new season. On what? On, on Showtime. And his kid's all grown up. And he's like, I'm going to go be a lumberjack too. And if you think I'm kidding, mm. go check it out. Lumberjacking is fun. Okay. From the 940 Parks and Rec for the 254 First 48. This is a show you just watched for the 817 Andor on disney yeah i i didn't you know I watched it it's a it's a solid show it was in, it took me a while to it. like to it felt like it took forever to get going but it was once i realized it wasn't the sometimes star wars can be campy or oh, sure have you know jokes involved and that did not like sure. it's stuck in the vein of rogue one very strong and then i want to help kind of about slavery kind of yeah i want to help this for yo for sure from the 972, I'm going to help this person out. Start a Better Call Saul. Start out fantastic. I'm on season three, and I feel like it's dying. Don't worry. Everybody else realized the show started to suck and was super boring. Like six episodes in. And they brought back all, they brought back a bunch of the people you like from Breaking Bad. Because everyone would just sit around and be like, oh, this television show is marvelous. <laughs> oh, what happened on this episode? Nothing nothing is what happened and so they were like we gotta fix this and they brought in people you like to make the show more interesting don't worry for the knc masterpiece right here on 105 through the fan coming up next it's time for gridiron gravy the commander sales apparently in trouble and just how far will the cowboys have to travel this season we'll do it next right here in the fan if you turn it on
We will address Seattle and Dallas and their travel as we go around the entire NFL and dip into some gridiron gravy. Deep. Let me get that schedule out and put down every date of every NFL game. And I know somebody was joking earlier and they're like, how come you're not breathlessly on Twitter breaking every rumor and idea of, I mean, because you've heard, like we already talked to the San Francisco game, the idea that the Patriots are going to be the Thanksgiving opponent for the Cowboys. Like, I don't, I guess I don't care as much about this as maybe other like, people do, but I got a question for you in this or that that will address that. Real quick. One week from now, if I have my dates right, maybe it's less than that. Maybe it's Tuesday. Is it Tuesday the 16th? For the NBA draft lottery? I will be yeah. kind of like, this is life changing for yeah. the Mavericks. If they get a top three pick. <laughs> I think fourth gets a little bit iffy with the kind of prospects, but yeah. if you go up to top three, it changes everything in the Mavericks organization. Who the Cowboys play in week one versus week four, I kind of, I well, we already know the 17 games they're playing. We just don't know the order and all that. So I'm like, I'm for it. I'm going to be excited about the schedule once I kind of see it, but it, it's not life-changing. There's nothing that's going to change the life of the Dallas Cowboys on schedule release. Yeah, Tyron Smith could get hurt three times before the schedule of the season even starts. So, before the meat of the schedule? Um, Yeah, before the meat of the schedule, too. The meat now is week 15 through 17 or 18. I, I think, we found I that think out that did year. get established last year. The other thing, Kevin, to go along with that is... At the moment, like tonight, we have the Stars yeah. in the playoffs. Also, and don't ever count out the A's. The Rangers are three Except games year, up. Man. The Rangers are three games up in the West. We have great baseball being played right now. So get I, two TVs tonight. Uh, I I can do that. I can I can manage that. Now there are a couple. If you want to know, here's some of the scheduling stuff we know thus far. The Chiefs and Raiders will be another Christmas game. The NFL schedule opens with, I don't know, it could turn out to be different, but on the surface seems like maybe not the most marquee game. It's the Lions at the Chiefs. I like it. Now, I know expectation. <laughs> I don't think you can not like an opening day game yeah. or an opening night game. That is a little bit weird mm -hmm. But that it's not an AFC are opponent. higher for the Lions than they usually are. And then the Jets will kick off Monday Night Football at home against the Bills. So, obviously, a lot of I mean, Aaron Rodgers yeah. anticipatory stuff going I'm on. pretty happy about the Chiefs going 1-0 to, to start this year. <laughs> I, th I mean, they show up. If they show up like the Chiefs, then they will be 1-0. That's just they're that good of a team. Um, I, I'm very interested in the line. Maybe it's the, a chance to highlight them as a, hey, look. Look at how close this game was. Corey, you didn't expect it. There's a reason you love this or that. I have a question just for you in this or that coming up in just a few minutes. Also, the Patriots are going to honor Tom Brady at their home opener. Why? I mean, he did do... He's a, retired. I, he did do a lot of great stuff there, right? Like, they cheated for he some did, of it. I mean, he did, it, uh, he did almost the same thing in a shorter period of time with He's another team. He's arguably the greatest quarterback in Patriots history. I think I think I will accept Jacoby Brissett, of course. Okay, sure. See? Is that it's him and uh, Tony Easton are the biggest competition for Tom Brady and I guess Drew Bledsoe. So you got to throw him in there too. Uh, okay, so I think he should be honored. So Pat McAfee has <coughs> said, "Oh Mac Daddy," he said that Brett Favre has withdrawn his lawsuit against him and no payment was made. However. Brett Favre said this on Twitter. I'm happy with that Pat McAfee and I have settled this litigation. Like Pat said, he was attempting to be funny and not commenting based on any personal knowledge. We'd both rather talk about football. So he says settled, whereas Pat McAfee was like, no, he withdrew the lawsuit and no money was paid. And oh. Brett Favre's like, oh, yeah, we settled. Yeah. So, which... Yeah. Almost kind of sounds like you make. I got some stuff. Yeah, I got. It. Hey, when you settle things, Kevin, when it's completely settled, yeah, you just tell people you settled it. And also, in your mind, this could be a different question for a different time. When something is quote unquote settled, how often do you think both parties think it's settled, or do you think one of them's like settled? Uh, sounds like a nice word. Over might be for one oh, of yeah. them. Like it's I mean, over. Yeah. Would you say that? Did you ever settle with a girl instead of break up with her? 
I and never like, settled we, with a girl. Settled. You settled down with Avery. I mean, Adrian. Oh, my God. I did settle down with her. I never settled. Like, I, in a breakup, though, we never settled our relationship. That was never a thing. I think she'd force <laughs> brownies on you, and then you got back together. I will willingly eat brownies, Mike. All right? I will willingly eat them. I understand that. Now, like, whether or not I She get... forced her way into your apartment and started cooking brownies. She could have left the brownies on uh, on the, the doorstep. I still would have eaten them. That is an oddly I impressive love her take. Brownies. Is not only am I here... When you didn't expect it, I have brought things that lead you to believe I will be cooking for. She a was while. trying to show me, and she watched you eat them. She was trying to show me that she could, she could make me uh, delicious, pleasurable treats. What? Uh, that I would love forever, mm -hmm. and I and guess what? I still love her. Now we can probably talk about this, even and I'm not being forced to say that. Why are you winking? <laughs> winking? Is we can talk about this more tomorrow, but Seattle will be the king of travel this season. They will travel 31,600 miles across 36 different time zones for their season. Now, keep in mind, there's not 36 different time zones. I'm saying I should have said 36 time oh, zones because they go back and forth. How across. many time zones are there? I think there's 24, right? You I, don't know that. I am not 100% on that. I feel like if that. anybody knew that out of anybody in this building, it would be Kevin Hagelin. <laughs> I don't feel in like that's theory, a In theory, time zones are it's based on a, the division of the it's map. It's not a derogatory remark either. I appreciate that. It's, it, in theory, that is 24. What does that mean, of in the 15 theory? longitude each. Okay, 15 out, degrees of longitude out. each. I accept that. I, I got correct. more reading to do here, Mike. I'll get back to you. The Cowboys <laughs> will travel 22,620 miles this year. I just don't, for the Cowboys, it doesn't really matter because they're in Central, they're central America. Yeah. America. I get that they're in the East, so there's quite a bit of travel there. But it's not like, oh, they play tomorrow in Seattle. Like, they, they don't play like basketball or baseball schedules. The other ones you would probably guess because it's like Seattle, San Francisco, the Dolphins, the Rams, the Chargers. Right. These are like on one coast or another. Several time zones have only 30 and 45 minute offsets. So there are 38 what? time zones. Okay, but in terms of our time zones, it's 24, right? Yeah, but I mean, who's going by that, Kevin? How can you have a 30 minute time? You know what? Now that's a podcast. Look up who made time zones. I am interested in that. All right. <laughs> Let's talk about the Commanders because their deal all of a sudden is looking a little dicey. What do you think, per NFL rules, is the most amount of partners you're allowed to have in an ownership group? Uh, there's a there's a 10. limit. Okay. 10. 22. Okay. It's 25. Wow. Okay. So you're very close. And so there supposedly the Washington Post is reporting that there is, quote, unquote, an unusually large amount of limited partners. And so, first of all, that could go against the NFL rules. And then secondly, there are some questions about if he has enough money up front to pay. Because, you know, remember, we said the lead investor has to have at least 30% of the equity. And so one of the things is they're like, is there so many partners? Because we're not going to have a main partner that has at least 30% of the team. So... The hope was, I believe at the meetings next week or in a week and a half, they were hoping to approve this. Now they're like, we might have to wait until October Is it to get this approved. I wonder this. I don't know this. Is it like purchasing a house? Like you put 20% yes. down? You have to you have. You don't pay the 5 billion up front or no, whatever. I think you do have to have. I can't remember because we talked about this at least 20 or 25%. It might be 40%. I know okay. I'm jumping around here because. The other offer that was supposedly another billion, they were like, here, I'm going to give you a billion now and like the rest of it in a week. So and we only like, need That's to raise a billion if we want a $5 billion team and we'll just say, don't worry about the other four sure. billion. Sure. We'll figure it out. And we can add, depending on if you want to include Joey or not, 21 to 22 more people. Or if you want to include Carter as well, 20 to 22 more people. That's the max. They're paying for this football team? Hey. They might have money. How much you money know? you guys have? Joey's rich. We learned that with all of his flights that he takes. Man, that's uh, a good point. Carter Keep seems like one of those guys though. that dresses down, but also is very rich at the same time. And sure. he has investments in like uh, Pokemon cards. He's, he's pulling out the wallet right now, guys. Yeah. 
Oh, uh, that's two dollars. You got a two dollar bill. That's cash. And he did watch Yellow Jackets, which is on a premium cable network. So he's oh, saying that. With Kevin Costner. Yeah, yeah. or it could, Yellow it, it could Stone. be a free three month trial. That's a good point. And I do have one serious thing. I didn't get to mention it yesterday, but I because it happened like right at the end of our show. I did think it was interesting. Is the judge and jury Henry Ruggs have agreed oh. on the parameters for his sentence. So. The suggested sentence was between three and 10 years, which I know is still a giant gap of time, but the judge agreed to that. And so the sentencing that for that will be between three and 10 years. And if I can soapbox just a little bit, it's things like that, that I think are, that is shockingly low to me. Like he killed somebody because he was drunk and driving, I believe it was 156 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. And he killed a person and their dog. Yeah, 156 miles an hour at twice the legal limit. And they're like, yeah, three to 10 years, that's fine. Like, I just, that feels wrong, wrong, wrong. And I know people are like, oh, you can't make a mistake. You can, but sometimes the consequences have to fit the mistake. And if you're driving 156 miles an hour at twice the legal alcoholic limit and you kill somebody, like that's not just like you made a mistake. That person doesn't get a second chance. Exactly. At mistake. Exactly. You made a series of poor decisions that led to somebody being dead. And so three to 10 years will be the time in prison. At one point, the discussion was it could have been up to 50 years, but this is the agreement that they've come to. We're the KNC Masterpiece right here on 105 Through the Fan. Coming up next, it's time for NFL This or That. Mm. 877-881-1053. You want to get involved in the conversation along the way. We'll fire off those questions next on The Fan.
from our fan studio, secured by DFWSecurity.com, it's the KNC Masterpiece on 105.3 The Fan. KNC Masterpiece back here on 105.3 The Fan. Now there is a tweet circulating around, but I feel like we were ahead of the curve on this on Tuesday when we talked with Bruce Bochy. As Bochy said that Jacob DeGrom will miss another two to three weeks with his elbow inflammation which I feel like is kind of what we touched on. And Mike was like, you might, you're probably looking more at June. Because he has to restart a yeah. throwing program. Yeah. And the other thing, too, I don't know if you've seen Mike MLB trade rumors is suggesting that the Royals are interested in moving on from uh, one or all this Chapman. And the, maybe Bobby Witt. Maybe, the, maybe not Bobby Witt. <laughs> and maybe the Rangers are a team that might be interested in them. And I don't know where I've heard that before. It'll be interesting. you, Mike. You're the one that said it. Yeah. yeah. I just, I wonder this if, it always worries me with like something like this if the Royals are like, we don't really think he's this good. We picked him up for nothing. Hurry up and get rid of him before everybody realizes that he's going to go right back to the New York Yankee pitcher he was. Yeah. And so um, that's where you have to really be careful on how much you're giving up. You're not getting a Raldis Chapman from three to five years ago. Yeah. No, I, I hear you on that. Now, it's time for some NFL this or that and since the schedule is coming out tonight Mm -hmm. assuming you can't bet on it which i know would mike would want to bet i can item not in assuming you cannot bet on it would you have rather known the first five picks in the last nfl draft ahead of time or the cut the cowboys entire schedule ahead of time first five picks if i could bet on no but you can't bet on it i said oh it does ruin the excitement especially of this year's draft it was a wild kind draft. of crazy the first after the first pick went yeah um but obviously i think there's more known like if i was the mavericks right now and you could tell me hey you already know who the mavericks are getting in the draft yeah i'd much rather want to know that than who the mavericks are playing in november yeah you know so i'd be like no this gives me an idea on where they're gonna go with their trades or free agency or whatever so i think i'd rather know the players because you have a better idea on discussing how are we going to use this player does this mean this veteran player is gone can we trade this guy for that guy type of deal yeah i think mike's dead on there because kevin then i can bet on other things that surround like the environment of where that's going with mm-hmm. those rookies. So mm-hmm. yes, now that I know how what I can and can't bet mm-hmm. on, I probably should have known that was uh-huh. the direction. All right. So is that this or that? I can't remember which one was that. Uh, this is the first one. All right, and you picked this. Gotcha. As opposed to that. that. Gotcha. This or that? Justin Herbert or Trevor Lawrence? Oh. So um, T- well, T Law, I'll go with T Law. He he has oh. a pretty easy division. If you look at it, he's gonna be facing yep. pretty much all rookies for the most part. And you look at Herbert and he has Patrick Mahomes, so good luck with your career. I will I will also Well and but the that being said, he might still have like Lawrence is gonna have Patrick Mahomes to deal with too. So but in the playoffs. Yes. Um Trevor Lawrence has won at the collegiate level. He won yep. at the high school level. Yep. He he's still learning right now, but he has a head coach. He had a head coach in Dabo that knew how to do it. And hair. He has he has glorious he has hair. The hair. Uh, You've hated the hair multiple times though. You're like, hey Jack, now let's cut your hair and win a football game. He are you in on it now? That's when he was losing. Uh huh. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Now it's he just has- like in the movie Bull Durham. Now you can have character. After you win, you can have okay. character. All right. You can Doug- have mold on your shower shoes or whatever. Fungus on your shower shoes. Okay. Doug Peter. Peterson has won at the highest level, and that's his coach now. So he's a guy that has that knows how to do it, knows what it takes, and also has people around him that know what what it takes to get there. So I think that Justin Herbert kind of came out of nowhere uh, with not with out of high school, but in college, you were, everybody was like, "Hold on, what? Who is this kid again?" And he was very raw. They were saying still, and you're still kind of seeing him grow into it. Now he has Kellen Moore as his offensive coordinator. Is that? Like that's I don't know. I still have question marks about Kellen Moore before I decide that's a factor. So I'll take everything surrounding T Law. All right. Look at y'all. All right. This one's a little odd. You want to answer? Uh yeah. I, I mean, I'll take Trevor Lawrence. Yeah. I feel like I've been pretty consistent. Three wow. for three. What a bandwagon Snap. jumper Kevin is. <laughs> to is Justin Herbert. 
Did you read? Did you read that on Rotten Tomatoes or something, Kevin? Now you're like, oh yeah, I'm in on that guy. I was like, I was thinking about it, and then I was like, well, <laughs> never mind, never mind. Is all right. So assuming the Eagles, 49ers, and Cowboys are the top three teams in the NFC. All right, we're going off of that I agree assumption. With that. Who is your number four? Is it in one category you get the Lions, in the other category you get the Saints, Seahawks, and Vikings? I actually probably would still put the Vikings over the Lions. Whoa! But then I would put the Lions next. Um, the Lions are the fourth betting odd favorite. That makes the- sense. Now, I tell you what. If you're the Vikings, that is a huge schedule release because you know, crap your pants, Kirk Cousins. You need all the noon games possible yep. to have a good season. Yep. The, I think the Vikings. I mean, you still have what I think is a uh, uh, the ace of spades in Justin Jefferson there, sure. and Kirk Cousins knows that that dude can go track the ball and pick it up anytime oh, he wants him to. Yeah. Um. There, unless I guess it's against Trevon Diggs, and then then that's there's a problem. Right. But they're they're still good. There's. I mean, they're still a really quality team. The Lions have to prove they're a quality team, and the Packers have to prove that last year wasn't uh, wasn't a fluke of them losing the way they did with Rodgers. That last year was, hey, we're kind of still re- rebuilding. So there's a that division is up for grabs if somebody really wants to get it. I think the Vikings are better set for it, but the, all the hype is running right behind the Lions right now. But yet you're still picking against them. Yeah, I'll take Knocking. I'll take the I'll take the trio. I'll take the field against the Lions. You take him Lions, or you take him the trio of Saints, Seahawks, and Vikings. I guess I'll take the trio just because the odds would say one out of the three could be better. Would you rather? Or excuse me, this or that? It's the same concept. Go to a that. Super Bowl. Your favorite team isn't in, or a wild card game. Your favorite team is in. Wild card game. You don't want to go to the Super Bowl? I want to go. Oh, man. Yeah, I guess. I wonder if the Super Bowl in a weird way is boring if you're not rooting for a team. The halftime show's got to be entertaining. Long commercials. You do have the halftime show that you're there for. But I just, I don't know. Kind of, let's just say there's two teams you're just not interested in. Yeah. Who are two teams that you would not be interested in? playing in the Super Bowl right now? Uh, the Niners, because I hate the Niners. Right. No, but, but you, then you would be interested. No. Let's say the Cardinals. Because they could well, win. Without Kyler Murray. Or the Vikings. If the Vikings... The Houston the Bowl, Texans like, versus... The Vikings. The, the Vikings. Tennessee Titans. Oh, yeah. Well, that would be weird. The Titans versus the Vikings. You'd be like, oh, what, a, what in the world? Like, just yeah. get the... This is too much yeah. crap to deal with the security. <laughs> how the hell did and, they even get And here? how much money this is. Yeah. Like, I think the not, rooting interest of being at a game for a team that you want to win, like that's fun. That, that's a blast. So I would want to be at the Cowboys wild card game, Kevin. Okay. Now, this or that, the schedule again comes out tonight. Cowboys have a three-game road trip. Do you want it in September or December, January? Usually September, you get good weather on the road. So if you let's say you went to Washington, New York, Philadelphia in December, January, you can deal with bad weather. Any concern about starting the season off crappily? Dak yes. seems to be a fast starter. Am I wrong about that? I feel like the Cowboys recently, besides the broken ankle or cramp, whichever one you want to call it, um, that was a slow starting season. But I feel like Dak okay. Prescott-led teams get out of the gate pretty darn good yeah i agree with mike on that i'll go with uh early in the season because i i see where you're going like the if it starts off and you're one and three one and yeah. four like that start people are like oh my gosh now there's always an the opportunity to pick it up but that's an uphill climb uh but i do agree i think Dak. there are times when Dak. there are seasons when Dak is great on the road and seasons where you're like hold on what happened and i would take uh the flip the coin and say he'd be better on the road this isn't a this or that. I just saw this, though. Is, did you see? You know how the Jags are playing two games in London this mm-hmm. year, back-to-back? Did you see that... Uh, They're coming home and then going back? That the, the mayor is working on a contingency plan for the Jags because they have filed for emergency renovations for their stadium, which could boot them out in 2025 and 26. Which, real quick... is Two it an, years for real? Yeah. Is it an emergency... If it's in two years, 
Um, it took the Rangers two years to build a whole new stadium. Yeah, I think it kind of is, Kevin, because okay. like there's a lot of stuff that's scheduled out, you know? Yeah. So, but I understand it does feel like emergency is a little quicker than this. Yeah. I get it. But there might be something that's scheduled out for, they might be have six events that are scheduled out there. I don't know. Now, I think this is my last NFL this or that, and I thought a lot about this. <laughs> Would you rather be a top flight NFL running back or kicker? Now, hear me out. His career lasts longer. And you have to live the rest of your life with the physicality and the toll it might have taken on your body. Are you saying I'm not going to yip it and I'm going to like have like a normal kicker? Yeah, yeah. you're going to be you're going to be one of the best, but you could be a, one of the best running backs too. Name a kicker that people love. Kyle Tucker. Justin Tucker. Justin Tucker. <laughs> Kyle Tucker's outfielder for the Astros. Justin Tucker is just about it. Like and Kevin, he might miss a kick here that's cost them, and then people are going to be like, bum. I'm going to try to convince you there are five kickers yeah. in the NFL that are going to make $5 million or more this year. It's a lot of money, but also, Kevin, every time you get seen— You have seen, loose hamstrings? <laughs> I mean, think about your your flexibility in your life as a kicker. No, yeah. yeah, you might not have back problems ever because uh, you're so flexible. I, I just Adam can't— Because most people are going to remember you for the Mike. ones you missed. Rather than, man, that dude was a tough son of a gun. You don't that would... think people remember Adam Benatieri for yeah. the kicks What about Danny Bailey? Never heard of him. He's a kicker for the Cowboys. Danathan? <laughs> Danathan? <laughs> um, What's yeah. his full name? <laughs> Daniel Bailey? I just want to make sure you're not confusing things. <laughs> I don't think it was Where Danathan. I'm not 100% on that, though. <laughs> So I'm not. No, I just I think most kickers. We remember Dan Bailey as a good kicker. <laughs> yes, but not I will always, Danathan. I will, do you remember him as that, or do you remember as eventually we'll Mike has named? I think he's named three kickers, and he's gotten all their names wrong. That's why you don't want to be a kicker. Nobody knows you, and if they do, they know you because you were bad. Raphael Stefan, isn't it Septian? Yep, it is. <laughs> So that's my that's my that. So you're Mike going, I'd rather be the running back. So you're going running back. Yes. Your body's gonna be I'm fine with that, right. dude. Okay. Eddie Murray. Okay, so are you picking kicker then? Is that I'm picking that? kicker. That's a baseball player, right? He was Eddie a kicker Murray? too. Yeah. Three thousand hits. Yep. See? And you can maybe get away with it. <laughs> like, no, 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 I was the hitter. Oh, I'm pretty sure that he could <laughs> so dumb. Robbie Gould, Morton Anderson. Heck yeah! Dicker the kicker of the Grammatica Morton Brothers. Morton Anderson's a lefty. I don't know if the Grammatica Brothers are the best example because that they got hurt multiple times for like celebrating. Did things. Morton Anderson miss the kick for the uh, for Minnesota the Vikings? In Is that right? Yeah. Am that I wrong about that? Maybe I don't remember. Maybe he was on the other side. From the two and four, five million and not getting hit, no brainer. Yeah. From the nine zero three, give me the kicker all day. It was Gary Anderson. The, that missed the kick. Yeah. Yeah. He was described oh, as Gary inconsolable. I don't want to be inconsolable. You think a running back's ever inconsolable because they fumbled the ball? Corey, no. have you yes. been inconsolable in your life? I don't know. Probably. I have. Everybody's been inconsolable yeah. at some point in their life. Yeah. What do you do when so you're So what? It was based off of a kick. <laughs> How do you think it feels to get called in the office 73 times in your career and go, you suck. Go back down to the minors. And you're like, thanks, coach. <laughs> Where the, holy crap. Where are the KNC masterpiece? You better find a way to console yourself. Right here. I tell you. Yeah, I mean, Scott I Norwood. Inconsolables. Isn't Scott Norwood, like, everybody's like, God, that guy. Because he missed that kick. And so no yeah, running he's on back. the 30 for 30. No running back has ever been under any kind None of None of the greats. The greats, it's just, he could always be like, offensive yeah. line didn't block for me. Our quarterback sucks. What about him? He's like, Eli sucks. We're never going to win. Then he yeah. retires and he wins two Super Bowls. <laughs> Coming up. I don't know. That's Coming true. up next. It's time for the combo platter. It's teacher appreciation week. So give us a sports opinion. And then who was your favorite teacher ever and why? Eight seven seven eight eight one one zero five three. We'll do it next, right here in the fan.
back here on 105.3 The Fan. Quick basketball note for you is Anthony Davis does not avoid concussion protocol. He should be cleared and good to go for What's game hurt? Six. His face? He just hurt like a bone in his face? Maybe. Like if you're not going to go through concussion protocol, so he is woozy, dizzy, got hit in about the temple. Would you say right around the temple? Yeah, but they said he's good to go. For yeah. the next game. I'm just wondering, so. then you would have to then report. It has nothing to do with his brain. Yeah. It has to do with his cheekbone. It but has to do with his eye socket. Do you think they, like, check that out after the fact? You know what I'm saying? Like, they that's what they thought it was concussion. And then once it did, then they were like, we just had to check. You have to be very careful, but he's good to go. Over under on how many minutes he so plays. So he had a head game. injury, but it wasn't. It had no concussion like symptoms at all. That is what they say they have determined. Does that make him sound more soft? <sighs> I'll say. 20. So he passed the concussion protocol v- so quick that we're not even worried about it yeah. when he wakes up. Because right now it's ten thirty in the morning, so he's probably just now kind of getting up. Yeah. And like, yeah, we don't even need to check him anymore. So that means last night they're like, you're fine. Let's say twenty four and a half. Is was that game on game. TNT, Kevin? I believe so. Yeah. And an L- it was an L.A. game. They know a Golden State game. Hey, that's drama, baby. That is all. It's all. You, TNT's saying used to be, we still, know drama. Do they still say that? I don't know, but that, it was there was a time. All right. It's time for the combo platter. It is Teacher Appreciation Week. So give us a sports opinion. And then who is your favorite teacher ever and why? Joey, you might need to be ready because I know Mike doesn't care for school is what he frequently tells us. So be prepared. Mm -hmm. Now, my sports opinion (laughs) is the stars will win tonight and they will still win this series in six games. My favorite teacher, because she motivated me in a totally different way, is my fourth grade math teacher, Mrs. Kaplan. He used to really, really writes for the morning news. Mm-hmm. Covers that the, is a different. <laughs> that is awesome. That is a different. Callie, thing. I think, is that she's not a miss anymore. Yeah, that is a different person. Is I used to really not like her, but she taught me an important lesson because I used to draw my fours with the triangle on the top, uh-huh. like instead of just going lines up. And so I did that on a test, and I got like I don't know. 38 or something and she marked every single problem where i put a four with a triangle is wrong why because she's like i don't know what this is that's not a number it's a four that's what i said and she goes i that's not how a four looks it could be a nine it could be a four i don't know what you're putting here so she taught you how to conform that's a good cheat code yeah you do a triangle four and they're like it was wrong you're like Oh, because you thought the answer was 42. Yeah. That's my nine. It's 92. <laughs> Is it right now? <laughs> That's not wait. a bad idea. You know, you're like, I can see Mike doing But the this. next one is I a four. Just, <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, yeah, so it could vary. Yeah. And I was yeah. like, oh, you're like I can see why you were confused. What but here's- was the right answer? And then you just explain what she thought was 42 is actually 56. How many people are drawing a four right now? Exactly. Right? I am well, doing but that's it. the thing. Like, there are many moments okay. in my schooling life that might have broken me this way. The second grade spelling bee where I told you the kids clap that I lost. Mm-hmm. And it could have been this moment because she goes, this is what a four looks like. And she drew a really big four with the lines going up. And then she took her red pen and wrote a proper four over, like, every one of my answers. And at that point, I was determined to destroy her via incredible grades. Mm -hmm. And I did phenomenal in that class the rest of the year. And I learned what a great motivational tactic spite is for me. And so Mrs. Kaplan going to go down as my favorite teacher. Actually, she taught you how to conform to society. That's really what she taught you. She taught me how to conform. Uh I, I learned how to conform in another one of my classes in college. It was gender and politics. And I got a C on my first essay question. Yeah. And she like poked a bunch of holes. And I was like, oh, okay, so you're super this way. And I was like, so I have to like just remember that going forward to like slant my political leanings one particular direction. And I did great in that class after that. Interesting. Why can't we just have conversations? And s- anyway, that's, that's a different a great question. But you also were taught to conform by a teacher who hit you in the hand with a ruler and said, "Don't use your right hand Ooh, or your left a, hand." Don't you're use right-handed. Left, right? That was a nun. She was that like, was, the devil is she, left-handed. She wasn't a nun. It wasn't a private school. That was Mrs. Bobby. 
and she said uh, left-handed people are evil. Yeah. That's a real thing that happened. Should my mom have taken me out of that school at the time? Probably. But that is not what happened because that was the the generation where all the parents said, deal with it. Oh, you know, like, you're like, deal oh, with your, my teacher did this. Like, you're fine. But, see, but that's the thing. I care about my feelings. I, I don't know. And my mom was one of those who would be like, she would go in and just storm the classroom and be like, I have to tell you about this. She would have been like, my son's right-handed. Let him write right-handed. Yeah. But you're left-handed. That's And you don't write left-handed now. Yes. Because you have I the would, choice to change. Because I was yeah, broken of Try that. now. Try and draw your it force. Doesn't, it doesn't look super great now. I do know that. <laughs> Practice. From the 214. That's a good point. This is what I'm concerned that we would go in this direction. Yeah. From the 214. Crack and win tonight. And Mrs. Carmen, 10th grade English. She was smoking hot and knew it. I specifically... Oh, yeah. I Ask for your favorite teacher and not hottest teacher because of you know, their stories in the news and they're not okay. And in and middle so, school, we were so we were so dumb. We would just thought every little thing was like she's hitting on me. Obviously, Jess told me a story once. I think it was in middle school where a kid said something like, "Outside of you look nice today," he's like, mm, "You're looking fine today," and she's like, "Nope," and Shut took it down, down in the principal's you office. Go. And was like, "You need to know," because she was like, "I will not tolerate that." Just good. All right. I guess what I'm gonna throw out is my sports opinion is I need a I need a shutout from Otter tonight. And Joey, I know that you need the you're like, look, as long as you get it done. I feel like this is gonna be the Kraken's best effort tonight. And because they want to win it back. They want to win back the the series. And they're gonna give you their best defensive effort tonight, and they're gonna try and keep this a low scoring game. This might be a one nothing game. And that's why I think I'm going to need uh, an excellent showing from Otter tonight. I thought I had a really good question for you. I was going to be like, would you rather a shutout or Robertson scores three goals? And I was like, well, that's a stupid question. Because if you get a shutout, you're automatically going to win. Well, mm -hmm. we've seen when you score four goals, you still can't win. So. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I think we need a shutout tonight from okay. the Otter. Okay. And then there's so many great teachers to choose from. Uh, my kindergarten teacher was amazing. Right. I had one teacher that would shake your marbles. Uh, that's Whoa, not allowed what? anymore. What yeah. the hell? My, oh, my kindergarten teacher what was, was Mrs. About? Johnston. I felt like she was 107 years old. <laughs> she was probably but I was like also 42. five, yeah. you know? So I don't know. <laughs> no, she was probably 42. And my kindergarten like, teacher was Miss Creighton, and I often was like, is that Patrick Creighton's mom? It was not. So everything turned out fine there. In kindergarten, you yeah. thought, is that Patrick No, Creighton? later on in life, oh, okay. I thought that. And she was like, she was young. Young and like gorgeous at the at the time. Anyway, long story short, I'm gonna go with a junior college. You were five years old, and you're like, "Wow, that no, lady's my, young and I'm, gorgeous." I'm going back to being. Never mind. Don't worry about it. Yes, she was gorgeous even when I was five. She was a pretty woman. I'm not saying I was attracted to her, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, I'm going through puberty." Big. No, I just thought that she was beautiful at the time. Yeah, I get it. You walk in, you feel comfortable with the lady. Not like Mrs. Moose next door, where I was like, "That lady actually does look like a moose." That was terrifying. I would see her in the morning. Her name like, is Mrs. Smith. That was his nickname for her. I not feel like cool five years it. old, though. You don't have much of a filter, so you would say those. My things. mom is pretty, yeah. right? At five years old, did you think your mom was pretty? Yeah, and I might have said, know. "Mom, you're pretty." Yeah, and yeah. so, but and you you didn't go gorgeous. Okay, yeah, you didn't say to your kindergarten teacher, "Wow, you're gorgeous." I didn't know that word, probably, Mike. You're right. I probably didn't never use like I never used the word fabulous. I probably never used the word gorgeous when I was in kindergarten. Did you tell her she was ever pretty? Probably, but she like I that was my first like real teacher too. You know, mm -hmm. that was my first introduction to that i don't know mike all i remember was playing <laughs> playing house and being a plumber with uh my friend shauna that's all i really remember from kindergarten playing plumber. yeah i was the plumber you didn't have one of those little setups where you had the kitchen and the oven and all that and the, the whole like you didn't have that in kindergarten i don't know i just wanted to be out of did there. you have that <laughs> even in kindergarten yes. i did i don't think i thought it was like we did restaurant i had to go yeah stuff, to go fix the, the plumber man i like in Corey's make believe scenario or your playing scenario like I would, ma'am, but the pipes broke down. Like, we gotta go fix that. Yeah, I'm here for the pipes. From the, good lord, Hold on. you were I'm gonna five. say Marjorie Lewis was my college professor. Uh, one of my college professors that really, she set me up with my internship at the Cowboys with Mickey. Ooh. She was the first woman to cover the Cowboys here in DFW. And uh, she uh, she also interviewed... Um, what's President the, Obama. No, not Obama. Wow. Uh, 
President she, Trump. She was married to Brad Pitt for a while. Uh, Jennifer Angelina Aniston. Jolie. Out of all the great things she did, I would also always introduce her as she interviewed Angelina Jolie and people would lose their minds. Oh. She was so much more amazing than that, and I appreciate her. From the 214, Texas Rangers are going to go to the World Series. My favorite teacher was my eighth grade teacher, Mrs. Danheim. She was always nice to me. And then, of course, they brought up that she was hot. Now, there are some people who stayed away from that, from the 214. Kevin, I'm still sticking with my opinion that the Stars make the Stanley Cup final. And, oh, they said their least favorite teacher. We're going with most favorites. Teacher appreciation for the 817. The Rangers will win 95 games and win the pennant. Mrs. Mixner, this is a great one, was my third grade teacher. She was my favorite because she helped me discover and how to embrace and live with my dyslexia. Wow. That, I mean, sounds like she changed you're not your seeing, life. You're not that, seeing things right. Yeah. You know, and you're, and you're like, I don't understand why I don't get it like everybody else in this classroom. And then somebody's there to help guide you through it. It's awesome. That That's pretty incredible. Mm -hmm. All right, Mike. I know you don't love teachers. Even in kindergarten, you said I'm I'm done. Yeah, wasn't for me. Um, I don't really remember many teachers, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Um, I can't remember Mrs. Reed in fourth grade, and she probably hated me. I was a horrible kid, and I can remember her kicking me out of class one time because once again I was a distraction. And I remember being out in the hallway. I was having a pretty good time in the hallway because I wasn't in school anymore. I was oh in the hallway. God. And so she goes, are you ready to come back in class? And I said, no, I'm good out here. <laughs> that didn't go over well. So then I had to go to the principal again. <laughs> Did you think ahead in your brain this won't go over well? Um, I don't know. You've been around me. <laughs> 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 That might be the truest thing that's ever been said I, on there, this isn't show. Isn't there part of you, Kevin, that would believe that once he got to the principal's office, he was thinking, now what do I say to get sent home so yeah, that I can yeah. be at home and not in school? Yeah. yeah. I can remember being at the principal's office and somebody brought a limousine up to Smith Elementary in Duncanville and all the kids in fourth grade got to go out to that limousine and sit uh -huh. in it and look at it. And the, except for you or yeah except for me oh no so the principal looked at me as i was in my desk my my kind of desk that was made for me outside the principal's <laughs> office and he looked at me and goes wouldn't you rather be out there and i go it's just a car <laughs> oh my <laughs> deal with it so <laughs> oh my god didn't really, on the principal. didn't really go over well <laughs> i've been in a car the before <laughs> it's just a car just extended see you know what i think of i think of when you say that i think of brandon when he would get punished and he would be like okay and like i was just like oh you it's, saw it you need, so mad yes it does oh. <laughs> now oh man sports just, opinion, opinion. I have a feeling that the NBA is going to screw over Mark Cuban for admitting that they were tanking. And somehow, Weird. some way, one of those teams that's behind us is going to jump ahead of oh the Mavs and push the Mavs to number 11. And the Mavs aren't going to have a pick. I would be so mad. There you go. From the 469 Sports Opinion, Rangers lead the West at the All-Star break. I would love that. And their favorite teacher was Mrs. Wittenbrink in fifth grade because she paddled his bully. This was back in 1985. It was a different time, acceptable. Joey. It was acceptable, it was, acceptable. Yeah, it was a different There's time. There's a paddle at Smith. I think I got paddled once. Yeah, I did too. I, never got I was scared of that. It I deserved it. So uh, that definitely happened to me. But yeah, when they take down your bully, that's probably very nice. From the 214, the Stars shut down Seattle today, and my favorite teacher of all time was my freshman geography teacher. Name my daughter after her. Wow, that is phenomenal. From the 972, I might have made a mistake. Stars and Six, favorite teacher is my wife. She's pre-K teacher at our church. Uh, yeah. What did she taught you? So, my- I'm sorry, Mrs. Bartosz. She was my, uh, teacher for, like, uh- You were paying to? Yeah, Catholic school, you know, or not oh, Catholic school, yeah. but, you know, Sunday school. Yeah. I was horrible. Jess is my favorite teacher is what I meant to say because I've seen a couple people go, oh, in your face, Jess. You're not Kevin's favorite teacher. Yeah, in your face. I thought that would be cheating, but upon further inspection, there we go. She's definitely What has Jess taught teacher. you? Oh, man. She has <laughs> she's taught me a lot, including... Maybe not everything is at the same level of anger. That's been a big, that's been a big thing is I told her like, 
hey, do you ever feel like sometimes I get the same level of mad no matter what the situation? And she goes, she just looked right at me and she goes, yes, yes, I do feel that. And I was like, all right, so I got to work on that. And also how to like maybe give a crap more about situations that I know what society wants me to feel about it. And mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, I don't even know. Like, and you don't need the handfuls anymore. I mean like, yeah, like, not the handfuls. Like Foster Moreau. Maybe look, Corey. <laughs> How you're, many handfuls? You're right about that. We're not, I'm still not answering that. Corey, I'm going to tell you this. Every article that came out the rest of the day. Do you know the number? Was, yes, was about Moreau. And all of them said, cancer survivor. <laughs> and I was like, oh, thanks a lot, ESPN, The Athletic, whatever. Yeah. Really could have used that information earlier. Yeah, that was the one part that I was like, hey, this is the part to care about. Yeah, I was like, like, don't care. Don't care. And then in my face all right stop what you're doing mike joey oh, four. four it's more than four nobody knows oh is that what you're doing i'm not answering just tell me that. when to stop i'm not answering I'm at 10 i'm not answering no matter how high you go Whoa. okay that's not why <laughs> the will the will chamberlain of radio did you that, know this Corey? Was, like you were working with him before I, jess that, was it every oh. night was it handfuls every night honestly <laughs> as long as i've known him i just always assumed he was a virgin oh my gosh even no, with you, brandon yeah and what about Look, the women that the he Bible. invite up here at night when nobody was here yeah i read the bible too I maybe should have acted just, better on some of those yeah that's fair joey uh, Sports opinion, mm -hmm. favorite teacher. Uh, the NHL continues to do a, a disservice to Miro Haskinen. He should have been a Norris finalist. He had oh, more points fast. than two out of the three finalists, and he's arguably a better defender than the three finalists. So that's what I'm going to go with. Uh, my favorite teacher, second grade, uh, Miss Levabitz. It was her last year. She retired after that. She was phenomenal, but she was a big baseball fan. So I was able to connect to her with her uh, on that. And uh, she uh, ended up moving back to Chicago, I believe, after. And she sent me a postcard in the summer uh, from uh, from Wrigley Field, which I thought oh. was really cool. She was a wonderful teacher. So, yeah. That, that is yeah. super she was cool. Awesome. Did she send the whole class a postcard? I, I think she did. Okay. I, I want to say my best friend got one, too. So, yeah, I think that was pretty cool. But if it was just me, that was awesome. Real quick question. Besides That's your cool. hand, I'm not going to ask about you, the, all the women. Uh -huh. Is... <laughs> For high school teachers, you have quite a few, right? Ninth grade through 12th yeah. grade, you have different classes. I don't know how many teachers you have in high school. Let's say 20. I'm just yeah. going to guesstimate. How many of the teachers in high school, I'm not saying you name them right now, but how, is it easy to remember your high school teachers? See, I the ones I immediately can remember are the ones in like the electives, like band and newspaper and debate. I can immediately think, because you spent so much like, other time around i guess i know? struggle with this like i can't remember i think i had a really nice sophomore math teacher for algebra two but i can't remember his name i remember he was a buffalo bills fan mm -hmm. i can remember most of them uh most of the teachers i'm kind of going through my brain right now and it, okay. you had we had seven you know one for each class and we had about right. seven or eight classes or something like that with the schedule so I, you might tough. have to repeat like when i was in i can't remember what it was accounting like we had i had mrs reichert for both Accounting oh, yeah. one and accounting two. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I get what you're saying. And I wanted to throw this out for the 817. My favorite teacher was Mrs. Rivers in third grade. She hugged me during 9-11. I mean, I bet that was super helpful. All right. We're the KNC Masterpiece. There is so much more feedback on this. Maybe we'll just do it again tomorrow. Right now, though, it's time for Mike Likes It. All right, guys. So, obviously... I don't watch much hockey at all during the regular season. Right. It's one of these things that I've just never gotten into. I listen to a lot of different things and different people in the Metroplex um, during the day. And I'm 99.9% .9 sure there's people faking they're watching baseball. <laughs> okay. And they're making a deal about it on like... They're watching baseball again. Do you think they have like an old timey phrase and they're like, that's the bee's knees? Or they're like, there you go, that's the ticket? Mm, I don't know, maybe. And I'm 99.9% per, .9 sure they're not watching a second. Okay. Um, And I wonder this. Here's my question based off of this because I'm pretty honest with it. I've been watching a lot of 
Stars hockey. Yeah. I flipped the channel and I've watched a little bit of Panthers, Maple Leafs, but I, and I know get, you saw Edmonton and I with saw, McDavid. Yeah, and I get but I do get disinterested very quickly with the other hockey playoff games because I don't know anybody pretty much on the team except for Connor McDavid because yeah. of card collecting and how great he is and you know, so I don't know. And the Panthers almost came back late last night. That was kind of exciting. Like, I'm going to be honest. Toronto. I'm yeah. watching the Kraken yeah. versus the Stars, and I'm watching the Stars versus the Wild, or did. I still can't name you one Kraken or one uh, Wild. That's fine. I, I can't remember. Lindell, I think, is somebody on. like Because he used to be a star. He used to be a star. I, yes. I thought I remembered his name. So I'm like, hey, I remember that dude. But so that's just, I'm 45 years old. My kind of question is, and I'm not going to fake it. I'll tell you what I'm watching and not watching. I'm not going to lie to you and tell you I'm watching something I'm not watching. Is at what age do you feel like in general, you're just not going to pick up another sport? I liked watching Nick Kyrgios when he's in his Wimbledon run, and I thought I might watch more tennis. But then it just comes, it's not in my life. It's tough to make, it's tough to make time in my life for a new sport and then to learn all of the athletes in it. Because, for example, yeah, I used to watch quite a bit of tennis. My mom loved tennis. My grandmother, who's not alive, obviously, anymore for a long time, she used to really like tennis. So, yes, man, I grew up watching Boris Becker and Yvonne Lindell yeah. and a little bit of McEnroe, uh, you know, like he was Honors, kind of... Maybe yeah, the they were kind of coming to a yeah. close, but Michael Chang was a big deal. Andre Agassi, image yeah. is everything, was a big deal, you know. But then, you know, it kind of falls off. I'm into baseball, basketball, football, and I just... I've never got back into tennis. I thought I might through Curios, but it didn't happen. And I don't know. The Stars, after this run is over, I hope it lasts till they win it all. But I probably won't pick up hockey in October, November. I'm wondering at kind of what age... Do we kind of go, these are the sports I like, and I don't feel like I'm going to have the time or energy to pick up other sports? That's a, that's, <laughs> that's a good Stephanie, question. That's and by the Monica way, Sellis. I'm sorry, Mike. I thought, did you not say he's, the S. Liddell yeah, is on the stars? No, he's not. He's on. Is he on the no, stars? No, he he's on the is. Stars, yeah. I thought you him. said, I'm sorry. I thought you said he he's oh, on well, the stars. Yeah. See, I'm. this is my, this is me. When I hear somebody say I'm following baseball again, or for the first time in 30 years, I'm like I can tell. Like if you if I'm fo I'm following baseball, obviously tonight I'm doing pre and post. I'm going to watch most of the 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 Rangers. My eyes will be diverted to the Stars game, but I have to make sure that if there's a big moment in the Ranger game, I got to know that moment because I'm going to have to talk about it and get paid to talk about it. So I can tell when somebody's lying about what they're watching and not watching. And Alexiak. Is there? He's the Kraken. He was with us. I think he popped on the show with us a number of times. Yes, by the he way. did. Sorry, I saw people texting, and I was like, "Isn't that what Mike said?" Yeah, my bad. I don't. We're not doing that. It's okay. You're good. But I'm just. I'm wondering, kind of, what age? I don't know. Is it? I, is it 25? Is it 45? At what age? When you say you're going to pick up another sport, but it's just so tough to work it into your I, TV watching plus family and all yeah. the stuff you have. I spent. You know, all of what could have been my college years, but I wasn't in college at the time. I was bartending college football. You know, I was watching college football cons all the time. Now, it's very tough for me to watch college football the same way. A, because it's a seven and a half hour game. B, they, they're working on because, them. you know, baseball, all the things that the kids need to do on the weekends and all that stuff. So it's difficult, but I still try and, and keep up with it. I think there was a maybe my like 28. I decided I wasn't going to watch tennis. I, I am not a tennis watcher, uh, and that I tried to watch tennis. I think the last great match I really watched, Kevin, was Andre Agassi and Pete Sampras. The, okay, wasn't it like sure. a five-hour match or something? I mean, they've too? had several really Seven good Seven Days in Hell yeah. is based, the movie that's based on. That is um, not what that is based on. But, uh, but I, I watched that, and I was like, okay, that was fun because I knew those two stars, yeah. and it was something that caught me. But I will never, I probably never get back involved in it. Now I know there will be some very important moments that come up, but doesn't it feel like didn't Fetter like crush everything that anybody will ever be able to get to? I mean, it just seems so difficult to achieve what he's done. It's it's too bad that you haven't been watching right now because with Djokovic and Nadal, there this is the golden age. Our it old feels intern. like yeah, not that. I don't that's for me you and me you are only. the only people who get that. <laughs> is this has been the golden age of tennis, yeah. and in terms of Grand Slams, they're right there and have surpassed Federer. You can debate about who's the best player, but it's been a great time for tennis. But I hear you. But Mike, I've also I never I wasn't a Premier League watcher 
and then I as soccer I've become more of of a Premier League watcher of late of yeah. the last five years yeah and so here I am at you know my 30s late 30s going to my 40s watching more of that and as Avery and I were watching uh, an episode of Ted Lasso last night I saw Man City and they were singing and everything in the crowd and I was like Avery we need to go to a game like this so now I have more interest in right. learning more about it and going overseas to go to a game yeah, and I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm not saying you don't pick up another sport. It's if you're 40 though. years old and you really didn't care about this sport in your yeah. whole life, you're really going to, you know, like I get some people will. I, I think in a weird way, I'm wondering if baseball, I don't know this, I'm wondering if baseball in a weird way is the one to pick up easiest as you get older in life because of the pace of it. Sometimes you want a thousand miles an hour. You want all the hip hop current music at a basketball game. And then as you kind of get older, you might go, you know what? I kind of like the pace of a baseball game yeah. more now Storm at an older gathering. age than I did when I was 25 years old. I'm not saying that's the case or not. It's different for different people, but I don't know. I just, I feel like, I feel like it's somewhat made up when somebody's like, I'm going to now like a sport. And maybe, maybe when all my kids are off at college and they have their own place that they're staying at and I have way more free time like this weekend I have a minimum of seven baseball games I'm going to be at so you know if something's a weekend sport to watch F1 NASCAR I have zero seconds yeah to, to, to get into that like I have seven to possibly 10 baseball games I'm going to be at this weekend for 13 and 14 year olds it's interesting because it seems like 30 in the 30s is where people are mentioning it because I picked up UFC at 30 in 2015 and so I see multiple people kind of but then somebody else threw another thing in there that speaks to what you just said is once I got married it felt like it was impossible to pick yeah. up new stuff like just because you don't create more time like you already have time for like you said the sports you watch but how are you creating more time if like now you're married and theoretically your responsibilities would be more if you have a kids or whatever your responsibilities would be more so i think depending on your life situations 30s and 40s make a lot of sense yeah i wonder if you pick it up more obviously i've not gone through this at all uh me and you have you're in a different state because you just have a newborn but my kids are 12th grade eighth grade seventh grade maybe and i don't know this maybe six years from now it would be easier to kind of watch more hockey. I don't know. Hockey seems really fun. And I'm not saying tennis looks really like I love tennis. I played tennis as a kid. I couldn't play both tennis and baseball. It's kind of impossible to do because of tennis elbow. Uh, it's not like a good right. sport to do both of those. You kind of have to pick tennis or baseball because of the elbow action there. But I just wonder, like, I wonder six, seven years from now, would it be easier for me to kind of pick up more hockey watching? So I would, I don't, I'm not a, like a half asser in it. Yeah, like I you just, get obsessed with things. Yeah. So yeah. I don't want to like, oh, I just kind of know the stuff. Like, I think it's stupid when people talk to me about the Mavericks and they don't know any other team. I'm like, well, yeah, Dwight Powell's good to you. You only know the Mavericks. Mm. Like, do you not understand there's 29 other starting centers in the league and he is outplayed by all 29 yeah. other guys? But if you don't understand that, you're like, no, Dwight Powell's good, man. He's really underrated. Like, you're like you need to watch another team play basketball. Is My there any, like, can, like, when you watch playoff hockey versus regular season hockey, to me, they're two different things. For sure. Playoff hockey is, like, every moment is, seems like it's like you're hanging on edge because – one game, one goal could be the difference. Right. And the regular season hockey game's over, and you're like, man, that was fun. You know, like you, you wanted to win the game, but you're like, how much does that affect all of this now? Right, so the it, intensity. Of but it, they yeah. still they do play at a high level, and that's still important too. I don't know, man. This is this is a really interesting thought because if you could pick up another sport, are you saying it would be Premier League soccer? Yeah, probably probably soccer. I think that would be the case for me too. Just because I would want to know, like, I have to admit, I don't really understand the tournaments, like, in the middle of the season. Because I was like, hey, is Manchester City still, like, leading the table? And they're like, oh, they're locked in a tough one. Oh, is this going to cost them the title? And they're like, no, it's this cup instead. And I'm like, why is that happening? I think for me it'd be hockey just because of the effort, the energy, the athleticism. Uh, I just, I don't know. Hockey seems like something that I would honestly really like if I had the time and energy to really – dive into it also add this too man as i've gotten older i've felt like you have to be less uh loyal 
to just because I picked a side in my 20s doesn't mean that I have to continue sticking with that side or picking a jersey or anything. I can enjoy a lot of different things. Like I can watch another team and be like, man, that's pretty good. No, I still do love my Cowboys and love my Rangers and I love my local products that I grew up with. But I think as I've gotten older, I'm just like, man, isn't it stupid that I just feel like I have to be stuck with this one thing for the rest of my life? What about green M&Ms, right? They all taste the same. That is true. We're the KNC Masterpiece right here on 105.3 The Fan. Coming up next, it's time for the C-Block starring Corey Major. All right, so speaking of some of those NBA guys, I got Sean and RJ brought something to my world this morning, and I wanted to play about eight minutes of their audio this morning, Kevin, so that oh, we can really no. get a good idea of what they were doing. Next on The Fan. Get the top story.
WSecurity.com. It's the KNC Masterpiece on 105.3 The Fan. KNC Masterpiece right here on 105.3 The Fan. Right now, it's time for the C Block starring Corey Major. Uh, in a moment, I will have an eight-minute clip uh, oh. of the Sean and RJ show and Bobby uh, that I would like to play no matter what we don't Kevin have a more, says. We don't have a more succinct, how are you gonna? How are you going to get the storm clouds gathering, Kevin, if you don't get the whole picture? Have you ever watched Sports Night? Come yes. on, bro. Mike, I need to... I've never edit. watched Sports Night. I, Mike, if I'm going to watch like the highlights, I want to know the first pitch. Not just the strikeout. How did he set him up? The How sequence. am I supposed to know this? The Dane Dunning sequence. But didn't they edit him? Wasn't that the whole point of that? Is they edit yes. his stuff? The storm clouds need to gather, yeah, Kevin. They're like, they don't. Uh, actually, my, my first question is this, because I see that David Lombardi has... Uh, there's a conversation with Mike... Sh- or, Kyle Shanahan about Sam Darnold. And I think it, this might drive Kevin insane in just a moment. Oh, dear. But have you ever seen a quarterback that as soon as you saw them, you went, he doesn't have it? 877-881-1053. Ben Ooh. DiNucci. Okay, Ben DiNucci. <laughs> is a, that's a very, Great that's a, hats. Oh, yeah. His hats, though. You know what I'm saying? Oh, my gosh. Mike, did we tell you? Yes, we did. Okay. Yeah, we did. We definitely told him that we saw somebody immediately after yeah. in the parking garage. That's all. I see him up here. RJ, the cool man, Choppy wears them too. Uh-huh. Medford said he had five of them. Yes, five of them. But when will people start buying Mike's hats? That's the real question. I still have my my designs at home, but I made sure to tweet <laughs> it out. So if he ever, it's called the Denver Omelet, uh-huh. hat, <laughs> where you just scramble up the letters. Uh huh. And then. I mean, honestly, I don't know how. Um, Danucci's probably made over a million dollars yes, on those yes, hats. Yes, yes, yes. No it's doubt multi, I think it's become a multi-million dollar company. Not like the tens of millions, but it's more than. I a know he does dollars. more than just hats yeah. too, right? He scrambles up letters yeah. all over the He's place. Mike, if you put the if you put your it's hat in the bathroom, scramble. it would be John Denver. So I was just throwing that out it's there. It's just. What a bunch of crap. So Ben DiNucci. All it took <laughs> was a full of this back. <laughs> Mike, you so, famous people wearing it to be like, I've got to have that stupid A hat. So uh, Mike says that Ben DiNucci is the quarterback that as soon as he saw him throw, he was like, Mm-mm, he doesn't have it. Kevin, do you have a quarterback that you're like, as soon as I saw that guy, I knew he didn't have it. I'm going to have to think about that for okay. another minute. Right, I'm pretty uh, sure earlier when Clint Sterner and I think it was Anthony Wright, <laughs> Anthony oh, Wright. Yeah, like both yeah. of those guys took the field and like, we're screwed. Okay. All right. So here's the quote from Chad Hutchinson. Wasn't uh, Chad Hutter. He, see, oh man, that's enough. We'll get into that story at some point. All right. So Shanahan was talking uh, and he was asked about Sam Darnold. Somebody said Sam Darnold might be the best thrower of the football the 49ers have ever had. What? And he said, Have ever had? And Shanahan said, What? I don't think that's a big controversial statement. Sam's an unbelievable thrower. He was born to do that. Do think, you not? He said, I think Jimmy's one of the best throwers on the planet. The way he can do it, I don't think he gets enough credit for that. I truly see Tam, Sam talent wise as a top pick in the draft, just like he was. You watch his whole career, there's no reason to think differently. He hasn't been in the best situations. So we're glad to have okay. him here. Okay. That's and probably made a lot stupid. more money. That's stupid. What? There's been no reason. 
except for the rest of his career. He's a better thrower than Joe Montana. Cool. Even Steve Young. Cool. Yeah. That's... He's like, oh, Jimmy Garoppolo doesn't get enough credit. All right, great. So you take Jimmy Garoppolo and Stam Sam Darnold. I'll take Steve Young and Joe Montana. We'll put together our organizations from there. Well, and maybe, Kevin, he's like, look, Steve Young and Joe Montana were winners. But Jimmy and Sam can spin the ball better. Like Great. when it comes to thrower of football, just made an Aggie hat, guys. <laughs> while we were doing this, just made a million bucks. Get it? Because it's the horns Stro upside down. Horn That's an Aggie horns hat. Upside down. Feels, horns down. Yeah. <laughs> you get it? I just I make this maroon it. and white. Uh huh. Gray, maroon, and white. <laughs> well, like Aggies five. want to wear a horns hat, though. It's horns down. It's horns down. Yes, yeah. they will. Saw them off. I got Danucci. A, that's right. Sooner. You can, uh, we got uh, Carter Sooner in there. Do you want to wear a horns down hat that uh, that says horns on it, but it's upside down like Danucci? Okay, he says thumbs up. Yeah. Fascinating. Million bucks. <laughs> <laughs> You're, I got you Denver omelet right. and horns down. Yeah. Uh, Where are you at, Danucci? Is he playing in that fart league now, or is he is he throwing balls to to uh, Denver Broncos? He was to get playing in the XFL, I believe, is the league you're referring to. Go Renegades! Back to you, Corey. They'll be in the champions. That is a fa I I kind of want to invest in that hat right now. Horns down. The horns down hat sounds. I like spelt an awesome horns deal. upside down. I'd invest in that. It makes sense. Now let's Aggie it up. Uh, it's Whoop. from the six eight or the eight three two. Is Mike mad at Ben or mad that he's not making million dollars off of such a simple both. idea? It, he does legitimately hate the hat, but it's I think stupid. he's also mad that it's so successful. If it was because I just came up with the Denver yeah. omelet hat and horns down, yeah, I just, just need gonna, to buy hats yeah. for five bucks a piece, and print them, print them, and then sell them for thirty bucks to Alec. So when it comes fifty bucks right there. When it comes to thrower of the football, would y'all not agree? Aaron Rodgers is like yeah. when you watch him throw, you're like that dude throws. And Mike, yeah. you've watched a billion people throw a baseball. Yeah, and I'm sure there was one person that you saw throw that you're like, man, just watching him throw. I thought Griffey watching him throw from center field like into the dugout was just amazing. In spring training, when I was with the Phillies and saw Billy Wagner warm up before a spring training game, I thought, how does how does any human being hit this? Yeah, yeah, and see, and that's where that's how when I watch Aaron Rodgers, I feel that way. When I watch Sam Darnold, I go, the dude has a big arm. But I always thought that there were just so many other pieces missing to his game, and maybe Shanahan simplifies the game for him this year, and this. This is the best situation he's been in in his entire career. The Jets were a mess when he was drafted there. He goes to the Panthers. They're a mess, too. He goes to the Niners, who have a great defense. They're very tough. And I think that they're a good team that gives him the opportunity to make mistakes, and they can they can make up for it. And he has a coach who I think has a really brilliant offense put together. So maybe he is, but I'm not looking at Sam Darnold and going, God, that guy is the greatest thrower the Niners have ever had. That's Can you imagine stupid. him and Dwight Clark and Jerry Rice together? Gosh, That's stupid, and I hate it so much. Uh, a lot of people texting Dwight in. Dwight Clark and Jerry Rice play together? Mm. It would have been a quick crossover yeah, if they I don't did. Right? He was very when into Dwight his Clark career. Was yeah. done. Um, so uh, Rosen, Josh Rosen, Johnny Manziel, Josh Johnson, Stephen McGee, Deshaun Kaiser. Lots of names being texted yeah, in on. Yeah, Kaiser was tough. I saw him in college, and I was like, oh yeah, I think this kid can play. <laughs> Whoops. But uh, this morning, this morning, I was uh, listening to Sean and RJ and Kevin prepare for the next eight minutes or so well, uh, to hear this, this conversation. That is the reason why I have advocated against the other two in the room to go more parcels, more old school, more backwards, because Dak Prescott is not a special enough quarterback, consistently special enough. He, he is capable of special moments. There's no doubt about it. He's not consistently – I don't know. Is, is a Jalen Brunson comparison fair to Dak Prescott or insulting? I oh, think it, that's interesting. I, I think it's fair. Jalen Brunson as the one I don't believe is going to win you the title. But, man, he can be dangerous. I mean, 38 and 48 minutes last night. But Dak in a playoff run, I do not trust to get you to or win the Super Bowl. And that is why I wanted the Cowboys to build up the defense, build up the lines, and win in a more balanced way. It's not an overreaction, in my opinion, to San Francisco. It's Mike McCarthy and the team front office saying. Yeah, and that's like right there. That's another topic that I think we could dive into is 
what the Niners have built is a tough defense. They, yeah. They're like, look, and if all else fails, we can rely on our defense to stop you from scoring. If we can't score today, you're not scoring either. And I think that's one of the things the Cowboys said. Let's do that too. Let's just build that. But I thought it was interesting when he brought up the comparison of Dak Prescott to Jalen Brunson because in my mind, I immediately went, no, not even close. I think Jalen Brunson, I personally think Jalen Brunson is more talented uh, went in the like. I think he's cons- more consistent. I do think it's a great comparison, I, and I I know we've had this conversation, so I always want to get y'all's thoughts. But I think that Jalen Brunson is a consistent. He does the same thing. He just does it so well. And there are times when I'm like Dak, you know, some things you're like, what is he not? Why did you miss that? And there are things, and then there's other moments where you're just like, wow, that was amazing. But Mike, you think that's an interesting comparison? I do, because Jalen Brunson has worked his way from being a second-round pick, a player really respected in college, yeah. like Dak Prescott. Now they went to different kind of schools. but <clears throat> And I know that there is a bigger hit with Dak his rookie year than Jalen his rookie year. But I look at Jalen Brunson and I go, he's good. He, I don't think he'll ever be a top-five point guard in the NBA. But he's worked his way to a top 10 point guard in the NBA, and he's leading a team that many people thought if they make the playoffs, that would be a a, a big kind of goal that would be exceeding expectations. And they're in the second round. Last year, he was able to do things we never expected when Luka was hurt in those first three games. And then he was able to play off of Luka and be a pretty damn good player too. And so I look at it and go, no, he's never, Jalen's never going to make a first team all NBA. And maybe not even second team in all NBA. He might sneak into third team all NBA. And maybe in the career year of all career years, I know Dak's career is running short at this point, if you look at it. Mm-hmm. Like he's 30 now. I think he has another five to eight years left. But could he ever be third team? I guess they don't even do this all pro because I don't think he'll be first or second team ever. But like maybe, like maybe in like a, a, a his greatest year of all great years, he could be like the third best quarterback in the NFL. And I think maybe in the greatest of all greatest years for Jalen Brunson, he could be third team All NBA. Interesting. Okay, and like that's the I do I, like that comparison. I think that's a really good uh, uh, look at Dak and them. I just, I think that Jalen Brunson is going to consist- consistently get the Knicks into the playoffs. Yeah, and I think Dak is. I think that Jalen Brunson is the reason they are there. Well, and whereas I think Dak is like benefiting from the totality of the okay. team while being the quarterback. Did you feel that way in 2016? I don't know. I don't know years. Okay. Which year was that? That was his rookie. His rookie year. year. I thought that the team was really good. So what I think is he had gonna- a great offensive line, a really talented running back, and they were primed. For being good that year, he just needed to be steady. So what I think is people think that about Brunson now, as I think they should. He's been phenomenal. I wonder if they'll feel that in ensuing years. Like right now, he's the guy who helped get us to the playoffs, but which is what I felt like people with Dak and Zeke. But then eventually will it turn into I mean, he's good and he got us into the playoffs, but like, who probably cares? so. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, probably so. And, and Mike has a bunch of Knicks uh, bloggers that he follows, so he'll probably see that. Uh, in the in the future as well. They're obviously in love with Brunson right now, and I think they will because they've just struggled so much as they got a little bit better that R.J. Barrett's not a point guard at all, and neither is uh, Julius Randle, and they were the ones having to handle point guard duties for the most part the last couple of years, and Brunson has come in and made everything run the way that they thought it could run. Yeah. And then uh, before this all ends, that, so that kind of brought to mind as I was thinking, as I was driving in the car going, all right, so that's so if Jalen Brunson is Dak, who is Mahomes? And I was like, that's easy. That seems like it would be Steph. Like, They've they just kind see- of been compared before, too, so I think that's great. Like, okay. You just see things like, I've never seen that before. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, like, never- How did he do that? Yeah, and then I was like, all right, so who's who's Luka? My, my comp for Luka is Justin Herbert. I think that All because the talent in the world, yeah, yeah, just hasn't really done yeah. it yet. And you can also say with the Chargers, you're like, well, let's look at the team around them. Let's look sure. at possibly the coach. Let's look at these things yeah. and go like, how much further do you want him to take that yeah. team right now? Do you think he's under? And at times we say, yeah, he's underperforming. He should do better. And then there's times like he did everything he could do. He just doesn't have the team around him to push any further. And then I think the like uh, the like we came up with Jokic is Josh Allen. In yeah. that uh, he does everything for his team. I like that. Yeah, I do really like that comparison. But at the other hand, while everyone acknowledges how good they are, there is that last little part. You're like, 
You can be in a Super Bowl. You can be in an NBA final. Yeah. You know, I think you threw Lamar Jackson, John ja Morant as a good comp. Yeah. And then I think, uh, you know, I was looking at Kirk Cousins. Is it Tatum? You know, because Tatum seems to crap his pants in the big oh moments. So gosh. I just want to throw that out there. So. I feel like Tatum has accomplished Yeah. More. He was just first team all NBA. All right. I really want to come up with a good, uh, a good comp for Kirk Cousins, though. He has, like, he throws a pretty ball. He can do some really good things. I just don't want him ever. Was it Trevor Lawrence that we said was Anthony Edwards? It, that's a good guy. Yeah. Both number one picks. Yeah. Both in crappy, like, like smaller markets. Jacksonville's probably never going to get the love, and Minnesota's never going to get the love in the NBA. But if they did become amazing, I think you'd be like, well, I mean, sure. They're the number one pick, so that who's, makes sense. Who's Rodgers? You know, like who is uh, who's who's LeBron? You know, Ooh. in that conversation. So that's uh, anyway. That's a a yeah, fun little LeBron game. Doesn't hate his family, so but he loves he can't to jump. Be Aaron Rodgers? <laughs> no, not at all. But he Tom Brady. Good. You think he kisses his? Oh, boys on the he lips? can be Tom Brady. Well, Tom Brady's no longer in the league, so. We have to, yeah, that's, uh, this is this year going into this. It's tough because LeBron obviously is the face of the NBA. I think, you know, and and one of the greatest players of all time. So you have to take who's the. So Mahomes did cross my mind, but I hear what y'all saying on the Steph Mahomes comparison. Anyway, I I just thought that was uh, some fun there. And Shanahan saying that Sam Darnold is the best thrower to ever wear a Niners jersey. Or the KNC Masterpiece. Man, that could have been my buddy as an idiot. <laughs> Coming up next, we'll do some My Buddy is an Idiot, 877-881-1053. If your friend has a terrible sports or pop culture opinion, we also have betting updates for the state of Texas. All of it next right here on The Fan. Diamond.
See Masterpiece back here on 105 Through the Fan right now. It's time for my buddy is an idiot. 877-881-1053. Does your friend have a terrible sports or pop culture opinion? Let us know. Now, Corey, you might not love me bringing this up, or you might think it's mean, but we'll also give them some publicity. If you want to go to footballcamps.com, there is going to be the Sports International Football Camp featuring multiple Dallas Cowboys. So, give them some publicity. My question is... You want to cover that? Amelia? Nope. Okay. Is our buddy an idiot if they misspell multiple names of players in the press release? The players there will be... Tyler Biotish, spelled B-I-A-D-A-Z-S, which is, of course, incorrect. This bad is. Sam Williams, Damone Clark, Malik Hooker, Jonathan Haskins. And you might be thinking, who? That's a fair point. Jonathan, Jonathan Hankins, Hankins is what we're looking for. So one of the last names is fundamentally incorrect. Okay. And the other one is spelled incorrectly. And it is that way across as they mention these people multiple times and it is spelled wrong all of those times. All right. So Kevin, whoops. There, I remember being in an English class class at Eastfield college where I learned how to talk words, English class. And that sounds, cool. I remember that English professor saying a great editor is worth his weight in gold. <laughs> right. And at that point, I was like, I'm not a great editor. Hopefully I'll meet somebody that is a great editor. They might mess up. And then yeah, they <laughs> um, but like that's important. And it's not and it's it's so important when you are trying to get somebody to buy your product. Yeah. Or come to your camp. Yeah. Because yes, I'm not saying they're an idiot. But it is very important to make sure you get sets of eyes on something that you're sending out to hundreds of thousands of people to try to get them to buy your product. That's one of the reasons I know Adrian, when she writes stuff for my possibilities, there are like 10 sets of eyes that go yeah. across that thing before it ever goes out just to make sure. And if those things happen, Kevin, if those things go out, you get outdoors columns 
like outdoors things. The thing that happened with me and our intern once where, yeah. again, I realized at that point, I'm not an editor. I'm a creator. All right. I'm a big picture guy, not a fine details person. And we go from that to I've got a new angle. Is this person an idiot or is the podcast network an idiot? Podcaster Josh Neighbors. No way. That's really his name of the Locked On Big 12 podcast has been fired. Okay. Josh replayed the Bob Huggins slur and he didn't edit it. And he said it was awful, abhorrent, just the worst, on, on, on. Like he condemned it, no uncertain terms. He was vehemently against it, correct? Yes. Even though I'm still not using that word, right? The episode in discussion has been removed from the sites where it was posted and he has been fired. Now, keep in mind the person who said it not fired. And so do you think he's an idiot yeah. for not wow. putting the bleeps in there? Or do you think it's a podcast and like, so let's play the whole thing so you can hear the actual way he said it. I don't want to kick the guy while he's down. Cause he just got fired, you know, while doing something that, I mean, if you're doing a job, you should love it you know, is what I think, but I don't want to kick him for being for that part of it. But I am curious on the podcast, like what their what come do we know what company it was? Cause I want to know what their rules are, like what their regulations are. When it comes to that, you said it's locked on. Is that Odyssey? Yeah, I mean, it might be because we play locked on Mavs commercials. So. Yeah. And then locked on Cowboys. I know yeah. they have that too. So well, that's where I'm like, I'm kind of curious about the, the, where it comes from with the podcast, Kevin, because the rules, my understanding is the rules are a little bit different in the podcast yeah. world. I might be wrong about that because we do a different broadcast. Where we're not allowed. Like we have to make sure we're following FCC guidelines. It just goes back to the thing. And we've talked about this in sports in the past. It's weird that the person replaying the thing got fired, but not the, the person, person who, who said it, said it and meant it, it. Yeah. They're like, that's fine. You can still have $3.2 million. Don't care. Like that's a weird, that's a weird bit. Yeah. Me. And I mean, cause Kevin, our society doesn't make sense sometimes, right? That is very I think, fair. I think Sean and RJ were talking about the whenever a you can sue a bar for if you leave and you're driving home yeah. drunk and everything. But they were talking about kind of the the stadium, and Sean was like, "What's the difference between the the stadium That's and the an bars?" That's an interesting point. And and. Bobby was like trying to make sense of it all when it came to that conversation. Is it because you just have like better oversight over the person at the bar versus the stadium? I don't know. That was something that Choppy said for sure. And my in my mind, my the first thing I said was because not of all of our laws make sense all the time. Yeah, and that, like we don't we still have laws that like you can't have a donkey in a bathtub in certain cities we or whatnot. Do, there are some. If you ever dive into weird laws of America, <laughs> there are a lot out there that you're like, what? Yeah, Why is you can't. That still you can't have a bathtub with legs on it in Minnesota, I believe. It's like one of the... It's There's a bunch of weird laws what? out there. Yeah. Is Ben Simmons an idiot? Yes. Okay. It's horrible at basketball. Well... He didn't like basketball in, to begin with. Though. He likes Kardashian. Oh, does he? Isn't... Wasn't he with a Kardashian? I'm not confirming nor denying. I don't recall. I'm not the best with that, yeah. but I feel like there might have been a little bit of one. Once again, another person's downhill slide was to get into that family. Well, Ben Simmons said that he was currently rehabilitating his back injury and putting my full effort towards focusing on that. I love what the coach for Australia is doing and building with the boomers. And I look forward to being a part of their program in the future. They felt differently and left him off their 18-man roster for the World Cup, which got released this week. Mm. So is Ben Simmons an idiot for being like, I know I didn't play for these other people, but I'll play for you. Do you think Australia is an idiot for not at least inviting him and being like, hey, are you oh, going to try? They've seen him. Yeah. They, they were like, do we want that on our team right now? That's Josh Green's team, right? Yes. It is his team, not Ben well, Simmons' team. I guess if Josh Green is going to do this again this year, and he did improve, he had ups and downs, right? We talked about yeah. it. Like, it was like at the end, the last 15, 20 games, like, oh, no, is he back to a nothing player? But I'm hoping if he does do the international thing that Josh Green actually gets minutes this time. Yeah. Because, I mean, he literally just sat there and watched basketball. 
but also practice basketball with a bunch of players as well. well yeah. And practice, practice. makes uh, you better. Not perfect? Dude, we, there's no way to be perfect. Let's go ahead and throw Jalen Carter out again. Oh my God. Especially now that he's with the Eagles. I just wanted you to know, did you see that he's facing a lawsuit? It's a big number. Yeah, I... That's that's what I thought, but sometimes I'm like, what would the price You're right. you put on if one of your kill kids got killed? That's like, more than this number. Exactly. And so Dave Wilcox Sr., who is the father of Devin Wilcox, who died in the car crash that involved, like, Jalen Carter was involved in the whole scene, and allegedly they were racing and all that stuff. He's seeking $40 million, and the defendants are... The school's athletic association, being Georgia, Carter, and others. I guess I didn't see who the others were, but it says the suit alleges wrongful death, negligence, and negligent hiring. So what's interesting about that, if you're attacking the athletic department, is you're like, I also think you hired the wrong people, and that's part of what's led to it. And hmm. it's a $40 million lawsuit, and Carter pleaded no contest to those two misdemeanor charges of racing and reckless driving and was sentenced to 12 months probation and fined a thousand dollars and so I, I i get the number because like i can't even imagine yep. if you lose a kid and you lose a kid like to something like that you're like whose fault was it who can i get my vengeance from even though you know you won't really get it like he can win 40 million dollars and you're almost guaranteed that he's like that. i'd swap yeah. Like, I would absolutely Every just take time. my kiddo back. And yeah. So, we're throw Jalen Carter out there in the mix as well. And then, my question goes back to, this is going to be a bipartisan question, so I hope people don't get upset. Is the Texas legislature idiots for not advancing these gambling bills straight to the Senate? All right. So, remember I told you, two different bipartisan gambling bills. One that would allow resort style casinos and the other one that would have like the mobile sports betting and everything like that like so, on lakes or something like is that uh, what you're talking about? i don't like fan duel you can do like oh. like mobile on your phone oh thank you yes mobile on I your like, phone because isn't it like in certain places i think i was like in louisville kentucky and you can't have it on like land you can only have it on boats or something and that's why they do like the actually river boats and stuff like it that. has to move like every two hours it has to take off the dock and move like, i meant more specifically like sorry. on your phone and stuff no but no that's, that's fine that's fine so the one for the sports casinos in the like you know destination type that got a thumbs up vote, 92 to 51. So, hey, hey. And then the one for the mobile voting ended up 97 to 44. So again, hey, hey, except you need to have two thirds support to get it to the ballot. And then people in the Senate, in the Texas Senate have already said, there's multiple people who have been like, this thing is DOA, it don't got the votes or whatever. But you would at least hope that more votes would have been positive so you could have taken it right to the voters because like you would have hit the referendum and so now it advances but supposedly in the senate they don't have the votes and so i would love to see it go to an actual vote like to the people yes and that's what you would need it's like you need it to advance through the senate that's the american way exactly to get it on the ballot in november and this could have potentially triggered it but instead it's going to go to the Senate where it's probably not going to pass, at least from what I understand and what from people have been saying about it. But well, how how surprised would you be, Kevin, if it went to the people and didn't? I would and be wasn't, pretty wasn't approved. surprised. Uh, that, that would be fascinating if it was like there was this whole contingent was like, nope, we don't want that here. Like, I think 58 to 60 percent would be how it passed. Like, I think it would be pretty emphatic that it would pass through like i haven't run like a straw poll or any on that but just every time we talk about that there are definitely people who are like i'm worried about you know gambling's impact on people which is 100 fair ideas of addiction and crime and like i get all of that but i feel like the vast majority of the feedback we get both on social media and here is people are in favor of it and i think more people would be pushed to the polls 
because they care a lot about for it versus against it, you know? Like, I bet you would find people like, I'm going to vote for the against this no matter what. But for every one of those, I think you'd find like one and a half people that would be like, no, I want this. We're going to vote for it. How do you do your straw? Is it like real straws like you drink out of or just like a straw, like like hay? Is, yeah. What kind yeah. of straw do like, you use? I give people these drinks uh -huh. out of these undrinkable cups. Okay. And I'm like, if you answer my question... I will give you this straw oh. for your cup. Oh, well, and that's so, pretty yeah, nice. Yeah, straw and it's pole. And it's a straw that's biodegradable, right? Mm-hmm. Because you can definitely not tell the difference. Like, come on. If you're going to replace our regular straws with these other the straws, paper straws, at least point out that it's going to be different. You'll know it's exactly Drink the fast. same. You won't even tell. You can 100% like, tell. You have five minutes to use this yeah. straw before it degrades. That's all I'm asking for. I, I, like, I just want honesty when people are like, hey, it's going to suck, but you're saving the planet. I would accept that. Or if they're just like, hey, you knock it out in five minutes, probably the same. If you linger on that thing, it's going to be weird. And so I just want that kind of honesty in you what, know what? We're doing. When you're not drinking, take it out of your cup and set it on top of your cup because yeah. that might be the best way to approach this thing. Yeah. Like I think that thing about a lot of other things, it's like fat versus non fat. And they're like, oh, it tastes exactly the same. Bull crap. <laughs> just be like, look, it tastes 30% worse, but you want to be in better shape, right? And you're like, that's a good point. I will accept. I love this show. We're the KNC Masterpiece right here on 105.3 The Fan. Coming up next, let's chit-chat with those fellas from the G-Bag Nation on 105.3 The Fan. I'm Chelsea Messenger helping you beat the books.
Fantasy Masterpiece back here on 105.3 The Fan. Right now, courtesy of Dean M. Leasing, it is time for our chit-chat with the fellas from the G-Bag Nation. Gentlemen, how is he today? Excellent, Hagee. You didn't ask. I'm so how are sad you? about that. Eh, I'm okay. I'm okay because did you see the, the votes on the multiple gambling propositions? I thought Ted Cruz told us there's no way these are passing, so I've kind of been taking a pass on checking out the deets. Hey, y'all are the experts, right? You got the interview. That is a good yeah. point, is they came really close, and they're going to advance to the Senate, but everyone in the Texas Senate's like, yeah, they don't got the votes. And so you needed 100 to get them like on the ballot in November. You could like automatically trigger that. It's 92 to 51 for the casino, for building the casino and resorts and everything like that. And 97 to 44 for the mobile gambling. So they both <laughs> fell short of going onto the ballot in November. And people could change their mind in the Senate and everything like that. Or they could get a lobbyist to change their mind for them. Whatever the case might be. And maybe, it will, and maybe it'll happen. But it's still moving on. I just think the next stop might be where it hits the wall. So you need Frank Underwood, votes, right? Yeah. You need Frank Underwood yes, to, get, to whip those votes. We need Frank Underwood here to kind of get this going again. Well, you know me, Haggy. I'm pro business and pro freedom. So I'm just waiting for the party that keeps saying that to come along for the party on this one. Yeah. And I, we were just talking about Please. if it got put on the ballot. I was like, I think 58 to 60 percent it would pass. Like, I think it would be pretty emphatic it would pass. And Texas Live would be popping oh as soon as gosh. this thing gets legalized. It's just a matter of time. Yeah, it does. And that's it's another already built thing. for it, dude. It feels it is. like a matter of time. That's another reason that I'm like, but we're just going to be like, but not yet. Even though you're like, well, it's going to happen. Okay, do you want it to happen now? When we can make more tax revenue off of it and forget the money we get paid from the other states? Yeah, it's not time. It depends on who's benefiting and the lobbies that are involved and those people benefit. For sure. That's the most important thing. I certainly am inclined if to I agree If I would have gone into another business, it would have been lobbyist. That, that should have been, that's the one where you make the most money, right? Is being a lobbyist. I because mean, especially you can control if you're everything. crooked, yeah. which I... I would definitely not, have been a crooked lobbyist for sure. I'm I mean, sure maybe there's a crooked. It's not like a good plan. I yeah. might have been there with you. <laughs> <laughs> Just make all the money and yeah. everything's fine. Yeah. I always think about that. So when you talk about your dad and the college recruiting and oh, stuff. Oh, yeah, that's how I, you recruit. Yeah, yes. absolutely. That's just another version of lobbying. Yeah. So, yeah, I, you're I, trying to convince somebody mm -hmm. to do something you want them to do by offering them a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Big shock. No problems. All right. So we asked this question. We'll get it done. We asked this question earlier. What's the last TV show you were obsessed with? So, like, maybe it's your favorite show now, or maybe you're like, eh, I like this show. But, like, you were like, I have to know everything about this show. I have to keep watching. Maybe you... Game of Thrones. Yeah. And uh, after that uh, terrible ending, I broke up with television permanently. Oh, no. Wow. I only watch sports on TV now. That's impressive. Thank you. It's a good approach. There's several shows I've watched since then that I'm like, you made the right decision. I, I, I've, I've tried to get into a couple, actually. Like, uh, Fiance Wife would be like, hey, let's try this new one. And I'm like... Okay, but the plot lines are predictable, and they'll probably yeah. screw up the end of it anyway. It's yeah. going to be unrewarding, and uh, I have better things to do. Yeah, it's Ted Lasso and Ozark. Yeah, and Ooh, Ted it's, inter good. Ozark. it's interesting because you just mentioned there's a plot line on Ted Lasso this season. Without getting into it, is my God, is it the most boring paint by numbers thing ever? You're like, hey, I bet this happens next. And well, by golly, if it isn't exactly what it, it, it it's not as good anymore. It's really, it's not. really not. It, it's good that they're ending it here in season three. I kind of found myself like trying to find out the characters though a little bit more like about who they're based on. Well, or? who the actors are playing, yeah, like okay. the, the dude that plays uh, Krim, Trent Krim. Yeah. Oh yeah. I looked yeah. him up. I'm like, what, what? What's he done before? Kind of actor. He so used, he was with the independent. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a good Is that point. Really he, what, he did great work there. Yeah. He did a lot of great work. The guy at that the plays Roy Kent, like that dude, he he wrote Shrinking. He was a writer for yeah. Ted Lasso. He's got all these different things he's had his hands in. So. That show was pretty cool. I, I watched quite a few of the episodes a Shrinking? few uh, Christmases ago. No, oh, uh, Ted Lasso. Ted Lasso. Yeah. Yeah. That is a good show. And um, when they were focused on being a comedy, it was great, and you'd get a little life lesson. And then as season two wore on, it was like a self-help sitcom. Yeah. 
through the eyes of different people, and I'm like, good Lord, get back to the jokes, please. You yeah. better understand the evils of sponsorship. <laughs> You're like, I got yeah, it. You're yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, got, you got the lady going through a midlife crisis stuff. You got dad missing his kid that he was away from. You got, you got all these different things going on. Anxiety just, things. Yeah, anxiety. It got yeah. so heavy. That's why I'm like, I can do one of these a season, guys. Yeah. That's why Full House was amazing. You got all the jokes, and at the end, you got two minutes of Danny Tanner explaining why life. There you, there go. you go. You know that is true. I'd probably rock the Mandalorian and then Barry. And, she, and Eric, you got me into Barry, but Barry was fan is fantastic. We got, we got the Barry final season well. going on now. See, and that's the thing is like I'm trying to think because I haven't even watched this latest season of Barry. So can I say, can I claim that I was obsessed with it? I'm not currently, but I was. That first season was unbelievable and I was locked in. Does obsession feel like, okay, I will subscribe to your stream or your or your yes. channel just because you have this show? 100%. 100%. And so like for me, Ozark was one of those for sure, like yeah. brought us. And then Dexter, I know they had a huge pause, but then they just, in the last year is, or whatever, dropped a, another season, and I was locked on. Is that the one you're talking about? They become lumberjacks? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the At the end of, well, you watch it for yourself. The, I, I'm not, but go ahead. I thought the original ending of Dexter was disappointing, and from everything I understand, people hate the new ending of Dexter even more, which I would not have thought was possible, hmm. but they pulled it He went it to off. be a lumberjack? Yeah, yes. so he went from killing people to killing trees. Yeah. You know, that was his approach there. <laughs> Didn't his son become a lumberjack really too? Yes, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, but I yeah. think it was also like wow. the way he floated his sister off into the storm and stuff. Like oh, yeah. that was also like, come on, what are we doing here? You're trying to get so is, oh, is, like is the new season with him as a lumberjack? Well, okay, so <laughs> or does he come back? <laughs> okay, so just real quick, I yeah, want to yeah. point out because I use that term very loosely because at the end of the show, he's like, what are you trying to say? He's like, I've done these things and now I'll disappear, and he's like. Like, I'm gonna go live in the wilderness, and it looks like he's so like he, he actually. I think he works for a lumberjack and yes, company. In the new season, he like lives off in the middle of nowhere. I don't know if it's Alaska or wherever, and he's like just doing. Why is Alaska cut? always the middle of nowhere? It's because been well, it is. No, it's one of the three states I haven't been oh, to. Yes. Wow. It is fantastic. And it's on remember, the perimeter of nowhere. And 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 the whole thing about that is that's why Blockbuster stayed in Alaska because they didn't have enough Wi-Fi. Coverage yeah. for the state. That's a true story. That is a true <laughs> story. <laughs> Moving to Alaska. Yeah. Alaska. Yeah. We went to Alaska. It was incredible. Yeah. And so, but yeah, so now his son shows back up and is like, hey, you should be in my life and stuff. And we could like chop trees down together. As I liked like part of the season, but then yeah. I did not like the way they landed that dismount there. Yeah, did I was crazy people about that, that either. Did he find uh, people that needed to be culled from the herd out there? You know what? You might be shocked to learn this. He did. Nice. And there were still people trying to Ow. figure it all out. I know. It's shocking. Stick by the code still? So good at not getting caught. Yeah. You change the code up. I mean, you need to watch it. Oh, my gosh. You probably shouldn't. The dark but, past. Yeah. I like the recap, you know? I like, <laughs> That's I like pretty that. much yeah. what happened. <laughs> yeah. If you saw, Eric, I, it sounds like you liked it better than I did at the end, but do you think that's a fair recap of what happened in the last season? Yeah, absolutely nailed it, Hagee. Okay, perfect. What do you guys got coming up on the program today? Pure Gold, as always, thanks for asking. Uh, G-Bag of the Day is coming up at 2.30. Bob Stoops at 4 getting set for the XFL title game. Ooh. And, uh, of course, Krusty's Corner at 2.40. Eric Nadell tomorrow at 5.20, by the way. Interesting. Really? Very interesting. That's right. Holy oh. smokes. That I'm feels very like, looking forward to that. That feels like an appointment right there. That's right. Outstanding. All right. Roll home with the G-Bag Nation and perhaps the counterpoint to the final season of Dexter. Uh, you will have that <laughs> forum, of course. We have been the KNC Masterpiece. Make your way back with us tomorrow, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. right here on 105.3 The Fan. Say lumberjacking, Kevin. <laughs> lumberjacking. Say good night, Kevin. This Odyssey Sports.
from our fan studio, secured by DFWSecurity.com, you're rolling with the G-Bang Nation on 105.3 The Fan. Hour one of the G-Bag Nation here on 105.3 The Fan. Welcome in on a nice little Thursday. General at your service. Hope you're doing great. Thanks for making this part of your day. There's brought us the former uh, Cowboy Scout NFL executive Emmy Award winning media member, uh, Brian brought us. Lucius Alexander's in the pimp cup over there, master control. You have Woolchuck and Shia Follow right here, although Woolchuck's not in the talk booth. I don't, I don't know what's going on with Woolchuck. He's out uh, running an errand here before the show starts. Then you do have Carter Freeman coordinating your video. How we doing, boys? Fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, maybe Woolchuck didn't meet his personal pre show threshold when it comes to the steps taking. So maybe he's doing possible. that. Uh, the biggest emergency and the biggest surprise would be if he was in one of these stalls. Because we know he's completely shy when it comes to public restrooms and doing the stalls. Here he comes. He didn't sort of say anything when he left. He no, just, it was a real sneak away. What were you doing, Wooly Bully? Sends uh, some bubble guts sort of messages. It's been a, it's been a weird morning for me. Okay. A weird morning. All right. uh, so Physically okay. or everything right. come out all right? Everything's good, man. Everything's good. Good to know. We're going to be okay. I'm proud of you, man. Okay. And I want to make sure that I'm no longer in the room when things happen. I'm not trying to have that. I think he's guilty. Oh. He's feeling guilty about the early egg smell. Do you see no, the, that one? Was I, that I, one I think that uh, one I, I think Do, am, yeah. I, am I fitzing a bit? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Dude, you are. Oh, geez. Yeah. I think, I think that. I, you know it's a, it's bad if I'm going to do that because I don't like doing that. You could have started a lawnmower with whatever was in the air there in the crosstalk. I, I never ended up smelling that. That would have shut down a local middle school. <laughs> I think it was Mike. If you noticed, he was very quiet during the entire crosstalk. And he did smell at first. Uh, you know the rules, man. That's you right. Smell the dealt it. You dealt. And you guys also know I have no problem admitting. Yes. Yeah. I'll it's, just I'll own that. Are you okay, man? You just like You're you, almost too proud. You of got the it, long sleeve time. stars like I shouldn't have worn the long sleeves. You got I think. the you just it's immediately just pushed the sleeves this up. Is, this is a tough this is a tough day. It's for a grinded out Thursday. This is a grinded out Thursday. <laughs> this is oh, yeah. this is what you call uh, what you drinking? What you stinking today? Yeah. So this is a tough one. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it is a it is a warm one out there. Though. It is. So uh, best of luck to everybody coping with that heat as it starts to warm up. You know, here by about three three months from now, a day like this will seem breezy. It'll be like, oh my goodness! Thankfully, it's <laughs> cooled down. Sweater vest, yeah. cold front, but yeah. uh, it's a little muggy out there. It, it is an NFL schedule release a Thursday though, and we're trying to get as much as we can through yeah. different Twitter reports and inside sources and. I imagine, Brian, uh, we'll be able to cobble this thing I'm, together by the end of the show. I, I got five hours to work on it, and I'm doing my best. I've got, a, I've got a lot of the gang of seven. I mean, we're all kind of in contact. So maybe if you see me, if you guys have that you around the rim, around the rim session, you know, yeah. I'm over here on the phone. You, uh -huh. you know what I'm working on there. Well, okay. Someone's yeah. got to have a camera guy up in here. Yeah, I got to figure that out. Yeah, so uh, the NFL schedule is officially released at 7 o'clock, but... You know, they've already been leaking some themselves, and then more are finding their way into the light. Cowboys are, are, are supposed to have a more difficult schedule than previous years where we could count on a, on a bottom five because the NFC East has really devolved into the worst version that it ever seen. It was it was the worst NFC East we'd, we'd seen in the history of football, but now it is back. It is one of the the best divisions, so it can be uh, tricky to anticipate how how many uh, games are they going to win in the NFC East next year, and and how many games are they going to win overall. One of the highlights, Week Five at San Francisco, that's a big one, and I'd much rather face them in uh, early October than uh, in January or December when they've been playing their best football going into the playoffs the last two years. I agree. I mean, they are a team that is really the last couple of seasons. To your point, they take off the second half of the season. So I think the earlier you could get the Niners, I was kind of hoping maybe a week one Sunday night football game. That would have been fun. But no, you got to get them in week five. But I don't think Brock Purdy is going to be, be available. So we'll see who's quarterbacking for him. Yeah, that's the huge question. Uh, that's what I'm excited about with these Niners because they got a really, really good team. And it's like, OK, can you really just kind of start? Are you out of place now in the Shanahan system? And, and you, you've you hit the right notes in terms of roster around the quarterback that you can kind of just cycle through some washed up sort of guys like a Sam Darnold or I mean I guess Trey Lance isn't washed up we, we got to see what he's got but can you can, can Kyle Shanahan just get away with a revolving door at quarterback that's going to be interesting well they played with five last year to get to the championship game I believe it was five different quarterbacks five different quarterbacks wow I knew Jimmy and Trey and Brock Jimmy Trey Brock and then they had to have Josh and I mean Josh Johnson oh, that's right. into the and, game and the NFC championship game had to play yeah, yeah. so I mean at, yeah, they at least had four quarterbacks they were leaning on. Yeah. And 
Maybe there was a fifth one. It's looking like giant Sunday night football to open up. Uh, condolences to your sleep patterns, uh, post-game show hosts. <laughs> yeah. Woolchuck and Broadus will be rocking AT&T Stadium well into the morning, taking your phone calls and giving you a reaction. I, I like that game. You know, they used to open up with the Giants all the dang time there. All they were the on a run. freaking time, man. I thought this thing might be the Jets this time around. I thought it would be the Jets that they would open up with, but now it's the Giants and stuff. Both teams will be relevant, though. Giants coming off the playoffs last year. The rumor is versus Jets week two. There you go. That's just a, that's just a rumor. Yeah. You also have uh, Cardinals week three. Who cares about that rumor? Yada, yada, yada. Uh, Thanksgiving, Washington. Yep. Uh, and maybe uh, ending the season at Washington yeah. once again. So that's it, boring. Maybe to me. some rumors, too, about Phil, at Philadelphia in week nine. Okay. okay. And in Philadelphia at home here in week 14. Okay. And either right. one could be a primetime game easily. Yeah. They usually like to do that on Sunday night football. I don't mind playing Washington on Thanksgiving. I think that it's kind of fun. But the last game of the season, Washington again, that kind of stinks. Well, you know, it could be meaningful. Yeah, you know, I I would love it if the Cowboys could uh, you know execute a little bit better in, in Week 18 than they did this time around. Uh, good opportunity to play against a physical front in Week 18 if you if you need to win, give you an opportunity to adjust. But that uh, you know that that game last year left a, a taste in my mouth. I'd like to get a crack at them Week One to be honest with you, but it appears it will be the Giants. Aaron Rodgers Jets debut will come on Monday night, September 11th. At home against the Buffalo Bills. Ooh, Josh Allen, Aaron yeah. Rodgers, week one. Let's go. This schedule for the Cowboys is could be wicked. Jets, Dolphins, Bills, the NFC West, which is thankfully not what it was just a couple of years ago. But it is a it is a a, a big year for hey um, you know a, a lot of tough opponents, respectable playoff type opponents there on the schedule. Pivotal game five for Stars Kraken tonight, though. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to feel great about Ottinger and the Game 4 win or still bothered by the fact he gave up three and had me nervous with three and a half minutes to play. Yeah, I, unfortunately, uh, I've proven that uh, my gut's a little off on this one, so I'm going to lean on you guys. What are you thinking going into this one? You feeling good? I feel like, though, that everybody's gut is off on this. Look at all the series in hockey. I don't think anybody – I think there's only been two series where we've had back-to-back -back winners. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, I think we, it, there was uh, uh, Florida won three straight mm -hmm. before uh, Toronto won last and night. And then the Stars against the Wild and won then, three to end that well, series. In, in round two. In round in two. Yes. Round okay. Two. Yes. You're right. Two. No, you're, I, I don't think there yeah. has been because yeah. there's been a lot of blowouts. It's yeah. like one team blows the other out the next night. Boom. The other one's blowing the other out, especially in Edmonton and Vegas. Yeah. That's definitely how those games have gone. Yeah. I, I just kind of feel like that we're if you're trying to predict what's going to happen in these series, you really can't. I mean, like I... I, I, you know, I, hell, I, I, I expect the stars to win tonight, but like I said, they haven't, you know, the series overall in the second round, uh, it's been very rare for the back to back winners. It has been rare and it's, it's been fascinating how the team has gone back and forth, controlling the puck, controlling the action, dictating the pace. Um, clearly the, the team that does that tonight is going to have the best chance to win. I, I'd love to see the Stars play some disciplined hockey. I'm kind of giving up on the idea that Jason Robertson's going to get this done. Five consecutive goals now, games without a goal. In the regular season, he did have a streak of six games. So tonight, if he goes goalless, it would equal the streak. And I, I'll, I'll try to draw some positivity from that. Even though we now have back-to-back -back playoff years where Jason Robertson hasn't been good, hopefully this is just a tough streak and he could break out of it at any moment. But I think the guy needs to wait for a better matchup. Two two really solid defensive teams. You're not going to find weak matchups as the as the playoffs go on, but hopefully they can find something if they do advance in in future series. Because you ain't going to win the cup with him playing like this. That's for sure. No, he might be in his own head here because he had a couple of gorgeous chances right in front of the net. He had that one turnover, and it's just one on one against Grubauer, and he can't even hit the net. I mean, he completely shanks it. So I mean, he's got to be he's pressing. You thinking some yip action? I don't know if he's got the yips, but right now he's he's really struggling to get that thing on target. I'd hypnotize his ass. Maybe I maybe would. they should. That's what yeah. that's what Cindergard's doing, trying to get himself going. I like it. Uh, he's doing some uh, hip, 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 hypnotism. Hip, hypnotism. Hip, hypnosis. Hypnosis. Hypnosis, yeah. hypnosis yeah. might be even for. a better word. I almost yeah. said hypnosis, and yeah. I don't think that would have been the right one. Well, that's when you're just trying to fix the hip. Well, uh, yeah, and I don't think it's really worked for Cindergard to be fair. Uh, but at least he's exhausting all options. Luca named All NBA first team last night, fourth consecutive season. We had an opportunity in our one hour show after the Rangers' victory to 
discuss it a little bit, uh, but not a lot. What do you guys think? The stats are undeniable. It's weird when you don't even make the playoffs, though. And and I think looking at the second and third teams, I'd rather have LeBron on my team. Uh, I don't know about I don't know about Jalen Brown. I, I think he's like the perfect secondary star. But I I don't know if I had Kyrie Irving and Jalen Brown. I, I, I is that better than Luca and Jalen Brown? Maybe. You know, I, I'll tell you this. I like Kyrie Irving's game. You know, I I, I think when healthy, he's better than Luca because how he involves his teammates. I don't want to be too critical on the local star because clearly he's great. But you know, I'd rather I'd rather um, you know have Steph Curry I, on my team, Jimmy Butler. These these guys, you know, I just you didn't even make the playoffs and it and it looked bad. We're not playing any defense. Um, and it, it, you know, I, I think Luca's complaining about the refs. I don't think this should be recognized this year as as all NBA first team. Kind of feel like that he ever has at least on. A, I mean, all all of his numbers were still extremely. You know, he oh, thirty almost thirty three points a game, nine boards, eight assists. Yeah. You can't but, deny it. The, yeah, he's those, got yeah. almost a triple double, and it is a regular season award. So like, Luca was better than Jimmy Butler in the regular season. Clearly, if you were to factor in the playoffs, I'm with you. I would put Jimmy Butler over Luca, but. You don't, and they barely got into the to the postseason there in Miami. I kind of feel like they're it's hollow though, isn't it a hollow thing to be all NBA and and your team is you're, you're talking I think there's about something to that you're yeah. talking about being a lottery team. Yeah, there's it, it just seems you know last year when you know with Luca yeah he was maybe this year too he was carrying the team and you know it just seemed like everything was kind of going along okay until Kyrie came along and I'm not blaming Kyrie. But I'm blaming maybe the fact that it you, that the, the those defensive players that you sent away. Yeah. Maybe that's maybe that's the thing. It's not the superstar. It's the the players around him. It's the it's the maybe gonna, that's the real story. How bad yes, the supporting cast yes, got yes. after those trades. Yeah. And, and and you know some of the players not being as good as they were. You add Christian Wood. It just threw everything off. And I get, it's cool to see Luca recognized. I mean, four times in a row, first team All Pro. It is absolutely historic. And I hope the team can do a, a much better job putting a supporting cast around him. So when he makes it next year, it won't feel hollow. Ranger season of glory continues tonight at eight o'clock here on the fan. <laughs> Let's go, baby. Pre-game in Oakland, uh, our new friend Nathan Avaldi will be uh, on the mound. And, you know, I, uh, th- this Rangers team right now, though, is is the number one seed for being our champion. You know, we, we obviously the Mavs didn't go well. We'll see about the Cowboys. I don't, I don't think you can expect a, a great, efficient playoff stretch if, if you're not going to be able to run the ball, take pressure off Dak. And I think the running game is going to be about the same as last year. We'll see about the Stars. You know, they're in a good spot, too. But these Texas Rangers are for real. That's that's what we're finding out. Winning in multiple ways. They can blow you out, or they can just play great defense, good pitching, and work their way around a bullpen. The bullpen's about to get better. Um, and mm. as we approach 40 games in, that's been the magic number historically in my broadcast career, which is... It's crazily coming up on 25 years throughout the history of baseball. What they tell you in spring training in the first, well, you got to at least get to the quarter pole. You're coming up on the quarter pole, playing great baseball, figuring out ways, multiple ways to win, looking like one of the best teams in the big leagues, top five of the power rankings. Now this is legitimate. And I'm, I'm totally in on now. Not only are the Rangers contenders, but they are amongst the favorites to win the World Series once again. Absolutely. Second best record in the American League, and they've got the second best run differential in all of Major League Baseball at plus 82. It's Seven behind three in Tampa, their last 10 right? games. Yep, behind Tampa in both those categories, no question. But the, the ability to win in multiple ways, we've seen the offense explode at times, but getting that 2-1 victory where yeah. you're going against a team's best pitcher and he's out there throwing his best stuff. You're able to weather the storm and eventually knock him out of the game in the seventh, find a way to get that win. That's a game they're not winning the previous six years. And to me, that was the statement that this team is legit. More yeah. impressed with the starting pitching or the offense? The offense. The offense. Just because I wasn't expecting it. I mean, with the rotation, you were expecting, okay, these guys should be able to, th- this should be the strength of the team. And then despite not having Seager uh, and Garver, this is an offense that is exploding for insane numbers consistently, and they're doing it with back of the lineup guys as well, and they're doing it with young guys. And I'm wondering, like, are you and you've afforded the opportunity now with your depth offensively when you go trading for bullpen? 
are you trading some of the some of your bats or is this all a farm system kind of trade or, or what's the deal I don't know but you've at least given yourself options you got guys that you could probably afford to lose offensively in order to gain the arms that you need come trade time my guess is that that Chris Young does not want to mess with anybody that's on that 25 man roster right now Oh, no. Yeah, your farm system is so deep. You don't have to touch your stars really down in the farm to make your bullpen better. Um, you could. You could make your bullpen a ton better if you want to consider the developing stars that you have down there. But they have so much depth. The Acuna kid, uh, you know, probably 15, 20 guys or so down there that could help you get quality arms in, in relief. Um, but there's something to be said about Duran. You know, when once Seager comes back, Boach is going to try his hardest to keep that bat in the lineup. Yeah. If you can't find something that works great, that's a hell of an asset and a hell of a resume he just put together for the last three weeks to further this position uh, of strength that uh, the Rangers now very quickly find themselves in. Okay, uh, we got G-Bag of the Day coming up at 2.30. Do the Dubs have a shot now? And how's Anthony Davis? That's coming up next here. It's the G-Bag Nation on 105.3 The Fan. The latest from the star in prison.
Future, welcome back. It is the G Bag Nation here on 105.3 The Fan. Now, Textures, I'll tell you right now. Sure, statistically, as I said, as the premise to that take, it is undeniable. Luka, first team All-NBA. But recognizing a guy after not making the playoffs, being a ball hog, not getting teammates involved, bitching at the ref, and not playing any damn defense just feels off to me, okay? Is he great? Yes. But there's a number of players that I would rather try to win a championship with than Luka because of the massive, massive hole that it digs you when your best player is so bad on defense. Everybody's got to play defense. Everybody's got to defend the three-point line. Everybody's got to come together to defend the paint. It's all about expanding and contracting. And if you're slow of footed or just bitching at the refs or not that interested in playing defense, it is a massive problem. Bad defenders are getting chased off the floor in the NBA playoffs. It's only Luka's magical offense that puts him in this conversation for being one of the absolute best in the game. And, um, you know, again, one of the best in the game, but he's not that much better than what Westbrook was at the height of his powers. When you talk about an absolute ball hog that can't play with other stars and needs it in his hands 40 minutes a night so he can get the triple-double and his teammates are like, bro, can I get the ball? Well, yeah, yeah, you can get the ball after I'm done trying to attack for 14 seconds. It's a carbon copy of James Harden. He passes a little bit more creatively than James Harden. James Harden was quicker. James Harden's three-point shot, probably a little bit more pure. Luka can force him and make incredible step backs. But a very, very similar skill set. You people have no problem jumping all over James Harden and Russell Westbrook. I see it on the text all the time. The same applies to, to Luka. Ball hog, not playing any defense. You can't get five men together playing basketball at an incredibly high level if one guy wants to make the offense all about him. It just, it's never worked. That's why Phil Jackson was like, hey, Jordan, Kobe, stop making it all about you and intentionally put in a system that prevented it from happening with the triangle offense. Yes, we have one of the greatest players of all time. We don't want him touching the ball all the time because then his teammates are bored to tears. Can't play basketball bored to tears. You need to be involved. So there's multiple reasons, and I think tangible ones, that I would highly question the idea of putting Luka in first-team All-NBA, including being a ball hog. It's massive, and I've been on the record for years saying I don't want my stars doing that. For the longest time, it's been required of Luka because his teammates have been crap. Um, but he could make them better. Kyrie Irving made them better. That was the test of that theory. Kyrie Irving making the teammates better when Luka was out. That's what you saw. A real point guard, not a statistical accumulator. So I just wanted to get that off my chest since you guys just had your way with me at the break there. <laughs> I, I love the interaction of the truckwreck.com fan text. There's a reason you need a special license to drive a big truck. So companies that hire drivers and put them in a big truck should be held accountable for what happens when one hurts you. Frankly, you need Frankel and Frankel consultations. Always free truckwreck.com. Well, Brian. Anthony Davis concussion. Wow, how about that? Oh. A scare. <laughs> what am I doing? You put wow. it out there. And what this am I is doing? What happens? Oh, he's got, he's got that look in his eye. There's no way he's going to get hurt. He's got that look. You know what? There's he, no better medicine. You. There's no better medicine for your uh, for your broken down body than that look in your eye. Nothing could stop us except Brian's instant karma. That was phenomenal. <laughs> what am I us. doing? You had to know that was going to happen. <laughs> Seriously, I'm like every it time was, I'm I'm talking about these things and it happened, and I'm like, and I'm I'm watching the game and I'm like. He's in a wheelchair for getting hit in the head. It yeah, just happened. That. He went. Paul, he went full Paul Pierce right there. Yeah, yeah. That, don't don't ever blame Paul Pierce for. But anything. the the weird thing is, is you can get your bell absolutely rung, and somehow not get a concussion. I'm not sure how it happens, but it happened apparently to him last night. As I, uh, Darvin Ham after the game was like, "Yeah, he's feeling better. Looks like he's pretty good for Game Five. <laughs> well, when or six. You, when you when you really dig into what it means to go into the concussion protocol and what that means for your standing yeah. in the next game and even the game after that, you realize that the the Lakers wanted nothing to do with saying the words concussion no, or protocol no. last night. No, it was avoiding all of that. Mm. They were being uh, pretty vague in regards mm. to it all because as soon as he gets put officially in the protocol, his uh, likelihood of playing in the next game it goes plummeting. So they wanted to avoid that, but the, he was getting laughed at. Dude, he's being Anthony Davis is being mocked across uh, sports media right now. Like last night, Shaq and, and Chuck couldn't stop laughing. Could because. not stop laughing at the idea that he got hit in the head and then ends up getting wheelchaired out of the you know the arena. arena. Even a boxer walks back to the locker room after he gets off the mat. 
you know? Right. Tyson hit me. Yeah. I don't need a wheelchair to get back to the locker room. Come it on. Did, it didn't look like in... Now, I am I'm not one to judge anyone else's pain in a moment, but it didn't look like anything overly egregious. It was like no, he got no, hit no. At, like by a form in the side. I, I'm He's, ashamed. He's got he, some of that too. I'm him. ashamed that I yeah. even thought that he had the eye of the tiger. I, I'm ashamed that because usually what times when these guys when they're injury prone, they'll do anything to stay on the floor. This guy can't. No. He can't. And and that and and once again, that just things going wrong for well, Broadus as a broadcaster. It is it, it home. A game seven as they host the Nugs road team yet to win a game in the series. Uh, by the way, bankruptcy judge blocked the Suns from putting their games over the air and free streaming. They say it still belongs to the Diamond Sports Group, even though they're stealing the rights from the Suns. Incredible. It's still legally there mm-hmm. somehow, so we're going to have to stand by to stand by on this, and hopefully we'll get our sports back on TV here before too long. Time now to go into the Pimp Cup for the G-Bag of the day. Here's Lucius. Slip side, trying to survive. Yeah. For me. For me. For me. What up, y'all? How y'all doing? Good, sir. All right, all right, all right. When we last left off, we had... (laughs) I see you saying, you wild, bro. (laughs) You wild. Uh, We had a girl, she was uh, using a public restroom, handling her business, singing the song Wonderwall. Great song, by the way. Very good. Today. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, somebody recorded her as she was singing and handling her business. She didn't know. All I'd like to say to you, but I don't know how. Yeah. Yeah. Bring it. <laughs> Guilty. Someone in here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, someone in here. Yeah, someone in there. Nice work. In the loo. Oh. Yes. Yeah, that was like uh, that was like Harold and Kumar when they went to the college. Remember that? And the and the and the twins were in there. They were playing battle, battle bleeps, bleeps. battle bleeps. Yeah, it's good. Good let's movie. Go, let's go is. to uh, Nate Diaz. He's in <laughs> Dallas Fort Worth. So yep. watch your mouth, yes, everybody. Sir. Watch. How I've you been talk. thinking about that lately. Talk nice when you talk about Nate. I hope they know it's a stand your ground state. I'm not gonna, we're not going to sit here and get choked out. He doesn't know a lot about the rules here in yeah. uh, the no. Metroplex. No. And here's an example of it. Gives a shout out to Dallas PD, though. There are some back and forth tweets about steroids. You want there to be drug testing? Uh, yeah, but I don't care either way. Everybody I've been fighting my whole career has been on steroids. They know how to pass the testing. There will so. be testing in this fight. We're going to be testing. There's a lot of weed in mine. There is. And maybe Zach, you can chip in. There's no tolerance policy for marijuana here in Texas. How is that? How are you planning on handling that, Nate? Be determined based on our uh, deal with Vada. Wait, what happened? <laughs> they have a no tolerance policy for marijuana here in Texas with the commissions. We're, talk- we're talking with the commissions in Vada about how that's going to work. Play out. Is that, is that breaking news to you, Nate? Well, let's go. Let's go to California. We got, we got the cops behind us. <laughs> <laughs> is it cool if Nate blazes a, a blunt in Dallas? Or? <laughs> what is that? Dallas PD, you're good to go. Shout out to Dallas PD. And, uh, we can't dab you on Dallas. That's awesome. Did I hear a Joe Trahan question in there? You might have been. Yeah, yeah, you might have. I think Mac Engel was at the presser. Yeah, I, like a news to you question? Yeah. Is this news to you, Nate? Yeah. And, and then he's like, let's go to California. Let's go to California. Let's just, just change the whole plan of the fight. I like that Dallas cop. Oh, uh, yeah, you cool. Yeah, yeah. you're good. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> we'll make an exception for I you. I don't know. I might be on the bulletin board when I get back to work. Hey, uh, did you give Nate Diaz permission <laughs> yeah. to smoke blunts? <laughs> and all of the media heard it. What are we doing? He's been walking up and down McKinney Come Avenue on, man. all day. <laughs> so now we can't arrest him. Uh, let's see. Pastor in Baltimore. Man, this is a town hall situation. <laughs> Cusses out a dude that was giving him a hard time. Pastor, watch your language. Three and four hundred dollars a month of water bill? Right. You don't be back, but it's and, and why are you yelling? Why, why are you yelling? Because he's ignorant. And that's why because he's ignorant. That's why he's That's why we're having the conversation. Get him! No, this is why we're Okay. You don't know nothing about me. Yeah. No, you don't know nothing about me. Oh, Lord, I'm you don't know where I live. Oh. You don't know where I live. You don't know nothing about me. It's um. So let's um. Let's continue this conversation here. Um, Pastor, we're live. Pastor, (laughs) let me have your attention. We're struggling. Uh, No, we ain't going to tell that. You don't know that that word you're on the air. You can't use that. No, no, no. He don't come at me like that. No, Pastor, you're Pastor first. 
Get him. Okay. No. Um, pass down. Pass. How do we help people in pain? Just forget about that. Pass it. Forget about that. Pass it. Pass it. Forget Focus about on me. that. Got... How do we help people in pain? Andre. Andre, get him. This is un. Believable. <laughs> uh, okay. He's trying Lucius, to bring it back. Get him out of here. Lucius, is this the trifecta for you? What's that? Pastor, Baltimore, City Council. Baltimore, that's all of them. That is. Yes. This is like, all the this, right this, this is a this is a Lucius that trifecta is. here. That really is. That's why I made the play, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it's a special place in my heart with that Baltimore. 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 Merlin. Uh, let's see what. Oh, Jared Sandlin last night Ooh. showing his showing off, showcasing skills as I call it, showcasing skills. He's telling the story while doing play by play. It's amazing. I love when they do this. Joe DePinto was playing for the Great Falls Voyagers. Joe was with me at USC, so I had a, a long existing relationship with Joe, and he was in the middle of a, a hitting streak for the Voyagers. So I asked him to do my pregame interview. And I think it was like a 14-game hitting streak. And I asked him about the streak. First pitch to Duran misses outside. I mean, he was off to this great start. And you know, he kind of gave me a look when I asked him about the streak. And they answered the question. And when I stopped the recording, he said, you better hope I get a hit tonight. <laughs> well, Joe did not get a hit that night. 1-0. Uh. Duran swings and bounces <laughs> one to short. Crawford charges and gets it. Throws to first. Duran's retired. After his fourth and final at bat, as he was jogging back to the dugout, knowing he wasn't going to hit again, he was staring at me. <laughs> Never heard the end of that one. <laughs> Those are some good skills, man. Yeah, that's yeah. showcasing skills right there. Yeah. Showcase skills. You could learn something from that, Wolchuk, when you're Damn, doing your, your 620. Even necessary. Oh, yeah. my 620? <laughs> yeah, when you're doing your 620. All right, Gabby, I'll work on it. Got to be able to go back and forth like yeah. uh, a true great broadcaster like Sandler. Yeah, I'm trying to take all the pointers I can from Sands. You got that 420 locked in. You yeah, know, it's just that 620. By that 620, it's, it's, it it's quitting time. I mean, you're doing you're doing the broadcasting, and then chaos breaks out. You got to let the magic happen, bro. Like Sands. Hey, usually I just sit there and let it happen, but you know Brian's been really grinding my gears lately. Oh, I know the feeling <laughs> on that one, dude. Drives me up a wall sometimes. How it goes, son? Lucius. What's up? Oh, <laughs> Brian, jam you up too? Brian? <laughs> yeah, absolutely not, man. Sure. That man sent me a fat burger today, bro. He did. That was a good, good look. Oh, Lord. I had to get in here and make sure I got that workout in early. I was like, you won't creep up me this time. Yeah. You, know, right. you know what brought us once now? If he sent you the fat burger, a date? What's that? It's just a, it's just a good old fashioned uh, lyrical <laughs> joke from a oh, oh, song bro. from years past. Oh, maybe. okay. Just a little yeah. '90s hip hop. Oh, All right. Yeah. Sorry, I missed that one. All right. The big fat fanny. <laughs> uh, how about this? Speaking of uh, hanging out and stuff like that, this minister, not the preacher, but the minister. You know, they're on their way up. One day they might have a church or something like that. Minister tried to relate to the congregation, but he fell flat. Some of y'all used to going out at the club on Friday night. Amen. <laughs> okay, right. y'all y'all trying to be cute. Okay, I'm used to going out on a Friday night. That's you. Yeah, that's you. But the Lord has made a way. <laughs> okay, that's you. <laughs> that ain't us. <laughs> don't put that out. on me. Yeah. I've been Christian. <laughs> All right, uh, what do you say? Is it the minister who's used to going out to a club on a Friday night? Jared Sandler showcasing his skills. Pastor in Baltimore at a town hall. Cussed out a dude. Nate Diaz, uh, everybody i fought my whole life has been on roids. And now he can be on weed in Dallas. Harold and Kumar go to White Castle. Uh, and that is our champion right there. The sound of that. The, uh, the battle bleeps in the stall there from our, our young champion. Uh, I believe... Uh, I believe I'm going to vote for Sands today, uh, Chief. How about you? Same here, man. Lucius? Nate Diaz. It is good to have a, a champ in town, Woolchuck. Yeah, how about where you? Where you at, Nate? Match one, bro. I got you, dog. Yeah, come on in studio. Yeah, let's go solo. I like when people get all the drool and stuff on mine. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> so wet. Hand me back a soggy blunt. What is this? <laughs> <laughs> I'll go with Nate Diaz, too. Keep it interesting. We are tied at two. Brought us. How we looking? What do you say? Yeah, let's go with Nate, Di Nate Diaz. Okay. Today, By yeah. a score of three to two. And your new G-Bag of the Day champion. Apparently, Dallas is his town, too. He is your new G-Bag of the Day champion, Nate Diaz. Now, if you ever miss the G-Bag of the Day, you can tune in at uh, 540 every night. LA Live replays that. Lucius replays that every night in LA Live at 540. Krusty's Corner's coming up next. Where are we going with that, sir? Yeah, can we take a look at the rookies that will be uh, playing here at AT&T this fall? We'll talk about those guys next.
Coming up Friday morning on Sean and RJ, did the Stars take control of the series? We have our final Rangers ticket giveaway of the week. During the
Winner the Fan is brought to you by Classic Chevrolet. Welcome back, G Bag Nation. Sorry, I had to hold on a second, keep that mic off because Brian you was yelling was at the drop, boss. I, I was about to drop an f bomb on him. I know, I saw that. He came in to give you a compliment and ends with fighting words. Yeah. He was almost as passionate about that just now as he was yesterday. With I told Beasley's him to get back. Stars. I told him to get back to the bench. I go, get right. back to the bench. Holy cow! I don't have time for this. Whew. We're gonna start calling Kyle you Russ Ackle. if you, you keep disrespecting him like that, bro. Gracious, I, I did kind of disrespect Sorry, him a little bit. Yeah. Here is Brian Broadus with Krusty's Corner. <laughs> Thank you very much, General. Appreciate that very much. Uh, hey, well, we, the thing. Okay, I'll bring up what we were talking about. Right? The okay. he asked about the uh, he asked about you know the the Giants and you know division games and you know on short weeks and stuff like that. The the Commanders and stuff. And I, I said. The league does it for you because they know that when you play these short week games, it's not happen. It doesn't happen all the time, but when you play, when you have a common opponent like the Commanders, the Giants, the Eagles, you can play against those teams on short weeks because the prep it doesn't it doesn't have to be. You and then play, he, and then he gave you credit for making a great point and sharing some insight. Then you jumped all over he him. Needs, get back in your office. I don't have time for this. It's pretty amazing. I, I just, this guy. I just Sorry. don't. I just don't have time for this. <laughs> I know when I make a good point, okay? No, I'm just kidding. That's right. <laughs> it's, it's so <laughs> rare it so, catches you off guard a little bit. Thank you, Eric. Oh. Thank you. I appreciate you saying that. The what do you way think you about Anthony Davis? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was bad. What? I mean, I, I did. I saw the eye of the tiger in the guy. You did. Well, he, you thought you did. I thought I did. That's why I'm not scouting anymore. <laughs> Didn't see the eye of the tiger. <laughs> you still got it, man. Didn't see the eye of the tiger. You still but, got your fastball working. Yeah, but uh, the common opponent thing. You know, teams, it's easier. You know, you, you have to, if you, Thanksgiving Day, the Jets or New England, somebody you don't face that often. That's why we always get like a th- Thursday night crap. Titans, uh, Jags. Titans, Jags. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. exactly. It's easy to, it's easy to, uh, to uh, play, prepare. Tough Pre- to watch, but easy to prepare. Prepare. All right. Uh, work with me here a little bit, this guys. I, I was reading uh, our friends over at Blogging the Boys. And by the way, still working on the schedule thing. I mean, Gang of seven, trying the best I can to help me with some things. You need me to help you I, out? I believe in those guys, yeah. So hopefully, we got, a, we, got, to we got a long show here today. Hopefully, we'll maybe have something up. We'll see. We'll see. But uh, Blogging the Boys came up with uh, their rookie opponents that the Cowboys will face at, uh, at AT&T. Beautiful. How about that? Ooh. So here's a few of the uh, rookies. So if you're so inclined to come out and see us for the uh, pregame show or the postgame show. Yes. These are some uh, some opponents that you might uh, might catch up with here. Let's start off with uh, Detroit Lions, number one, Jamar Gibbs. Ooh, Jamar Gibbs. We all know Jamar Gibbs, right? The rookie. The, the Love rookie, the, Jamar. These are all rookies. These are great, all rookies. Great catcher of that ball. Great catcher of the ball. And so he's uh, he's going to be he's coming in as the uh, with the expectations that he's the number one back there in Detroit since they traded away DeAndre Swift to Philadelphia. And so, you know, people, we all talked about this a bunch that Gibbs, uh, his skill set is very similar to what Dallas has with Tony Pollard. You know, the Ooh. shifty runner, he'd be a threat out of the backfield. He's a pass catcher and all those good things. So the, uh, the, so is it from Georgia? He is from Bama? Alabama. Yeah. Alabama. Alabama. Yeah. So heck of a player. This will actually be a pretty good game, I think, because I think the Lions are going to win. A hundred games, right? The NFC North. That's your Super sure. Bowl pick. I th- I think the Lions are going to win a playoff game. How about that? Yeah, sure. Things surely to go wrong now, right? It's one of the few ones I was able to get in during that true or four. Eric, Eric look kiss of death right there for the Lions. Eric, Sorry, Lions fans. Eric, Brought look, us is thinking good things about you. Eric's eyes got real big when I started talking about the Lions. He's like, "Oh, you want to just keep talking about him?" <laughs> I'm hammering with their the under right third now. overall pick. The Detroit <laughs> Lions take uh, Caleb Williams. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. They were close, but then they really screwed up their draft. So I'd put a show bet on that with you, Brian. Would you put a show bet on if that? You one? think Jamar Gibbs is the answer? It's Jameer. I think, I, you know what, he's... No, but for the context of this segment, yeah. it's Jamar. It is Jamar. Jamar. Gibbs. He's taking over for another Jamar. Washington Commanders, your guy, Emmanuel Forbes. Oh, uh, Cowboys were intrigued. He might have been the pick at 26 if he was around. Yes, the Cowboys had their eye on Emmanuel Forbes, being in the conversation as their first-round pick. Unfortunately, the Cowboys, Forbes was selected by the division rival, the Commanders, at 16. If uh, if Pre- they're saying this, if Prescott Gavin, if Prescott's on his A game, there shouldn't be much of a problem. But if the mistakes of turning the ball over roll into 2023, Forbes could create some nightmare scenarios for the Dallas offense. 
Oh uh, yeah, I'd be I I'd, I'd be surprised if Nightmare describes the regular season. They usually save that for the divisional round when their lack of physicality on the offensive line and their aging stars will get them bullied into submission. How about that for a reply? <laughs> Man, that was a pretty. That was well thought out. That was impressive. Thank that you. was very impressive. I, I really don't have an answer to that, but good for you. I mean, it, it, it's going to be a fun ride again. I I, I enjoy it, and I, I I guess you can keep hoping Dak just plays better. You know. Does, Cook, that, does, that bother you, yeah. does that bother you the most when when, yeah. when guys, we just, I just got to play better. Yeah, well, I, I Steven, just, Steven does it too. I just, well, just got to have better from Dak. I just got to play better. You he's know, a guy, don't, please, get it. He's I, damn I good. I get it. I yeah. get it. It's that time that Mark Brunel, he threw like two or three interceptions in, in a game and, and Brunel told Coughlin it's God's will and <laughs> Coughlin goes, God didn't want you to throw three interceptions today. <laughs> <laughs> he looked at him, God didn't want you to throw three interceptions today. <laughs> Yeah, how about some personal accountability yeah, here? Yeah, quit blaming it on God, God, man. On God yeah. and like, well, yeah. and, and I, I kind of looked at Mark like, he's not wrong. I don't think God wanted you to throw three today. Yeah. I think he's right about that. <laughs> One of the few things I agreed with Tom Coughlin about. How about that for a finger pointing right there? That Pretty was, good. That was, he brought God in. How about Nolan Smith, your Philadelphia Eagles? Yeah. Jalen Carter is the obvious name for the Cowboys to circle on the offense, but the Eagles' other first-round pick could uh, trigger a bigger problem. Cowboys passed on Nolan Smith at 26, only for him to fall in Philadelphia's lap back end of the first round. Smith is a perfect fit for the Eagles' defense because he brings a similar skill set to the players already on their defense, Hassan Riddick. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how many snaps Nolan Smith's getting because they've got quite a few pass rushers now. I wonder what his playing time will look like. You don't see that as being a bust potential? Why did he fall? He's a little bit smaller, a little undersized, six foot two, but I, he shouldn't have fallen. He was, I think, the eleventh best player on my board. Wow. Yeah, I, I had him at twenty one, and I was, I, I the, the thing that I, I was thinking, could this be a medical thing? Maybe. And, and I think people were just, I kept hearing the word scheme fits. You know, yeah. Why? And when somebody doesn't want to say really why a player is falling, they'll just say scheme fit. That's not a scheme fit for everybody. Yeah, but some guys said, hey, there's a lack of size, lack of bulk Him, there. Him, it makes a little more sense. I don't buy it with Joey Porter Jr., but with Nolan Smith, I could see that. Okay. Los Angeles Rams. Steve Avila. Oh, yes. Steve Avila. Guard. Yeah, TC. Are, are, you think the Cowboys are going to regret not picking him? I could see that. I mean, if left guard continues to be the weak link along your offensive line, they're going to be thinking, gosh, we really should have addressed this. I hope you know they know their way around offensive linemen and these guys aren't good. I'm going to trust the Cowboys' eye and give them credit that the players on the board just weren't good enough to take. Um, but yeah, if Steve has a great career and Mozzie doesn't, then yeah, I think that would be regrettable for me to get through draft free agency and any trade possibility and have not made your line better. I, I think it's a pretty big error. Are they going to have the, uh, the North Carolina dude playing some guard? Man, me personally... Awesome Richards is who you're talking yes. about. I don't I don't see that. I don't see to me, and Zach, correct me if I'm wrong, you're just as good as me evaluating these offensive linemen. I don't know. I, I I just saw him as a tackle. I mean, and as a good tackle. Better than well, let's go. Better than ball. Better than, you know, I mean, he he's this guy's got the ability. I just don't know if he has the power. That I want to the play The senior guard. bowl reps were put out on Twitter, I think. Yeah. And watching those, he was much better at tackle than yes, guard. He's, yeah. Yeah. He's way just, more athletic to handle. It's going to be a huge more, project to be guard. Way more athletic at, way more athletic yeah. playing there. I, I agree with everything you're saying. There's similar questions we have with Steele about kicking him inside, the yeah. upper body strength. And the final one here is the Seattle Seahawks, Jackson Smith and Jigba. Oh, boy. That's uh, Wolchuk's guy. Just Quite like the a trio. Eagles, yeah, just the Eagles... Uh, just like the Eagles, the Seahawks held two selections in the first round of the draft. The first pick was uh, Witherspoon, who could be the best corner in the draft. However, the flip side, Jackson Smith and Jigba, Jigba could be the best wide receiver from the 2023 class. Uh, so the Seahawks, uh, that looks like to me, that's a, that's a pretty darn good pick for Last them. Last time he played at AT&T Stadium against Allen, I believe he had something like six touchdown receptions. Holy cow. Yeah, he's pretty damn I think awesome. five of those were in the first half. Yeah. So circle that matchup with Jeez, the Ron Bland. Awesome. There's some really good rookies is what we're trying to say here. There's some really good rookies that are going to come to AT&T. But some good teams, too. Yeah, I know. think his signature is uh, right next to Eli Manning's. It is. Thank you, uh, gentlemen. Thank you, Broadus. Krusty's Corner every afternoon, 240 here in the G-Bag Nation. You want to follow this man on Twitter, at Brian Broadus. 
the number one influencer across Cowboy social media, at Brian Broaddus on Twitter. Uh, Dawson, it's okay to be salty now, but before the season starts, we need Cowboys Gavin to go ahead and saddle up. I need some answers. I need I need a couple of answers at O line. I'm sorry. I just I think you're going to need to be able to run the ball efficiently to get Dak man coverage. And I, I'm gonna I'm gonna stay true to that. I think you know start eight eight and zero or nine and zero or something and, and beat the Eagles week nine. Is that that's that's what that's looking at on, on the schedule? Maybe maybe I'll change my opinion on that around Halloween, but not a day before. Cowboy Gavin will not ride before Halloween, guaranteed. All right, when we come back, G-Bag Nation, Wolchuk has the NFL news of the day. Where are we going with that, sir? Latest schedule updates. Could the Jags be homeless? And how conflicted was Andy Reid during the Super Bowl next? All right, got amazing news.
our fan studio, secured by TFWSecurity.com, you're rolling with the G-Bag Nation on 105.3 The Fan. Hour two, G Bag Nation 1053, the fan. Hope you're having a great day. Um, coming up at, at 320, we'll talk about Troy Aikman's Cowboys expectations. Around the bases coming up at 340. And then Bob Stoops is one hour away, the coach of the XFL Renegades, who now find themselves in the championship game. Right now, it's time for Wooly Bully to deliver the NFL news of the day. Here's Zachary with an H. Thank you very much, Gavin. Yes, it. it is NFL schedule release day. I don't know why I get so excited for this. It's literally just finding out when you're going to play and where you're going to play and what time the opponents that you already know are on your schedule. But there's something special about it. It's a little magical. When you get the schedule out and we inevitably go through win-loss, win-loss, which is never correct. And it's just fun, man. It really yeah, is. Yeah, you finally get to see the the blueprint or, or the, the, the map. Uh, to the to the Super Bowl, absolutely you know, your own personal tour of the sport to to get to the promised land. So I think it's fun. I I, I don't necessarily enjoy going through the the win loss portion of it, but it is fun to find out the days and especially this time of year where you're craving some football stuff. Oh it's no like, doubt. All right, they're giving it to me, and you can figure out you know hey is this a road game we want to go to? Maybe you schedule a little vacation, and you got to schedule you know in, in in my opinion, even if I wasn't working in the field that we do. I'm scheduling everything around Cowboys football. Make oh, yeah. sure we don't have anything important going on that day because we got to be watching the game. Hey, you're going to be an awful disappointed girlfriend if you think I'm going across town in the middle of this game. Absolutely. Weddings? Uh-uh. No, no. We're not doing that. You might as well send the RSVP back. Can't make it. I think we'll you're send kind a of gift. a selfish dude myself. Really? Yep. I don't know. Really I'm do. just obsessed, Brian. That's, that's amazing. If you do that, right? That's amazing that you would just kind of just totally tell that girlfriend of yours that you're not doing anything. Not with doing just it. A football game. Probably why I'm still single. Oh, you're saying you're, you're still single? As of right now. Is this the pot ke- calling the kettle black? I think so. In, in the most profound and ironic way ever? <laughs> what are you talking about over <laughs> you here? You see man? what he's doing to me over here? He's trying to pull me off sides. I'm Keep this man that. in check. Oh, man, I'm good. It's but, amazing that you would treat somebody like that, you know? Hey. Taking football over a relationship. How dare you? Football, yeah, sorry. football over it all. Cowboys were my first love. That's never changing, even if they don't love me back. You send like a giant family group message, like to the aunts, the uncles, the cousins. Hey, don't care about your birthdays or any type of things that you have going on these days. You will not see me because I will be cowboying. Yeah, and they know that, and it's all thanks I, to my grandparents. I'll tell you this though, I will admit though that nobody hates losing cowboy games more than Wolchuk because I've really? been, I, he and I both have been in the same room. Where I threw my uh, notepad against I the wall, that. against yeah. the glass. I was here. I hit the glass over here in the studio. I mean, just and and Woolchuck was standing up, yelling just as loud as I was. <laughs> I 100 percent believe it, dude. Uh, it's one of my favorite here things. I am, here I am, like getting all over him about this, and like, yeah, it was Tolbert lining off sides. That's what yeah. got Brian. Oh, does he, he did, get more mad about a Cowboys loss than Mike Bassick does about a Mavs loss? I think I think Bassick and the Mavs losses are bad. less rational. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think, yeah. No, I saw Woolchuk on that tram in, 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 in the Phoenix airport when when Jerry oh. said he thought G- Zeke was coming back. He lost it that day he over did. a personnel yeah. he did. decision. He did. We had a game in three months. Yeah, <laughs> one, one of my one of my the most entertaining things of last season was being in the press box during a Cowboy game. And wa- watching eating Walchuk massive amounts of food, eating, eating all the food, yes, <laughs> eating for two because Walchuk was still drinking his meals, and so I. But I loved watching <laughs> Walchuk have to keep the inner fan locked inside yeah. of him and not allow that to come out because it's very it's difficult. Tough. And when you get into that press box, it's all business. You it fit is. in well with the Philly media, man. They're banging tables and cheering. And, oh yeah. But it is funny in the press box and Walchuk will like drop his pen or something, and then you can see the plumber's crack and the uh, the game day thong <laughs> peeking out. And I'm like, that's the evidence. You better hide that evidence. Cowboys, Cowboys whale fan. tail. Uh, people ask me about that out on the streets now. They're like, hey, you got the game day thong ready? I'm like, yeah, you, you know, know I, I do. do. Of baby. course. Of course. So we've got some NFL schedule news that is out and about. This is one of the uh, most interesting season opening games that I think we're going to see. The NFL is buying the Detroit Lions with Brian Broaddus. It's Lions and Chiefs to kick off the season September 7th at Arrowhead. Super Bowl matchup right there. I was blown away to see the Lions get this kind of love. I understand they're kind of the darling right now. They had a great finish to the season. But those are just one of those franchises and organizations. I got to see it to believe it before I'm going to give them that type of primetime matchup. 
I Are you I, saying about the Cowboys or the Lions? Which one you say that? The Lions. Oh, I thought you were talking about your Cowboys. No, the Cowboys are honestly very similar in terms of neither of those teams have made a conference championship game since the last 27 years. Yeah. But, yeah, the Cowboys do still just hold that kind of cachet in NFL circles. The Lions don't. 100%. And I, I don't even know that this is acknowledging that the Lions are going to be good. This is capitalizing on the offseason hype of the Lions. And we'll cash in on our Lions love right now the only time we can, which is in week one, because otherwise we can't promise anything about these Lions moving forward. If the Lions go in there in week one, is will that be the biggest overreaction of the week one of the NFL season? If they go in there and win? And win. I think so because of how last year ended. Oh, I'd overreact yeah. and be like, "They're legit, Brian. I'm so sorry." Nah. I, I wouldn't even prisoner feel, of the moment. I wouldn't even Goff feel for that Heisman, good. but it could be. It would be one of the most overreacted situations in Week One. If they oh yeah, that that'd be off. your your prime uh, overreaction from Week One. Lions are a Super Bowl contender. Yeah. Yeah. You're jumping the gun here. Sounds like you're all ready to say it. No, me. Yeah. Oh yeah, they are. Now they're say gonna, it with they're conviction. Gonna, they're gonna. I have. I told you they're going to win the, the I love North it. and they're going to win a playoff game. We're, we're going to look at back at this broadest take the same way we looked back at his uh, Anthony Brown take around this time of last year. Yeah, you're probably right. Because <laughs> when the Bears are division champs in the NFC North, <laughs> yeah. Man, Justin Fields is like I an MVP like, finalist. I felt like I was right about Dorrance Armstrong, though. You, you were right did about nail Dorrance. Dorrance. You did. So yeah, it's like 50%. Like, we were interviewing those guys, right? We Anthony were. Brown. And they were both great interviews. And I was kind of feeling like, yeah, you're my guy. You're my guy. And, you know, they needed him at the end, though. They did. They really did. I mean, he just he got banged up. Well, this Detroit take, we could be looking back on it, and it, it ends up being the Dorrance take of yours. Maybe. Which is a, just a, a, an all-out home run, and I'll have to apologize and probably do some level of bet payoff. We will absolutely apologize. Eric will take the bet payoff. Now, right. Christmas Day at noon, it'll be the Raiders taking on the Chiefs as the Chiefs get another big premier matchup. And that's not surprising. We have Patrick Mahomes, your defending Super Bowl champs. You're going to get these, but that's going to be the Nickelodeon game. So kids, get ready. Nickelodeon to kick off the triple header on Christmas Ooh, Day. All right, let's uh, let's put in our, uh, our our early takes on who's going to be the MVP. Oh, uh, oh, the, the slime, the slime VP? Yeah, but they call uh, it the MVP because it's the Nickelodeon. Yeah, the Nickelodeon VP. I'm going to go with Travis Kelsey. Ooh, I like that. I think he usually destroys the, the Raiders, but I could be wrong on that. I'm going to go with Devontae Adams. How about that, boys? Oh, okay. I like what yeah, you're that's doing a, that's, a, that's a take. That's a strong take. That is. It, Walchuk just went with the Pat Mahomes. I'm just not going to trust Jimmy G. No. Who's going to trust Jimmy G? To, you mean to be available for the game? Because it's like Both. in December? You know, and if he's available to throw it enough to Devontae Adams. It's got to be somebody. But what, how about somebody on defense? Chris Jones? Yeah, Chris Jones, something like that. Somebody George Karloftis? Karloftis, that would be a good one. Ooh, Karloftis would be. No, it's going to be your uh, your rookie, your K-State rookie that you love. Oh, Felix and Adike Uzoma. There you go. Yeah, let's go. How about a guy from Texas Tech playing for the Raiders? Tyree Wilson? Tyree Wilson. All right, I like these. These are all good options. Now, we had Andy Reid talking on the New Heights podcast with Jason and Travis Kelsey, and we were talking about the storyline going into the Super Bowl about how difficult this probably was because you've got Andy Reid who spent so much time with the Eagles organization. Now he's playing against them in the Super Bowl. Help so they get him there. They, they absolutely. And he drafted a lot of guys, including Jason yeah. Kelsey, that's still over there in Philly. Yeah. So they asked him about how that experience was coaching in the Super Bowl for the Chiefs against your former team in the Eagles. How is it seeing guys that you drafted and former players that you coached over the years? How does that feel seeing them across the field? Yeah, that was weird. That, right. that was different. That was a little different. Brandy I mean, Graham, I, yeah, Fletch. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you look across and the people, I, I know people across the field. There was actually one time, I probably shouldn't even say it, but I'm going to say it because it's you two and nobody else is going to hear it. Well, <laughs> <laughs> there was one point where I was back talking with Pat. My back was to the field and I heard the cheer and I turn around and your tight end caught the ball. Yeah. And for a minute I went, hey, nice. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was weird. It was, John Goddard. Yeah, it was just the one time. And uh, the rest of the time I was all red. For a minute, he caught himself cheering for the Eagles, the team playing against him in the Super Bowl. Oh, my goodness. Big red Andy Reid. I love the honesty, though. Yeah, that can happen. You know, you spent so long there. Fist you're cheering for that yeah. team. You're conditioned to it. Uh you know, I, I would I, I would hope I would, you know, reject something like that. How about you, Brian? Um, do you do you ever feel yourself pulling for the Eagles from that uh, experience you had with them years ago? Not not uh very rarely on that. I, I had an experience so when I when I was in college, I was at I was at LSU and then went to work at Texas A and M and I brought over uh we had a really good special teams coach at LSU, a guy named Joe Wessel. 
and he had a really nice kickoff return where you double in, double out, and you create an alley along the sidelines. And we were working on kickoff return stuff. And I, the coaches staff, I said, they said, bro, she ever got a kickoff? I said, we did this one at LSU one time that worked out pretty well. And we put it in the game and we ran back the opening kickoff. Against LSU? Against LSU. Wow. And here I'm working for Texas A&M. And I'll never forget standing there on the sidelines and all the coaches are running over. And I've never felt so bad about it, you know. I mean, I was happy. You feel he specialed him. I. It, That's it, what you did. Well, it's it just like I'm like the, you know you're you're you you get locked into like who you're working for. Yeah. And then when it happens against the program you absolutely love, you're kind of like, why did I just do that? That's a Donnie Nelson moment. Remember, he coached like Slovenia or, or Serbia against the USA one yeah. time, and he almost won. He's like, I'm never doing that again. Did you regret that? Do you regret that to I, this day? Are you proud of it? No, I'm, I'm not proud of it. I'm, I mean, L- you got LSU Te- scored against Texas A and M won the game. And t- <laughs> That's but, worse than the scouting you did for the Cowboys. I know, but that that was so. I mean, as we're running by, you're like you're happy that it worked, and then you realize like that was one of the big plays that LSU caused, at least win the game. They lost. LSU mm, lost the game. Close one. Oh yeah, it was a it was like a touchdown game. Wow, the you rare lost win the game for them. The rare win the for opening, you that felt like opening, a loss. A and M just owning the Tigers. The opening kickoff in the RC Slocum uh, era, at Texas A wow. and M was a I'm surprised. kickoff return, double in, double out. Does the Crazy. alumni association know about this game? Oh no, they know. They know now. They know. They sure do. Yeah. Who's the famous? Uh, who's like a legendary uh, trader? Benedict Arnold. Oh, Benedict, Benedict Arnold. Yes. yes. Benedict brought us. Oh, I felt very Benedict Arnold at that point. Hey, that's a tough situation to be in a school that you went to and played for. Versus I love the LSU. I'll do anything do. for LSU. That's difficult. And, and that was hard. That, but we, again, when the opening kickoff went back, I'm like, oh my gosh, this thing's actually going to work. Yeah. When you saw the blocks, <laughs> two in, two out, and it went up the sidelines, I'm like, boom. That might be my favorite broadest story ever. That's great. That's incredible. It is. Now I still like the orange juice on the golf course. But. No, that and the soy sauce. <laughs> one be. When he just swallowed a full wasabi, that one's pretty good. Just walking around uh, eating some sushi in yeah. the, ga- the the what was it? The grocery store. I was ga- at the grocery okay, store. Not, not did, gas station sushi. We're not doing in that. In the dark, and it just uh, took the what? whole wasabi ball down. Yeah, man, I almost hate died. That. And you were wearing your 17 inch shirt, man. Probably that's what, what it's beast. all about. I haven't found that. I think I gave it away. Oh come on! Oh, I, I have one made for you. Uh, yeah, I gave it. Patriots away. will be honoring Tom Brady at their home opener this year, according to Bob Kraft. He said, I invited him back to be with us at the opening game and let the fans in New England thank him. It will be the beginning of many celebrations to honor Tom Brady. So whenever we find out exactly what will be the Patriots home opener, we know that that will be a special day or night know, there yeah. in Foxborough. They it's, wanted to get it done before Tua gets hurt. Yeah, probably. yeah exactly. That's it. They're worried about Tom having to like do play and games for Miami him. late in the year. I don't know when he's the current Dolphins quarterback in yeah. November and they have him come back for one of these. Uh, Let's welcome back <laughs> Tom welcome Brady. Back. He's in a Dolphin With Dolphins year. versus <laughs> Patriots. Let's just get this out of the way. Yeah, yeah, they couldn't risk that. Jags are in a bit of a pickle here. They might be homeless for about two years because TII Bank, TIAA That's Bank known as Stadium. the Gator Bowl. Go ahead. Yeah, well, okay, so in Georgia and Florida as well, oh, it might be in a bit of a pickle America's here. America's greatest cocktail party. So what they're going to do is put re- they're going to renovate the stadium, but it's going to take two years to undergo these renovations in 2025 and 2026. So the Jags aren't going to be able to play at the home stadium. Florida, Georgia won't be able to be played there. They're going to have to look at alternative sites. Now, you had David, uh, whoever their mayor is, the goal would be to play somewhere in Jacksonville. I'm not going to try and say this last name. I'm just being honest. I like the idea of his it? last go, go name being no. whatever their name is. Barline or Burline. I don't it's know. It's not, it's not spelled the same as Steve, so I don't think it's Burline, but who knows. These discussions are happening, but two years is the goal. I do know they are considering certain sites that are local that could accommodate them for at least two years. We saw Minnesota have to do this when they played at Gopher Stadium, the college football stadium right. from Minnesota, right. while they were able to get their new stadium built, but... Jacksonville. No wonder they're playing all Jacks these just, London games. Jags just need to play all the games in London at home. They should. And how about the Titans potentially releasing Malik Willis after only one season? Yeah, Holy cow. According to Fox Sports. Wrong about him. Yeah, that's pretty Jeez. darn bad right there. And Kyle Shanahan is starting to add a little bit more fuel to the 49ers rivalry with the Eagles. As we know that game's going to be week 13 in Philly. The NFL teased us with that. It'll be Sunday night football. And Kyle Shanahan said, I'm glad we're not playing in, in Philly week one. I want to play them at a better time. I want to make sure our whole team is right there. We feel like we didn't get to do it last time. And I'm ready to get back again. How about a better back, better backup? Yep. Problem is week 13, you don't know who the hell is going to be available, no, coach. Yeah. But maybe Brock Purdy will be there. That's right. I'm sure he'll get somebody to play at a Pro Bowl level. 
uh, for the afternoon. All righty, there it is, NFL news of the day. Uh, Troy Aikman's Cowboys expectations uh, coming up next here. He was on Get Up today, and, and we'll get that cut over there for you right here in the G-Bag Nation. I want to talk about my friends, though. You know my friends, DNM Leasing. All these guys are the best. If you-
Nordic Hot Tubs. 0% APR financing with no money down. Over 80 models to choose from. Visit southernleisurespas.com. All right, welcome back. It is the G Bag Nation here on 105 through the fan. Got some Troy Aikman audio here coming up for you in just a second. Uh, segments brought to you by the Frankels. There's a reason you need a special license to drive a big truck. So companies that hire drivers and put them in a big truck should be held accountable for what happens when one hurts you. Frankly, you need Frankel and Frankel. Consultation's always free. Visit truckrec.com. Hope you're having a great day. Tomorrow, chance to hang out with Corey Majors and Bobby Belt. Jake's Game Day in McKinney, 5 to 8 tomorrow night. You're going to have all the pizza and sandwiches, burgers, wings, and bevies that, you, that you'd like. And... Speaking of tomorrow, Eric Nadell is going to join us at 520, Hall of Fame voice of the Rangers. He has not spoken on on the radio all all season long, and uh, he'll join you tomorrow night and sort of explain uh, what his plans are for the rest of the summer when you might be able to hear him, uh, you know, again and uh, what all he's been up to. Um, So I know everybody looks forward to hearing Eric Nadell. He's been joining us. 520s on Friday for years here on, on 105 through the fan home of the Rangers. And I know a lot of people have missed him this year. Of course, Sands and Matt Hicks have done an outstanding job broadcasting. And Sands, our current uh, G Bag of the Day runner up. Is that what happened today? Yeah, he's our G Bag of the Day runner up for a, a tremendous story and call in, in just last night's game. So, uh, but everybody misses Eric a little bit. It'll be great to hear him uh, 26 hours from right now. Uh, that'll be tomorrow night, 520. Troy Trakeman's expectations here. He was asked about the uh, the quarterback situation on on get up and the way it went last year, and you could tell he did not like the question's premise because it was framed like, "What did you think of Dak's struggles last year?" And, and here he is, the three time Super Bowl winning champion, Troy. Well, I'm a big fan of Dak's, as I've said many many times, and uh, you know, I what I like most about him is all that matters to him is, is winning games. The stats and everything that goes with that uh, is not important. And he knows how he's being measured. And that of course, ultimately will be in winning championships. They, they've come up a little bit short. I know you referenced the interceptions from last year. Uh, certainly not all of those are on him and they never are on a quarterback, but I thought there were a lot of things that could be done a little bit differently that would help him as well. And I know Mike McCarthy, this year has taken over the play calling. That will be interesting to see how that goes as well. But I think they're a really talented football team. I think they did a lot of really good things this offseason to make themselves better. But as Cowboy fans have heard so many times, there's always a lot of optimism coming into the season. And it's ended, unfortunately, in, in a lot of disappointment. But uh, they'll be right there again this year with an opportunity to, to, to do what they've been unable to do in quite some time. And, you know, time will tell. He's always consistent with what he has to say regarding Dak Prescott. That's for sure. Never and changes. Doesn't. And and he does like Dak, and there is a lot to like about Dak, but the issues will be, hey, was the interceptions last year, were they a mirage? Was that just kind of a blip on the radar? And then we have all of these questions about the changeover with the coaching staff. How does this offense look with Mike McCarthy and Brian Schottenheimer? What is going to go down with this left guard spot? Is it actually going to be Terrence Steele? Because we, we've seen, you know, Dak is a good player, but he's not the quarterback, and there's very, very few that are, right? I mean, we can count on one hand the ones that can do this where they're able to just mask all the deficiencies with the rest of the roster. Dak's good. You can win with Dak, but he's not that kind of guy that's going to be able to just mask a bad offensive line, a lack of weapons. They did a good job getting Brandon Cooks here, but there's a lot of questions going into this season with the rest of the offense around Dak Prescott. 972 says, what would it take to get Troy in the building? He'd be an amazing front office addition. That's Daniel in, in Prosper. I, I really admire Troy as a broadcaster and as a as a thought leader for, for the Cowboys public because he's always straight shooting. Um, and, and he has a good way of give and takes on potentially controversial subjects and not like sacrificing his straight shooter, you know, so he's going to respect Dak. You don't want to put fuel on that fire. He wants to give his honest take, but also it's not perfect, you know, and, and he does a good job of balancing those ideas and not like offending the, the Cowboys quarterback fraternity that, that, that he has going, um, you know, to me, what I want to hear Troy say, though, Brian, and maybe you want to answer the texter's question, like, could you ever get Troy in the building? But if I'm Troy, I'm like, yeah, I had Emmett Smith. We 
we don't when I drop back to pass and I had guys like Michael Irvin and Alvin Harper to throw the ball to, we were getting much better looks after you had the we great wall of Dallas yeah, you in front of you. Great offensive line. And, you know, until Dak can have the same things that I had as a player, it's not fair to hold him to that same standard, even though that is the standard. Championship or bust, but when's Dak gonna get what I had? You know, I'd I'd love to see Troy put that kind of pressure on the Joneses. The problem that we're dealing with when you're starting to talk about Troy and the way that he played, it was pre cap cap. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's the deal. And so it'll never, that's why you can't hold one for eight years. It'll, it'll never, it'll never be perfect for Dak. It'll never be perfect. You can, you can get it for short term though. Maybe a year or two. Yes, you, and that's Maybe how the teams are winning. We, it. we thought that Philadelphia was going to completely fall apart, didn't we? With their cap situation, we they sure managed did. to kind of hold that. They thing weren't together. contenders for three or four years. Oh no, they no, came no, back. No, no, that's what I'm saying. They, yeah. you're right. But I'm, I'm, we're just saying when you build a team that gets the Super Bowl, then you're worried about losing the team, you know, because of all yeah. the things that happen because you're having to pay everybody. It's 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 never these quarterbacks that try and talk about Dak's situation that are old veteran quarterbacks that played in the non cap era. They 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 can they can to me they can say all they want, but they never lost their guys. They 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 matter of fact, they picked up one of their best tight ends was Jay Novacek mm-hmm. off what they called back in the day Plan B. So to me, I you know, Troy Aikman he I think they're still calling it that. Yeah. I think Troy Aikman is still, you know, he he could be nice about it and stuff like that. But Dak will never, ever, him, Tony Romo, none of these guys that ever played quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys will ever have the benefit of what Roger Staubach, Joe uh, uh, Joe Montana, Terry Bradshaw, any one of these guys that are great quarterbacks. So then it's on the quarterback and the coaches to figure things out. Yeah, I mean, it, or, or it, there's that, or it doesn't have to be, and you can be Jalen Hurts surrounded by and the best offensive line in the sport, a great tight end, a stable of backs, and two number one wide receivers if your team decides to approach it that way. And then on the other side of the ball, I have one of the best sacking defenses uh, that the sport's ever seen. You could have an organization decide to build that way, but if you're going to do it like the Cowboys are doing it, and you're not going to go all out from a roster standpoint, there then go. by God, you better have one of the best brain in the sport on your sideline running your show yeah because that's the only way you're going to make up for that margin is is having an offense or having a coach that is that can take your players to the next level there's very few of those guys I don't know if you have one right now well, and at get, one point Mike was thought of as maybe one of those guys but it's 13 years ago sure that he won that Super Bowl sure. you know you, you you have different coaches the guy the hell the guy at Cincinnati was what five and 20 something I mean he wasn't a very good coach all of a sudden, they get Joe Burrow, mm-hmm. you know, and next you know that you know they, they're talking about him as oh one of the young bright offensive minds in the league, you know. It is true though when you look at the Cowboys and because your point, Gavin, when he did have everything around him on offense, the defense wasn't any good. Yeah. Now they've made an effort to try and pump resources into the defense. The defense is good, but now you've got some holes along the offense, which you didn't have originally. They can't ever get both things marriage together in harmony the way that you really need to be to be a serious contender. I think you have to sacrifice the future to get both of them built. And the 49ers, the Rams, and the Eagles are all doing that. Hey, we're in the Super Bowl. Oh, you won't hear from us for three or four years while we rebuild. The- hey, we're back, hey, everybody. Yeah. NFC title game. The Cowboys don't want to do that, and I feel like I'm beating a dead horse on this. You know, I I I would love it if if they can go out there and build such a great defense that 20 points will win you multiple playoff games. Maybe they'll do that and prove me wrong. You I know, think, may, maybe maybe that's their goal. I think that Will McClay could be Howie Roseman. I think he could. He just doesn't have the autonomy to do it. Yeah, yeah. There's that too. I think I, I think Will understands how to build a football. I team. agree with you. 100%. I think I think Will understands how to build a team that can win this division. The problem is, though, he works for guys that they want to kind of do it their way, and they yeah. listen to Will a lot. But they're they they this is the this is really the first time that we were surprised they took compensatory picks and were able to move them for players instead of signing players. They used draft picks to get players, yeah. which I think is a smart thing. And I think that's something that Will probably came up with. They them. they did it in their way. They added extra players in their own way, and I do have to be happy with that. I mean, those are two really good additions in the in the trade market. I do love the part of Troy Aikman talking about wins and not stats. And I, I do believe, you know, most players will say that, but 
man, it, it, I, I think it seems so great when you can talk about leading the league in yards, and, and that's what they've done a lot of with the Cowboys and, and, and Kellen Moore. But Detroit, it's simple. You build a lead early, you know, you 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 get that 15 play script you put the hammer down in their face you got to lead and then you run the ball and i you know i i would like to see the cowboys do that uh a, a that's little that's how bit the cowboys more. used to beat you they would yeah. they would build a lead and then they would run the ball in the second half and play great defense when you had to throw the ball every snap that's when they 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 were getting and after you maybe that's what they're trying to it worked with cooper rush in five games last year did it not mm-hmm. it did but their issue the last two years is the second half of the season the running game has just disappeared yeah yeah, yeah and, it, and it's it's hard for an entire season to depend on to to depend on super dominant next level defense where yeah. the ball's falling your way and you're getting some turnover luck and everything you know the attrition of the season inevitably your defense it is dang well, hard to they, stay dominant all year. Debunk that myth of about turnover so last year. Did they debunk the one that they weren't going to lead the league? They did. They, they're one of the few that have been able to do usually, that. Usually, you get the history will tell you that you're not going to lead the league in getting turnovers two years in a row. Right. Dallas debunked that. No, for sure. But they still went through stretches of the season where you couldn't depend we, on the defense the same way you did during those early Cooper Rush games. Yeah. So you got to yeah. find some level of balance. I mean. That's just no, very you, few you, defenses stay that good. Absolutely. And they're still that good in the playoffs. you right. got to be generational. Yes, and, and we well, thought maybe just, they were the first half. To your point, yeah. the first half of the season, we thought maybe they were generational. Is this defense good enough to carry them? And then they did. They had injuries. You saw the Jacksonville game. They allowed 40-plus points. Dax having to keep them in the game, and then you have the unfortunate way that that one ended. But you're absolutely right. The last month of the season, we had tons of doubts about the defense. And they finished super strong. It's not to say that you it can't all culminate in really good things come playoff time if you know, you get some health falling in the right way, but throughout the course of a season, you you're probably going to go through stretches defensively where you're not at your best, and you you better have something better than the Cooper Rush offense. Both sides had. will have to carry the other at times throughout a 17 game season. The way they lost that Green Bay game, though, that was on. I mean, the defense, yeah, the defense fell apart in the, the second. Defense half. fell apart in the second half, but then you got a, your play caller yeah. forgot to run the football. You passed it way too many times. It yeah. was like 40 that game, yeah. and you almost lost against. Houston passing it like and 45 that might times. very yeah. well have been the, the nail in the coffin for yeah. Kellen Moore with Mike McCarthy. I mean, the, no question on that. The math says passing is better. The passing is going to get you down the field. The passing is going to score. But it fails to account for what the defense does when you're passing that much. If the defense is expecting pass from Dak Prescott all afternoon, he's not going to be that efficient. It's going to struggle. You got to get them thinking run. And then pass the ball on them. That's what Dak had in 2016. He is still not posted that efficient of a season from his rookie year because the defense was obsessed with run. Offensive line, running game. Then I think Dak can go put up 30 points in about 25 throws. Oddly enough, you ask him to throw it 40 times, I think you get less points. I think you get significantly less points because by the, by the time he's thrown for 40 times, defense doesn't respect the running game. And I, I think that's what complimentary football is all about. Very, very few quarterbacks are good enough to not have to play complimentary football. And until you have one, like ignoring that is weird. Does Mike McCarthy think his scheme is going to be so much better than Kellen Moore's and his play calling is going to be so much better than Kellen Moore's that with a washed up and tired offensive line, you're just going to magically run the ball? I, I don't know. I think it's we got to get the ball out of Dak's hands quicker so the, the pass rush can't get to him. Those are schematic adjustments and hoping. And if Mike McCarthy can pull it off, I, I think he he will definitely be deserving of an, another contract well, and maybe coach of the year. No, he's betting his job on it. Yeah, he he's, really is. he's betting his job on it. He sure is. You know, and, and for him, it's like, well, does he really believe it or does he just not want to go out Kellen Moore's way? You know, why is he betting his job on it? Because That's the, job, a good the point. job's gone anyway. That's a good point. Yeah. That, that, you know, if, if you're going to die, die on your terms, not die on Amen. somebody else's terms. We got to run. It is the G Bag Nation here on 1053 The Fan. Thanks for making us part of your day. Okay, when we come back, uh, G Bag Nation, what are we looking at here? Uh, sorry, I just put down the show sheet to look for something else here. I think we're going around the bases. We've got some historical nuggets for you, and this Ranger just keeps climbing up the prospect rankings next. Attention, all men, though. Are you feeling tired, lacking energy, or experience decreased libido? There's no need to suffer.
Locke will be talking XFL championship game, but here's the woolly bully Zach Wolchuk taking us around the bases. Little round tripper. What do you say, Zach? Let's do it. We do have, as you mentioned, some baseball on later tonight. We're excited for that against the Oakland A's, who absolutely stink. But we did have some Ranger news today as they went ahead and DFA'd Ian Kennedy for assignment. So uh, Ian Kennedy, uh, not going to be with your Rangers. They went ahead and recalled left-handed pitcher John King from AAA Round Rock. King's gone 2-1 two and two and one with a 2.08 ERA and one save in nine relief outings with Round Rock this season. And he owns a 1-0 record with no runs allowed in four innings pitch over two relief outings in the month of May. So the lefty will uh, be probably available tonight for Bruce Bochy out there in Oakland. But we got some crazy historical milestones that have gone down over the last couple of months. And we got to start with Shohei Otani. Wow. And this was two days ago. As Otani continues to just rewrite the history books, he's recorded his 502nd career strikeout. And he passed Babe Ruth for the most all-time strikeout list while having 100 career home runs as well. So Babe had 501 career Ks. Uh, along with well over 100 homers. And now Shohei Otani sits alone at the top of Major League Baseball history with the most strikeouts and 100-plus homers by any individual player. I'm not going to lie about this Shohei thing. I I thought this pitching part of his game was just going to be maybe a one-year thing. Yeah. That they were not going to let him be the player that he that he is. Or physically, would he hold up? Would doing he hold it? up? Yeah, the injury and all that. I, I was sitting there worried, man. Him pitching, running bases, hitting, all that stuff like that. I'm thinking, there's no way in hell they're going to let him keep pitching. And they really wouldn't and, even let Babe Ruth keep pitching. Yeah, you watch him pitch, and it's like he is a like when you when when they're talking about what four hundred million, five hundred million dollars for this guy. I mean, are you? He's worth two players. Yeah, that's what I'm yeah. saying. Are you are you paying him because he's the two players? Are you paying him because, you know, what what is Maybe it? Maybe one point seven players because he's not going to get all the abs. But yeah, his 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 pitching stats are elite. And he's I, one I, of the top hitters. There's no way when he first started. There's no way I'm thinking. Oh, this is just a one year thing. And and now it's the point when you watch him pitch, you're like, bro, he's he's he is like really good, nasty. Yeah, yeah, he's really good. Yeah, he's he's special, man. I mean, he's, again, an MVP caliber start to the season. 
He's got seven home runs to go with a 2.54 EIA, uh, ERA and an American League leading 59 Ks on yeah. the mound yeah. to this point in the season. Yeah, yeah it's just, and, and I get it, like the injury risk. Do you really want your best hitter also going out there every fifth or sixth day and pitching? But he's so far has shown pretty good durability. With all this, it'd be interesting if the Rangers pretty made good the move. or great durability. Well, the last two years, great. Yeah, uh, but he did have a couple of issues when he first got into Major League Baseball. But yeah, I mean, it'd, it'd be interesting if the Rangers did make a move to get him. What would they do with him? Do you keep him as an everyday player and just they want the bat? It's hard for me right now to say you're not going to keep him doing both until he shows some kind of fatigue one way or the other. The team that's going to get him is going to allow him to do both. I don't think anybody could just say, "Hey, Shohei, we're paying you just to be a hitter." Well, it's probably big in the extension talks. I think you're absolutely right. I don't think he's going to sign up with the team if he I doesn't he have the ability to, I, to do both. Yeah, I think he wants to pitch. I don't think he just wants to be a DH or you know any other yeah. positional player. And he certainly wants to get paid like a guy who's doing both. So, I mean, there's no way he's going to... I mean, if you're going to pay him all that money, why wouldn't you have him do both? Right. Go collect that paycheck. But do you think there's a team out there that's scared like you are? Of, of of making of letting him do both. I wonder about yeah, the there's Dodgers. There's a ton of them, but the Not ones that are why. involved are the ones that got all the bag that it doesn't matter. Right. Like I wonder about the Dodgers because they can just throw money in to acquire starting pitching, and it's like, hey, we're not trying to have you have Tommy Don John surgery halfway through the season. Good old Tommy Don. Good old Tommy Don. And we've seen that with a lot of pitchers, unfortunately, here early on with yeah. Tyler Mayle in Minnesota. Yeah. He's he's the most recent one to have to do it. We saw it with Robbie Ray in Seattle, which I mean, big picture. You know, you're going to be competing with the Mariners for a wild card spot, if not the AL West. So, I mean, that's a blow to their starting rotation. But, yeah, it, it is something to consider. But right now, he's a big guy and he's showing durability. I think you do exactly what the Angels have done with him. And then Justin Verlander, who got roughed up in his first start as a Met, but he now has become the 21st Major League pitcher to get a win against all 30 teams as he was able to beat the Cincinnati Reds last night 2 to 1 Mets get the win but uh, quite an accomplishment there for Justin Verlander. Is that an all-timer? Yeah, he's uh just 21 pitchers in Major League history. He's the 21st to get wow. a win against all 30 teams. Pretty crazy. Seems like a lot of pitchers. And it's weird that the Reds were the last team that he needed to get a win against. It's not like the Tigers or the Astros or a team in which he's yeah. playing for. What was it up with the I, I guess maybe he just wasn't facing the Reds a lot because he was in the American League. Yeah. So, very interesting there. How about Evan Carter? My gosh, this dude might be untouchable. When you start talking about trade conversations, yes, Evan Carter might Show be the him. only one that, and, and maybe Show maybe that's the only player that <laughs> CY is like, all right, I'd consider giving up Evan Carter. But he has just been absolutely incredible. Is this like the next Josh Hamilton or something? It's possible, man. I mean, the dude is a freak show out there. He's just twenty years old. And in the latest updated list of top one hundred prospects, Baseball America moved Evan Carter up eleven spots. He's right on the cusp of the top 10. He's slashing 301, 463, 452, and an OPS of 914 at Double A Frisco. He's got more walks than strikeouts so far. Wow. 26 walks to just 21 Ks. My guy's got the discipline as well. Unbelievable. The only other Rangers player in the top 100, Owen White, also at Double A Frisco, but he dropped from number 54 on Baseball America's top 100 to number 56. When do you think we could see him? I think we might see Evan Carter this year. That's what I, that's, that's, that's what I was hoping. I would love to see him this even, year. Even if they're on a run. He is so darn good. He might end up being that bat that you need to insert into the lineup without making a big trade. I mean, Especially that's how you special your roster. roster. Well, it, your roster looks like it needs bullpen help, not bats. They do, but you've got a ton, of, a surplus of middle infielders that they're not going to have a place for, whether it's Justin Foscue, Davis Wenzel, et cetera, uh, Luis Angel Acuna. Right. Mm. They've got a bunch of guys where you've got Simeon and Seeger locked up. You're going to have to find a place to play Ezekiel Duran. Josh Smith has already taken outfield responsibilities, but he's also a guy that can play in the infield. That's where the Rangers are really probably looking to make some moves is the infield, less their their outfielder and Evan Carter. They could I mean, Evan Carter to me, if his bat is able to be as good at the major league level as it is in minors, he's taken Travis Jankowski's spot in the outfield. You got you got room for him, but you don't have room for any of these infielders right now. That's who they'd be looking to flip. Nine oh three. If he is the next Josh Hamilton, I hope he does not have kids. Yeah, that's a sad story, and we'll hope he does not have a nuclear level uh, substance abuse problem either. At the same time, that'd be uh, probably best oh, for that'd his be future. Really bad. Yeah. Really bad. Uh, we wrap up around the bases. Jose Altuve. He's ahead of schedule right now from this broken thumb. 
So as we look at right now, I think the Rangers currently have a two-game lead on the Astros. Astros are at 19 and 18. Rangers at 22 and 14. Yeah, monitor when Altuve is coming back because that race is going to get a little bit more tight. That was from the uh, the the World Series. WBC. WBC. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Bully. We got Bob Stoops coming up here, the uh, coach of your XFL Renegades, getting set for the championship game. We'll talk some college. We'll talk some pro football. Talk some XFL with Bobby Stoops here uh, coming up in in just a second. It's the G Bag Nation on 105.3 The Fan. But first, I want to talk to you about my friends over at Elite Health Center. Mother's Day is this weekend, and ladies. How much do you spend on extensions? Or how much time does your wife waste maintaining those extensions? What if you could do a three hair restoration treatment? All right, you just have three treatments.
Sport World. Always live on the free Odyssey app. From our fan studio, secured by DFWSecurity.com, you're rolling with the G-Bang Nation on 105.3 The Fan. Here we go. It's hour three of the G-Bag Nation here on 105.3 The Fan. Got a big uh, hour coming up here for you. And uh, thanks for making us part of your day. Joining us now is uh, a great American football coach. Okay, the XFL championship game is coming up Saturday at 7 o'clock. Coach Bob Stoops and the Arlington Renegades taking on the D.C. Defenders at the Alamo Dome in San Antonio. And Bob Stoops joins you now right here on 105.3 The Fan. Uh, good afternoon, sir. How the heck are you? Me on, and hope you're having a great day. Yes, sir. We we are, um, man. And uh, congrats on on making the game. How how you feeling? How's this season gone for you guys? Yeah, thank you. It's been uh, we've been up and down, you know, throughout the year. But we really, I, I think, as much as anything, of catching our stride and 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 confidence and all in the last this past couple of weeks in the way we've played and um you know we had a chance in the in the divisional playoff game to win and we won and uh, had a good solid game and now it gives us a lot of confidence and some momentum coming into this championship game here on saturday evening like you said at seven o'clock and in uh, San Antonio, it is exciting to get there. Uh, these DC Defenders nine and one on the year. They they are favored, but you feel like your guys have made some significant improvements throughout the year, and maybe that that record is an indication of how you're playing now. Well, we played them in week nine and and took them to overtime at their place up in DC. So so we're familiar with them. And then yes, I do believe that we have. We're a much different football team uh, now than we were then, as well as th- through the early part of the year. A big reason for that is our quarterback, Luis Perez. Um, you know, that was just his fourth game in the playoff game and with us. So there's there's just more and more comfort and confidence with every with he and the receivers and everything we're doing now. So I, I think that does help us coming into this championship game. Yeah, Coach, the last time we had you on, you were, you were really kind of trying to find your identity there at quarterback, though. With Luis, though, uh, you know, the game plans, everything like that, feels like that uh, you're going the right direction to to, 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 to handle this uh, this championship game? Absolutely. Um, we're, again, just a lot, you know how it is. You know, every week he, he's grown and gotten better with us and the receivers now – uh, more comfortable with them and everything we're doing. So yeah, we're we've got a we're a much different team with him now in week. Uh, now it's week six, and uh, you know just even with the extra practice time, uh, there's a lot more confidence uh, offensively than than we had earlier in the year. Coach, how insane is it? I was seeing at the beginning of the season where the the two teams that are like the team you're playing with, you're flying with them to and from the the road cities. How weird is that? It was actually wasn't all that odd. Uh, we, you know, we're all in the same boat, meaning we're all practicing around Arlington uh, in this area. So you show up at the at the plane, and the the team that's hosting the game. They board through the front, and the team that's that's go that's going to play them. They board through the back, and you know it, it, what's neat about it. So many of the players know each other, so well, the guys will go up and down the aisles talking to each other. And coaches, we have gotten to know each other. Same thing. So uh, and you know, but you get off the plane and they leave out the front. We leave out the back. Get on our bus. They get on their bus. So there's there's not a ton of interaction actually. It's it's really pretty smart in the in the way we're doing it. Talking with Coach Bob Stoops of your Arlington Renegades, getting you set for the XFL Championship on Saturday, right here on 105 through the Fan of the G Bag Nation. Now Jordan Tamu ends up being XFL Offensive Player of the Year for the DC Defenders. What well, your defense has been sensational. It's been your calling card for the team all season. What's the challenges that Tamu and this defender offense present for you in your outstanding D? Yeah, Jordan's a great player. The the challenge is he can he got a great arm, smart guy and where he goes with the ball. So throws the ball well and then he's got the ability to scramble or run the zone read, pull the ball and run. So anytime you get a quarterback that can do multiple things like that, run and pass makes it challenging. So he'll it'll be it'll be tough. Um but you know, I, I got a lot of confidence and 
you know, our coaches and, and our players, the way they play, that we'll, you know, we'll have a good plan and be able to, you know, be able to contain them, hopefully. So you've had experience, obviously, coaching in national championship games at college. Do you do you reflect and draw from that at all as you get ready for an XFL championship game, or is this a completely different situation? You know, it's it's different. Um, you know, the, that's uh, that's a whole different animal right there. I'm working with older, mature guys that, you know, you, it's it, it, there's there's not a lot of comparisons there when it. Just again, just because of the age of all the guys you're working with and the experience they have, and uh, you know all of that. So, uh, and we're not down at the game for a week. Uh, we don't have a month to prepare for it. So it's it's a lot different than a than a you know a national championship game in college. You know, I, I know all, all coaches though they they love to compete, they love to coach, and, and they love to be in these kind of situations. It's not the same as being at the top of American football like you were, but can you put into words, Bob, what this title would mean for, for you and your team? Oh, it made a great deal. Everybody, we're all excited about it, about the opportunity, the chance to get it. And sure, I'm, I'm not going to do anything uh, if you're not going to try and win and win at the highest level and be a champion. I mean, that's that's natural, and and you're right. Anyone that's you know that's been involved in this, you know, you're always competitive, and so it it mean a great deal, and uh, you know, and that's why the the whole team and our whole program here is excited about the chance. So now we we got to go make it happen. Do you have any sort of uh, remember the Alamo speech ready for the guys or anything like that? No, I'm not much on that, and these these older guys aren't much on the Newt Rockney speeches. <laughs> what are they into? <laughs> They're into just get ready to play. <laughs> I like their style. But the college kids, when you were at OU, I bet they loved a good uh, hype-up speech, huh? Yeah, I wasn't much on that. But uh, but I think they felt my intensity. I, I, we, we had a pretty decent run. Now, was Coach Bob Stoops at the college level, was he getting involved in some of these viral post-game victory locker room coach dances that we're seeing these days? Or was Bob Stoops not getting involved Maybe in the locker room put a little sooner dancing? chain on or something? Yeah, yeah. No, I wasn't much on that either. I, I was. Uh, you might get a little step or two if we won a Big Twelve championship or national championship, but it wasn't for long, and there weren't any phones around. <laughs> <laughs> hey, coach, with uh, with the way the situations are for extra points and stuff, if you get in the situation, is it just like the way you've played all year? You know, stay aggressive, or is it? Well, I mean, if it comes down to having to go for the win on that are you do you look at that way or do you say well we might have to tie this maybe look for an overtime situation or how do you how do you go into these games yeah well you you look at the percentages um going for two points from the five there's a 43 percent chance of making it and and if you go for one point from the two there's a 39 percent chance of making it so that's virtually the same right right so why what why not go for two then so Point being, it just depends on the percentages. Uh, your percentages of getting a three pointer is only twenty something. It's twice as uh, as much. So, point being, you, you just sort of you, you you work the percentages and and you uh, and or what plays you like. You know, you might have a really good play though from the two yard line that's for one point that you really feel is going to work, and and you do it. If you if it's say it's the fourth quarter two minutes to go and it's going to put you ahead uh so anyhow you just like all situations it just depends on the situation has as has being in this league changed you as a coach when it comes to maybe the analytics or going for, i know your whole career you've had the option to go for two but is it, it throughout you know now being in the xfl has that changed how you look at analytics when it comes to making those decisions well, well, yeah, there's there, there's nothing to compare when you look at kicking an extra point for one as opposed to going for two. Sure, there's a big difference. You're about a hundred percent kicking the one. Right. So, yeah. So that's some. So I'm, what I'm saying is there's not much to compare there. It's different, you know. So no, you just uh, you know it, it's it's always something you're processing going for one, two, or three depending on the score. It's Coach Bob Stoops here. Uh, Renegades taking on the D.C. Defenders at the Alamo Dome, 7 o'clock on Saturday, the XFL Championship game. You mentioned your guy Perez playing well. Saw uh, Ben DiNucci from Seattle got the invite to Broncos camp. Next week a after the, the, the final, are we going to be hearing more guys uh, getting their shot? Yeah, there they should be because, uh, 
Yeah, we were told until these guys complete their season, they won't. Other teams weren't going to sign them until this was over. So uh, I'm sure, hopefully, both teams will have team uh, players that'll be signing with different teams and going to camps. What keeps most of these guys going? Is it that is it that dream? Is it the love of football or something else? It's all of that. It's the love of football. Uh, a lot of these guys uh, still have an opportunity to play in the league, and and will get picked up or get have a chance, and that's their ultimate goal and we support that goal and want it for them. Um, but you know, some of them maybe know they're at the end of their careers and just enjoy playing. Um, you know, so it's, it's a little of both of those. How, how tough is that with maybe a lack of continuity from year to year? Cause the hope is obviously the XFL is here to stay. And as long as you're doing it, you might not know you could have a completely different team next year. That's okay. There's a lot of good football players and, you know, you just you, there's enough practice time to get everybody on the same page, and that's not an issue. And again, we we support and want our players to be, you know, to be picked and and have an opportunity in the NFL. That's what we're all about, Coach. With the game being in in San Antonio, though, you, you got to be hopeful that that uh, the Texas crowd shows up on your end of this, right? <laughs> I'm not I'm not crossing my I, I'm not holding out hope for that. I don't, I'm not so sure the Texas fans are going to go support me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, maybe your but, team. Maybe but, your team, right? How about your team, though, right? They get, you know, they're going to support you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Different. Oh, exactly. You, we're going down there. It's a South Division team. Yeah. Texas is in the South. We're a South team, so hopefully – Anybody that's on the fence listening out there, come down and support us. Yeah, there you go. How, how many minutes after the Renegades win the championship will Bob Stoops dip into that rock and roll tequila? Oh, it'll it'll be before I get to the locker room. <laughs> <laughs> we might get a dance celebration out of you. Oh, heck yeah, room. let's like go. See that. Coach, while we have you here, uh, I did... I did want to ask you about this because I think we talked about it during the college football season and, and you know, when we were going back and reminiscing about Mike Leach and great stories there, but the the playbook situation where they leave it for the Texas coaches ahead of the Red River game. What are your memories about that, Coach? Because that is an outstanding story. Well, he, he not the playbook. He left his, his call script. Right, his that's sheet. what it was. He He intentionally dropped a fake one, a phony one, and he saw that he, he watched and kept walking and he watched as a graduate assistant, young coach or manager, somebody ran over, picked it up and started reading it and went running in the locker room to give it to the coaches. <laughs> and uh, Trent Smith, I think our tight end, was the one who, who dropped. You no, know, he, he, Trent Smith dropped it. He acted like he was putting it in back of his, his pads and let it slip out. And they all watched him run into the locker room, so they knew they had taken the bait. Mm. So uh, I didn't find out about all this until like a week later. Wow. And I, I, I looked at guys in the offensive meeting, and I said to I go, you did what? <laughs> 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 they all started chuckling. And uh, so anyway, uh, yeah, so be it. Uh, Miss Mike. Uh, yeah, yeah Miss, Miss Mike, and uh, pray for his family all the time. How how much uh, how much did you get involved in the in the state fair activities uh, during those those rivalry games? Well, never other than the one time, uh, two thousand, the second my second year there when we beat them sixty three fourteen. I let the players run around uh, the the fair with their families for like three hours. I said, At whatever time we're back on the bus and we're going home. And Smitty, our strength coach, he tipped off one of the beer tent guys right by our locker room, and we we went around the back of the picnic table and back of the tent and sat down with, with our wives and some of the coaches and had a few beers and a cigar for about an hour. Oh, so it's pretty lovely. good. <laughs> yes, sir. Find some shade right there. I never, I never did that again, though. Well, listen, uh, Bob, awesome stories and banter. We, we've uh, loved it all year long having you on, on the show, uh, and we can feel your intensity, and, and we'll support the hell out of you uh, anytime down here, man. So best of luck in that championship game. Well, we appreciate it. If we're going to go all the way to San Antonio, we might as well win it, right? There yes, sir. Go. Yes, sir. Give him hell. We'll be pulling all for right, you. Guys. There he goes. You. Bob Stoops here on 105.3 The Fan. That game Saturday uh, evening. 7 o'clock in San Antonio.
Yeah, it's good stuff right there. Uh, you know, the four and six on the year. You're like, how's this come together? Got the new quarterback in there. Yeah. Handling business. Yeah, I remember in that. the semifinal. I think we were at the Barber College when we talked to him last. And he yeah. was and he was kind of like he was debating on. He was struggling with his quarterback. But like you said, Wooly Bully, his defense was damn good. Yeah, the defense has been great all year. And Luis Perez has come in. I mean, I think they doubled their highest point total in, in their first game against Houston there to get to this XFL championship. They might be finally hitting their stride at the right time. Take home a championship here. Love it. Top 10 at 420 is coming up next. Uh, Wooly Bully, where are we going? Got some audio of this NFL rookie. Is he cheap or is he a genius about how he handled this rookie dinner? But it's also the National Eat What You Want Day. So I've got the top 10 most popular foods in all of America. What would you eat today if you could have whatever you want next on The Fan? I love it. Let's talk Don.
Nation here. Thought you wanted a special intro to your live spot there, Chief. Thought you'd appreciate it. Greatly that. appreciate it. People at Southern Leisure Spas right now are hitting me up saying, gosh dang it, that general sounds like a stud. Salute to them. I lose the spot. I love those Southern <laughs> Leisure might, people. He might, might have just jacked it from me. <laughs> Segments brought to you by the Frankels. There's a reason you need a special license to drive a big truck, so companies that hire drivers and put them in a big truck should be held accountable for what happens when one hurts you, frankly. You need Franklin. Frankel consultations always free at truckwreck.com. Here's the bully with the top ten. Thank you very much, General. National Eat What You Want Day. Can't participate in that personally, but I want to hear your stories about what you might be participating in. I got the top 10 most popular foods in America. The list, very interesting. Didn't didn't realize what some, I mean, all of them make sense, but the ordering, very interesting what America loves here in this top 10. What's your confidence meter in your list today? Oh, it's very confident. I mean, okay. hey, it's, it's America's it's voted on yeah, this. That's right. Well, so how do you feel about a, your country? But I, I agree for the most part. There might be some ordering that I would do differently. But, hey, this is what America loves and America gets what America wants. But I did have some audio I wanted to play. Eric Armstead of the San Francisco 49ers. And uh, he's, he, he's one of these. He was with the Niners and then... As a he's rookie. one of these Eric with a K's. Yeah, he is. Know. Well, yeah, watch I, out for those guys. Oh, I think he also spells the with first name with an A. With an A. It's A R I K. A R I K. Double whammy. Yeah. So it's interesting, but he he's doing his rookie dinner with the Niners, and he tells a story about how he kind of got out of it, or did he? Is this genius, or is this just cheap? Take it away, Eric. Uh, so what I did was, you know, I, I was like, hey, I'm a I'm a plan everything. See, this that's that's the number one thing Ooh, y'all got to do. Is you got to plan it. Yeah. You got to take the initiative yeah. and then you control the price. You know they're going to try to run up on you a little bit, but you take the initiative. Don't let them plan it because yeah. you're going to be, it's going to be bad. That's smart. Um, you take the initiative. So I was like, hey, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take him to dinner. I'm going to take him to a Warriors game. I'm going to get a suite in a Warriors game. And uh, that's, a, that's a good, that's, that's, a, great, that's, that's a great, great experience. Right that's a great experience. That's Little did they know, my homie played for the Warriors, so I ended up getting the suite for free. Ah, there you go, Eric. You know what I'm saying? So I, was gonna say. I got off on that. Yeah. Then dinner, I planned it so I get to choose where to go to dinner. I took him to Fogo de Child. That's 50 bucks a person. <laughs> 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 my man good with his bag. <laughs> And they're going to eat good, too, if I go. And yeah. Keep it on green. Everybody's happy. You can't be too right. mad at that. Went no. to a Dubs game. And, like, yeah. at the time, it wasn't no crazy expensive places in that area, the Bay Area. Like, it was, like, one or two steakhouses. And for the child, was a solid option. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, uh, then we, I, had, I had to pay for the party bus from, you know, to get to, get to the game. And then they bought food and drinks in the suite. But I made out cool about, like, 4500 something like that. Wow. 4500 That is... Yeah. That's nothing for what we've seen for a lot of these rookie no. dinners. A lot of wine. It's pretty, yeah. it, I mean, I think this was a genius play, right? Yeah. He ends up getting the suite. Yeah, he doesn't have to pay for it because he's got a friend that hooks him up. And then the Fogo de Chow, you know exactly how much you're going to spend, minus the alcohol, whatever your guys want for alcohol. But good place. You're going to eat fantastically well. I think this was a genius move. Some might look at him and be like, dude, this guy's cheap as bleak. No, no, like the, the, the financial uh, bullying or hazing that happens, that's a significant stack of cash. And if you're a rookie, and Eric was a first-round pick, right? So, right, top 10. Um, yeah, that's right, you're, you're getting pretty good money, but this comes to like 2 or 5% of your rookie salary. It can it can be exorbitant. What they get Des for? 40 grand? Yeah, was, Jerry had to come through and 50, write a check. Yeah, that was 50. 50 grand? Yeah. I think he was the last one, too. That yeah, had, that yeah. was it after that, yeah. No, and, and we, we we should not be teaching rookies to be irresponsible with the cash. Oh, That's the biggest thing is the message that it sends like, hey, we're just here to party and have a good time. As the veteran, you should be like, bro, you don't know if this is going to last two more months, two decades. Secure that bag and keep that bag. Mm -hmm. Keep it under lock and key and until you're sure, right, of how this whole thing is going to play out. And, you know, um, the, the NFL is like, what, a, the average career is two and a half years? So I, I, I think it's it's really tough to find great leadership and, and mentorship amongst people in their 20s. But if this was happening on my team, I would try to greatly discourage it. I mean, you, I you have the opportunity to have a strong influence on these rookies. They're looking at you like you have all the answers. You know, that's too serious for this subject, but that's what I was thinking about. We had a situation in, like in Green Bay, and, and this was the early 90s, but we didn't have a dining hall and all that stuff. And so the rookies, what we did was – that on Saturday we brought in like the omelet chef and stuff like that, like a buffet from the hotel in Green Bay. 
And so the rookies were responsible for that. Like, and it, it started off with the first round pick. Then the next week, it was a second round pick. By the end of it, like Mike Holmgren was buying the meal. And then Ron Wolf, the general manager, bought one too. So you're paying like three grand for wow. breakfast for everybody on a Saturday. And that was kind of like your rookie. Everybody resp- passed the buck yeah, one yeah, time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the fir- I like the that. first three round grand. Pick, yeah. yeah, the first round pick, he he was the first And the week. coaches are in on it too. That's how coaches healthy. are in. Yeah. yeah, coaches are in on it too. So nobody and then like Favre jumped in one time and you know, Reggie White jumped in one time. That's what you did. So, you know, you eventually you run out of the, the draft picks. And then everybody. Then you go to the rich guys. Then you go to the rich guys. But but that way everybody felt like that they had a hand in, in, in making sure that everybody got fed on that Saturday. It's a real team. Makes sense why you guys won a Super Bowl. All right, uh, we got the top ten most popular foods in America here on National Eat What You Want Day, fellas. If you could have anything you wanted right now, food wise, um, and we got a couple of good creative tags. And a shout out to you, nine seven two. I read that. I can't share that on air. A uh, lasagna's been texted in, yeah. but where would you guys go if you could eat whatever you wanted right here, right now? Man, we get a New York strip. Mm. What's your side? Medium. Uh, baked potato. Okay. No yeah. lobster mac. No, thank you. No. Okay. Uh, He's not a big lobster guy. Take a salad. And some uh, some zingers as my dessert. Uh, <laughs> it's, got, it's, it's back in the number one spot. All right, Brian, where are you going? I think I'm going with the tomahawk. Okay. Tomahawk, medium rare. I'm going with side of uh, some cream spinach. Like that, I think is uh, would be appropriate there. I'm kind of the lobster mac sounds really really good because I Does. was I was debating on whether like I love crab legs, mm. like you know. So I was thinking all the crab legs I could eat type thing, but I will I'll save it for the lobster mac. L A. I would have to go with the homemade tacos. Oh, okay. Homemade, and I mean like old El Paso, made with McCormick's type of tacos. That's oh, ground beef, geez. ground beef. Yeah, yes. yeah. Well, ground turkey, but okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Or uh, uh, buffalo wings. Yeah, I can never go wrong with buffalo wings. Hooters. Yeah, please, oh my God, please. Get them. Sh- the Drown shrimp. me in them joints. Yeah. I know you're big into the Hooters, right, yeah, Eric? The wing. I think. I think it would be some level of steak ultimately. But have you guys seen these? This new trend of like these, like like the. Uh, berries or something it being involved with these grilled cheeses no on on like uh tiktok and i didn't know brought us being the food guy that he is i'm seeing these like fruity kind of grilled cheese sandwiches that they have my attention they have my attention with like oh. a jam like yeah, a, it's like, like a j- yeah they kind of like so they it, had your curiosity but now they've got your attention. it's full on it's full on attention i'm trying to figure so out where like i can a, get one of these so it'd be like it would be like using like an onion jam on something then not but not onion but but fruit yeah a fruit jam oh, on a it smoke. sounds weird I'd, but I'd it be looks in on this. really good yeah i'd be in on this did somebody say farv yeah, just Favre, though. No B. Okay, no, so there was no, no one no first yeah. name. All right, no, so no. I'm good on this 903. We've established it's only in full name of that yeah. guy. Yeah. So we're good like, here. For example, if we would have said Brett Favre, that would have been a violation. 817's rocking the brisket. We got a side of lobster rolls from the 469. Mm. Uh, Al Gratin potatoes at a fine dining steakhouse is a side from the 972. Stone crab from David Artolo and Hazlitt. Shout out to David. He's an MVP. Is that Trulux? Where would we get our stone crab? I have crab? actually had. I've been to Trulix one time in my life, uh, and I did try the stone crab, and it was very good. They're good. It is very good. A lot good. of work. Yeah, it is. A lot of work. But I'm, uh, they do it nicely where they're kind of cutting the claws for oh, you, yeah, so they, they make you, it they easy. Help you. Yeah, they, they do. Help they're you kinda, you're kind of cheating there. Yeah. You know, I've never had this, but uh, I, I would love to get involved with a Perry's pork chop. Yes, me too, because it's supposed to be legendary. And I've told you, man, if we ever get a Friday for whatever reason off, Friday for lunch, it's half price off. Yeah, see, that's an no But the thing is, I don't know that we're ever going to. Maybe we should just do a live show at Perry's if you're listening. Is it half off flapjacks right now, Woolchuck? No flapjacks. Mama, give me them flapjacks. Uh, number 10 on America's most popular foods on National Eat What You Want Day is the potato chips. Yeah, dude. Great I, snack. They're they're just so amazing. I'm st- I've am i had two bags of chips out of the vending machine today. I know. You're always getting that those could turn ruffles, into five. and they smell so good. I mean, what are you doing to me here? I apologize. Goodness gracious. It's It's hell. Uh, number nine is donuts, and they put it spelled both ways. Ooh, I might reconsider. Do the donut grilled cheese of sorts, or the uh, donut cheeseburger? Yes, that donut yeah. grilled cheese that Sandler had. I can't remember where Tom they G. were. Yeah, Tom and Chi. That sounded heavenly. Did sound good. Might have been Baltimore. I'm trying to remember where they were that he had that, but it sounded damn good. Or Cincinnati. Yeah, really good. A, Cincinnati. a, perfect, a perfect glazed donut might be the best thing to eat. Though. I'm with you, oh man. Oh, my yeah. gosh, yes. When bro. that hot and ready sign is yeah. up uh, when I pass a Krispy Kreme back in my fat days, you know I'm pulling over. I would just rather have the donut hole than the whole donut. Oh, the donut holes are where you're at. Yeah. Okay. 
There's something about them when they're squishy. And you just, yeah. You know, You're squishy. squishy. <laughs> I love the way you said squishy. Yeah. <laughs> so donut good. holes are fantastic. No, they are. They just the melt in your donut. mouth. They yeah. just melt. Yeah. You just eat them nonstop. I forever. really kind of just like the glazed donut hole. Otherwise, it's like, I'm, give me the other donuts. Yeah, I, don't I don't want need, the other glazed I, I just I would rather have hole. a chocolate donut than I would the glazed hole. Really? Hole. Yes. Yes. Wow. Okay. I think that makes one of us, man. Yeah. I thought your quarterback takes were bad. <laughs> okay. Will Chambers said it is are. incredible, by the way. Uh, They're good. Tommy G is. <laughs> Number eight is ice cream. Number seven, we got chicken tendies. You know, I hit an age with ice cream where I can feel it shut down my stomach and just inflame everything. Yeah. Oh. I can't even eat it anymore. I don't I'm know. Like, oh, I'm going to feel like crap for 12 hours. Right. I think yeah. I would combust if I went back my old days, like when we were doing nosebleed seats. We ate like a half gallon? Uh, literally. I would go spoon to tub. And yeah. next thing you know, I look down. Oh, my gosh. And you were a tub? Where'd all the ice I'm cream go? I'm in the go? tub. Yeah. Hey, 214 well, says, ask Golick Sr. about the donuts. Not only yeah. did we ask him, but we brought, brought him a brought donut. Him, brought him donuts. When he joined cool. us on radio. He's his favorite interview. I think he's definitely coming back with us next year in Vegas. For sure. He loves us. <laughs> Number six, they're going with the soft drink slash sodas. Is that a food? Ooh, that's it's a, in the food it's realm. Very clearly, you know, you, a beverage. You go to a restaurant, and this is what you you can you order that. So you would go to a restaurant just to have a a drink. I mean, a ice Coke? cream. You can make it out. Of, you can make a milkshake out of that. So sure. I mean, I feel like it. It's I'm not. I wasn't going to fight it. It's fine. Of course, I think not. it's worth. It. <laughs> They're never going to draw a line in the sand over no, there. A lot it's of sugar in there. It's basically a meal. Yeah, this was calories. okay with me. Some people just drink, and I'm drinking my meals. I was right going to say, Brian. Walchuk's been doing so much meal drinking over the last. There's something year going on with him. That we're on the last food. leg here. And like something's not right with the tummy over no, there. No, something today. What did you switch around? up? What did you switch up in your diet? I went back to the the true green uh, veggies. You know, oh, it's like a, the scoop that I yeah. just mix with. So because I'm like running low on veggies, and I think that it's it, the change up is really doing a number on me, boys. I had a, I legit did earlier. Brought his golf course. Brought his I golf couldn't course? trust a fart. Ooh. And I had oh, to I had to no. waddle my way to the. To the women's restroom because it's the better what, what one. Do you, you guys need to stop that, by the way. <laughs> Why? You need there, to, nobody's got, here not now. Not in office hours. There's, got, there's females we, working we here do. right now. We have ladies that work in this building. Yes. My gosh. Right, well, I'm outing myself. Wait, did you just I'm have a sorry. confession? You two, what are you doing did you over just there? Have to, did you just have to throw away your undies? Is that why you were late to the Bob Thank Stoops interview? Thank goodness it was clenched in, in the cheeks. <laughs> oh, my dear And this God, is, I right. need to stop sharing. I overshare. I need to stop this. This is going to come back and haunt me. This is the catch of the day. This is my favorite revelation since yesterday's girlfriend hiccup situation. I love, I love all of you, and you're all family to me listening, so I felt like as disgusting and vulnerable as I'm being right now. The old ladies' restaurant. Now, back to, go, to the food list. Top five. Uh, Pete says number five should be higher. That's Much the one higher I got. Than that. should be yeah. way higher, dude. Yeah. Uh, number four is Oreo cookies. That is about right for me, Gavin. I'm there. And I did, did you say you've kind of transitioned off the Oreo? Yeah, I need you to stay in that lane with me. I got bro. It, it, it it digestive issues again. Trust me, it's coming for you. It's, it, it it gets easier to eat healthy because they all shut your stomach. I haven't out. had them for a god knows how long, but you're right. Probably all of this stuff is going to come for, back to to get me for for every a sleeve of Oreos these days. I need two Metamucil fiber thins. Mm. <laughs> Number three is French fries. Number two, we've got hot dogs. See, I think that should be below some of the ones we've we've mentioned already. Like a yeah. hot dog is delicious, but you're putting that over pizza and French fries. No, thank it, you. It better insane. be a gourmet, you know, uh, what Chicago dog. Yeah. yeah, at least an Earl Campbell. But number one, <laughs> most popular food in America, hamburgers. I am burger. I mean cheeseburgers. You can All eat right. it Big with Mac. the cheese or without the cheese. Actually, a Burger King hamburger would be really good. Yeah, get that All Whopper. Right. Yeah. Tell you what, if I could have anything right now, it might be a Whopper. Thank you. Well, you gotta love those take. chicken fries at BK. I, I get your flame broiled bad take, right, right, you know, right. because there's a unique flavor to it. And if Just it doesn't hit for take? you, it doesn't hit. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> but you love a good chicken tendy chicken nugget. Tell me, you you will at least accept a box of chicken fries. Hundred percent. That'd be the only thing. Okay. That'd be the only thing. You make the call. What do you think about the softball catcher ear hole and gals aired the uh, in the baseball in the softball playoffs? You see this story? It's coming up next on 105.3 The Fan. Uh, I want to.
Much more 24-7 at 1053thefan.com. This segment of The Fan is brought to you by Classic Chevrolet. Thank you, Lucius. Uh, Cowboys apparently going to host Patriots Week 4. That's the latest rumor, Ruski, as uh, schedule getting released at 7 o'clock. All the reporters, insiders, so Brian brought us working hard, confirming a, a, as much of it as we can, but that is the latest rumor. You're going to have the Giants uh, Week 1. We'll have more on that here coming up at the top of the hour. It is time now for the uh, a GBAC Nation Presents. You make the call. What do you think about the softball story? A viral incident. McCarney's playoff game against Cisco this past week, and the McCarney catcher seen throwing the ball at the Cisco batter happened twice during the game. Apparently happened twice in the previous round as well, where you have a um, a runner on third base, and you know the catcher wants to throw down there, and uh, if the batter is standing in that batter's box, not getting out of the way, uh, then old school uh, baseball, softball coaches, players. Big leaguers, you know, will say, well, throw it right through you. To me, in this video, the ladies are stepping back. And the catcher's like, oops, you are still in my way. So I'm going to ear hole you or throw it in your face or or, or whatever it is. Um, so uh, the Texas Interscholastic League is investigating, uh, Brian. Kids obviously been coached that if if you if you throw down to third and the hitter hasn't stepped out, you send her a message. Or get an interference call. Yeah. I guess. I guess you could get an interference call as well. Um, you know, I think it's what happens when an old school guy like Mike Bassick is coaching your high school team. I think <laughs> these kind of things can happen, and I wouldn't be surprised if the coach matches that description. It is funny because I did read that the softball coach is also the head football coach and athletic director. Okay. So he's hmm. he's well-versed in the world of sport. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I hope the coach... You know, wasn't in, involved in, in in influencing that strongly. I'd love to hear from some baseball people. The nine seven nine sick that coaches teach that it happened to my son. The catcher nailed him right in the back on a steal to third. So I told my son, who was the catcher, next batter that strikes out, drop the ball and then nail him on their way to to first base. Yeah, you know, and I, I parents, you have to de- like give your kids the 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 tools that it takes to defend themselves out there. Uh, on a field, especially if, if bullying is happening. What do you think, Brian? Does this level of physicality, intimidation, and doing whatever it takes to get a result belong in high school sports, or should this be uh, pros only? kind of feel like that it's uh, – this is more like a collegiate pro sports thing. I, I don't think we at the high school level you need to be at that point where you're, you know, you're throwing at kids or trying to injure kids or trying to teach a lesson, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, I just, you know, and, and hey, let's. There's there's some highly competitive, you know, sports in this state for sure. Yeah, you, know, you look at the you know, the high school football, the baseball tournaments going on right now. I'm, I'm I was checking box scores on that. You know, Dallas Jeshwood still in the in the mix that I saw. So, but I I feel like there's a way to kind of get away with you know playing the game the right way. But when you get to the collegiate level and the pro level. Maybe there's a little bit more of an edge you could take. You want them hard nose for sure, whatever yeah. sport they're playing. I mean, it is competing. Two five four. This is my alma mater. The softball coach is a great man and not an ass. Okay, nine other nine seven two. It should be considered assault. They should have called the authorities. It should be considered assault because if that bleep would happen to my kid, I'd be assaulting someone else. I mean, you guys have seen the video. She pops up and, and the, the batter is is nowhere in her line of the throw when yeah. she's throwing a ball into her face. Oh, it's 100% intentional. Yeah. There's no I, doubt about that. I'm yeah. surprised. Another take, I'm surprised how much more violence is tolerated at women's games than boys' games. You get boys fighting and it's like, hey, separate them. You're kicked out. You're kicked out. Like, I was at multiple high school playoff soccer games taking abby let's go see what this game's like that game's like mm-hmm. i saw one game with three actual fist fights between ladies with punches actually landing wow the ref said here's your yellow card wow and in high school sports if you get a yellow card you have to be subbed out but can immediately come back on the next dead ball they're fist fighting that, going oh off and gosh. coming back on. And I wonder if anybody else has that experience that you're watching your ladies play and you're like, why isn't the fighting resulting in suspensions or getting kicked out of the games? Like, as I'm raising daughters to play at that level, yeah. if they're if they're going to get fought, then you got, I guess you got to teach them to fight and defend themselves. If that is how the refs look at it differently between 
boys and girls, I, I, I'm shocked at times. The, the throwing the ball in the face to me is just insane. Like yeah. the, the, this video, point blank, th- it's like three feet away, yeah. and you're getting hit in the face with a with a softball. To yeah. me, that is uh, that's insane to do to somebody who's got a bat in their hands. You yeah, know, like you throwing that ball at somebody with a bat in their hands. Oh, they're is coming a, back is a, at you with the bat. Is a pretty ballsy move. I mean, yeah, I think many people would if you get if you get a ball to your face. It's interesting because three that, feet away, it actually doesn't happen where they use the bat. Like when you think about the the pitchers in Major League Baseball that throw at a guy, usually they just rush them out. They drop the bat. They're not using that as a weapon to retaliate. I, I saw but that, some, I, yeah, that's a good point. I saw something on on Twitter today. It was like a 1970s baseball retaliation thing like they threw it they, they threw it the, they threw it the batter and he was like acting like that he was he got hit so he's like like he's going to first but he stepped back and then like like kicked into the catcher's chest yeah like, like just that. yeah with spikes on like 1970s like like that's it, old school in the 70s they yeah, played it like it was hockey yeah, like everybody it, was ready for a fight it, yeah. instead of charging the mound he just reared back and like kicked right into the chest like uh you know Snap kick into the chest of the catcher. It's a slide-up sidekick yeah. from my uh, taekwondo background. Yeah. 214, top DFW softball team out of 40. We coach catchers to throw straight down the line. Batter has to move. Sometimes catchers throw behind batters or in front of them. Yeah, yeah and th- these batters were moving um, you know, out of the way towards the dugout side. Got two daughters who play softball together. Somebody is going to get whooped by one of them. <laughs> Tolo in, in the 251. Uh 903 is insisting the batter does not have to give up the box. It's it's their right. And, you know, I'm not sure exactly how the rules would look at that, but I, I know the catcher has the right to throw down the line. He does. And other coaches are does. saying, yeah. we just tell her to throw down the line. And if the batter is in the way, then you do get hit. Yeah. But it's different if she moves like 20 degrees off the line. This Because that's what's happening in this video. The girl right. is way back. She's stepping back. Yeah. And, yeah. The, and the catcher is intentionally just beating her right in the in the face so it's one of those stories that's kind of going viral here from from texas sports that i'm, I'm sure you'll be seeing about on the yeah, news is, are there any things that when you teach ladies soccer or soccer do you is there anything you feel like that i shouldn't probably be teaching that is there any tactics that you use that like yeah. people have, like you've noticed like oh, i can't yeah, coach that i do i i do we got a girl that goes in if the other team is disrespectful and physical and she's our biggest girl, and she doesn't mind sending a message back. Like, oh, you laughed that our girl was hit. Oh, you, you've you been hacking and fouling, and okay, well, now you want to play physical. So, hey, here's the physical game. You know, other girls, pinch, you know. Oh, mm-hmm. a, a girl's being, we have a lot of name calling with 11 and 12-year-old girls. The B word's very popular. Oh. You know, uh, pushes in the backs, and, you know, I, I arm them with the knowledge of, hey, you know, you, you, you come together, ref's not looking, get them a pinch and run away. You know, try to get under their skin. I, you know, so pinch and run, pinch yeah. and run. So, so, so pinching or for overly physical players, you will meet the bulldozer. You know, you hey, you want to play physical? You don't mind running over girls? You think that's part of the game? So, you know, we're gonna we're gonna that's part of the game now. Got to right? have an enforcer. Yeah, you, and 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 things like that in the course of the game where you're playing hard and you know, or you're pinching, are I, I think are hopefully different, although. None of us are, are 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 perfect, and you know we're all trying to do the best we can. But you got to give them tools to take respect, because that's what's happening when somebody's doing that to you. They're disrespecting you, so you have to have something to take that respect back. Rim session. Every team's ideal offseason trade target is this one realistic at all for the Dallas Mavericks? It's next here in the G Bag Nation. I want to chat about the Frankel.
Secured by DFWSecurity.com. You're rolling with the G Bang Nation on 1053, the fan. Here we go. Hour four of the G Bag Nation on 1053, the fan, the nosebleed guy is about to take us on a trip around that rim. General at your service. There's Brian Broadus. You have Lucius Alexander in the pimp cup over there at Master Control. Big night in the association, big doings. Here is uh, Woolchuck and Chia Follow to take us around that room. Yes, sir. Let's go ahead and cut those lights out. We'll put the kids to bed, and the G-Bag Nation's going all 56 inches around that room. Let it rain! Rain dance! Oh, rain dance! I got a joint here, man. I've been saying for a special occasion. It's always a special occasion when it's a do-or-die night for the Boston Celtics and their fans. That's pretty <laughs> exciting. Almost as exciting as Walchuk giving us the Mavericks' most ideal trade target for the summer of 2023 to get us back to championship status quo. So this one was interesting. Maybe a name that has kind of not been on the Mavericks' radar, and we used to talk about him quite frequently, and I wonder if this is a realistic target in y'all's opinion. Bleacher Report. Dwight Howard. Put out a dream offseason target. No, no, it was about a decade ago. Uh, for every team. For the Mavericks... They go with Miles Turner of the Indiana Pacers. Wow, that's that's their uh, they they did their biggest Mavericks dream, and that's what they awoke. They that's the story they woke up with. Texas native Miles Turner, uh, and and yes, they're they're talking about obviously when you have Kyrie and Luca, and they're assuming that Kyrie's going to be a Maverick. What they need is defensive help, and Texas native Miles Turner would accomplish that. In Dallas, Turner's first order of business would be helping the club's twenty fifth ranked defense to stop. Hemorrhaging points. Mm. The Mavs have more issues on that end than one player can solve, but he'd be excellent when it comes to rim protection and leaky perimeter stoppers. Since entering the league, his 1,124 blocks rank second to those of Rudy Gobert, a three-time defensive player of the year. And moreover, Turner's impact could extend beyond defense. He'd also be a great screening partner for Luka. The 1.24 points per possession he generated as a pick-and-roll screener ranked second best among the 10 players who handled it at least three of those possessions per game. So I get it. You know, I, I, I hear you when it comes to, all right, is this the flashiest name? No, but I think that's been the Mavericks problem. Only wanting to go for flashy names. This is a guy that I think might be realistic. And in a dream scenario, sure, maybe you'd love to have Bam Adebayo over a Miles Turner. But these numbers, 
you can't deny him. He'd be an amazing fit here with the Dallas Mavericks and be a great way of improving their defense. And I think it is realistic. I'd love for Brian to call up his old buddy Rick Carlisle and see if he can send it, send him down to us. You know, he's a DFW guy, Miles Turner. I, I, um, everything that he does is great. I think you make a great point that, you know, we don't need the huge perimeter superstar who can go off for a 40-point triple-double. You got that guy. And what we need is quality big men to protect the paint, to do a little bit of scoring in the paint, and to get all those rebounds. And uh, I think Miles Turner is about the best realistic guy you could look for. You know, Anthony Davis, yeah, Jokic, Embiid, those are all pipe dreams. So I think you, you trade for Turner, and and if you still have your draft pick, maybe that's what's going for Turner is like a bad contract. Yeah, that in the would 10. make sense. Like THJ. And- yeah. 10. Either I would like that. I also like the idea of, of using the 10th pick to take a quality pick out of college. There's a couple of them. Yeah, I, I'm trying to look and see. I mean, I, I would be open to the Miles Turner thing for sure. Uh, and, and the Mavericks are at a place where, you know, beggars can't really be choosers. And I don't know how many options, realistic options they're going to have. So getting a big guy like this that, I mean, again, it goes back to Nico talking about in the, in the postseason uh, presser where it was like, hey, it's defense and rebounding are the two main focal points. Yeah. Um, and, and that, again, is under the assumption that you have Kyrie returning. And so this is a guy that would bring that for you. He played 62 games this past season, um, and he averaged 18 points uh, and I believe eight, eight rebounds. So, I mean, I, I think that would be cool. And he's still, he's still very young, but you're talking about at best you're getting 62 games out of him. Because otherwise, it's 42, 47, another 62. Like, you're looking at... I feel like, like with big men, though, you're that, that just comes... just kind of... Yeah. Like, yeah. none of them can stay healthy, That's really. That's true. You'd probably say that about most players. Load management or legit injuries. Sure. Either way, they're not going to play a ton of games. Uh, but bringing them back home, I think it'd be cool. And, it, gosh, if you could do it, he's he's a free agent in 2025. So, mm. you get you get two seasons out of him, paying him $20 million. I'll tell you, I'd, I'd rather Miles Turner than DeAndre Ayton... That might be crazy, but hmm. that, that's how I feel. Yeah. Uh, by the way, we uh, we have no DeAndre Ayton tonight when it comes to the Phoenix Suns. He's got some level of rib injury. So hmm. I actually feel like this is probably uh, addition by subtraction in uh, in their head coach's mind. Well, yeah, Monty I mean, Williams. and you're right. I mean, we got a lot of Phoenix techs coming in like they're trying to go for Miles Turner to swap out for DeAndre Ayton. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, that's somebody that they think would be a better player than having Aiton on that team right well, now, Aiden which is signed, crazy. He signed the offer sheet with Indiana, didn't yes, he? Yes, he did. Yeah. yeah. So that can make a lot of sense. Okay, so uh, last night the Knicks stayed alive thanks to Jalen Brunson, 38 points. He played all 48 minutes. He's had to do that in back-to-back games now. He's got to be exhausted. Oh, for sure. For sure. And the longer the series goes, I mean, I don't know how much, how, how many more 48-minute games you can get out of somebody. They tried to throw it away last night. For a while, yeah, they, they were cruising. And then I'm thinking, oh my gosh, is Miami about to steal this and win the series? It would have been it would have been pretty funny. Uh, but Jalen Brunson got to have uh, uh, one last uh, of the season big-time Madison Square Garden moment. Maybe he gets another one in Game 7, but 38 points, 48 minutes, 9 boards, 7 assists. He was super, super efficient, and that was one of the better playoff performances in Nick's history. So you got to imagine wow. he, he's absolutely loving that. And you saw his dad giving him a big hug. As soon as he walked off the court uh, after being interviewed, he goes and gives pops a hug. And so I'm sure just something like that is makes his move to New York in his mind, like totally worth it outside yeah, of the no money doubt. and all that other stuff. Like there's no doubt. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the, 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 the money's great. Playing at home is great. I think the biggest thing for Jalen Brunson is he's proven he can lead a team to playoff wins. If the small sample size of doing it last year against Utah wasn't enough, then this thing right here, because you go from thinking, yeah, I'm a complimentary type player, body's not right, second round pick, and the whole last four years, you're just, you're trying so hard. You get benched in the playoffs. Two years ago, benched in the playoffs. Right. To being now this player, it's got to be emotional. Mm. The relief, the exuberation of like, oh my goodness, this thing that I dreamed for, that people kept taking away from me. I was a two-time champ at Villanova, right? All-American at Villanova. They're like, oh, second round pick, two short, short arms, kind of heavy. Now he's freaking chiseled and he's dominating. 
Like, I hate that the Mavs let JB go, but I love it for him, man. It's an amazing sports story. Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, and and we'll see how that, that series finishes out. Chandler Parsons, former Mav, doesn't care how the Knicks and Heat series finishes because he says whoever wins the Celtics and Sixers series, that's the one who's going to be representing the Eastern, uh, the Eastern Conference when it comes to the finals. Wouldn't it so, be so Sixers, though, to find a way to upset Boston, who's everybody's favorite now, and then they've blow it in the conference finals well i mean tonight you have you have boston being favored to win the game because vegas i don't think trust doc rivers no to no. keep a series lead that's the one team i can't trust yeah but the but the boston coaches lacks trust too they're, they're, oh they're, missoula they're, for Missou- sure missoula they are he, he has had deer in the headlights looks yeah. several times they're, yeah. they're they're worried that he that he'll trump uh whatever doc does in a bad way <laughs> <laughs> they'll just uh, they'll out yeah. suck each other or yeah. whatever. Yeah. What? Uh, I don't know. I was trying to figure out a word there. I, I, I know what you meant though. You didn't mean it inappropriately. Uh, now the the Miami Heat are leading all remaining playoff teams in what they call hustle stats. I, I wasn't we familiar with this. the hustle stat hustle category. Stats. Oh, the hustle board. That's a, a a great gift from the '90s. Okay, where's Luca rank in the hustle stats? <laughs> I don't think he's very high. <laughs> that's your that's your deflections. That's your steals. Your block shots. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. The Heat are first uh, of all the remaining playoff teams, and this is how a team like the Heat has to win because it's Jimmy Butler, and it feels like a bunch of guys outside of a random bam out of bio mo- uh, moment, but it's first Tyler in deflections. Hero down there helping you all? Well, he's got a fractured hand and has been out since the second game of the playoffs. <laughs> but <laughs> otherwise, I'm sure offensively he'd be helping them. But he's them. staying healthy. He's, but he's healthy. also not he's much of a eye hustle. Of the tiger, Brian. Eye of the tiger. <laughs> yeah, despite yeah, that eye of the tiger. No, he's, he hel- he's, helping you, he's helping you in a way that by not playing, I think that's going to what uh, you mean. Defensively, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. They're first in deflections, first in loose balls recovered, first in screen assists, first in charges drawn, first in box outs. And that's why you have Julius Randle saying maybe they want it more. Uh, it comes across like, yeah, that it seems pretty obvious at this point. Uh, now, who do you guys have anybody in mind that you'd most like to like individual player that you'd most like to see come away with the championship? Now that like the Mavs obviously not being in it, do you have with the with the NBA being such a players' league? Is there a player you'd most like to see win a title this year? Yes, there's two for me, one from each conference: Jimmy Butler or Nikola Jokic. Okay, I think that's totally fair. Two guys that haven't done it yet. Yep. Okay. I don't know why. I, I, I have no idea how to explain this. Sports is weird. Uh, spent a lot of my life being a Laker hater. Uh, but there's been a couple of players that have cut through that. Magic Johnson, Shaquille O'Neal, and LeBron James because I liked them so much and appreciated their greatness. So I actually want LeBron to get another one and get within one of Jordan. I think it'd be... Uh, yeah, at this age, I almost always end up cheering for the old guy to keep getting it done. Uh, you know, as a, as a really young kid... It was George Gervin with the San Antonio Spurs, the Iceman. I was just like, oh, wow, this is so cool, and he's old. I want to see him get it done. It's been Tom Brady in the NFL. Right. Like, once you get to a certain age and you're like, you're supposed to be washed up, a Bernie Kosar, Doug Flutie, um, Jordan with the Wizards, Carl Malone at 38, 39 years old. You know, so as much as I hate the Lakers, I, I just think what LeBron is doing at 38 years old, we've never seen it. I, I know Tom played an all-pro level at 43, but that's quarterback in the NFL. This getting up and down the court thing and and being able to dominate the game, much more with his mind than his body these days. And maybe that's due to a foot injury that I think might be on board. Mm. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I have no idea how to explain it, but I did find myself last night pulling for the Lakers. And it's not just that dang show bet. I made that show bet because I want the Lakers to win for some crazy reason. That's so that's so funny. I wonder how many people in the Metroplex are actually rooting for the Lakers or maybe just rooting for LeBron. Uh, a lot of them on the text rooting against LeBron. Well, so I, there's a certainly yeah. going to be And a ton I hear of that. what you're saying there, but when it comes to the Warriors and Steph and in that group Draymond, right? Do you feel the same about them? Like let's say LeBron and the Lakers weren't around anymore. Would you feel yes, like that I would for feel Steph? that way about them. Okay. Yeah. It's it was and it's a close call in my mind. Like, wow, I'd really like it if either of these teams win the championship. It's a, just a cool story. You got any individual players over there that you'd most Jokic. like to see win it? Jokic. It'd be Jokic. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what's interesting is the owner of the who's my guy uh that owns the Rams? Cronky. Oh, Cronky. Cronky. Stan. Stan might be on a little bit of a run here. Stan won a Super Bowl with the Rams. He won a Stanley Cup with the Abs. And he's he can maybe win a 
championship with the Nuggets. I totally forgot he owned the Nuggets. How he, does he? Do, how does he have? I three no idea. He's got a Walmart bride, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. Yeah, he's got that Walmart. Jeez. He does, and, yeah. and but he's on quite a run right now when it comes to winning championships. So he might he might be the guy that. He'll hold all three here in a minute. Team of destiny, dude. Yeah. I don't want the Celtics. Celtics are the team I'm cheering against because I've doubted them. And I, I don't think Tatum's on the same level of of the greats that typically win the win the championships. And I'm holding out hope that Jalen Brown forges his way out. And maybe, maybe just maybe, the Mavericks get lucky. And that can be somebody to future pair with Luka. I'd be, I'd be so in on that for sure. Uh, so it's DeAndre Aiden out for the Suns tonight. It's going to be Jamal Murray questionable uh, with a non-COVID illness for the Nuggets. Uh, so that'll... something's going on in their team right now. They got quite a few. I think the, actually the head coach. They, there's quite a few players. A little stomach staff. bug going around. They got something that's going on. Man, through I that co-sign staff. that. And, they were yeah. They didn't. Uh, they didn't finish shoot around this morning because players were getting sick. The pr- the producer of the Last Dance has been filming footage of LeBron James throughout these playoffs. Uh, so we we might be in store for some level of last dance LeBron slash Lakers doc uh, in years to come that is amazing. Uh, with some footage. So hopefully they chronicle the uh, the Lakers surrendering a 3-1 lead to the Warriors. And uh, maybe they'll throw in a couple of archival clips years from now of Broadus and Dawson simultaneously doing a bet payoff together. It could happen. I wonder how our video did in, in Seattle. You know the the video when the guy came in and filmed us. I oh wonder, yeah, I, I oh. never we never I never checked. On I that. never heard anything about it. Yeah. I think you won your second Emmy right there, Brian. It was good so. work. I think so. <laughs> All righty, thank you guys uh, around the uh, around the rim uh, every afternoon here in the G Bag Nation, especially through the playoffs and the finals. Exciting times. Uh, draft lottery is early next week. Was that Tuesday? Draft lottery Tuesday, and then the draft coming up uh, at the end of June and and free agency and everything. And it is going to be a fascinating couple of months here to see what the Mavs can manage to pull off and we'll be all over it for you okay when we return it's time to hit the expressway 35 minutes of uninterrupted sports content here it's the g-back nation the fan friends at dnm leasing uh have a message